Tune in to nostalgia. Tune in to now. Golden Radio Hour. It's Hopalong Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop along, Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hop along, Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. The Golden Lure. Right now, Hoppy and California are leading a cattle drive to the railhead at El Campo. After passing through the tough outpost town of Warpaint, Hoppy and his cowwaddies halt their herd in the Bar 8 range for water before pushing on. Near the veranda of the weather-beaten ranch house, Hoppy and California talk things over with the gray-haired ranch owner, their old friend, Smiley Haynes. Yeah, we ran into an old prospector in these two burrows heading for Warpaint as we crossed your range, Smiley. Yeah, that must have been Dusty Jones, Hoppy. He'd been staying with me a couple of days. Old Desert Rat finally struck it rich up in the hill country, and now he's aiming to spend some of his gold back in civilization. <laughs> if you call war Pete civilization, I'm the queen of Sheba. <laughs> well, California, if you lived in the desert as long as Dusty has, with nobody to talk to except a pair of floppy at birds. Sure, sure. I reckon even a couple of honky-tonks in a general store looks like Dodge City to old Dusty. He said something about you selling the bar eight, Smiley. Yeah, and I'm thinking about it, Hoppy. What with rustlers robbing me blind, and most of the water holes turning alkali, I, well, I've just about given up. Rustlers? Yeah, the smoothest working gang of cow thieves that ever hit this territory. All the ranchers have reported losses, but uh, I guess I'm the first one they really cleaned out. Well, what about the sheriff? What's he doing about it? Yeah, running around in circles, that's what he's doing. Oh, uh, I've had to let all my cow hands go. I've been trying to run what's left single-handed, but it's no go. I figure I can get Judge Flint to make me an offer. He runs the Cloverleaf Ranch just north of here. I'm sorry to hear this, Smiley. I wish we could hang around a few days and look into this rustling outfit. Well, but... thanks, Hoppy, but I've, I've made up my mind to pull out. In fact, there's already sent for my daughter, Connie. The, your, your daughter? Well, did you know I had one? I sent Connie to school in St. Louis after her mother died. Oh, here, here. I've got, got a picture in the wall here. See? See? What can I be doggone? Look at them pigtails. <laughs> yes, sir. Ah, oh, that's a mighty cute little girl, Smiley. Connie ought to be arriving on the train in El Campo just, uh, just about the time you get there, Hoppy. Stagecoach for war paint don't leave El Campo but once a week, and I... I thought if you if you didn't mind... You uh, mean, uh, will I bring her back uh, when we return? If it's not too much trouble. You bet your life I'll bring her back with us. Be glad to. Uh, can she ride? Uh, she could ride before she could walk. Just you leave it to me, Smiley. The boys now see that she arrives here PDQ. Pretty darn quick. Sure. Well, <laughs> thanks, boys. Uh, I sure appreciate it. Uh... Smiley's little gal didn't get into El Campo on that train after all, California. Station agent says he didn't see any youngster get off. Uh, he he might have just missed seeing her. Maybe. Uh, here's the Wells Fargo Express office. She may have come directly here to inquire about the next Wells Fargo coach going north. Hey, there ain't nobody here but that gal sitting on a bench. Pardon me, have you seen the agent? We're looking for them ourselves, miss. By the way, if those are your bags over there, you must have arrived on that train. Yes, I did. Did you happen to see a little girl get off about 10 years old, traveling alone? Why, no, I didn't. Would she be coming here to the Wells Fargo office? Well, she might. She was thinking on taking the coach for war paint. War paint? 
Why, that's where I'm going. But you? That is, not all the way entirely. I'm getting off at my dad's ranch near there. Are you sure she was on the train? Wait a minute. Your name wouldn't be Connie Haynes. Why, yes. Great jumping bullfrogs. <laughs> I guess that picture of you your dad showed us must have been taken some time ago. Picture? What do you mean? Who are you? Just a couple of surprised cowboys, ma'am. We were looking for a foal, but it seems she turned out to be a filly. Take uh, Miss Haynes' bag, California. Uh, but, but, but in the picture, she had pigtails. And, but and she's she... a lot prettier this way. Your father asked us to round you up, Miss Haynes. Uh, can you ride? Why, I, I could ride before I could walk. That's what I thought. Let's go. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Golden Lure. While en route to the railhead at El Campo, Hoppy promises Smiley Haynes, a rancher who has been ruined by rustlers, that he will escort his daughter Connie back to her father's ranch on the return trip. Under the impression that Connie is a ten-year-old child, Hoppy and California are pleasantly surprised to find that she is an attractive girl of 19. After three days on the trail heading back to their home spread, Hoppy, California, and Connie are crossing the Cloverleaf Cattle Range, just north of Smiley Haynes' Bar 8 Ranch. After nine years away from home, I've almost forgotten how wonderful this country is. Looks like the Cloverleaf sure had a fine crop of calves this season. Yeah, I guess Judge Flint's doing all right, California. Judge Flint? He owns this spread. They call him Judge because he was once brand inspector for this territory. Oh, well, if Dad's ranch is anything like this one... I'm afraid things are a little different on the Bar 8, Connie. I I didn't mention it before because I... Well, I didn't want to spoil things for you. What do you mean? Well, since your dad didn't write uh, you himself about it, I guess I'll let him tell you. I just don't want you to get... Well, to expect too much to be, to be disappointed when you get there. Oh, I, I see. Come on, let's make time. been on your dad's range for the last two miles. The ranch house is about a mile further on. Hoppy, notice that lone buzzard flying overhead? Yeah, he's been wheeling around up there ever since we came into sight. Must be something dead around here. He wouldn't be staying up there in one place just circling lazy like. Whatever he's waiting for isn't quite dead yet. Oh, nice drawing room conversation. <laughs> I wouldn't call this drawing room, Connie. Out here, life and death are sometimes pretty close together. Hoppy, let's cut across over through that cottonwood patch. There's a watering pond between the trees. See it shining in the sun? I guess our horses could stand a drink. Come on, Topper. These poor horses certainly are anxious to get to that water. Boy, this here's a right sizable pond. Well, go to it, boy. Drink. What are you waiting for? What's the matter, Topper? I thought you said these horses were thirsty. All they do is sniff at the edge of the water and back off. I'd better taste it. That's what I think it is. Hmm, I thought so. Turned alkali, not fit for a coyote. Oh, dog, on it. Well, no use skipping stones across the water, California. Might as well ride on and get a drink at the well over at the ranch house. Well, just one more. <laughs> that one gleamed in the sun like it was made of gold, didn't it? Yeah, it did. I... Hey, wait a minute, California. Hmm? Stop playing with that. Let's see that stone you picked up. Why, sure, Hoppy. Here, you want to chuck it? No. Well, I'll... What is it? 
What's eating you, Hoppy? For a moment, I thought it might be iron pyrite, fool's gold. But I don't think it is. What? Why, it's a gold nugget. Look around you among these stones. It's loose gold. The place is littered with pure gold nuggets. Holy mackerel, we, we made a strike. Oh, we're rich. Let's take out a claim. Pull up, pull up. It's the Smiley Haynes property. We made a gold strike at his. Oh, no. Oh, oh sure. I, I plum forgot. Tony, it looks like your dad is luck has changed at last. Come on, California. Let's gather a few handfuls. Better open one of your bags, Tony. These nuggets are yours. Hurry up. Yes, yes, of course. Here you are. I'll just keep one of the nuggets for an assay sample. Come on, that's enough. Let's get to your dad as fast as we can. This is going to be a big day in your dad's life. Yes, and he owes it all to you, Hoppy. You and California. He can thank Lady Luck, not us. I... Oh, oh. Well, what is it? Those ashes down there. Somebody's built a Brandon fire there. Let's have a look. What's so unusual about that? Let's go see my father. Sure, sure. We're going to, Connie. I'm firing all these tracks around here. It looks kind of funny, that's all. You don't brand calves this time of year. Hey, these ashes are still warm. Yeah, and that buzzard circling right above us. I... Wait. What's that? What? Man, the shadow of that mesquite. It's a man. Come on. Hoppy. Hoppy, it's Smiley. Smiley Haynes. Dad! Dad, what's the matter? He's been shot. Smiley. Smiley, it's Cassidy. We brought your daughter. Daddy. Daddy, what's happened? Smiley, who did it? Do you hear me, Smiley? Who did it? Connie. Connie, girl. We better get into a doctor. Quick. Don't move in, Connie. Easy. Rustlers. Rustlers? Who were they? Who were they, Smiley? They were... They were... longer you figure we'll be staying here at the bar eight hoppy it's been over four days now and... well i wanted to see the girl through the worst of it california these last few days the inquest and all it's been pretty tough on us yeah i know poor kid but well what next yeah uh, it looks like judge flint heading this way on his paint horse yeah we ain't seen him since the coroner's jury map morning gentlemen howdy judge just coming from town? Yes, I uh, was over to the sheriff's office, Cassidy. I, I just can't understand why he hasn't made more progress in tracking down those varmints that killed Haynes. You mean he still hasn't any idea who they may be? Not an iota of an idea. The only thing we know is that Smiley Haynes must have caught the rustlers red-handed, drew a gun, and was killed. Yeah, it's a bad business, Cassidy. It'll be worse for them skunks when we catch them. I hope we do, Carlson. How's Miss Haynes? Ah, uh, she's coming out of it, Judge. Been an ordeal. I know. Oh, good morning, Miss Haynes. I was just dropping in to pay my respects. That's very kind of you, Judge. I uh, also wanted to discuss another matter. Yes? Perhaps you didn't know, but I was about to buy this place when your father was... Well, when it happened. Oh. Well, now that you own it, my offer is still good, and at the same figure, I offered your dad $20,000. $20,000? I didn't realize I was buying Miss Haynes' property from you, Cassidy, but since you're so interested, you ought to know that 20000 is a very fair price, considering the place has almost no stock or much water that's any good. That's not it at all, Judge. We, that is Mr. Cassidy in California here. I found gold on this place. Uh, gold? You mean... Cassidy, you don't by any chance mean that stuff by the alkali water hole near the cottonwood grove? Hey, how'd you know? <laughs> Well, you're not the first cow hands who've been fooled by iron pyrite. Fool's gold, that is. Oh? It just so happens, Judge, that I know iron pyrites when I see them, and I know gold when I see it. This stuff is gold. Very well, Cassidy. Why, uh, don't you take it into war paint and have Doc Blackwell, the county assayer, test it for you? That's exactly what I intended to do as soon as I got around to it. And this is as good a time as any. Connie, how about coming along? Uh, wait, uh, I... 
Just remember that Blackwell is out on a hunting trip today. He won't be back until later. You needn't rush off, Cassidy. Give him time to return. Yes. Yes, I think that would be better, Hoppy. We'll all go. Later. to run an assay on this piece of rock, eh? Well, I can tell by just looking at it what it is, cowboy. Iron pyrite, that's what it is, fool's gold. Oh, Hoppy, Judge Flint was right. Look, Doc, I didn't ask you to just look at that sample. I asked you to run an assay on it. Okay, cowboy, it's your money. Now, let's see, where's that nitric acid? Ah, yes, now, now the testing job. Oh, yes, now your sample. I, um... Uh, I put it in here. I pour the acid. Well, you can all see for yourselves the stuff is going to pieces, disintegrating completely and entirely. Fool's gold, like I said. That'll be five bucks. Oh, doggone it, Hoppy. I could have swore it was gold. Let's go. Here's your money, Doc. Hope you enjoyed your hunting trip today. Uh, Honey trip? What hunting trip? Forget it. Let's get out of here, Connie. Well, it was a lovely dream while it lasted, Hoppy. Let's not call it a dream yet. That's the first iron pyrites I ever saw that was heavy as gold. But you saw the test. It couldn't have been gold. How do you suppose Blackwell got the nickname of Doc? He used to run a medicine show. Attracted a crowd with a sleight-of-hand tricks, then sold them bottled licorice water. I'm not sure he didn't practice one of those sleight-of-hand tricks with our sample. Connie, I want another of those nuggets you have. Hoppy, you just want to believe this stuff is gold. It's just... Now, just... hold on. Forget it, won't you? Oh, Connie, listen to me. Why, Miss Payne, gentlemen. Judge Flint, last we saw you, you were heading back to your home spread, the cloverleaf. Uh, you were mistaken, Cassidy. I was on my way here. Judge Flint, I have decided to accept your offer for my ranch. Why, excellent. Connie, wait. I... Judge, if you'll draw up the papers and bring them for me to sign at the hotel here this evening, I should be most grateful. Oh, my pleasure, ma'am. I shall be at your service with the papers, the money, and the necessary witnesses tonight. Good day. Good day. Come on, California. We got things to do, and we got to do them fast. Before we continue, here is a word from your announcer. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Golden Lure. With the murder of Hoppy's friend, Smiley Haynes, still unsolved, Hoppy is trying to prevent Haynes' daughter, Connie, from selling the Bar 8 Ranch for a song to Judge Flint, owner of the neighboring Cloverleaf Spread. But Connie is finally convinced that the gold Hoppy discovered on the place is actually iron pyrites and worthless. Discouraged, she's agreed to sign the papers that night. In the meantime... Hoppy and California ride back to the place where they discovered the nuggets in order to secure another sample of loose gold. 
California, I can't get over the feeling that Doc Blackwell palmed the sample I gave him and substituted iron pyrite in that test. Well, why do you reckon Judge Flint said Blackwell was out on a hunting trip when he wasn't? Looks like the judge wanted to delay our seeing Blackwell so he could get to him first. Hey, there's the cottonwood grove and the water hole beyond it. We ought to find enough loose nuggets to... Down, California. What the sham hill? It's an ambush. Keep down behind this rise. Can you see him? I had a glimpse as we hit the dirt there among those cottonwoods. Hoppy, I'll bet we've run into some of them cattle thieves. Putting their brand on bar eight calves. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Did you get him? I only saw his hand as he poked it around a tree to shoot. I think I winged him. He dropped the gun. Listen, they're getting out. They're riding back through the woods. Come on. Don't waste your bullets. They're already past the cottonwood. Those low-down sidewinders. Ah, it looks like they rounded up about a half a dozen yearlings here. There's their Brandon fire. Yeah, must be about the last of the bar eight critters. Hey, wait a minute. Puppy, look at the brands on them yearlings. Clover leaf. They're clover leaf talk. Just changed from bar eight. What are you talking about? Those brands are old, healed up long ago. If you'll take a closer look, you'll see that it's the bar eight part that's healed up. But that third loop on the eighth, still fresh and raw. Every one of them, just made. What? Take a good look. Smiley's brand has a bar running to the middle of the eighth. Right in an extra loop on that eight with a hot running iron, and what have you got? A clover leaf. Well, I'll be... Then those hombres who were shooting at us, they must have been Judge Flint's men. Just like one and one makes two. You're getting good, California. So it's Judge Flint who was robbing Smiley, and now his daughter. What are we going to do? First, we collect a few more sample nuggets from the edge of the water, and then we're going to pay our friend Doc Blackwell another little visit. Cassidy, shoving your way in here. I'm closed. Come back tomorrow if you Tomorrow's want to. Tomorrow's a long ways off, Doc. We're in a hurry. Where's your equipment? Oh. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Running an assay, Doc, in person. I wasn't too happy about the way you ran that assay earlier today. This one I'm doing myself. I'll have you thrown in jail for this. Take a load off your feet. You, you won't get away with this. Well, here's the acid. You just pour a bit of it on this sample. We'll soon see if you were trying to get away with anything when you tested my sample this afternoon. Oh, Hoppy. Uh, Hoppy, it's dissolving. It is fool's gold. Yeah. I thought it felt a little different from the sample I picked up earlier. You thought, eh? You weren't happy with my assay, were you? Huh. Well, are you happy now? Sorry, Doc. We can't be right all the time. Here's your five dollars. Let's go, California. Well, looks like I made a prime chump of myself. Sure, I... Hey, look who's coming down the road. Dusty Jones, the old prospector we met up with when we first crossed the bar eight. Yeah, talking to himself again. Hi, Dusty. I see your birds are loaded. Even town? Yes, you, you dog go to them. There a bunch of thieves. Whole dog gone town. Somebody do your dirt? Yes, every bike in the pool hall shot, crooked gambler in the whole dead blasted place. Yeah, the only number who, who give me full value for gold was poor Smiley Haynes, God rest the soul. These others... Smiley? Uh, the only honest man in these parts. Besides you in California. <clears throat> I ain't so sure of California. <laughs> now, look at here, you old horn toad. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to hear more about this, Dusty. You mean to say that Smiley Haynes gave you cash for some of your gold? Yeah, darn near $500 worth. Full government mint price he paid me. The only honest man with... I sure hope Flint ain't left the hotel yet. Connor's room is the head of these stairs, according to the woman sitting on the porch. Howdy, mister. You! Get him up! Don't reach for your guns, either of you. I have got you covered.
Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. What is it? Who is it, Duke? Cassidy and Carlson. I got them covered. Connie, do your guests usually throw guns on your old friends? We were just dropping in for a visit. Mr. Brixton, what's the meaning of this? Duke, you fool. Put that gun up. I wouldn't risk drawing that gun again, Duke. Especially when you've only got your left hand to work with. What happened to the other one? It's all bandaged. I burned it. What's it to you? Hot lead does leave a nasty burn, doesn't it? Hoppy, what are you talking about? Mr. Brixton is judged since warming. I know. We met before, not long ago. Up to the Cottonwood Grove, eh, hey, Duke? Uh, Miss Haynes, you must excuse me, but I didn't know you were expecting visitors. Uh... Oh, she wasn't judged. We just dropped in to say hello and to inquire whether or not she sold you her ranch yet. I've signed the papers and Judge Flynn has paid me the money in full. So don't waste your breath trying to talk me out of it, please. Why, well, I wouldn't dream of it, Connie. You made a very good deal. Congratulations. You... You've changed your mind all of a sudden, haven't you? Well, shucks, that's why Hoppy's mind is so clean. He keeps changing it all the time. <laughs> oh, boy, My yeah. foreman and I will have to leave you with these two clowns, Miss Haynes. We've got to get back to the Cloverleaf. Of course. May I wish you a pleasant trip east? Thank you, Dad. Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's go, please. So you decided Judge Fint was paying me a fair price after all, did you? <laughs> a fair price? Why, Connie, Flint thinks he's getting away with murder. What do you mean? He thinks there really is a gold mine by the Alkali Pond. What are you talking about? He said it was iron pyrite. Sure, that's what he said, and so it is, most of us. But the only reason he paid you $20,000 for that worthless stretch of desert that used to be a ranch is that he really thinks there's gold there. I... I don't understand. Well, he and that crook Blackwell pulled a phony assay on us the first time, Connie, because that sample was real gold, and Judge Flint knew it was real. Because he's found gold there before. That's why he was trying to buy the bar eight near parlor. Up until the time Smiley caught the rustlers red-handed and was shot by Flint's men, probably Duke Brixton. What are you saying? Yes, sir. It's Judge Flint who's the head of this rustling gang, and the sheriff and his men are waiting for him up the road now. You... You must be crazy. Your dad knew all along that it was really Flint who was robbing him. He couldn't stop it, and he didn't have evidence against Flint. But he could fool the old cattle thief into buying the bar eight. And buying it at a fancy price, too. You see, Connie, your dad knew that Flint and his gang were prowling around his ranch. So he decided to play their way. Bought a few hundred dollars worth of nuggets from Dusty Jones and sold them among the fool's gold. You had a mighty clever dad, Connie. Even though they murdered him, he still outsmarted them. Goodbye from Hoppy in California as we bring to an end another thrilling episode. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Golden Lure was written by Irvin Ashkenazi. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd.
The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early west. Hop along, Cassidy. The same hoppy you cheer in motion pictures and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired, for this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? We call this one coming attraction murder. It's one that began as California and I were heading back to the Bar 20. We had detoured a ways to visit an old friend of mine, McDonald McDonald, who was, you'll be relieved to know, a Scotsman. He had written me about his hotel, the Pride of Quincy, a hustling little town in the panhandle. Quincy wasn't much different than most cow towns, except possibly for the owner of its hotel monopoly, who with 40 years in the West still smelled of heather and talked with the butter of the highlands on his tongue. So this is Quincy, huh? Seems almighty quiet, Hoppy. <laughs> well, this is one time we're not looking for excitement, California. This is just a quiet call on an old friend. What you stopping for? This poster tacked on the tree. Looks like you're in luck. Quincy is bringing in entertainment for tomorrow night. Ah, common attraction. Uh, Jack, Jack, we line Dupree. Chantuzzi. <laughs> Say, this is great. I really get a kick out of them magic acts. <laughs> California, that's a French word. Means she's a singer. Uh, oh, oh, sure, sure, sure. I know it all the time. I just wanted to see if you did. And, uh-huh. Uh, where do we find this friend of yours? Right across the street, the hotel. Come on, you old faker. Let's look up McDonald's. There's Mac over at the desk. Good morning. Got a couple of rooms, mister? Sure, I have. Copy. <laughs> oh, man, you're a sight for my eyes. <laughs> Mac, meet my partner, California Carlson. California, meet McDonald McDonald. Ah, uh, friend of Hoppies is my friend as well. Uh, glad to meet you, too. <laughs> oh, for a man who's making money, you don't seem too happy, Mac. Uh, as a matter of fact, something's weighing on my mind. That's so? There's trouble coming to Quincy. Oh, we'll be glad to do anything we can to help, Mac. Ah, that I'm pleased to hear, Hoppy. And with such a promise, I'll tell you what the trouble is. I've obligated myself and had a singer imported from New York. I was hoping to make a few dollars. But then I got the note. Note? Yeah, an ominous note, to be sure. A warning? Aye. Here. I'll show you. Warning. Quincy doesn't need a singer. Send Mr. Free back on the first stage or she will die. What will I do, Hoppy? I can't send the lassie back. I paid her for a week's performance. I think when she sees the note, she may be willing to give the money back. Of course, it may be just a practical joke. But, Hoppy, it's in my bones that this note means death. Well, if it does and Mr. Free stays, you better change that poster. Change? I don't understand you, laddie. Make it read, Coming Attraction, Murder. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Coming Attraction, Murder. Stage is late, Hoppy. Very late. Stop pacing, Mac. You're wearing out the floor of your office. There's no danger to Mr. Pree until she gets here. And none if she decides to go back on the next stage. Oh, sorry, Mac. Thought you were alone. Ah, oh, come in, Barra. Doc. Uh, uh, these are friends of mine, Hop along Cassidy and California Carlson. Uh, John Barra, our banker, and Doc Baker, our... Sawbones. Howdy. Pleased to meet you. Howdy. Likewise, gentlemen. And I, too. Getting ready to send your singing star back, Mac? Uh, with the aid of Hoppy here, I may not have to, but... Uh... Well, that's good, Mac. We'll get to hear the old girl sing, and you won't lose any money. Aye. Uh, it's a fate I hope to avoid, Doc. Well, aren't you depending a little strong on your friends, though, Mac? 
No offense, men and gentlemen, but uh, it seems a trifle dangerous to allow Miss Dupree to remain after that threat to her life. I think it's her choice, Mr. Barron, not ours. Yeah? Yeah, well, of course. Well, call on me if I can help in any way. Meanwhile, I've got a call to make at the Rolling Y. Uh, you uh, not be meeting uh, Miss Dupree then, Barra? Oh, I'll see her tomorrow, Mac. Happy to have you, gentlemen. Good day. Coming, Doc? Yes, uh, see you folks later. Blamed if I've been called a gentleman so many times in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you'll pardon, Barrow. It's his background. He was an Easterner up until ten years or so ago. Hey, ain't that the stage coming down the street? Sure is, California. If you didn't mind, Hoppy, I'll meet Mr. Prey first and I'll bring her in here to see you. I didn't want a lot of talk going around about you being her bodyguard yet. Sure, Mac. We'll wait here. Doggone. Uh, I wonder if this Shantuzi uh, looks like Hoppy. Uh, uh, I'll take a look through the window. She's getting out of the stage. Hey, there's two of them. Uh, and ain't neither of them uh, very pretty, Hoppy. Uh, they can't be singers. How can you tell from here? Well, I've seen singers in saloons from Montana to Monterey. And I ain't never seen one that weren't at least uh, passable. Not that I ever had anything to do with them, Hoppy. In New York, maybe they pay attention to their voices instead of their faces. Dang, Easterners ain't no judgment. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Bray? Uh, may I present Hopalon Cassidy and California Carlson. How do you do, Mr. Prey? Shame here. Enchanté, mes amis. Uh, where's the other one, Hopalon? Oh, I hear you, fuzzy face. That was my maid, Louise. She's gone to unpack the clothes. Fuzzy face, uh, Hoppy, you hear that? <laughs> she called me fuzzy face. Uh, should teach you to shave, California. I shaved only last week. You want me to act like a dude? Or... <laughs> it couldn't be done. But let's get down to business. Did you tell Mr. Pree about the note, Mike? No, I didn't have time, Hoppy. Note? What is this note? I am being mashed? What? Uh, oh, no, Mr. Pree. This note is a warning, a serious warning. You may not want to unpack your clothes. Here, read it. Oh, she's going to get out of town, or she will die. Oh, what is this? Am I the sitting buzzard? Uh, duck, lady. Why? I, uh... Why? Why should I duck? I I, I meant you uh, meant to uh, sit and duck. Oh, you talk so funny, fuzzy face. Please, gentlemen, what is the meaning of this note? It is the joke, no? It is a joke we think no. And to be safe, it might be best if you leave Quincy at once. I will not leave. I came to spend a vacation as well as work. Nobody makes Jacqueline Dupre the quitter. I stay. Well, Mac, I guess Quincy gets its singer, and California and I have a job. I guess you do, laddie. Well, how is this? We're your bodyguards, Miss Dupree, at least until we know if you're safe. Oh, is so? Oh. Then get a horse for me. You guard me while I ride this afternoon. But you're not going to ride now. You must be tired. But I am not tired. I'm only restless from being cramped in the interior of that horrible stagecoach. Uh Stage, lady, not sage. There you go, fuzzy face. I like you, but you sound so silly. Monsieur Hoppy, I shall meet you in front of the hotel in one hour. Agreed? Agreed, Mr. Free, but... Uh... In one hour, monsieur. Sheriff Harkness? Yeah, Harkness, what's on your mind, stranger? Name's Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. This is my partner, California Carlson. So? So McDonald asked us to help keep Mr. Pree from being killed. Oh, you mean that note? Well, I ain't gonna chase no crackpot letter writers. Then you're not planning to take action to investigate the note? I am not. Now get out of here. I'm busy. If I were you, I'd start being sheriff before someone takes that star away from you. <laughs> Here's the horse for Mr. Dupree, Hoppy. Uh, you sure you don't want me to ride with you? No, I don't think so, California. You stay here in town and keep your ears open. I want to know if anyone knows Miss Dupree. I get you. Try to learn if anyone would profit by her not appearing tomorrow night. Right, Hoppy. I'll keep my ears flapping and my eyes peeled. Mm, I'm all ready, Monsieur Hoppy. 
But why does Fuzzy Face want to peel his eyes? Uh, oh, lady, it's just an expression. <laughs> Here, let me give you a hand up. Oh, thank you. Uh, m- Monsieur Fuzzy Face. Then you do not really peel the eyes? Uh, oh, no, 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 of course not, her. That'd be silly. Oh, oui. Uh, oui. Then you only flap the ear. I... Oh, <laughs> He's wouldn't. turning blue. Maybe we better ride. See you later, California. Ah, oh, this country. Quel magnifique. Oh, it is so big, so wonderful. You stand up pretty well for an Easterner. Ah, I am not an infant, monsieur. For ten years I have been in the show business, ever since my husband ran away. It has not been easy, struggling first against the scandal, then against the hard heart of the public. But it has toughened me. Mm, beyond the matter of a few hours' exercise or a threat. To that I can testify. Besides, the note is probably from a cracked pot. <laughs> In New York, I get many such foolish... Oh, mon Dieu! Down! Over to those rocks, quick! Oh, monsieur! M- monsieur, what do we do? Keep down. I'll see if I can spot the smoke of his rifle. Oh! oh. oh monsieur Hoppy, that dirty pig, he's killed you. Uh, not quite. Oh, my head. I sure got creased, though. Well, I guess our friend has left. We'd better get back to town. I agree, monsieur. One thing is certain. This man who shoots at us, he is no crackpot. He's mighty set on you not staying around. Yeah, you could say he's dead set. <laughs> Ah, that was a fine meal, Mac. Makes me forget my sore head. Do you think Mr. Pree will be safe tonight? Well, I've wanted to stay in her room, and California's guarding the door. No one will get past him, and I'll take the post at midnight. Aye, it's a good precaution. Evening, gentlemen. Uh, Howdy, Mac. Ready for the game? Barrow and I are, and Doc Baker will be here soon. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm not feeling much like Pinochle tonight, Sheriff. You and Barra, pour yourselves a drink. Hoppy? No, thanks. Well, I guess Miss Dufresne left on the evening stage, eh, Mac? No, no, she's still with us, Barra. Uh, she wouldn't have leave, so Hoppy in California are standing guard to see that nothing happens to her. Uh, what's the rag on your head, Cassidy? You bump into something? Yeah, a slug. A slug? slug. Uh, that's right. Seems that Quincy breeds a fancy dry gulcher, Sheriff. A dry gulcher? What are you talking about, Mr. Cassidy? Just that the note writer gave us a last warning this afternoon. Took shots at us over near Coyote Pass where Mr. Pree and I were riding. Well, she'll have to leave. You can't let her stay here with somebody shooting at her. Aren't you forgetting the lady, gents? It's up to her. And believe me, she wants to stay. Uh, well, uh, uh, I hate to run out, gentlemen, but uh, I've an errand I want to do. Now, uh, wait, Barrow. I'll go with you. All right. Remember what I said, Cassidy? Oh, I'm not liable to forget it, Sheriff. Not liable at all. Yeah, good night, Barrow. Sheriff. Good night. Tell Doc Baker the game's off. Hoppy, you're right. We should make Mr. Prey leave somehow. She's an awfully stubborn lady. Uh, you know, a man could do worse. Why, you dandy-legged Scotsman. You're turning into a Romeo. Uh, but it's a bad time. My Juliet seems to be quite a target. Yeah, and so far our suspects include the population of Quincy and surrounding ranches. <laughs> Mac, that's from upstairs. A scream. A woman's scream. Jacqueline. Jacqueline! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Coming Attraction, Murder. While California stood guard outside the threatened Miss Dupre's hotel room... Mac and Hoppy were talking in Mac's office. Their conversation was interrupted by a shot and a scream from Miss Dupre's room above them. And we now find them investigating. California, what's happened? Uh, it's Miss Dupree and her maid. Uh, Miss Dupree? She, she just fainted, but her maid's been shot. Through that window, Hoppy. California, clear those people out of the hall. Mac, get the dock, quick. 
killer probably fired from that alley across the street. No way to catch him now. Uh, all right now, folks. Clear out. Now, back to your rooms. Come on, I keep moving. This ain't no medicine show. Hoppy. Hoppy, you stop, Baker. I met him in the hall. Good. Take a look at the maid here, Doc. I think she's pretty badly wounded. Yes. Uh, Mac, get me some hot water. Aye, right away. Uh, the other one, she's just fainted? Yeah. Shall I put her on the bed? No, take her to another room where she can rest. I'll need space to work. Here, here, here's a sedative. Give it to her when she comes around. Come on, California. Give me a hand. Yeah, I've got her. Open our door for me. Ah, there she is. See if you can bring her around, California. Right, Hoppy. Uh, this picture's cold water in it. California! No! Too late! I think I'll leave you with her. You threw the water. You give her the sedative. I'll see how the maid's doing. Uh, no, 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 Hoppy. Uh, 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 Hoppy, come back. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I was... Oh! No, not you! Uh, 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 lady, it's just me. It's California. You know... Uh, oh, uh, wh- fuzzy face. Oh, what a startle you gave me. I thought I'd died and gone to... Well, never mind. But you do look a lot like... Oh, uh, uh, here's the sedative. I'm all wet. Fuzzy face... Did you drunk me? Uh, dunk, lady. Dunk? Oh, so. Now you think I am the donut. Uh, oh, never mind. Just take the pill. Uh, come on, now. Please take the pill. Now, please. Please. How is she, Doc? Sinking fast. Uh, more water's being heated downstairs, Doc. <laughs> How's Mr. Plea, Hoppy? Uh, well, she was having a moist awakening when I left. Huh? Uh, Mac, you can forget the other hot water. She doesn't need it now. Doc, you mean... She's dead. Ah, here's the spot where the killer took those shots at us yesterday, California. What do you think you'll find, Hoppy? I don't know. There's no place else to start. The bullet we took from the hotel wall with two masks to tell us what kind of a gun fired it. Yeah, job. Gone. If I had been smarter, it wouldn't have been fired at all. Ah, don't go start blaming yourself, California. No one could have figured the killer to take that kind of a gamble, shooting through a shaded window at a shadow. I only wish we could have made him miss the pre-leave town on that stagecoach. Now at least we got her out of town for a while. That was a slick bit of smuggling uh, you and Matt did. Uh, but you think she'll be all right at his ranch? Safer than a town, that's a cinch. Hey, hey, look here, California. What you find? A heel print. Pretty faint, but you can make it out. Where? Yeah, well, what do you know? Uh Uh-huh. The field's narrowing. Let's get back to town. You got a little chore to do. Yeah? What? Stealing. Uh, What? That's right. There's something I want you to uh, uh, borrow for me. Come on, get the horses. I'll tell you about it on the way in. You go on, California, and be careful. I'll meet you at the hotel later. Right, Hoppy. Hoppy, over here. Coming, Mac. Hoppy, what's all this California tells me about you finding the heel print on the pass? Yeah, and we found some footprints. That narrows it down to a few certain people. Does it now? Are you sure? Who? Not now, Mac. But if you'll help me, I'll show you the killer this evening. Uh, anything, Hoppy. Anything to take the danger from Jacqueline. From Jacqueline? Well, you are working fast, Mac. Uh, never mind the progress, Hoppy. Uh, what do you want me to do now? Get up a pinochle game for this evening. Uh, what? Hoppy, I'd appreciate it if you'd be more serious. I am very serious, Mac. And tell everyone that I'm bringing Mr. Pre in to meet them later. Don't say why, just keep it mysterious. After smuggling her out to town, you'd bring her back to face being killed? I'll not do it, Hoppy. It's too risky. Mac, trust me and do as I say. Uh, but it's again my wishes. Now where are you going? Out to the ranch to see Miss Dupree. With her help, the killer's going to stretch rope plenty soon. See you tonight. <laughs> Uh, 
coffin. Oh, now, where in the name of Jupiter you be? Getting nails for a coffin. You get what I told you to? Yeah, yeah. I swiped it out of his coat when he was eating. Here. But uh, what's it for, Hoppy? Never mind. Just back my play. It's after seven. Next pinochle game should be in full swing. Pinochle? Pinochle. But you stay out here and guard that office there. I don't want our killer to run off. Oh, Hoppy, uh, we're a hand short. I figured you would be, Mac. One man was certain to back out of meeting Mr. Pree before witnesses. Let's go have a talk with him, shall we? Hey, you're being a wee bit dramatic, Hoppy. It's hard to believe you're right. Only four men knew Mr. Pree intended to stay after the warning. Finding the heel print of the city shoe out at Coyote Pass eliminated one. Our good friend Sheriff Harkness here. He wears boots. Thanks, Cassidy. Don't thank me. I'd be far from crying if you'd been the one. So you were left with three suspects. Two, Mac. You sure weren't going to kill the woman after you'd paid her to come. Then of the two, I remembered one of them knowing something he shouldn't about her. Something no one should have known unless he knew her, and pretty well. And that? That was the fact that she's an older woman. Did you know how old she was? Oh, not until she arrived, Toppy. And even now she lays claim to only 39. And of that, I have my suspicions. Yet one man knew she was not young. Let's go in here, gents, and meet the killer. Dr. Baker. Of New York. Cassidy. I was afraid you'd be coming. Do come in, gentlemen. Come in. Pardon me if I don't rise to greet you. You must say you're come, Doc. I have no reason to be otherwise, Mac. As yet, that is. I uh, see Miss Dupree is not with you. No, but we don't need her to identify you, Doc. You drop something out of Coyote Pass that pins this thing right around your neck. Take a look. The thermometer. Doc's thermometer. What? Why, that's not mine. I have mine right here in my coat. It's gone. There it is in front of you, Doc. You even got your initials on the case. Uh, it is all right. Sheriff, I guess it's time for you to take over. Yeah. Come on, killer. Stand back, all of you. I have a gun in my lap under the desk, and I'll kill the first one who moves. I would. Uh, you see, I feared tonight was a trap, so I prepared. Put it away, Doc. You can't run. California's outside on guard. <laughs> You're the smart one, aren't you, Cassidy? You you thought you were going to send me up to hang. Well, I've murdered in New York and didn't hang. I won't out here. Get back against the wall. All of you. <laughs> A lot of sheep. <laughs> I may even kill you all. <laughs> Drop your guns, quick. You too, Cassidy. You dirty snooper. If it wasn't for that long nose. Drop them, I said. Doc, I'm kind of fond of these guns, and I'd sure hate to break the handles by dropping them on the floor. Uh, here, I'll hold them out butts first, and you can take them from me. <laughs> Sure, sure. I'll, I'll take some Cassidy, and then I'll kill you, you meddling fool, with your own gun. Here. Oh! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Doc. Doc. No use, Mac. He's not with us. Aye. Well, it saved us the bother of hanging him. That was a neat trick, Hoppy. Yeah, the best example of rolling a gun I've ever seen. I saw Wes Harden pull that trick on Wild Bill Hickok in Abilene, but not any slicker. I had the advantage of Doc Baker. He was no gunman. Aye. He was just a killer. But he was nervy enough. Up until you made him see you had proof of his guilt. Yeah, I wasn't sure it would work either. California stole that thermometer for me. Stole? Well, you had a gall. Stealing a killer's thermometer and then making him confess with it. Happy I mean you're dead for tonight's work. For more than you know, Mac, Mr. Free was freed to marry you tonight. 
Hey? Uh-huh. Doc Baker. He was her husband back in New York, only his name wasn't Baker. She put up with these mental quirks until he finally murdered a man and deserted her. Her husband? Yeah. That was his motive for wanting her to stay out of Quincy. You'd have recognized him and reported him to the New York authorities. Oh, happy it's hard to know how to repay you. But maybe I can make a settlement on your uh, bill at my hotel. When are you leaving? Probably the morrow, Mac. Why? Uh, that'd be two days at five dollars and a quarter a night. At ten dollars and fifty cents. Happy, my friend. As a gesture of gratitude, I'm cutting it down. Well, thanks, Mac. That's thoughtful of you. Aye, to ye. I'll make it ten dollars even. The fifty cents will be my loss. <laughs> Thus ends the almost ending to Hoppy's story, Coming Attraction Murder. Almost ending, I say, because we're wondering if MacDonald ever married his lady fair, Miss Dupre. Hoppy's next story, titled Wet Beef and Dry Bones, concerns the old legend of Massacre Canyon when the ghosts of redskins dance at midnight. It's an exciting one, so don't miss the next episode of Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Coming Attraction Murder was written by Herb Purdom. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. The same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? We call this one the cold country. All the icy bitterness of the north had come licking across the Dakotas. And the town of Lode Hill was being sealed off by the worst blizzard of the winter. Even at that, you felt you could find excitement if you went looking for it. Lode Hill had been a sleepy place last time I'd seen it. But that was before the gold strike. Now it had 10,000 people, quite a few saloons, and a hotel with a fancy heating stove in the lobby. This is where I'd taken a stand, within a few inches of that stove, where I could turn myself slowly, like a hen on a spit. Some weather. We should have stayed in Arizona. Come on over here, California. Solid comfort. You still want to see Luke Ranger? Sure, I want to see him. That's the reason we came north, isn't it? Then you'd better forget the solid comfort and come out into the fresh air with you. You found Luke? That's right. But he's in some kind of trouble, and he's fixing to pull out of town. In this storm? Where is he? Livery stable, just down the street. He was saddling up when I left him. Come on. We'd better get over there in a hurry. Oh, boy. Oh, take it easy. You! All right, stay where you are there. Put away your gun, Luke. It's me. Myra. You got no idea how close you came to being... I know, but I had to see you. Joey Edmonds says you're leaving and that you want to take in Eddie. That's right. Luke, don't leave. I've got to go, Myra. I've hung around too long now. But I'm grateful to you for coming here. Luke, Jane was my sister, but I know what she was like. She was that way with all of us. Cruel, unfair. She's dead, Myra. I don't want to talk about her. Luke, don't go. 
stay here and fight it out. I've thought it all over. Who's there? Uh, what do you expect, your lop-eared lobo? California. And Hoppy. Oh, it's great to see. Ah, that goes double, but... Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, Myra, this is Hopalong Cassidy and his pal, California. My sister-in-law, Myra McKenna. Howdy. Hello. Oh, that's a pleasure. And maybe you can tell me why Luke wants to hole up in a livery stable. The kind of weather we're having, this place isn't fit for anything but storing ice. I'm not going to be here long. I'm heading out. Ah, that's great. All the way back in Arizona, I hear about my pal Luke striking it rich with a gold mine. So I ride up here to congratulate him. And he won't even stick around for a celebration. I have to go, Hoppy. I don't have a choice. California says you're in some kind of trouble. He called it. I thought you might like to talk about it. Not much to say. My wife is dead. Happened last night. Somebody shot her. Any minute now, they're going to tag me for it. But you didn't do it, Luke. Who knows that? Who'll believe it? I believe it, Luke. Me too. You can't run out on a thing like this, Luke. It's just like saying you're guilty. If I stay, I won't have to say I'm guilty. There'll be others who'll say it. Yell it. Scream it. I got enemies around here. We all have enemies. And we have friends. It's a stacked deck, Hoppy. Me and Jane, we... We had a bad fight yesterday, right in front of a lot of people. The only chance I've got is to get out of here fast. I'm just waiting for Joey Edmonds to bring the boy. Nettie? You don't mean you're going to take him with you. I'm not leaving him here. Not for people to tell him his daddy killed his mother. Oh, Luke. Luke, listen to me. You're a grown man. You can take care of yourself. You might last out on the plains in this weather, but a six-year-old boy... It's I... no use, Hoppy. I've made up my mind. I'm leaving here with Nettie tonight. Get that door shut. Give me time, Baloo. Give me time. That sot makes a piano sound as though he played it with his feet. What do you expect out here? Grand opera? I told you before, Drag. Don't ride me like that. Any news from the coroner's jury? Still arguing. You fools. She was murdered and he did it. When I get through with public opinion... Public opinion won't do you much good if Granger ain't here to stand trial. What do you mean? Just talk to young Shafter. Seems to have it that Granger's taking his kid and skipping town. Why didn't you tell me this before? Where is he? Shafter's stable. Waiting there for Joey Edmonds to bring the kid to him. Well, move. Take some of the boys. Get over there. What do we do? Burn them down? You leave them alone. I'm going to see that stiff-necked reformer go to trial. I'm going to see him convicted for his wife's murder, and I'm going to see him hang for it. So? What do we do? Leave him alone. You just get the kid. That'll keep Granger in town. <laughs> We return to Hopalong Cassidy and the Cold Country. In Shafter's livery stable, Hoppy and Myra McKenna are still talking to Luke Granger, urging him to give up the idea of leaving town. Stay here, Luke. Let California and I get all your friends together. Stand trial and come out clean. That's the only way to do it. He's so right, Luke. You have to think of Nettie as well as yourself. Think. It's all I've done is think. You ought to know I don't want to run. Everything I've ever worked for is in this town. And the kid, how do you think I feel about yanking him away from everything he knows and cares for? I've been doing so much thinking, I'm just about local. But where would you go? What would you... What was that? Uh, sounds like... All right, let over. go. Don't try anything, any of you. Get Max and Charlie in here. Okay, Drag. Sounds as though you brought along quite a crowd. I don't need a crowd. Any sign of that kid out there? No sign yet, Drag. Kid? What's that about a kid? Take it easy, Granger. We just want your boy, that's all. Oh, no, you... Oh, oh. I told you to take it easy, Granger. Try anything else and I'll blast your other hand. Luke, is it bad? Nothing I can't handle. Here, let me wrap it up with a scarf. Who is this fellow, Luke? Drag Morley. Works for Bart Ballou. Frank Morley. That's right. I'm known around here. Oh, you're known far and wide. Rapid man with a pistol. And if you're smart, you'll keep that in mind. I think there's someone coming out, Drag. Might be the kid. Good. Everything is working out just right. You're too sure of yourself, Morley. Yeah? How'd you make that out? 
It's pretty dark in here. And even though you got the drop on us, you can't see everything. Why, you... Hey, he's gone. You shot it right out of his hand, Hoppy. Hold it, Morley. Go for that other pistol and I'll put the next slug in your chest. You scare me to death. Just don't try anything. Was that the boy, Luke? No, must have been someone passing by. Who are you, anyway? The name is Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. Cassidy, huh? That's a big name. Too bad we had a meeting here. But there'll be other days. What do you want from me now? You can leave. Just make sure you stay away. And tell Baloo that from now on we'll be ready for any move he makes. You don't think that's going to bother Baloo, do you? You'll hear from us again. Come on, Ed. How's the hand, Luke? Oh, I've had worse. If you still feel you want to pull out, I'll go with you. You might need help with a boy. I imagine California will come, too. Well, you know I will. Maybe I've changed my mind about leaving. Maybe I figure I ought to stay and make a fight of it. Oh, Luke, I could cry. <laughs> Got to wipe my glasses. They're all fogged up again. Could be a lot better for the boy, Luke. All right. I'm staying. I'll go looking for Bat Kingman right now. Bat Kingman? Town Marshal. I'm giving myself up. Well, Mr. Kingman? Never thought I'd see the day I'd have to shut a cell door on Luke Granger. But I'm glad he turned himself in. Makes it a lot easier for me. How about the boy? I'll take care of Nettie. He'll never hear a breath of this if I can help it. Jane was my sister, but she never brought anything but trial and tribulation to Luke. Tell me something, Marshal. Why should Bart Ballou hate Luke as much as he seems to? Ballou heads the gambling element here. Luke loved this town long before gold was ever found, and he wanted it kept clean. He's been the head of a reform movement we started recently. So that's it. I've been urging Luke to stay here and face it. Now I'm beginning to wonder what kind of trial he'll get. I don't know, Cassidy. I don't know. Where are you going, Hoppy? To see Bart Ballou. Might be worthwhile having a talk with him. Hello, Ballou. Well, if it isn't hop along, Cassidy. Dealer's choice here. Care to sit in? Not this time. Just wanted a word with you. Go ahead. I happen to be a friend of Luke Granger's. Yeah, from what I hear, he's going to need all the friends he can find. I'm interested in seeing he gets a fair trial. Aren't we all? Oh, I passed, gentlemen. I'm interested enough to make it rather personal. Yeah? Why tell me all this? I ran into a pal of yours a while ago. Dragged Morley. Oh, yeah. Shot a pistol out of his hand, didn't you? In the dark. I might have been lucky. Then why not congratulate yourself and fade out of the picture? Meaning, uh... You can't always depend on darkness when you run up against Drag Morley. That's probably sound advice. Sure you won't draw cards? No, I'm kind of tired. I think I'll just hit for the hotel and turn in. Yeah, you're in luck. Storm's just about over. See you later, Baloo. It's a rough town, Cassidy. Take care of yourself. Pretty uh, cold out here, uh, wait. Let's go get some rest. Gonna be a long hike back to the hotel through the snow. Ah, Baloo was right, though. He said the storm was over. Yeah? Uh, what else did he have to say? Told me to take care of myself. Well, no, weren't that nice of him. There's something funny. Uh, about what? That saloon. Yeah? Doesn't seem to be doing much business tonight. There ain't nothing funny about that, not with this kind of weather. The weather was a lot worse last night, and the place was rocking. Yeah, guess that's right, but, uh, hey. Yeah, there's a couple of lanterns bobbing up and down by the feed store, and three or four more moving around near the hotel. Lanterns? Oh, now I see them. Now, there's another bunch coming in from the other end of town. Well, the more light, the better. Might stop there. California. Hey, get down. What do you think you're doing? That saloon. No wonder it didn't have many customers. Huh? Look, more lanterns. Sure, but what? It's a mob gathering. Come on, we got a fight on our hands to save Luke Granger from being lynched. Now returning to Hopalong Cassidy and his story, The Cold Country.
The sight of a lynch mob gathering on the streets of Lode Hill has sent Hoppy in California speeding to the jail, where Luke Granger awaits his trial as the killer of his wife. I wasn't going to let you in at first, Cassidy. Then I recognized your voice. You must know about that mob, then. Yes, I've known about it for the last hour. But all I can do is wait for him to get here. This is the time when being a peace officer grades a man's hair. I don't envy you, Marshal. What about deputies? I got two of them here. The other one has a broken leg. Here they come. How's Luke taking it? Oh, he's worried about his boy more than anything else. I think he's innocent, Marshal. We've got to save him. Ever seen a lynch mob in action before, Cassidy? Uh, a few times. Were they stopped? Sometimes. Well, I've never seen one stopped. This time, I got the job of trying. They're gonna start battering at that door in a minute. That's right. And by the time they break in here, there'll be no stopping them. Somebody's got to go out there and talk to them. It won't work, Cassidy. By now, they're all out of their heads. It's a lust for killing. They're not up to the door yet. Pull it open a little. Wait a second. What for? I'm going out there. Luke Granger deserves a hearing, and I'm going to see to it that he gets it. No, Hoppy, no. Man, you'd be committing suicide. That's my problem. Come on, Marshal, open up. Hey, now, wait a second. Pulling a gun in the law. You gone crazy, Hoppy? Luke's going to get his chance. Take his keys, California. Open the door. Hold it, Marshal. Now the bars. But Cassidy... Save it for later, Marshal. Get the door shut. Look who's here, man. Mr. Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah. Oh, What's the matter, Cassidy? Get cold feet in there. I'll bet Granger's feet are colder. <laughs> what do you want to do, Cassidy? Make a speech? You seem to be doing all right, Morley. Morley always did have a gift of gab. <laughs> all right, Cassidy. What do you want? I've been thinking that you men aren't here for any barn dance, not with Morley doing the calling. We're here to hang Luke Granger for the murder of his wife. That's right. That's what we're here And if any of his friends object, we'll string them up, too. So you're the voice of the people, are you, Morley? Never mind that. Just get out of the way. What's your stake in this, Morley? And don't say justice from one of Bart Ballou's men that'll just draw laughs. <laughs> He's got you there, Morley. <laughs> you talk big, Cassidy, with a gun in your hand. Thanks for reminding me of that, Morley. I'll put it away. I'm warning you, Cassidy. Get out of the picture before it's too late. You men, uh, you're not all Ballou's hired hands, are you? He doesn't control that much of this town, does he? Uh, Ballou would like to see Luke Granger out of the way, and you all know why. That's why Morley's here running the show. Is there one man here who actually saw Luke Granger shoot his wife? Cassidy, I'm giving you ten seconds. Ten seconds to ease out of here. You stick around till then, and I'm throwing down on you. How about it, men? You'd hate to hang Granger and then find out later he was innocent, wouldn't you? Think you'd ever be able to get a good night's sleep? Think you'd ever be able to face his little boy? How about it? Hey, maybe this fellow's right. Maybe we ain't giving enough thought to this thing. That's all for you, Cassidy. I'm shutting your mouth as of now. I wish you wouldn't try, Morley. This is where your string runs... <coughs> Baloo, somebody, go tell... Baloo... He's down. The fella beat him to the draw. Sorry, Morley. This time it was your string. He's dead. Morley's dead. Yes, men, and don't you think that's enough killing? Let's wait this thing out. Let's give Luke Granger a fair trial. Well, Cassidy, you did it. I wouldn't have thought it possible. The mob's all broken up, Hoppy. Most of them gone home. Looks like Luke's going to be safe. Uh, for a while, anyway, unless Baloo starts something new. I don't think Baloo will try anything else. He'd have a hard time arousing another crowd. Just the same. If we're going to do any lasting good for Luke, we'd better be finding out something about his wife's death. Where was she found, Marshal? Uh, right outside their home. Know who found her? I did. Uh, you did? I'm afraid I don't know you, or do I? Oh, this is Joey Edmonds, Cassidy, one of Luke Granger's best friends. Glad to make friends with you, Cassidy. Thanks, and I'm glad to meet you. Luke's wife was shot, wasn't she? That's right. Anyone find the bullet? Don't believe anyone thought to look. I guess that's the way of it. Mind if I take a look, Marshal? You could make it legal by deputizing me. <laughs> you practically deputized yourself, didn't you, Hoppy? All you need to make it complete is the badge. <laughs> Oh, 
talk about being cold. Say, how long are we going to stay here, Hoppy? All night? Move that lantern over this way a little. Must be two o'clock in the morning, and here we are out in the snow looking for spent bullets. Just one bullet, California. A little more with the lantern. I ain't never been so cold in all my life. Uh, and you and your hands and knees in the snow, ho Hoppy, you, you're going to catch your death. A little more. I got it up against the porch right now. Look, stuck in the post. Huh? Uh, hey, that is a bullet. It certainly is. Let me get it with this knife. There. Well, I'll be darned. Uh, but uh, now you've got it, uh, what are you going to do with it? Take another look at it. Huh? It's a uh, thirty-eight. Right. Now, how many fellas you know carry thirty-eights? Not very many. Maybe two or three. Which should narrow down our problem some. Come on, California. Let's head for the hotel and some sleep. <laughs> Morning, Miss McKenna. Morning, Mr. Cassidy. Nice having all the snow shoveled off the walks, isn't it? Yes. Uh, here, let me help you with a few of those bundles. Thank you. Just a few things from the store. Wait, you don't have to take all of them. I kind of wanted to talk to you about Luke and some of Luke's friends. Well, you just come on inside. Here we are. You can set that bag of feed right here on the porch if you will. I'll take it around back later. I'll carry it around for you right now. I'll sure be obliged. I'll go on through the house. I'll see you later then. <laughs> Miss McKenna! I, I'm all right. You sure? What happened? He, he stepped out of the parlor right after I closed the door, shooting the place to pieces. Who? Where? He's gone now. He went through that window at the end of the hall. Luke. It was Luke. Yeah, there's the empty cell. Some of that mob must have worked on the window bars last evening while we were busy out front. Luke just kept quiet about it, then pushed his way out during the night. It just doesn't make sense. Why would he have given himself up in the first place? Oh, don't look to me for the answer. Poor Luke must have gone plumb loco. You'd be the same way, Joey Edmonds, if you'd been through what he has. He must have come to the house because he wanted little Nettie. When he couldn't find him, he... Well, I can't blame him, that's all. Where was the boy? I was out to the store. I'd left him with Sarah Claiborne up the hill. Looks like Joey's right. Luke's gone loco. We got him cornered, Bart. Luke Granger. Where? Loft over at Van Nair's forge. He's going to make a fight of it. He's crazy mad. Says we'll never take him alive. Uh, times like these, I'd rather be punching cows again. Marshal, do me a favor. Huh? Hold off on Luke for a while. You mean talk to him? Think that'll do any good? Now, don't talk to him. Just don't do anything. It's just a hunch, but I've got something I'd like to work on. It'll only take a little while, and it might save Luke Granger's life. <laughs> Just what do you think you're doing? Oh, I, I guess I've been doing a little breaking and entering, Miss McKenna. Had no idea you were at home. No. You thought I was with everyone else, didn't you? You thought... Ah! That gun! Just found it in your dresser here. A thirty-eight with three bullets fired. And it was a thirty-eight that killed your sister. You were too sure of yourself, Miss McKenna. You shouldn't have kept it around. You're insane. Why would I want to kill my sister? Partly because you hated her but mostly because you wanted to get control of young Nettie. With Luke out of the way, that would have meant controlling the mine and the money. Drop that gun, Cassidy. So you're in on it too, Marshal. Makes quite a picture. Goad Luke into breaking jail, make people think he's gone loco, then shoot him down like a mad dog. Don't move. This is a forty-five I've got on you, not a thirty-eight. Which means I'll have to use Miss McKenna's a shield. <laughs> Can't shoot now, can you, Marshal? No, but I can beat the life out of you. I'm loose now, Bat. Kill him. He 
grab my gun. Get the 38. Ah, sorry, Marshal. I just can't wait. Oh. That's all, Miss McKenna. Let go of me. Sorry, the Marshal's all through, and so are you. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and the cold country. How do you feel, Luke? Not good. It's going to take me a long time before I feel good again. Maybe you ought to bring young Ned in and ride the Santa Fe with California and me. Might help you forget. I thought I had friends in this town. Thought I had friends. You do have friends, Luke. Plenty of them. It was just that a few bad ones were after you and moving too fast for other people to keep up with them. Eh, maybe you're right, Hoppy. You always could talk me into seeing things your way. But it's a darn good thing you came here to pay me a visit. A darn good thing. By the way, Hoppy, how'd you ever get around to figuring that woman was behind all this? I know there was that bullet, but uh, that wouldn't point to no female. I figured it was Miss McKenna because she tried to get away with a lie. Lie? Yeah. When she tried to make out that Luke had gone to the Cirque, she said she saw him climbing out the window of her house. She claimed she closed the front door, and then he stepped into the hall, shooting up the place. Mm, don't see how that makes her out a liar. You weren't in the house, was you? I didn't have to be in the house. She just couldn't have recognized Luke under those conditions, that's all. Mm, can't prove it by me. She couldn't have seen him because she wears spectacles. Uh, uh? She'd been outdoors where it was cold, and she stepped into a warm house. From the second she closed that door, she couldn't have recognized an elephant in that hall. And those specks of hers were still fogged up as she stood there telling me about it. Thus, Hoppy and California bring us to the end of another exciting adventure. Hoppy next spins a yarn about some very mysterious shootings at the Double D Ranch, a tool shed which sets itself on fire and a Chinese cook by the name of Chung who helps to solve two murders when... Well, but that's the surprising ending of Hopalong Cassidy's next story, which is called The Buckshot Badman. Be sure to be with us, won't you? Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Cold Country was written by Buckley Angel. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. The same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? We call this one Buckshot Badman. California and I were a good three days ride from the Bar 20 and anxious to cover the few miles that it take us to Pinto Springs. It was a hot August afternoon without a breath of air stirring. And the only sign of life was a few buzzards wheeling slowly over the trail up ahead. I tell you, Hoppy, I'm so thirsty, I believe I could drain the Rio Grande in one swallow. <laughs> I know just what you mean, California. You've already drained both our canteens. You'll just have to wait till we get into Pinto Spring. Yeah, yeah, I know it. Uh, but the minute we get there, I'm going into these high saloons, step right up to the bar, and order me a... Uh, uh, yeah, go a on. whole bucket full of sarsaparilla. <laughs> 
My, you do like to live dangerously, don't you? Oh, sure, I... Huh? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, California. There's a horse over that clump of mesquite. Yeah, he sure ain't dead, though. I even got a saddle on him. Come on, let's take a look. Let's go. Do you see what I see, hubby? Yeah, if you mean a man lying there beside the trail, I do. I reckon he must have fell off his horse. Looks like he had a good reason for falling off. Hey, he's been shot. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead, all right. Somebody shot him in the back with a shotgun. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Buckshot Batman. Hoppy and California were riding toward the little town of Pinto Springs when they noticed some buzzards circling the trail ahead. Upon drawing closer, they saw a horse standing at the edge of the trail. Spurring up to investigate, they discovered its cowboy rider lying on the ground, dead, shot in the back with a shotgun. The poor cursor never had a chance, Hoppy. Whoever dry gulched him sure wasn't taking any chances. Hey, uh, what you looking at there? I don't know for sure. Looks like this fellow was trying to tell something before he died. Look at that. Why, it looks like he drawed an arrow in the dust. Yeah, sort of an odd arrow, though. Got two lines below the inverted V, and they curve away from each other at the bottom. Mm, it's just sort of funny looking, all right. But I guess if you're dying, you can't be too particular. Mm. Well, we better take him into the sheriff's office at Pinto Springs. Right, Hoppy. I'll fetch his horse. You say his name was Jack Fulton, Sheriff? That's right, Cassidy. He was a rider for the Double D. Oh, I've heard of the Double D Ranch. Isn't that the outfit owned by a man named Dave Daniels? Well, it was owned by Dave Daniels. What do you mean, Sheriff? Six weeks ago, Daniels was killed the same way as Fulton. He was found with a load of double O buckshot in the back. His daughter Helen's running the place now. Any idea who might have gunned him down? Oh, I've got an idea or two. That's about all. Daniels was in on a mining deal of some kind with Owen Ransom. He owns the big spread next to the Double D. Daniels was riding home from a visit to Ransom's the night he was killed. I see. Did you find out why he went to visit Ransom that night? Well, according to Ransom, Daniels went over to collect $4,000 that Ransom owed from the mine. He says he paid him the cash and Daniels rode off for home. Ransom claims he went right to bed and never left the ranch that night. Can he prove that? Well, Ransom's foreman, Duke Snyder, swears it's true. But I wouldn't trust Snyder any further than I would Ransom. Where was Daniels found? That's another strange thing. He was found on his own ranch by his own foreman, a fellow named Will Banning. And Banning claims there wasn't no money on Daniels when he found him. Well, well, there you are. Ransom gave him the money, followed him back, and killed him so he could get the money back. Yeah, that might be it, and then again, it might not. You see, there wasn't no love lost between Daniels and Banning. So his own foreman might have done it himself. What was their trouble, Sheriff? Well, don't know as you could rightly call it trouble. But Banning was in love with Helen Daniels, and they was wanting to get hitched. Daniels was dead set again it. Wanted his daughter to marry somebody more important, I guess. Well, Sheriff, we're going to spend the night in Pinto Springs, but we might just ride out to the Double D and pay Miss Daniels a visit. Suppose she could put us up for the night? Why, sure. Probably give you jobs if you want them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll need them if we don't get back to the bar 20 pretty soon. Uh, by the way, Sheriff, take a look at what I've drawn on this piece of paper. Ever see anything like that? No, don't know as I have. Looks sort of like a double-shafted arrow. What about it? Jack Fulton drew something like that in the dust before he died. It was pointing due west from where we found him. West, huh? Well, I would have been toward Ransom's place. Say, speak of the devil. Here comes Ransom now. Good. I'm anxious to meet him. And, Sheriff, let's don't say anything about that little arrow for the time being. All right. Whatever you say. Ransom, meet uh, Hopalong Cassidy in California Carlson. Well, well. So this is Hopalong Cassidy. I suppose you're going to help solve these mysterious shootings and bring the killer to justice, eh? Huh? Shall I consider <laughs> that an invitation, Ransom? Sit yourself, cowboy. 
Just leave me alone, that's all. If you ask me, you'd best start right at the double D with Will Banning. Thanks, we will. Gosh, Hoppy, this double D's quite a spread, ain't it? Yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't see much signs of life around the house, though. Hello! That ought to rouse somebody. Well, it should if anybody's in there. Come on, let's have a look. Hey, there's a pretty gal coming out on the porch there. Hello there. Howdy, ma'am. Are you Miss Daniels? Yes, I am. What can I do for you? My name is Hopalong Casty, and this is California Carlson, Miss Daniels. Howdy, Miss. I... I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. You mean about Jack Fulton? You know already know about him, then? Yes, my foreman, Will Banning, was in town when Jack was brought in. He rode right out to tell me. Are you the men who found him? Yes, I'm sorry to say we are. My father was killed in the same cowardly way. I know. We got the story from the sheriff. Mr. Cassidy, what am I going to do? I don't know which way to turn. Now, now, don't you worry. If you've got room in your bunkhouse for California and me, maybe we can help out. I'm almost as interested in seeing this coyote smoked out of his den as you are. Well, and that goes for me, too, ma'am. Thank you. You can't know how much I appreciate it. Well, Helen, why didn't you let me know we had visitors? Well, they just arrived, Will. Mr. Cassidy, Mr. Carlson, meet Will Banning, my foreman. How are you, Banning? How are you? What can we do for you? Mr. Cassidy's offered to help try to find the man who murdered Dad and Jack. Well, that's right and neighborly, Cassidy. But we wouldn't want to impose on you that way. I think we can handle this in our own way without any help from strangers. Will Banning, suppose you let me decide about that. Mr. Cassidy, you'll have to excuse Will. He's acting like a husband before we're even married. Oh, that's all right, Miss Daniels. Uh, now that you two have decided things, uh, I wouldn't want to be in the way. I guess I'll take a little ride to settle my supper. Will, stop acting like a jealous schoolboy. I'm beginning to get the idea he don't like a sugar. Oh, he'll be all right. Sometimes he's just like a spoiled calf. By the way, Miss Daniels, when's this wedding going to take place? Two weeks from today. I see. Uh, the sheriff tells me Will was the one who found your dad. Yes, that's right. He was returning from a visit to Ransom's place the night he was shot? Yes. Dad had told me at supper that evening that he was going over to collect $4,000 as a final share of the mine's profits. You see, the mine was all worked out, and Ransom decided to abandon operations. Did anyone else know uh, what your dad's plans were for that night? Well... Yes. Will always ate with us, so of course he knew. Oh, speaking of eating, I'll bet you men are half starved. Oh, oh, oh that we are, ma'am. <laughs> that we are. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm afraid my hospitality isn't what it should be. Come along, though. We've got a wonderful Chinese cook who'll rustle up something in a jiffy. Hoppy, <clears throat> them's the best fiddles I've had for quite a spell. <laughs> yeah, Miss Daniels wasn't kidding about her cooking all his stuff. Oh, so jumbly, more scrambled egg, more fly potato. Fill them up, Miss uh, Jump Along Cassidy, and Miss California Plenty Hoke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the name is Hop Along, Chung. Oh. And I think this will hold me for the time being. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. Say, Chung, uh, Miss Daniels tells me you've been with the family here for several years. What are your ideas on the shotgun killing? Oh, he's very terrible. Poor Mr. Daniel. He's a very good man. Chung think maybe Mr. Lansom know more than he say. Mr. Lansom? Uh, who's he? He means Owen Ransom, California. Oh, yes. Mr. Lansom. Chung not trusting same, please. Any particular reason you don't trust him, Chung? As great Confucius once say, reason not necessarily for avoiding poison snake. Well, Mr. Ransom doesn't seem to be too popular around these parts, does he? Oh, no. Very funny things going on around his lunch. Uh, what sort of funny things? Chung not in knowing, but here talking. Mr. Jack Fulton say monkey business go on at tool shed at far end of lunch. Maybe so, him hiding something. Tool shed, eh? Oh, is it very strange. Why Lansom go and got tool shed out there? Well, nothing particularly strange about that. Lots of ranchers have tool sheds at far ends of their spreads. We might just ride over there tonight after the moon's up, California, and have a look around. Can you tell us how to get to this tool shed, uh, Chung? Oh, can do. Chung, get a pencil or paper, draw a map how to find. All right, Chung. 
Uh, Hoppy, sure we ought to go snooping around Ransom's place after dark? We uh, may be sticking our noses in a hornet's nest. Old Chung's imagination's probably working overtime. But we better check all the angles if we're ever going to find out what this is all about. I uh, noticed you didn't mention anything to Miss Daniels about stopping at the bank before we come out here. Uh, how come? Well, I didn't figure it was too important yet, anyway. The fact that Ransom deposited some large amounts of money lately doesn't necessarily prove anything. Mm, but if he ain't operating the mine anymore, where's he getting all that money? I don't know. But I've got an idea he is still operating that mine, secretly. Quiet, here comes Chung Bay. Oh, Mr. Skipper Ong. <laughs> here is a map how to get to uh, Lonesome Tool Shed. Uh, let's see here. Say, hey, that's a pretty artistic map, Chung. Hmm. This supposed to be uh, the uh, tool shed here? Oh, 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 no, no. Tool shed up here. Ah. That is his signature. Chinese character for name of Chung. <laughs> oh, sure, I should have known. Well, I don't think we'll have any trouble finding the place. Moon will be up in an hour or two. We'll leave then. Oh, very good. Oh, by the way, Chung, let's not tell anybody where California and I are going tonight, huh? Oh, yes, a Chung keeps secret. As great Confucius he once say. Man who cannot keep secret, all the same, cannot keep flend. <laughs> that old boy had something to say about everything, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds that way. Come on, California, let's go. That looks like a shed right ahead there, Hoppy. Yeah, that must be it, all right. I'd hate to find it in a night with no moonlight. Place looks deserted enough. Can't see any lights anyway. Well, that suits me just fine, too. Let's tie up to this tree here. All right, Hoppy. Come on, California. You got the lantern? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Uh, want me to light it now? No, not yet. We'll wait till we see if we can get inside the shed. What do you expect to find if we do get in? Your guess is as good as mine. Maybe nothing. Hey, don't likely we could see any lights, even if there was some. I don't think there's any windows in the shed. Well, here's a door, anyway. Let's try it. Well, I'm... Be... What's the matter? This door isn't even locked, just bolted shut. Well, what do you know? Come on inside and light the lantern. Sure. Wait till I strike a match. There she be now. Can you see now? Yeah. Bring the light over here. Looks just like any other tool shed I ever saw. Yeah, I don't see anything unusual so far. Oh, my gosh. My gosh, they got me. Quiet, oh. quiet. That was just the door. Oh. Well, looks like somebody wants to keep us in here, California. Keep us in here? Let's, well, see, if we, let's see if we can break it open. Come on. Let, okay, let's go. Come on. Uh, no! Nah. I'm afraid it's no use, California. That door won't budge. Well, there ain't no wonders. I guess all we can do is sit here till whoever locked us in shows his hand. I guess so. Listen. Looks like he's already shown his hand. This whole tool shed's been set afire from outside. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Buckshot Batman. Hoppy and California were told there are some strange things going on at an old tool shed on the Ransom Ranch. They rode out at night to investigate and found the tool shed deserted and with the door unlocked. While looking around inside, the door is suddenly slammed shut and locked from outside, and moments later they discover the shed is on fire. <coughs> Hoppy, Hoppy, well, what are we going to do? The smoke's getting thicker and thicker. Yeah, <coughs> it's getting a little warm, too. Uh, what you looking for, Hoppy? <coughs> well, this is supposed to be a tool shed. Maybe we can find something we can use to break a hole in the wall. <coughs> oh, looks, <coughs> looks like we're gunners, for sure, if we can't. <coughs> Wait, we're in luck, California. <coughs> Here's an old hatchet. Oh, hurry, Hoppy. <coughs> <coughs> I'm getting to California. <coughs> These flames are getting my hands. <coughs> I'd like to get my hands on the low-down pole cat. <coughs> Here, California. Yeah. I think there's room enough to get out now. Hurry up. <coughs> Here I go. 
Come on, Hobby. I'm right behind you. <coughs> oh, boy. Am I, am I glad to get out of there? You all right? Yeah, just scorched a little. Let's get out of the light more. Look here, Hop. Look. An empty kerosene can. Run for your horse, California. Let's get that hombre. There he goes. Riding off through the trees. Come on, we might still get him. Let's go, Topper. Can you see him, Hoppy? Ah, uh, no, he's out of sight. I'm afraid it's no use, Hoppy. We'd never find him in the brush at night this way. I guess you're right. Looks like he got away. Oh, no, me fixy miss a run along up <laughs> plenty like new. Chung bring his slavy medicine, put same on burn. Yeah, put a little on the back of my hand here. Oh. And the side of my nose feels kind of scorched, too. Oh, all I, I fix it. Oh, I feel terrible about all this, Hoppy. You might have burned Now, it. don't you go getting all upset again. We're going to have this whole business cleared up in no time. Oh, so, have found miserable person who do killing, please? Yeah, it looks that way, Chung. Say, you want to help us? Oh, yes. Chung glad to be helping. Good. Now, listen. I got to go over to Ransom's place, but I want somebody to ride into Pinto Springs and bring the sheriff back here. Can you do that? Oh, yes, can do, can do. Can't you tell me what this is all about, Hoppy? No, not just yet. But when I get back here with Ransom, I want the sheriff to be here, too. Yeah, can do, can do. Good. You better get going, then. Chung, practically to Pinto Springs, your leg. How's your hand now? Oh, fine. Feels much better, thanks. Well, I see you're all fixed up, Hoppy. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, just my luck not to get burned enough to need a purdy nurse. <laughs> <laughs> better luck next time, California. Did you check on that little matter I told you to, California? Yeah, for sure did, and you were plumb right, too. I thought so. Well, Helen, I think we're going to get a couple of things settled here right pronto. What's your plan, Hoppy? I want you to stick around here and sort of keep an eye on things, California. Chung's on his way in for the sheriff. And if I can locate Banning, he can ride over to Ransom's with me. I got you. We should be back in a couple of hours. By that time, Chung and the sheriff should be here. Well, Chung tells me you wanted me for something, Cassidy. What's on your mind? Glad you came in, Banning. I'm about to ride over to see Ransom, and I figured maybe you'd ride along, sort of keep me company. Mm, well, I don't know. Will it be happy to go along, Hoppy? Wouldn't you, Will? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Good. Let's hit leather, then. <laughs> Well, I don't see any greeting committee. Guess they haven't spotted us yet. Come on, Banning. Smells like we're just in time for breakfast. That ought to bring somebody on the run. Yeah. Now, let's play this mighty careful. Here? Yeah? What do you want, cowboy? We'd like to see your ransom. You must be Snyder. Yeah, well, what about it? Stand aside. Don't you know it isn't good manners to keep people standing outside your door? Great, a minute. Ready up. I wouldn't reach for that if I were you, Snyder. What's going on, Duke? Oh, it's you, Cassidy. What do you want here? I come to take you over to the Double D, Ransom. We got a few things to straighten out, and I know you wouldn't want to miss them. I'm not going anywhere with you, Cassidy. If you've got anything to say to me, you can say it right here. Just give me the word, boss, and Shut I'll... up, Snyder. I'll handle this my own way, like this. No! <laughs> All right, you asked for it, Ransom. How do you like it? Snyder, grab him, you fool! Keep ah. your distance, Snyder, or you'll be grabbing lead. Ah. All right. Come on, Ransom, get on your feet. I'll... I'll get you for this, Cassidy. I'll get you if it takes me Ah, to... save it. Get the guns, Banning. We're heading for the double D. Get moving, both of you. Sheriff's right inside with Miss Helen, Hoppy. Good. All right inside, you men. See you later, California. Yeah, I got some business to tend to. Hello. Well, Ransom, Snyder, what's going on here, Cassidy? How crowded is your jailhouse, Sheriff? I think you're going to have some new customers. Thank heaven you're back safely, Hoppy. Uh, hey, what about me? Well, darling, I was so worried. <laughs> there. Oh, so, John bringing coffee for everybody. That's fine, Chung. Better pour a cup for yourself, too. Now, everybody have a chair. What I have to say won't take long. I demand to know why I was forced to come here against my will. Simmer down, Ransom. You're about to find out. 
Now, on the night your dad was murdered, he had ridden over to Ransom's to get a final payment for what Ransom claimed was a worked-out mine. Yes, that's right. Someone who knew your dad would be carrying that money ambushed him and stole it. Jack Fulton was murdered yesterday in the same way, because he must have discovered who the killer is. Go on, Cassidy. Ransom was lying about the mine being worked out. It's still producing, and he's been cheating Helen Daniels out of her share ever since her father's death. That's a lie, Cassidy. Sit still, Ransom, and shut up. Maybe you can explain those big deposits you've made at the bank lately, Ransom, but I doubt it. All right. Maybe the mine is still paying off. But I didn't kill Daniels, and you can't prove I did. Luckily, I don't have to, Ransom. Jack Fulton lived long enough after he was shot to help tell us who that mysterious buckaroo is. You mean the double arrow he drew on the dust, Cassidy? Yeah, only it wasn't meant to be a double arrow. Fulton didn't live quite long enough to finish it. But he was drawing the signature of the murderer. What? What does he mean? Yeah, give me a pencil and a paper. Now, these two vertical lines that curved away from each other at the bottom and the inverted V above them were only part of it, Sheriff. But with a little horizontal line across the others, it it's makes... very clever, a... Mr. Cassidy. Please putting up hands, everybody. Why, it's Chung. The cook. Had a gun under his apron. Better give yourself up peaceful, Chung. You can't get away with it. Oh, not being too sure, Mr. Sheriff. Come here, Miss Helen. You go along. <gasps> Chung! Chung! If you touch so much as a hair of her head... It's not getting excited, please. Gun might go off. Take it easy, Banning. Let him play his hand. Most excellent advice, Mr. Cassidy. Stay in front of me, Missy Helen. We back out door and get horses. Drop that gun, China boy, or I'll blast your part with your own shotgun. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. There, there, Helen, relax now. It's all over. Oh, well, I, I just can't help it. I'm still scared. Oh, nothing to be afraid of now, honey. The sheriff's on his way into town with Chung, and there's nothing to worry about. Well, right, Helen. And you won't have any more trouble with Ransom, either. The sheriff's giving him till 6 o'clock tonight to pay what he owes you. And from now on, he'll have to account for every penny he makes. Oh, I don't know how to thank you in California, Hoppy. I then just... don't try. We know uh, you mean all right. You know, it's still hard to believe Chung is a murderer. How'd you ever find him out, Cassidy? Oh, I don't know. Mostly luck, I guess. He seemed awfully anxious to get us out to Ransom's tool shed, for one thing. And when he drew us a map showing how to find it, I noticed his Chinese signature looked like something uh, Fulton had drawn in the dust. So he followed you out there and set fire to the shed after he locked you in, trying to make it look like Ransom's work. Yeah. But when we got here, I knew... He was our man for sure. Hoppy smelled kerosene in Chung's hands while he was smearing that salve in his burn. Yeah, but wasn't it sort of dangerous sending him after the sheriff? Or he might have made a getaway. No, I wasn't worried about that. You see, Chung thought he'd succeeded in making us think Ransom was guilty, so I decided to play along with him. While he was tending to my burns, California found the shotgun under his mattress and the money, too. Poor Chung. I almost feel sorry for him, though. Well, don't waste your sympathy, Helen. He'll soon be taking a long, long journey to join his ancestors. And speaking of long journeys, California and I'd better be hitting the trail or we'll never get back to the Bar 20. Yeah, I'll bet old Buck will be fit to be tired time we get back. But, Hoppy, before we leave, uh, don't you reckon we better store away a little grub? Well, you just ate an hour or so ago, California. Why do you want to eat again? Well, as the great corn fusius once say, cowboy with long journey travel better with full stomach. <laughs> <laughs> As the great Confucius once said, man who guilty must pay. <laughs> and thus ends Hoppy's tale about a couple of murders and a Chinese cook who turned out to be the buckshot batman. When we meet Hoppy again, he spins the darndest story you ever heard. It concerns a poor defenseless woman and her daughter who are swindled by the town's banker. So remember to be with us for Hoppy's next exciting episode, Boss of Vinegar Bend. Avalon Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Buckshot Batman was written by Robert T. Smith. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Thank you.
With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs harrows the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? This is called The Boss of Vinegar Bend. It's one that began one morning when California and I were on our way back to the Bar 20 from the Dry Plains. We were taking it easy through a particularly rough section of country when we spotted two big Conestoga wagons bouncing and rocking along, headed apparently for a land of rocky gorges, mesquite, and snakes. Hoppy, what you think them Connies are doing heading that way? No business of ours, California, but it does seem strange. It's sure no land for nesters. No trail there, either. Hoppy, you, you know I ain't curious, and I'm always willing to mind my own business. Uh, of course, that's the kind of a feller I am, but, uh, no, well, couldn't we just, uh... <laughs> All right, California. We'll ease over that way and say howdy. But mind you, no prying into their affairs. Now, as if I do a thing like that, huh? <laughs> Let's go, huh? <laughs> Hello, the wagon! Hello there! Well, I'll be turned if it ain't female. Well, I'll be danged if it ain't men, folks. Howdy. Howdy. I'm Mrs. Oates. That's my dad driving to the wagon. You driving out here all alone? Yep. My old man up and died quite a piece back right after we shook the dust of Tennessee. Got her name Judy. Where are you all heading? I got some corn pone you're welcome to. Uh, 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 Hoppy, uh, what's she talking about? Shh. Glad to meet you, Mrs. Oates. My name's Hopalong Cassidy. This is my partner, California Carlson. Cassidy. Cassidy. Mm hmm. You ain't in a relation to them ornery Kentucky Cassidy's, be you? <laughs> no, I reckon you ain't. Last one of them got shot for stealing hogs. Sure, you wouldn't care for some corn pone. Uh, 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 Hoppy, you say so. Uh, no, thanks. No, thanks. Uh, Mrs. Oates, you seem to be headed into some rough country. Are you sure it's where you want to go? Well, sure, I'm sure. Got me a ranch just behind them rocky gorges. My old man paid Mr. Skaggs $11,000 for it. 11000 for a ranch behind the gorges? Mrs. Oates, do you suppose you could get this Mr. Skaggs to cancel the deal? Now, why should I do that? I want me a fine ranch. But those gorges don't end till they hit the mountains. Those are badlands. What? Mr. Cassidy, that $11,000 was our whole life savings. Well, maybe Skaggs would give your money back. Not that critter. Calls himself boss of Vinegar Bend. Told me the deal was legal and binding no matter if my husband was passed on. He didn't want no corn pone, neither. Uh, Mrs. Oates, uh, Judy, I'm afraid you're in for a real shock. If your ranch is in those badlands, it's not worth a tenth of what you paid for it. Mr. Cassidy, what are you saying? Just that you've been swindled, cheated. That ranch of yours is worthless. No. No, he wouldn't. Mr. Cassidy, that can't be. I ain't got no more money to get home on. I ain't got no home to get to. Judy and I... <laughs> now, Mrs. Oates... Suppose I have a talk with this skag. Oh, thanks, Mr. Cassidy. Thanks. Hoppy, I got a hunch this'll mean bad trouble. <laughs> now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Boss of Vinegar Bend. On their way to the Bar 20, Hoppy and California meet a Mrs. Oates, a widow, and her daughter, Judy, heading into the Badlands west of Vinegar Bend. When the woman finds out that they have been swindled, Hoppy offers to help. Now they're all nearing the broken-down shacks that comprise the woman's ranch house. Well, at least there's something to live in, Mrs. Oates. Sure ain't what Mr. Skaggs said it was. You see my cows any place, Mr. Cassidy? Cows? You mean there were cattle included in your deal? Well, sure. What kind of a ranch is it without cows? Skag said there was a thousand head of beef on this ranch. Oh, my gosh. She means mavericks. Yeah, you're right, California. Mrs. Oates, these gorges and brakes hold a lot of cattle, but they're ones who have gone wild. They're mavericks. 
Rounding them up is expensive. It's tough and dangerous work. Well, I can ride. So can my daughter. Lady, ain't no women gonna round up wild mavericks. He's right, Mrs. Oates. Mavericks that have become used to freedom are killers. No, you and Judy try to make the place livable. California will stay and help while I ride in the sea skag. Well, one thing more you ought to know, Mr. Cassidy. Mr. Skaggs holds a $5,000 mortgage on this place still. Reckon he planned to get it back and swindle somebody else with it like he did my old man and me. Oh, fine. You don't even have a clear title. Well, now, maybe with the help of a strong man, I could get the place on a paying basis somehow. You be a strong man, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, I'm going to see Skaggs. I'll, I'll see you later. Mighty upstanding figure of a man. But I reckon he don't hanker for a double harness. Uh, Mr. Carlson... Now, you ain't such a great catch, but can you plow a straight fur? Uh, uh, me? Uh, oh, no, ma'am. Uh, you see, I, uh, hop here, hop here. Pardon me, but where do I find Skaggs? I am Mr. Caldwell Skaggs, sir. Banker, mayor, land agent, and at your service. You here to put in or draw out of the bank? Uh, draw out, I guess. Name's Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. Fine, fine. Uh, uh, no, it isn't either. You have no account here. I know, but you sold a parcel of bad lands to the Oates family for $11,000. Plus a 5000 mortgage. The total was 16000 Yeah, well, Henry Oates died. His widow and child are out there now. It was a neat swindle, but don't you think some of that money should be given back to them? Some... <laughs> oh, that is a good one. Give the money back? What on earth for? To keep them from starving for one slight reason. I assure you, Mr. Cassidy, their starvation is a matter of total indifference to me. Good day. You know, I'm working up a great dislike for you, Skaggs, and I think maybe it's time your business deals were taken up in court. Yes, Step into my office, Mr. Cassidy. Perhaps we should discuss this more fully. Hiya, Mr. Skaggs. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were bringing in a customer. Don't leave, Toller. This is Mr. Cassidy, and he's hardly a customer. Mr. Cassidy, is, this is my um, assistant, Vic Toller. Glad to meet Cassidy. Well, hello, Toller. Haven't they hung you yet? Not yet, Cassidy. Uh, gentlemen, uh, you've met before? Yeah, we have met. He was in Cottonwood when I drilled a guy for calling me a killer. Cassidy helped run me out of town. Oh, is that so? Oh, well. You seem to be a strange sort of banker, Scraggs. Hiring gunslingers like Toller. I have a hunch a good investigation of you is going to prove downright interesting. Scraggs, you better let me get rid of this guy. He's muy mallow. He's bad medicine. And he swings a lot of weight back in his home range. You're wearing guns, Toller? Why don't you, you want to try now? Uh, no. No, not right now. Aye, you must be a tough one, Cassidy. Toller doesn't usually fear a test of his peculiar, uh, shall we say, talents. Oh, uh, I'm not afraid of him, Mr. Skagg. Congratulations on your courage. But perhaps we'd better take care of Mr. Cassidy in a more, uh, legal way. What? Give me your gun. Well, uh... Sure, here. Hold it, Skaggs. Calm yourself, Cassidy. I have no intentions of shooting you. Only doing this. Oh! Oh! You hit me, Mr. Skaggs. What did you have to hit me for? Sorry, Toller. I had to have a little evidence. Hmm, that split cheek and jaw should do it. You know, I don't care if you want to slaughter your help, Skaggs, but it doesn't settle the matter I came in on. You will care, Mr. Cassidy. You see, I've just witnessed your brutal assault on poor Mr. Toller here. My assault? Yours. At least that's how it will be presented to Sheriff Williams unless you ride out of town and stay out. And as I happen to own the sheriff, as I own everything in Vinegar Bend, I would advise you not to test the case against you. Attempted murder, or assault with a deadly weapon if you prefer, carries a nice long prison sentence. Now get out. I'll go for now, but I'll be coming back, Skaggs, to answer those charges in full. <laughs> This is awful. You hiding out from the law, Skaggs turning the whole town again you? We better get fast. No, that's just what Skaggs wants me to do. 
But first, I'm going to try a little scheme that may take the load off Mrs. Oates here. Oh, now, Hoppy, don't you fret about me. My old man was a big sucker for buying this ranch, sight unseen, dern. His furs were so straight, rest his soul. Uh, Hoppy, what's the plan you was talking about? With Mrs. Oates' permission, California, we're going to round up enough mavericks out of the drawers and brush around here to pay off skag. Now, that'd be nice. I could maybe sell it to a sucker myself then. Yeah, no, no, Mrs. Oates. Uh, Hoppy, you're getting loco. Why, we'd need 30 men to round up them. No, we won't, California. All we need is a few matches. Uh, uh, now, what are you thinking of, us and matches? I did a little scouting around, California. There's a big clear can north of here with a wide entrance and a goose neck. You and I are going to make a big rim of fire and the mesquite circling it. As it burns in, every maverick in the area will be forced into that canyon. Sure, and show the fire. No, that's the easy part. The canyon is rock-walled. We'll make a big fire break in the goose neck. The fire will be stopped there. Won't do any harm, and it should net us quite a few head of mavericks. Sure, we have a herd of cattle, huh? And now, uh, how are the two of us going to haze them to market? Uh, they're going to be so wild, a cap going to send them stampeding. Well, we'll have to make it somehow, California. Well, you're the doctor, Hoppy. I'll sure do my bit to mess up this skag. <laughs> Well, there goes the last of them, Hoppy. The fire will hit the goose neck in another ten minutes. Uh, how many you figure we got in that camp? Uh, I'd say we rounded up about 500 of the meanest, toughest steers in the state. Uh, 500, eh? Uh, hey, with cattle going at $18 a head, we'll get more than the 5000 we need. No, these aren't prime steers. We'll be lucky to get $10, $12 a head. But that'll do it. Well, I'm sure glad this is over with it's been the hottest darned work I ever done, keeping that fire under control. Round up on the bar 20 is going to seem like a picnic after this. As soon as that fire dies, we'll have to block that entrance so the steers will be penned in. We can start hazing them to the railroad tomorrow. Uh, man, I'll bet that skag sombre will be whopping mad when he hears about this. Oh! What? what the? California, you hit? Uh, no, no. Oh, I'm all right, but get this darn dead horse off of me. Where'd those shots come from? And the smoke, who can tell? He may try again. Keep down. Who's getting up? I guess he's gone. But one thing's sure, that guy killed your horse was playing for keeps. Oh, why, now, that's real comforting, Huffy. Uh, tomorrow we'll get an early start with the herd. I have a feeling that those shots came from a friend of Skaggs. We got cattle, but getting them to market is going to be a different matter. <laughs> Better take the other point as soon as we leave the canyon. Let the drag go. Uh, don't make me mad. I sure hate to eat dust. Come on, doggies. Ramble. Hi. And be careful of those horns. These critters really carry bad ones. Turn right away. Well. I can see 500 arguments for short horns right in front of us. Get up, you lazy doggie. Uh, do I have to tell you up? Hi. Hi. All right, California, we're all clear. I'll take this point. Right. I'll cut around back of the herd and take the other. Hope to keep moving like this. Say so we'll make it in eight days easy. California, look out back there. Those men! Well, they're trying to stampede us. Those cattle are headed for the cliff. Why, nothing. They're doing it. Come on! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Boss of Vinegar Bend. <laughs> Trying to save the herd of maverick cattle he and California rounded up from the Badlands for Mrs. Oates, Hoppy raced off in an attempt to stop the stampeding steers, frightened by strange men who fired guns into the drag. We find Hoppy and California resting at Mrs. Oates' ranch. Well, we don't need to be told who was back of that stampede. Well, that finishes the Oates family as ranchers losing all them cattle over the cliff. Yeah, I'm afraid it does. Uh, wait a minute. I remember something you said before. Something about selling this place to another sucker. Oh, no, Hoppy, we ain't crooks. We... No, but Skaggs is, and he's a greedy one. Now, if we could just use his own greed against him. California, bring me a pencil and paper. Huh? Oh, sure, sure, Hoppy. Here's one over here. Oh, you're going to write to her? Uh, thanks. A friend of mine over at the Sh uh, Sherlock Mines. 
And you've got a hard, fast ride. How long do you think it'll take you to make it over there and back? Mm, it's nearly 60 miles. Uh, three days, maybe two if I can keep going. Well, keep going, then. Bring back the stuff he gives you, and we'll see if Skaggs can't be a sucker for his own bait. Here. I'm on my way, Hoppy. I hope this idea works. <laughs> Morning, Hoppy. You feeling like some grub? I sure do. Now, who can that be? Good morning, Mrs. Oates. Uh, Miss Cassidy, I'm Sheriff Williams. You ready to come to jail, peaceable? What do you care how he comes? Take him. Why don't you take me, Skaggs? Shut up. I don't soil my hands with trash. Go on, Sheriff. Sure, Miss Skaggs. I'm going. Uh, Order, get those guns of his. Uh, Mrs. Oates, you uh, better get out. Cassidy's got the address. Mr. Skaggs, why are you doing this? He ain't hurt you none. Oh, hush, woman. He's a little too smart, that's all. After a couple of years in jail, he'll learn to keep his nose out of my business. Well, there you be, Cassidy. Hope you'll be comfortable. Thanks a lot. Tell me, Sheriff, how does it feel to be bought? Now, Cassidy, don't go insulting me. As long as Skaggs owns the bank in the town, I'll trail along with him and keep my job. Well, uh, see you later. Don't look in any mirror, Sheriff. You might get a bad shock. Psst. Psst. Hoppy. What? Who's that? It's me, California. I'm at the window. California, where did you get back? I hit the ranch right after they took you away. Did you get the stuff all right? Sure, but, but here, I'll bring you a file and a gun. Just keep them. I'm not breaking jail just yet. Now, listen close. I want you to ride back to the ranch. Tell Mrs. Oates to be prepared to get an offer from Skaggs for her place. What? Why, he won't offer... Shh. He will. But tell her to hold out for a profit. Tell her she'll have Skaggs by the tail. Well, Hoppy, you talk crazy. Why would Skaggs do a thing like offering her a profit? That's where you come in. Take that shotgun and other stuff out to that overhanging rock north of the ranch house. Then do this. Well, howdy, Sheriff. How's our prisoner? Okay, I reckon, Miss Skaggs. You want to see him? Yes, I think you would. I have a little news for him. Well, sure. Come on. Right in here, Miss Skaggs. Uh, uh, call me when you're done. I will. What do you want, Skaggs? Oh, I've just come to gloat a little, Cassidy, and to tell you to get some prayers together. You're going to die awful soon. Yeah? To be blunt, yeah. Tola's been telling me about those friends of yours back on your home range. I don't think it would be safe to let you go around spreading stories. Might. Cause me a little embarrassment. Only about 20 years in the calaboose. You'll love it. It'll be nice and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kill me. Never give up Cassidy. <laughs> well, maybe Toller's gun will change your mind. He's been made a deputy sheriff. Going to take you over to the county seat tomorrow. And I get shot in the back trying to escape. You know, Skaggs, you lack imagination. Mr. Skaggs, Mr. Skaggs. What is it, Tola? The guy just found gold on that oats ranch. He did what? Why, you're crazy, Tola. Uh, go, go, go sleep it off. No, no, I, I tell you, it's the truth. He's a prospector. He just rolled into town and drunker than two hoot owls and a barrel of moonshine. Uh, he spotted off about a finely hitting pay dirt, and he flashed a sack of rocks that are full of gold veins. And the sailor said they was high grade. You sound like you've been chewing loco weed, Tola. Gold? Gold? Toller, I'll kill you if you're lying to me. Uh, where's the prospector now? I slugged him, and I got him tied up in your office. Why, he even told me where he found the gold. And it ain't far from that Oates ranch house. Well, that means we have to get that ranch back fast before Mrs. Oates finds out. Sheriff, get me out of here! <laughs> Sheriff, how about a nice game of casino? Eh? <laughs> You're a cool one. Ain't you figured out what Skaggs has got in mind for you? <laughs> yeah. But he's working on a bigger deal right now. Oh, was that why he tore out of town like the devil was after him? <laughs> There's only one thing that could make Skaggs move that fast. 
money. You seem to know your owner, Sheriff. I know him well enough. And stop insulting me. <laughs> I'm just a politician, that's all. Skaggs owns the bank, the bank owns the vote, and the vote tell me what to do. But that... Huh. Hi, Sheriff. Well, I've come to take the prisoner. Oh, Toller, when'd you get back? I thought you and Mr. Skaggs were out there. We were. Mr. Skaggs is finishing his business with old lady Oates over at the bank. Now open up Cassidy's cell. He's due for a ride. A nice, long ride. I... I don't... Well, all right, Toller, but I don't like this business. Sorry, Cassidy. Oh, you put up a nice fight, Sheriff. Thanks a lot. Shut up and get moving. Well, there's Mr. Skaggs. Hi, boss. You got the papers all signed? Yes. Yes, I'm the owner of that gold mine. Legal and proper. <laughs> well, funny I've been pinching dollars at the bank when all the time I had a fortune waiting for me to grab it. Excuse me. Some woman is waving for me to come over. Oh. Oh, yes, that's Mrs. Zoltz. Go on, Sheriff. See what she wants. But keep your mouth shut. You know, Skaggs, you have a shock coming to you. Oh, shut up, you stupid cowhand. You think you can rile me when I've just become the owner of millions in gold? Have you? I hope you didn't pay her too much profit on that ranch. You didn't get a gold mine, you see. Don't waste my time with lies. I saw the whole side of an overhang covered with gold flecks. Sure, that's known as salting if you use miners' lingo. What? My pal California fired a few shotgun loads of gold dust into that overhang, Skaggs, and then impersonated a drunken prospector. Are you lying? Hey, boss, he's crazy, ain't he? Well, that ain't possible. Go on, tell him he's crazy. Ha, 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 no use, Toller. Your boss man has been taken. He was immune to a lot of things, but a little salt on his tail brought him down. Well, no, <laughs> it can't be. Why, 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 if it's true, I'm ruined. No, no, uh, Toller, <laughs> kill him. We'll see who laughs last. You mean right here, boss? But that's loco. Everything's loco, Toller. But he's not going to get a chance to laugh at me. <laughs> Kill him. Shoot him in the middle so I can see him die slow. Okay, if you say so. This is one killing I think I'll like. You ready, Cassidy? I'm going to give you a real bad tummy ache. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. And still, Skaggs. I've got you covered. Uh, Cassidy, you all right? Sure. Thanks for plugging this rat toller. Uh, him? Well, he'll live to confess. But I didn't shoot. It was Mrs. Oates here. What? Sure. I was carrying my old man's horse pistol. Don't know why he bought this darn pistol, anyhow. Never could hit the side of a barn. Plowed a mighty straight fur, though, rest his soul. Take that vermin to jail, Sheriff. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Come on, Skaggs. No, no, I'm the boss of this town, I tell you. I own a gold mine. You you can't put me in jail. It's a frame-up. Now, don't he yell, <laughs> pretty. Do your duty, Sheriff. Uh, yes, uh, ma'am, I'm a plan to. But she robbed me. <laughs> yeah. I've been swindled, I tell you, Sheriff. Arrest her. Now, now, you Arrest. just come along peacefully. Okay. Or I'll melt you one across the skull and drag you. Now move. I've been cheated. <laughs> Sheriff, you can't arrest me. She's the one. She and Cassidy. My, my. I reckon that poor man don't recollect. I tried to tell him there weren't no gold on my ranch. More I insisted, more he kept offering. Wish my old man could have seen me dickering. He didn't have no head for figures, but he sure... I know. He plowed a mighty straight fur, though. Why, now, <laughs> however did you know that? Never mind. There's one thing that kind of puzzles me, though. How come the sheriff turned so obedient? He acted like you owned him. Well, I reckon I do, in a way. Things is all switched around, Hoppy. That Skaggs got so excited what with wanting my ranch so terrible, he swapped me his whole bank for the property. Well, <laughs> well doggone. <laughs> then you do own Sheriff Williams. Sure. What that crook don't know is that he's due to be a prisoner along with Skaggs just as soon as I can find an honest man to be the new sheriff. Reckon you'd care for a little corn pone now. <laughs> We'd love some, boss. Boss? 
Me? Why, sure. Mrs. Oates, you're boss of Vinegar Bend now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was quite a twist to the ending of another one of Hoppy's exciting stories. But wait until you hear the next one. It's called Land of the Gunhawks, and Hoppy and California really get themselves mixed up in a thrilling adventure when they encounter the dangerous masked bandit known as Three Jacks. So be sure to be with us for the next episode of Hop Along, Cassidy. Hop Along, Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Boss of Vinegar Bend was written by Herb Purdom. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. This one is titled The Man in the Yellow Mask. California and I were on our way to Brownsville to pick up a herd of coasters little Gulf of Mexico cattle locally known as sea lions. At the time, I was carrying a sight draft for $7,000. We meant to get a pickup crew and trail the herd back to the bar 20 for fattening. But then something happened that drove Brownsville, sea lions, and everything else right out of our minds. Shots, California. Sounded to me like rifle shots, Hoppy. Uh, what you figure made them? Somebody out hunting? That's right, California, out hunting men. Look at that horse, it's saddled. But what's happened to the rider? Figure he got shot off in his saddle? Could be. And I'm willing to wager he did. Come on, he must be down somewhere in that draw. Let's go, Topper. Get up, boy. Get up. There he is, Hoppy. I see him. Right. Who, who, boy? Who there, who? Come on. Well, he was shot, all right. Dead, too. Huh. Uh, look there, Hoppy. Here comes somebody else. Uh, he couldn't be the fellow that done it, or uh, I would doubt he? it. He's not carrying a rifle. Maybe he get rid of it. He could have. But in that case, I doubt it. He'd ride up while we're here. Hi there. Ah, oh, oh. Uh, dead is he? Yeah. He was dead when we got here. Yeah. I thought he'd be. Well, uh, looky here, mister. If you're thinking we don't... Let... No, no, I know you didn't. I was up over there when the shots was fired, seeing the feller did it. Oh, by the way, my name is Stokes. Jared Stokes on the Circle S over yonder. Well, I'm pleased to meet you. This is California Carlson. I'm Bill Cassidy. Oh, hop along, Cassidy. That's right. Yeah, seen you when you rode through town. You know this feller, do you? Never saw him before. Well, I did. I knew him well. He's Sam Wilkins. He's a neighbor of mine. Now, let me see here. Yeah, I thought so. It's gone. What uh, was you looking for, mister? See if Sam still had his money on him. He just sold off some of his cattle, but I see it's gone. Well, this is one more we can check off again that hombre in the yellow mask. The man in the yellow mask, he did this? Sure, saw him riding away. You heard of him, have you? Yeah, I've heard of him. Seems he's been making new fellas quite a bit of trouble up this way. Trouble and killings. About time somebody put him away. That's a job you could do, Cassidy, if all I heard told's got any truth in it. 
<laughs> Why me? Because well, you've laid hombres like this and by the heels of four. I sure wish you'd stay and give it a try. I wouldn't know where to begin. Couldn't trail him over this stuff. It's mostly malpai. Well, now, what if I told you where to start looking for him? <laughs> That'd be fine. But that's just the difficulty. From what I've been told, no one has the slightest idea who he is or where he hides out. Yeah. I can tell you both. You can? How come? Well, it's easy, mister. You see, he's my son. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Man in the Yellow Mask. Hoppy in California, hearing rifle shots, investigated and found the body of a local rancher, Sam Wilkins. They were presently joined by a second local rancher, Jared Stokes, who identified Wilkins' killer as the notorious outlaw known as the Man in the Yellow Mask. And now goes on to identify the Man in the Yellow Mask as his son. That's right, Cassidy. He's my own boy, Terry. I reckon you can guess how rotten I feel having to tell anyone this, but it's so all right. He's my boy. You mean the man in the yellow mask? Yeah, I got to look at him once with that mask off. What he really wears, you know, is a hood. Covers all his head right down to his shoulders. And colored yellow. We heard that. Well, I really don't know what to say, Stokes. If we caught him, you know we'd have to turn him over to the law, don't you? I'd expect that. He'd hang, you know. Hanging's what he's got coming to him. I raised him right. All I can figure is he's somehow... Gone kill a loco. Yeah, own boy or not, he ought to hang. All right, we'll go after him. Our business can wait. But you'll have to tell us where to look for him. I'll do that. See, what I have in mind is this. Ever since he was just a little button, he's had his own private hideout. Didn't even know I knew about it. And it's a good one. It's a cave he found once back up in the hill. Oh, boy. Ah, this is where we get off and walk, California. I'll leave the horses here. Think we're getting close to that cave, Hoppy? Well, if Stokes' directions were right, it should be at the base of that butte you can see up there ahead. Come on, California. Now, let's see how good you can make out on foot. Me? <laughs> I'll do all right. <laughs> Keep your head down. Hey, don't move ahead so fast. Ah, oh, the way you were walking ain't walking at all. It's just crawling. Why, the time I tracked down Geronimo... I... California, don't be an idiot. Wait for me, you... Uh, wait for you up by that rock there. Ain't nobody can see me. <laughs> I... What? Oh. Hey, what? Oh, there's, there's a hole. Help, I'm a fallen. Oh, it's no. A deadfall. You all right? Can you hear me? Help me out, Hoppy. I don't know whether I'm hurt or no. Maybe, maybe I broke a leg or something. Oh, don't try to move. I'll have to go back and get my rope. Uh, all right. Uh, take it easy. Uh, I'll be with you in a second, California. Uh, there. Uh, there. Now, let's see what happened to you. Can you stand up? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm scared to try. Oh, where does it hurt? I feel too doggone numb to tell. <laughs> then what are you groaning for? I ain't got nothing to do with that, Hoppy. It it just come out of me. Uh, we got to get out of here and get out as fast as we can. Uh, that yell you made was enough to wake up the dead. We're likely to have the whole county down on us. Here, I'll give you a hand. See if you can stand up. Well, all right. Uh, uh, well, doggone if I can't. Uh, that's good. Now, do you think you can climb that rope? Huh. I got it attached to a rock up above. Oh, you're pretty well shook up, Hoppy. Well, go ahead. Try anyhow. I'll come up behind you. I'll give you a hand if you need it, but hurry. All right, Hoppy. Here goes. Uh, come on. There you go. You're making it all right. I'll follow you up. Come on, a little more. Uh, uh, don't go on it. Hard work. Uh, you need some hard work. All right, all right. I, I'm getting it. <laughs> Uh, Hoppy. Uh, what's the matter? I'm almost at the top, but I, I can't quite make it. My hands are slipping. Try to hold on. I'll give you a boost. Come on. There you go. Uh, uh, oh. 
There. Uh, that done it, Hoppy. Thanks. Now, wait a second now, and I'll, I'll give you a hand. Here, grab a holt. You got it? Yeah. All right, pull away. Up with you. Uh, uh, oh, good. Thanks. See anybody? Uh, no, no. And I've been looking all around. Well, maybe he didn't hear you. Or maybe he isn't at the cave just now. In that case, he'll give us a chance to... To do what? Uh, what? what? Had nothing foolish. Careful. I had you both covered. The man and the yeller mast. I thought you looked all around. Well, well, well I did, Hoppy. He must have... You uh... just didn't look in the right place. All right, move ahead of me with your hands high, both of you. Looks as if you're going to be my guest for a bit. This is the cave you've been using as a hideout, eh? That's right. Room enough in there for you and a dozen more. So keep right on going. Doggone, you even got it lighted in here. I have a lantern over there. Okay, this is all right. Stop right where you are. And what do you think you're going to do with us? I haven't decided that yet. Kill you, probably. One thing, though. You can stand right where you are and I'll relieve you of your guns. Yours too, old-timer. Yeah, that's better. When I fool with rattlers, I always like to make sure they don't carry any poison. Keep on talking, Terry. You sound interesting. You call me Terry. What'd you do that for? You're Terry Stokes. You... You can't deny it, Terry. Your father identified you. So he knows. Of course he knows. That's how we found our way to this cave. <laughs> but there's something else that interests me in your talk, Terry. What's that? You try to sound so tough, but you don't sound convincing. I'm beginning to wonder if you are the man in the yellow mask. What? When a man's a killer, it gets into everything he does. His voice, his manners, everything. You don't look or sound like a killer to me. What are you doing? Get back. And if I don't, what will you do? Uh, I'll shoot. I'll shoot you. No, you won't. Give me that. Give me that gun. There. If you try to play the part of a killer unless you mean to go through with it, Terry. There's always someone just fool enough to call your bluff. You, you... Take off that hood. Let's have a look at you. I thought so. You're no killer, Terry. You're just a nice kid that got in over his head. Now, suppose you tell California and me what this is all about. Well, I... Well, I... Go ahead, talk. No need to be afraid of us. Go ahead, kid. You can trust Hopalong Cassidy. You're Cassidy? You really are? I usually am. Now let's hear what you got to say. Well, I planned all this hoping to get the real man in the yellow mask. Oh? He killed Buck Swanson, my best friend. I swore I'd get him. Well, how is this get-up going to help you? I figured if I posed as the man in the yellow mask and let myself be seen once in a while, the real one would hear about it and get to wondering. I figured after he'd wondered long enough, he'd come looking for me to see what was up. I had a trap set for him. I figured if he did come, I'd have a good chance of nabbing him. That trap you had set up, uh, was it that deadfall California stumbled into? That's right. I put a lot of work into that deadfall, Cassidy. I don't think you'd have ever noticed it. I sure didn't, and I get aches and pains to prove it. Hey, <laughs> you weren't interested in looking. All you were interested in was showing how fast you could walk in those high-heeled boots of yours. Well, it wasn't a bad plan, Terry. I'd have been proud of it myself. I... So would I. Uh, huh? What the... There's the gent in the yellow mask. Yeah, you're quite right. I might have fallen into your trap, Terry, but unfortunately, this fool here sprung it before I had a chance. Very fortunate for me. <laughs> now, I don't get any notions, Cassidy. I'd advise you just to relax. Let that gun drop. Now what? Well, I'm not just sure yet, Cassidy. But to quote our young friend here, I'll probably kill you. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Man in the Yellow Mask. Young Terry Stokes had conceived a clever plan for the capture of the man in the yellow mask. There was only one thing wrong with it. 
Terry hadn't realized that his trap might be prematurely sprung by California Carlson. And now, in the cave that he has been using as a hideout, Terry and California and Hoppy find themselves the outlaw's prisoners. As I say, I haven't decided just what to do with you yet. But I'll probably kill you. That is, uh... Well? I have certain sources of information, Cassidy. I happen to know, for instance, that you were heading for Brownsville to buy a herd of cattle. and have a sight draft for $7,000 in your possession. Now, uh, if you'll just put your signature to that draft... Then you'd kill me and have it over with. No, 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 not at all. In that case, I might be persuaded to let you go. Sorry, but I can't accommodate you, my friend. That money isn't mine. And I don't give away what doesn't belong to me. I could take it from you, of course. And it wouldn't be any good without my signature. Watch yourself, Terry. I'm going to give you a chance to get away. What? Here, here. That'll be enough of that, Cassidy. What'd you say to this fella? Why, I was just asking the time, friend. I'm not sure I can stay much longer. (laughs) That's very funny. You may stay longer than you'd planned. Much longer. Terry, run for it. I'm on my way. Right to the circle S. Bring back help. I'll do that. Stop. Stop. Come back here. Ah, you missed him. This is poor light for shooting, mister. And you're a fool, Cassidy. How do you know I won't kill you for this? Oh, I wasn't worrying about that. The way I figured, you'd like to keep us alive till I sign that sight draft. Well, you'd better sign it soon. Have much patience, Cassidy. Then you'd better cultivate it. If you're thinking Terry will come back to help you, I... Oh, he will. He will. All right, let him. You won't be here. Come on. We're going to round up your horses, and then we're going places. <laughs> Still, while I tell you. So, this is the place you call home. Nice place for a hideout. Yeah, I think so. Plenty of water from that stream over there. Good grass, plenty of fuel. No one ever comes here. I suppose you would have to tie us here, but uh, do you have to use rawhide? (laughs) I like rawhide. When it's green like this, it's nice and flexible. And when it dries... Well, when it dries, it shrinks and grows good and hard. Yeah. I don't think you and your friend will be leaving here in a hurry, Cassidy. Oh, we like it here. Well, you'd better, because you're going to stay here a while. Now, let's see that sight draft you have, Cassidy. I think I'd better take care of it. Yeah, here it is. (laughs) 7,000. When I have your signature on this, I'm going to be a considerably richer man. Which will be some considerable time from now. This where you always hide out, you say, mister? Yeah, of course. Why do you ask that? I wondered. Usually when a man spends all his time at one place, there's more signs of life. Doesn't look to me like you're here much. Where do you think I stay? I don't know. That's something I'd like to find out. Yeah, you're dreaming things. Well, dream all you like. I gotta leave you two here for a few hours. Let's see how you're tied, California. (laughs) I reckon you'll hold all right. See that you behave yourselves while I'm gone. If you don't, you may be sorry for it. Yeah, oh, shit. Haven't left us much choice, have you? No, no, reckon I haven't. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, boy, yeah. I'm a dirty sidewinder. I'd sure like to snatch that yeller hood off in his head and uh, uh, punch him right in the nose. And, and, uh, <laughs> ah, you're too peaceable. I'd like to do more than that. Hmm. Uh, doggone, uh... I'm getting thirsty already. I reckon it's cause I can't move none. And anyway, you figure we could dip our beaks in that creek yonder, Hoppy? If you should think of a way, you let me know. Yeah. You think we're done for this time, Hoppy? I do not. Huh. You're gonna sign that sight draft, are you? Not at all. Well, then how are we gonna get away? We'll just wait for Terry to get help and come after him. But he don't know where we are. Don't, don't worry, he'll find us. Uh, but how? We... I left a trail for him. Uh... Uh-huh. You don't see any cartridges in my gun belt, do you? Shame. That's right. Yeah. I drop one every once in a while on the way over here. I figure Terry's reaching the Circle S just about now. He should find us in an hour or two at the moment. Whoa, boy, whoa! 
Dad, don't ask for any explanations just now. Just do as I say. Huh? Casty and California are in trouble. They've been captured by that hombre in the yellow mask. I come to get help. We ought to get about three or four of the boys. Right. And, and hey, Dad, what's the idea of that gun? You're the man in the yellow mask, son. Oh, no, Dad. No, you don't understand. I, I just. Up. I swore if I had the chance, I'd take you in, son or no son. And I am. I'm taking you into town to hang. <laughs> Uh, Hoppy, if Terry's ever going to get here, don't you think it's about time he was getting here now? Well, he should have been here long before this. I don't like it. Maybe he missed those bullets after all. Well, he shouldn't have. Any luck with that rawhide he put on you, California? Nary a bit. Doggone stuff. Just getting tighter. So is mine. I... Wait a second. This might be Terry now. Can't see who it is. He's still on the other side of those rocks. We'll see him in a minute. He... Uh... Oh. Yeah. Our friend in the yellow mask again. Oh, hmm. So you got back, eh? We kind of hoped you'd uh, break your neck. Or... Then what would have happened to you? <laughs> you'd enjoy dying of thirst, would you? And speaking of thirst, how's our chance of getting a drink out of that creek? I have to return to town. I thought I'd better see to you in that sight draft first. I'll untie you one at a time, but I'll leave your hands as they are. I got nothing to lose giving you a drink, I guess. You'll be first, Cassidy. Make it fast, doggone it. I'm so dry, I'm getting dusty. What are you going into town for? Another little job on tap? Yeah, it's something I think will interest you. Oh? Yeah, there you are. Now you can walk to the creek. Uh, just a minute. Uh, what's this you say will interest me? Oh, that. Well, if you're waiting for Terry to free you, you're in for a disappointment. He's been delivered to the sheriff for trial. What do you mean? What do you <laughs> thought talk? that would interest you? <laughs> it occurred to me it might when I saw those cartridges you dropped on the trail. Ah, uh, you know about that, do you? Of course. I'm disposed of them. Now get your drink and hurry up. You get yours, California, as soon as he's finished. Get... Hey, hey, stop, Cassidy. What do you think you're doing? Stop! Hold on! Hoppy, don't try it! You can't be... You're fool. How'd you think you'd get away from me your foot with your hands tied? Well, I could try, couldn't I? I see you're not to be trusted. Ah, that's right. I'm deceitful as all get out. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Well, hello, Jared. Terry, how are you? This ain't a social call, Sheriff. I brought you the man in the yellow mask. The man in the yellow mask? Well, where is he? Right here. My own son. Your son? Well, you That's can't right. mean... That's right. I suspected it for a long time. But when I was sure, I figured it was my duty to bring him in. Yeah, but somehow I can't see Terry as the man in the yellow mask. Well, what do you got to say for yourself, son? I wore a yellow mask, sure. But all I did it for was to trap the real outlaw... And by holding me like this, you're probably condemning Cassidy to death. Hmm. Well, it wouldn't hurt to check on your story, I shouldn't think. It seems All to right me... that, Sheriff. Oh, Mr. Bailey. It seems to me you're playing the fool. Suppose mm. you check on the story as you say. What happens? He must have friends. While you're away, they break him from jail. Well, if you say so, Mr. Bailey. How come Bailey gives you orders, Sheriff? Well, he don't... Mr. I give no one orders. The sheriff listens to me because he knows that I'm honest and I work hard for what little money I have. Is that I... how you got your pants so wet? Working so hard? I've been inspecting some property over north. Naturally, I had to forge a little muddy, but as I was saying... I... That's right, mister, as you were saying. Well, hey, Hoppy. Come on, California. You were saying what about the little muddy? I, I was simply explaining how I got my trousers wet. I, uh... I forded the little muddy myself. That mud on your boots doesn't look to me like anything you got there. Well, what do you... Looks what... to me more like the mud you might have got from the bottom of a certain little creek I know about back up in the hills. Here's your man, Sheriff. You're looking for the man in the yellow mask. Here he is. Arrest him. Well, I protest. I don't understand why this fellow should then be... Then if there's any doubt about who you are, mister, 
I'd suggest we search for a certain sight draft. I... Wait a minute! Try to get no, don't. Search him, Terry. Find that draft. Hold him. Oh, shit. Hold still, friend. You aren't going anyplace. Here it is, Hoppy. It was in his side pocket. Hey, what is all this? Your man in the yellow mask, Sheriff. Hmm. And proof that I know what I'm talking about. The man in the yellow mask took that draft from me. And now Bailey, or whatever he calls himself, has it. You... You are... How'd you ever get free? Oh, that was easy, mister. What did you think I took that run through the creek for? What? As you said, brawhide shrinks when it dries, but it stretches when you wet it. So I wet it. And here I am. Why, you... All right, Bailey, get going. I've been saving a cell for the men in the yellow mask. And this time I figure I got it. Now you can't do this to me, Sheriff. Well... What do you think about your son now, Stokes? Uh, Still think he's an outlaw? <laughs> well, I... I feel like an idiot. <laughs> son, if you can ever see your way to kind of excusing me, why... Oh, forget it, Dad. It wasn't your fault. I wanted folks to think I was the man in the yellow mask. Can't complain when they start to believe me. Well, you had a good idea, Terry. But next time, don't try it. Huh? Playing outlaw is a game that's played for keeps. And next time, you might not be so lucky. Mighty lucky for Terry and mighty clever of Hoppy to think of taking that run through the creek and outwitting the man in the yellow mask. Trickery being something Hoppy just can't tolerate leads him in California into a thrill-packed story when Hoppy gets the trickster on the run in next week's tale of action... Run, sheep, run. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Man in the Yellow Mask was written by Gibson Scott Fox, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Now, Hoppy, what about our story? This is the adventure we call Run, Sheep, Run. It began on a warm spring afternoon in the San Dimas Valley. The day had been quiet and peaceful and the riding easy. Even our horses seemed to be enjoying the change of pace, and a good case of old-fashioned spring fever had nearly taken over as California and I approached the Box L, owned by an old friend of ours, Matt Liggett. We were just a short distance from the main ranch buildings when I saw something up ahead that caused me to call California to stop. California, pull up. Whoa, Topper. Whoa there, whoa. Watch up, huh? Look at the crowd of men in the front of the box L. What do you make of it? Hey, old Matt sure got company, ain't he? He <laughs> has, but I'm wondering if it's friendly company. Listen. Hoppy, that sounds like trouble. Sounds and looks like it. We better see what's up. Come on. Get up. Get up, boy. All right, hold it. Quiet down. Hold it. Hold it, I said. Kelly, you there. Kelly, you seem to be the leader. I want to talk to you. And stay away from that door, all of you. 
Come on, California. All right, one side. We're going through. Come on. What's this all about, Kelly? Matt's turned skunk, Coppy. He sold us out. I don't believe it. What are you talking about? I'll tell you. Matt sold the north end of his range and all his water rights. And that's all the water we got in this valley. He sold to Clint Slago. He what? You heard me. He sold to Clint Slago. But Slago's a sheep man. Sure he is. And coming right now through the pass with more woolies than you'd find in all New Mexico. Oh, there's some mistake here, Kelly. This isn't sheep country and Slago should know that. Even if Matt did sell, what would Slago want it for? I don't know. That's his business. All I know is... Once those woolies have got down on the flats and hit the pool in the springs, we're done for. It won't matter to us, then, whether Slago made a mistake or not. Now, just a second, Kelly. There's one thing you'd better get through your head. Matt's your friend. Why, he's been the best friend any of you in this valley ever had. If he sold a Slago, you'll have an explanation. And what's keeping him from giving it? We're here. We'll listen. What's yeah, he hiding in the house Yeah, well, for? look. Wait a minute. You come out here pawing the ground and bellering and tossing your horns like this, what do you expect? Naturally, Matt wouldn't feel much like coming. It wouldn't have mattered how they came, Hoppy. Matt, I'm glad you came out. Kelly here has been giving me some crazy talk Not about... Not crazy you. talk, Hoppy. Straight talk. But, Matt, it can't be that... These people have been my friends for years. Some of them have been my friends for the best part of my life. But I've sold them out, Hoppy. I've sold them out and ruined them. And... And there's nothing anyone can do about it. Hoppy first heard that elderly Matt Liggett, pioneer ranchman, had betrayed his friends by selling San Dimas Valley's only water rights to the sheep man, Clint Slagle, he refused to believe it. But Matt himself confirmed the charge, and now Hoppy stares at him, then slowly turns away to address the waiting crowd. All right, friends, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave this to me. There isn't going to be any trouble here, so you better clear out. You too, Kelly. I don't think you're in any frame of mind to talk to Matt. I'll see you later. Well, all right, if you say so, Hoppy. But if it was anybody but you, I'd tell you to go to blazes. All right, boys, into the saddle. Let's be getting back. All right, Matt, inside. But, Hoppy, you don't seem to understand. I assure you that there's nothing to discuss. Inside. Well, uh... You too, California. Sure. All right, Matt. Let's have it. Have what? Matt, I... maybe you can fool those fellas out there with this talk about selling them out. But don't try to fool me that easy. This valley and the people in it mean more to you than anything else in the world. So now, well, how about having the truth? You won't believe me, Hobby, but I've told you the truth. You actually mean to say that you sold your water rights to a man like Slagle? That you did? I still don't believe it. Well, maybe I didn't, Hoppy, but it amounts to the same thing. Syme Argent did. Syme's your foreman, ain't he? Yeah, he used to be. After this happened, I, I naturally discharged him. Or rather, he knew I would and... Never showed up again. I don't get this. What could Syme have to do with it? I had given him my power of attorney. Oh. You see, Hoppy, I'm getting old. I, well, my judgment isn't always as, as good as it should be. I wanted someone to run the place for me. Syme had been with me for five years. I thought I could trust him, but... When the chips were down, you found you couldn't, eh? Yes. Then the Symes to blame for this. Why, you've been blaming yourself. Well, I, I gave him the power to do it, didn't I? Who else is responsible? I see what you mean. You made a mistake, but you didn't deliberately sell anyone out. There's a difference. Have you tried to do anything about this? Have you talked with Slagle? I tried to, Hoppy, but he wouldn't see me. I see. I heard the Slagle's coming through the pass right now. I guess California and I'd better look him up. Come on, California. See you later, Matt. But, Hoppy, wait. What can you and California do? Our best. 
And if that isn't good enough, we'll have to do a little bit better. Hold still, you knot-headed son of Satan. <laughs> That'll hold you. Pedro! Manuel! Keep them moving! Head him for the flats! Felipe! Back to the pass and keep the rest of those blame critters moving! Vamos! Pronto! Hey, what's the matter with you, son? Slagle, I'm getting out of here. Look there, who's coming? Let's hop along Cassidy and his sidekick. They know me, I... Shut up! Too bad they made a man out of you, Sime. You just wasted the material for a first-class rat. <laughs> I heard about this Cassidy hombre. I'd admire to meet him. Well, I won't. Get out. Take cover if you want, but don't go away. You'll be around when Cassidy's gone again. I'll be around. Come on. Up. Yep. <laughs> Manuel! Keep him moving. Felipe! Bring him up! Hi there. Huh? Oh, Hello. A lot of sheep you got here. You must be Clint Slagle. I'm Clint Slagle. Who are you? You mean to say Sime didn't tell you? I saw him clearing out when he saw us coming. All right. You're Hop Along Cassidy. This is California Carlson. What are you after? You want jobs herding sheep? No, thanks. We don't eat mutton. Neither do I. And you couldn't work for me even if you wanted to. Uh, just to let you know where you stand. Well, where do you stand, Slagle? This valley isn't for sheep any more than it is for mountain goats. What do you want in here for? I'm a businessman. Maybe it was to make me a little money. No doubt. But what's your angle, Slagle? Well, since it's such a good idea, I'll let you in on it. I own this end of the valley. I bought all the water rights there is. Suppose I stay here. What's going to happen to your rancher friends? They'll go broke. They'll have no place to water their cattle. Right. So if I was them, I'd buy me out again. And I wouldn't haggle too much over the price. Oh, so that's your game, is it? A little extortion. How much are you asking? Today, 50000 Land's going up, though, so tomorrow it may be more. 50000 That's ridiculous, and you know it. Sure. But what do you want to bet I get it? I don't think the men here are fools. They'd be fools not to buy. And even if they would... I intend to do everything I can to persuade them not to. I don't scare easy, Cassidy. I hold the water right so the ranchers go bust. That'll be kind of fun, too. But I think a cattleman ain't hardly polite for a well-brought-up fellow like me to say. Ah, uh, suit yourself. But don't make any decisions you'll regret. Come on, California, let's get out of here. Come on, Topper. Get her, boy. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid I made Mr. Cassidy mad. That's sometimes a fool thing to do. Tell me something, Sime. He said that even if the ranchers were willing to get together and buy their water back at my price, you'd try to talk them out of it. Did they listen to him? <laughs> listen to him? If Cassidy told them they'd walk off a cliff blindfolded and never ask why. And he's dangerous to us, huh? Yeah, plenty dangerous. All right, then, my friend. You have your orders. What orders? Kill him. California. Huh? Don't look now, but I think we're being followed. I got a glimpse of a rider a couple of times when we were atop of the hill. Any idea who it is? I got an idea. It's our old friend, Sam Argent. No use wasting time worrying about him, though. What we have to do is find a place to camp. Come on, Topper. All right, California, we camp here. You get on into town and get back with these supplies. Bacon, flour, coffee, matches. That'll be all, I guess. Right. How long do you think the trip will take you? Oh, uh, two hours, I reckon? Well, make it as fast as you can. The sooner you're back, the better. Right. I'll get her going now. Come on, boy. Get up. Get up. There. Well, Topper, old boy, about time you had a rub down, I guess. You had a hard day. But not half as hard as the one you're going to have, Hoppy. Sime. That's right, Hoppy. Now, 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 get your hands away from them guns. Heist them and keep them heisted. What is this, Sim? <laughs> this is just one of the events leading up to the funeral, Hoppy. 
your funeral. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and the adventure called Run, Sheep, Run. It was several hours later that California Carlson dashed madly into the little town of Custer, nestling at the lower end of San Dimas Valley, and reined up in a spiraling cloud of dust. As he did so, he lifted his voice in a yell. Hey, everybody! Something's happened to Hoppy! Everybody that's got a gun and a horse and a hanker and a huge um, come on with me! Hey, fellas, something bad's happened to Hoppy! Hurry, everybody! Something's happened to This where you and Hoppy made camp, California? Right over there, Kelly. Better tell them fellas to stay right here, else they'll trample all the sign out. You heard that, boys. Wait for us. All right. Come on, California. Let's see what we can find. Hey, here we are. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Hmm? <laughs> California. That log over there. There's blood on it. Sure there is. And that's one of the things I wanted to get to see. And... Here, wait a second. Let's have a... Look around here a little. Hmm. Certainly been a fight here, a big one. Yeah, but how would anybody grab Hoppy off without a fight in his hands? There's where they dragged him away, over there. You can see his heel mark. Sure. At least it looks that way. But even so, we can't be sure. Here, wait. Here's his gun. Yeah? You sure they're his? Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there he is, all right. I was in such an all-fired hurry, I missed him before. California, this tells the whole story. If they hadn't got the best of him, he would never have left his guns behind. And if they hadn't killed him, they wouldn't have left him behind. <sighs> this proves it. Happy. Happy dead. Somebody's going to pay for this, California. And it isn't going to be long before we present the bill. You said it was one of Slagle's men following you, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, Sim Argent. It was him that sold out to Slagle while he was still with Matt Liggett. But I reckon you know all about that by this time. Yeah, we know about it. And I guess we also know that Hoppy's body was taken away, so we couldn't prove anything. Then it better be found. We'll find it. But that won't make any difference to Simon Slagle. They'll pay for this, whether we find Hoppy's body or not. And no time wasted. Come on, men! We've got a job of riding to do. Let's get going. Okay. I'll line up with you later, Kelly. First, I've got a job of my own to do. Anytime. We won't need any help on this job. All right, boys, let's get going. We'll follow that killer's trail and we find him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can come out now, Hoppy. Good. I'd stayed down that hole full of brush much longer, I'd have been dead, smothered to death. I was listening, California. You did fine. Not even one little lie. <laughs> Didn't have to tell none. I just let Kelly look around and kind of jump to his own conclusions. That rabbit blood on that log there sure looked like the real thing. That was a good touch, eh? Uh, uh, worst sign. Don't worry about him. He's still back in the brush, tied up. Uh, good. So, uh, now, uh, what do I do? You know what to do. And you'd better start doing it before Kelly and his crowd give up on that blind trail I left them and decide the deal was Slagle direct. Right. I'll get started now. Fine. And California. Yeah? When you find Slagle, be sure you talk it tough. Remember, from now on, everything depends on you. Wait a second, mister. You come back here. I've said my say, Slagle. You got anything to say, you better make it fast. I'll do that. Uh, how soon do you expect that bunch to get here? Kelly and the others? I couldn't say. Depends on a lot of things. Might be tomorrow. Might be in the next five minutes. All you can be sure of it is that sooner or later, they will be here. All right. Let them come. They can't do anything. They, they wouldn't dare. That's a matter of opinion. Pretty tough for you if you guessed wrong, wouldn't it be? But lynching would be against the law. Sure, sure, always has been. But it still happens now and again, but don't it? They, hey, they can't prove that I had anything to do uh, with... with Hoppy's killing? Uh, well, I tell you, that's one of the things that's bad about fellas stepping out and taking the law into their own hands. They don't always wait for proof. 
But they know you wanted to kill Hoppy, so, uh... But what can I do? What I told you. Ski that on, you better get at it. But I can't. I mean, well, I, I got money tied up here. I bought this land and the water rights. Well, and... if money means more to you than your neck, that's your business. But maybe I, I, I could help out a little bit. Help me out? You? Yeah, oh. Schlegel, I'll tell you. Now, I get a little money, not much, of course. You have to take some loss. But if you aim to save something out of this mess you got yourself into, like I said... Saw him, California? Yeah, sure, sure did, Hoppy, and talked it tough, too, just like you said, and it worked out fine. Good. Then we'd better ride. Here, Topper, here, boy. Uh, hey, we're leaving Syme here? No, I fixed it so that in five minutes after we've left, he can work himself loose. Come on. Get up. Get up, boy. <laughs> Hey, I want to see you, mister. Get up. Hey. Oh, oh there. You confounded fool, you. I... Hey, let go of me. You messed everything up, you idiot. The whole valley knows you killed Cassidy. I've had to sell out. I'll be lucky if I get clear of this valley alive. If I'd known you were such a triple hey, now, start. Wait a second. Get your fool hands off of me. I want to get this straight. You sold out everything. Land and water rights. I had to. It was my only chance to get anything at all back. Who did you sell to? California Carlson. But we're wasting time. There'll be a posse here any minute now. We've got to get out of here. Who's the fool now? Well, what are you talking about? You've been tricked. Selling out to Carlson. <laughs> Don't you know that Cassidy's alive? He's what? You heard me. He's alive. Carlson knew it when he talked you into selling to him. The whole thing was a put-up job between him and Cassidy. You're local. Am I? I ought to know whether Cassidy's alive or not. Look at me. He had me tied up. I just got away. But I sent you after him. What happened? Well, well I guess he outsmarted me, too. I didn't know it till afterwards, but they knew I was following them. They pulled a whizzer on me. California made as if he was going to town for supplies, but when I threw down on Cassidy, there he was with a gun on my back. He just circled around and laid for me. Oh, I... So they outsmarted us, did they? Alto, hombre! Miguel! Pedro! Manuel! Vierna Canelo! Uh, what was that? I told him to turn the woolies around. We're going back. Well, what's the use? Now it's too late. Is it? I'll tell you something, Syme. We're going back, and before we're through, Cassidy's going to be shedding tears for the day he was born. California, pull up. Oh, boy. Whoa, whoa. Listen. It's a gunfight. Kelly and his men have come up with Simon Slagle. We've taken too long. We shouldn't have stopped at Matt's place first. We gotta get there. Let's go. <laughs> Kelly, hold your fire. Whoa, Topper. Whoa, oh, boy. Whoa, whoa. Hold it a second, boys. Here's Hoppy. Hoppy in California. We're glad to see you. We got them skunks holed up back in those rocks. They killed... Hey, hold it. You're alive. Sure I'm alive. I don't kill easy. Ah, <laughs> wait a second. One at a time. It's a long story. Most of it will have to wait. But if this was meant to be a necktie party, you can forget about it. No use trying to punish a man for a crime he didn't commit. That's as may be, Hoppy. We're glad you're alive. But I'm not so sure we shouldn't go right ahead with this and wipe those skunks out. They've taken our water away from us. No, and... they haven't. Huh? That's but... another long story. We got it backed. But it's California's story. So he should be the one to tell you. California, you better tell him what happened. They. California. Where is he? California. California. Oh, yes, look at Barn Cassidy. We have it. California, is that true? They got you over there? I'm sorry, Hobby, but they got me while they're actually were talking. They never even give me a chance to holler. What's the idea, Slago? What do you expect to gain by this? Funny. Well? I've got a quick claim deed here to this land and all the water rights, Cassidy. What if you have? Just this. Either California signs it, or we blow his head off. Now. 
Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. I'll handle this. Leave this to me. California, can you hear me? What is it, Hoppy? Sign that quit claim deed. Do you hear me? Sign it. Sign anything Slagle wants you to. But, 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 Hoppy, you're forgetting. Me. I'm not forgetting anything. Just do as I tell you. Do you understand that? Well, uh, yeah, if you say so, Hoppy. <laughs> you show good sense, Cassidy. But you're beaten, admit it. <laughs> Hoppy, I guess you know what this means, don't you? It means Slagle takes over the whole valley after all. It means we're ruined. You'd rather California died? Oh, no, Hoppy. Oh, no, 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 Then suppose you do what I suggested. Leave this to me and quit worrying about it. Kelly, I want you to follow my orders exactly. I'm going over there, where Slagle and California are. I'll go over with my hands raised. They'll be keeping their eyes on me. Think you and some of your men could manage to surround them without their knowing it while I'm doing that? I think so, but what could that do? You'll learn that later. Slago, I'm coming over there. Don't fire at me. I'll come over with my hands raised. Did you keep them raised? Keep your eyes on him, boys. The first time he tries anything, let him have it. I'm coming now. Any time. Just don't think you can outsmart us, that's all. California. Right around here, Hoppy. Well, Slago, I suppose you think you've won this hand. But how long do you think you can make your title to this land stick when we tell how you got it? About as long as you could make yours stick when I tell how you tricked me out of it, I reckon. Anyhow, this quit claim date will serve my purpose. By the time any court throws me off this land, your friend's cattle will have died for lack of water. So I still say they better buy me out at my figure. Maybe they will. Let's see what they have to say. All right, Kelly, take over. Take him away, Kelly. Charge him with trespassing, attempted murder, anything you can think of. We'll charge him with being sheepman. <laughs> That's the worst of all. You won't get away with this, Cassidy. I would have sold my title. Now I'll fight you through every court in the state. Before I get through with you and your friends here, you'll... You be won't even up. get started, Slago. Didn't I tell you? Tell me what? Your deed there to this land and the water. It isn't worth the paper it's written on. California had no right to sign it. On the way over here, we stopped at the Box L, and California transferred title back to Matt Liggett. So you're finished, Slago. Kelly, take him away. There's no stopping Hoppy when he sets out to help a friend. Even gunslingers and crooks scatter like sheep when Hoppy rides them down, bringing an end to trickery and deceit. And this story, Run, Sheep, Run. Don't miss Hopalong Cassidy's next thrilling tale of a princess who becomes a kidnapper and how Hoppy becomes a prince when, for a short while, Hoppy meets his match. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Run, Sheep, Run was written by Gibson Scott Fox with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. 
William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy, and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? Well, it's one that took place on the state plains of eastern New Mexico, where after the Lincoln County War, there were more gunslingers per ranch than cowboys. Jesse Chisholm's jingle bob spread ruled the Pecos country, but on the state plains, it was the Crossed Arrow Ranch. After a delivery of cattle in Texas, California and I headed back for the Bar 20. We planned to go as far as Albuquerque on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. At a good of our car had picked up a set of unusual guests. Sure, Hoppy, look at that pretty female up there. Ain't that uh, Princess Stuttgart, boss lady of the crossed era? Uh-huh, could be, California. She has a regular following. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, you mean them uh, hombres with her? Yeah. Reckon they're her guards. Folks say she's got more cows than Jesse Chisholm. And her land, <laughs> well, that runs from the Canadian River plumb down to Mexico. And not only that, she's supposed to be related to the king of, uh, uh, Frank of, uh, uh Fran... Uh... Francovia. Mm. But she doesn't look too happy about it. Uh-oh, one of her men is coming back here. Sorry, gents, gotta ask you to move you along to the other coach. The princess wants privacy. She, uh, what? The other car is full, stranger. There's no room. Make room. Much as we'd like to oblige the lady's whims, I don't think we'll stand all the way to Albuquerque. She ain't no lady. She's Princess Zelda Stuttgart. Well, I won't argue the point, but we're not... What going... do I have to do? Shoot you both and drag you out? Ha, <laughs> ha, get him. Wild Bill Hickok without whiskey. Never mind my age, Pop. The name's Devlin. Heck, Devlin, late of uh, Lincoln. That's right. Now, you're going to vamoose easy-like? No, we're not, Devlin. Some folks just don't hear good. Sorry. So am I. But you shouldn't flash guns on strangers. Here, what's going on? What happened to Devlin? Oh, he just tried to get the draw on Hoppy and get slugged for his pain. What? You beat Devlin's guns with your fist? That's the size of it. Riffraff, ruffians, fly and tip them. <laughs> well, after what they did to Devlin, and not me, Princess. I'm just your foreman, not a prize fighter. Devlin, get up. Strangers, didn't Devlin tell you I wanted privacy? Yeah, he told us, ma'am. Well, go. Shoo, Scott. Oh, Devlin, get up. Hoppy, you tell this kid we ain't her servant. Kid? Kid, you dare call me? Oh, Devlin, get up. Oh, oh. oh he's gonna make it. Oh, what hit me? You, why, you low down. No. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, ain't that plum awful. He tried to draw on Hoppy again. Devlin, how dare you let this brute strike you? Get up. Oh, let him stay down, ma'am. On his feet, he just gets into trouble. Wait. Wait, that face. I wonder. Lions, take a look at him. Is it possible we have found him? Note the strong Bulgarian jaw. The cold blue Bulgarian eyes. Uh, yeah. He does look a lot like those pictures. Turn around, mister. Your first name. What? Uh, now, wait. I... It's William, but what Turn a... around, I said. There. There, the light is better. Lions, it must be. We found him right under our nose. You found what? Who? You. You are Prince William of the royal family of Bergavia. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Meets His Match. Hoppy and California's train trip to Albuquerque is strangely interrupted by the fabulous Princess Iselda Stuttgart, young owner of the huge Crossed Arrow Ranch. She announces that Hoppy is really a prince. Stop, wait, hold up. Whoa! Shh, I will not hold up, whoa. I have positive information that the heir to the title, Prince of Bergavia, is here in New Mexico. You are that prince. You are the image of your grandfather, whose picture I have in my possession. Oh, uh, you really... Oh, of the... course not. She's loco. Fair prince, will you join my company? I have much to say to you. Now, let's be calm. My name's Cassidy. I'm a cowpuncher. I'm not a prince of Bergavia or any other place. Now, good day. But the family resemblance, it is unmistakable. You must be. Princess Zelda, understand me. I don't want a title. I just want to be plain hop-along Cassidy. You, you prefer horses to me? 
Me, the Princess Isolde? Well, now that you put it that way, well, so long, Princess. <laughs> Do we have to stay here in Albuquerque tonight? You know I just hate hotel rooms. Well, I'm not fond of myself, California. But I want to give that stone bruise on top of his hoof another day's rest before I ride him. Well, all right. Uh, but I sure don't like the fact that the princess and her crew get off from here, too. That female's got some kind of ideas about your still. Uh-huh. I wonder why she took so much interest in me. My being a prince or not a prince wouldn't cause that kind of interest. And she said she'd been looking for me. Then you are Prince William. Uh, hail to your fair prince. I'll hail uh, you, why you... <laughs> hey, you want a wrestler? I'll put a whole on you. Well, say the green lizard. What is this? Uh, uh-huh. Oh, who are you? I am Pasquale. Looking for a fight, Pasquale? Uh, join us. Oh, no, senores. No, no. Pasquale is a man of peace. I've not killed a man in uh, one, two, three... Uh, Oh, he's weak now. That's good for you, eh? Oh, see. Si. Sometimes it's only one day. Always there is some hombre that wants to fight. Who Pasquale is, uh, what you say, the sheep. Goat. Uh, that's what I say. But I'm not come to talk about sheeps. I'm come to tell you the most gracious princess, Isalda, wants honor you with dinner tonight. Hoppy, I told you. Uh-huh. Uh, Pasquale, tell the princess no thanks. Isn't that so? You come. He's so. We don't come. It's too bad. Pasquale gets so very mad. When Pasquale gets mad, all his vaqueros get mad too. You come. He's so. We come. Prince William, I am so delighted you decided to join us. Your invitation was hard to refuse. Dang near impossible. This is Papa Googie, my favorite uncle. Papa Googie is your uncle? Yeah, that is, I am called Papa Googie, but I am not Papa, but uncle. That is, the Papa call me. You understand, no? No. <laughs> That's the trouble with this country. No one can language to understand without I explain to myself what they are saying. You will have to excuse Papa Googie. He is newly arrived. But perhaps we should get down to business, Prince William. I don't suppose it'll do any good to tell you I'm not a prince. After the proof Devlin found in your saddlebags, not hardly. Proof? What are you talking about? The letters from your esteemed cousin, King of Bergavia. What? Uh, oh, now, Hoppy, the letters are addressed you, uh... to me? What? Well, that's ridiculous. They were addressed, dear cousin, naturally. But your possession of them, plus your family characteristics, is quite enough proof for me. <laughs> but I'm glad you're nice looking. It makes it much easier. Look, this joke has gone far enough. I'm no prince, but I sure want some questions answered. Why the gunman to threaten us? Who planted letters in my saddlebag? Gunmen? <laughs> you mean Devlin and Pasquale? Why, ever since my father died a year ago, they have been perfect lambs around me. Especially Devlin. That's interesting, but a little hard to believe. This whole thing is getting silly. Silly? Money is silly never. If you will only stop being so impatient and cooperate, I can assure you a handsome reward, fair prince. Like what? A bullet in the back? Oh, my dear, no. Papa Googie and I have decided your share will be one million dollars, paid in gold. Hoppy, my ears is busted. Gosh, you should have heard what I thought I heard. I did. Uh, you did? Well, well, come on, then. She's as loco as two ring-tailed buzzards in a barrel of white mule. Wait. You gentlemen should first take a peek at the doorway. Pasquale. Uh, devil. Yes, he's come with the bang bangs. What's the idea, Princess? Just that you aren't leaving, my dear Prince. I've no intentions of letting you escape and make me forfeit a fortune. Oh, lady, ain't you forgetting you already got a fortune? What's that got to do with it? I want more. Sorry, right. not even for a million dollars do I want to get tied up in this deal. But it is perfectly honest. I swear it is. Sure, sure. A Sunday school picnic where all is truth and light. That's why you got gunmen at the doors. Where's your foreman, Lyons? He's the only one not around. He upstairs searching our room? Lyons I sent home to take care of the ranch when Pasquale rode in. Please, this is very serious. 
and the offer of a million in gold stands. Devlin! Well, it can stand. Ish, the crazy is a prince man. Ish. Yes, princess? Is he going back to the ranch okay? He is not. He, he is proving to be stubborn. I didn't tell you before, but the reason I wanted him... Don't matter to me, princess. Whatever you do is right, you know that. Well, this is still going to come as a shock. I am sorry, but it means millions to me. Ish, I tell him. Why you stumble like a blushing maid, dearie? Well, uh, ha, 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 Papa Googie. I think the princess is in love. Cassidy! Prince, you are overstepping yourself. Devlin, you may as well know it. I was going to wait until we were home, but... Well, the Prince Cassidy and I are going to be married. Now. But, wait a uh, minute. But, uh, Zelda, you can't. He's a stranger. You just can't marry him. Please, stop all this babbling. Get me a minister, Devlin, and hurry. Tell Pasquil to leave his men around the hotel and at the stable where their horses are. I don't want them to escape. Bring the minister to my room. We'll hold the ceremonies there. Papa, my arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a wedding for a princess. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Uh, this is impossible. It's it's local. I won't do it. I will not. I... And do you, Iselda Marguerite Stuttgart? Take this man, William Cassidy, to be your lawful wedded husband? I... I do. Do you, William Cassidy, take this woman, the Zelda Marguerite Stuttgart, to be your lawful wedded wife? No. Had a boy, Hoppy. Sure he does, Preach. In five seconds, you're going to be married to the deadest bachelor in New Mexico, Cassidy. Now, do you answer right, or does this gun in your ribs go off? Shoot and be hanged. Better at least think of your partner. He gets it, too, if you don't say them words. And pronto. Uh, uh, this is highly irregular. Uh, perhaps... Uh, uh, Hoppy, don't mind me. Don't do it. Shut up. Well, Cassidy? I'll restate the question. And do you, William Cassidy, take this woman, his elder Marguerite Stuttgart, to be your lawful wedded wife? Uh, I do. Then I now pronounce you man and wife. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Meets His Match. On the way back to the Bar 20, Hoppy is taken to be Prince William of Bergavia by Princess Iselda Stuttgart, owner of the huge crossed Arrow Ranch. Further proof was found planted in Hoppy's saddlebags, whereupon the Princess Iselda promptly offered him a million dollars in gold to cooperate. Hoppy refused. But under threat of death to California, he gives in and finds himself now the husband of Princess Iselda. It is an unhappy newlywed that now rides to the crossed arrow. Gee, Hoppy, uh, oh, excuse me, Prince Hoppy, uh, this ain't so bad. Now you own half of the crossed arrow. You're rich. Yeah. My husband, we camp here for tonight. I'm afraid your night will be slightly uncomfortable. I shall have to have you tied up and guarded. Will you mind so terribly? <laughs> mind? Princess, I'll be delighted. Hoppy, this seems like a darn uncomfortable way to treat a prince and his partner. Uh, tell him to let us loose. These ropes hurt. <laughs> Not on your life. I know when I'm well off. Besides, as long as they're not watching us, we may be able to escape. Not watching? Hoppy, ain't you forgetting Mr. Heck Devlin is sitting there a-glaring at us? Hardly. I'm depending on him. You're... Huh? Sure. Hey, psst, Devlin. What is it? Come on over. Yeah? What do you want? I figure it's what you want, Devlin. You're in love with the princess, aren't you? I mean, very funny. Suppose I am. You'd like to see us out of the way, then. If you were to untie our ropes and look the other way, I can promise you I'd ride out of her life for good. All right, I'll do it. But by heaven, you'd better be right. Here, I'll cut your ropes. There. That does it. Ah, oh, thanks, Devlin. We'll never forget this. Wait. There's one thing about this you should know. Hoppy, Baswell's I... getting up. Sorry, Devlin. No time for it now. Come on, California. Good luck. Hey, what is this? The horses. Don't wake the saddle. Stop. 
Devlin, shoot! We must stop them! Come on, Indian! Harvey, that sure was an error escape. My legs is nearly busted from hugging this slick-sided critter. <laughs> well, it's daylight. I guess we can take a chance now, begin to circle around as soon as we get through this draw. Yeah, you mean we've been traveling away from the bar 20? Yeah, we had to lose Pasquale and his men. Ah, but we're free now. They'll never catch us. Bobby, there's men above us in the sides of the draw. Freeze and pull up those horses. It's lions. Welcome to the crossed arrow. <laughs> well, you're home, Prince. So you caught us. How'd you know we'd escaped? I didn't. The princess sent a fast rider ahead of the main party with the news about your marriage. I was heading out to meet him when you come riding along. You're lucky we didn't have no guns. You wouldn't have took her so easy. <laughs> I don't doubt it. You two have plenty of nerve. Well, here's where you stay. Uh, thanks a lot. Nothing like a dirty storehouse for comfort. You know, I can't figure you out, Cassidy. Why are you so set against getting a free million? Plus the prettiest young gal in the territory for a wife. You wouldn't understand, Lion. Well, you're nuts, Cassidy. This deal is nothing but good for you. Maybe I don't like being framed or forced into things. And, mister, I am warning you. If I don't get some satisfaction soon, I'm going to take you and this spread apart piece by piece, guns or no guns. Well, Lions, you better get and get fast. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, perhaps you're right. <clears throat> Hoppy, don't scare me like that. I thought you was going to jump him for sure, gun and all. I was. And next time, maybe I will. Yeah. Next time he comes in that door, I'm going to get the truth out of him if I have to swallow six slugs to do it. Hoppy, he's coming. Well, it's about time we've been here all day. We jump him, right? Yeah. yeah. Shh. He's opening the door. Help! Help! Murder! Help! Papa Googie. Uh, we thought it was a lion. Well, maybe it's just as well. You ought to know some answers, Papa Googie. Start talking. Talking? Shh, I'm being dead to kill. Only once I am talking. The prince, you are no gentleman. Never mind that. Tell me what this is all about or I'll... Uh, wait, wait. Shh. That is, I am here by. Go on and make it short. It is short. It is that my niece, your wife, she is nearly 21 age of years. Well, what's that got to do with this? Please, please, I am telling. I learned in Francovia a few months ago that the royal treasury voted my niece a dowry of 600 million pasitas. I hasten here to come. 600 million? Uh, uh, how much is that in American dinero? Uh, dinero? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In American, it is five million dollars. You mean she gets five million dollars when she gets married? Well, it is supposedly her husband that money he receives. Hoppy, that's you. You get five million now. It's not, not so, not quite. My niece feels that uh, one is a fair share to you. One four, she will keep for herself. But why me? Why was I picked? And what's all this business about my being a prince? Ah, but you are. That is why you are picked. According to ancient custom, to receive her dowry, the princess of Francovia must marry before she is 21 and enter the royal family of Bukavia. You are the last line of that member. But those letters were fakes. I'm not the prince. Papa Googie, tell me, what happens as a result of the marriage? Nothing is happening. You and my niece go to Francovia, show that you are married, which is 600 million for Cetus. So that's it. We have to go and leave the ranch. Papa Googie, take us to the princess at once. Uh, oh, should you not make trouble, Plenty? We won't, but someone else may. Come on, I'm going to bust a frame up wide open. And that's the story, Princess. Those letters were made up beforehand, and as soon as you found someone who looked the part, they were planted to make sure you were taken in. You mean they are forgeries? But, Papa Googie, you said the prince was here in New Mexico. Yes, many are men in New Mexico. He is here. But where? Prince, that is Mr. Cassidy. That is husband. Why was this done? Why were the letters planted? To make sure you married the supposed prince and left for Francovia. This Pasquale is a big-time outlaw. And running the southern half of your spread, he could clean you out. So, he's 
Let's squad at this fool of yours. No, stand very still or I shoot the ears off. Yeah, I accuse you, Pasquale. You tried to get half the cross there by winning the princess in marriage, but Devlin was the better man. She fell for him, and he was too dangerous for you to try and brace, so you framed me. But that's ridiculous. Pasquale didn't even know about my dowry and its conditions. It's true. How do you explain that, Senor Prince? Simple. The same way I explain how the letters were planted in my saddlebags before you arrived in Albuquerque. You weren't the brains of this plot. Only the guns and muscle. Yes, but if he is not, who is? The one man who had to know what was planned. The man who was to be left in charge of the ranch. Lyons. He knew about it. I told him. Check. Your foreman, Lyons. He and Pasquale cooked up the deal together. With you, your husband, and Papa Googie gone, they would have stolen every head of stock you have. The biggest wrestling scheme on record. Ah, so this is the story. You can prove this thing? <laughs> Naturally. Lyons confessed fast when he thought I was going to, well, persuade him. California's guarding him now. I see. He's playing you for a hard man, senor. And you know the cards when you see them. You pick bad partners, Pasquale. Lyons showed the white feather the first time we met. He talked all right. Talked you right in the prison. Isn't that so? Come in, senor. Quickly, in front of me. Wait a minute. Now, now, you will act as shield. You'll be very careful as we move. Don't, Pasquale. It's not his fault. If I hadn't been such a greedy little fool, I'd never have married him. Listen, Thor, not your fault, she says. You're the one thing that we don't think of. An honest man. Oh, he's fully. Pasquale, you can't get away. Devlin will blow Devlin, bah. You're a very smart man. It's too bad you will now be very dead one, too. That is as far enough. Now I make a widow of your lovely wife. Pasquale! Darren! Stand still, Cassidy. You are my shield, remember? Drop those guns, Pasquale. I'm coming for you. Come along. I am willing. You can kill Cassidy for me. Get back, Devlin. He'll kill you. Get back. No. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Cassidy, you all right? Sure, but Pasquale's mighty dead, I'm afraid. That was nice shooting. Hey, you were hit. I just winged my arm. You acted quick falling like that. Gave me just the second I needed. Your men got Pasquale's vicaros in hand? Like a bunch of lambs. There won't be any trouble without Pasquale to lead them. And a few of my men that were for lions have left for cooler climates. <laughs> that reminds me. I had to go tell Lyons that Pasquale confessed everything. But I was listening outside. You told Pasquale that Lyons had done the confessing. I didn't exactly tell you the truth. Pasquale knew Lyons was a coward. He had to believe me. Oh, Devlin, Devlin, you're wounded. Oh, it's all my fault. I, I feel like such a little fool. You sure acted the part, honey. But you won't anymore. You're going to be a lady if it kills you. Well, I was grateful. But if you're going to act so impertinent, Mr. Devlin, I'll... You'll shut up first thing. And come here. Oh, yes. Yes. Hmm. What a spot for a husband. Oh, oh, I forgot. I can't kiss you. I'm his wife. Shut up and pucker up. That minister was a phony. I hired him to fake the marriage. He's really Albuquerque's undertaker. Undertaker? undertaker. I had to, hmm. honey. If I tried to stop you from marrying Cassidy, you were just stubborn enough to fire me and really get hitched. You ain't marrying nobody but me, savvy? I savvy, boss. Cassidy, I, uh, I'd admire it if you'd stand up for me. Ha, 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 stand up for you? Man, I'm going to give the bride away. <laughs> well, Hoppy's royal welcome turned into a not-so-welcome brush with death, and it didn't take long to prove that Hoppy hadn't met his match. Hoppy and California ride into another exciting adventure when they meet up with a girl gunfighter and Indians on the warpath and discover that Apaches don't need guns. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy Meets His Match was written by Herb Purdom, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. 
All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? It's one that took place down in Louisiana Bayou country. California and I had brought a shipment of saddle and thoroughbred horses to a breeder named B. Levasseur. As the last stage of our journey was by a Mississippi River boat, he was to meet us at the landing in New Orleans. Uh, excuse me, would you be Mr. Cassidy, Mr. Carlson? Yes, I'm Hopalong Cassidy, ma'am. This is California Carlson. You're from B. Levasseur? I am B. Levasseur. The B's for Blanche, which you may call me. I detest the formality of these southern aristocrats, don't you? Oh, uh, yeah, yes. Well, we brought the horses. Yes, I see them. They're very nice, too. My men will take them on to the plantation. You and I can go to the bank and complete the arrangements. You wish cash? Oh, a draft would be fine. Mm. I figured on sending it back to the bar 20 by mail. California and I are going to stay in New Orleans for a few days and see the sights. You're going to stay? Well, that's wonderful. You'll be guests of the Lavasseur Plantation while you're in Louisiana. But uh, we kind of planned on staying at the St. Charles. Nonsense. I won't hear of it. You'll be much more comfortable at our plantation. That's mighty thoughtful of you, ma'am. Oh, you cowboys. Let's drop the ma'am. The name is Blanche, remember? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Blanche. Mm. Not handsome, but lots of character in your face. You a bachelor, California? Well, uh, sure. Uh... Don't hate women, do you? Well, well no, I don't. Uh, well, uh, uh... well, good. You two can ride out with me in the carriage. We uh, we can get better acquainted on the way. We have our own horses, ma'am. Uh, Blanche. <laughs> They'll be well taken care of, Hopalong. My, don't men out west have given names? <laughs> when we're born, we do. But somehow we usually get a new handle by voting age. <laughs> Most people call me Hoppy. <laughs> Hoppy. Okay, Hoppy, Hoppy it shall be. Well, now, shall we go? My cousin will be waiting for me. Your cousin? Yes, Philippe, the Marquis de Lavasseur. It was his plantation before I took it over. The war ruined him, you see. Uh, then you ain't a native here. You talk Yankee lingo. No, I was raised in Philadelphia. Philippe was educated in England, but he's lived most of his life in Louisiana. We're French only in name and uh, our emotional capacity. You seen a doctor about it? Uh, no, I've seen you. Me? <laughs> <laughs> Shucks, I ain't good for nothing but tending horses and cows. Oh, I can train you. <laughs> oh, it's going to be good to have you around the plantation. Has such a frightening atmosphere lately. Frightening? In uh, what way? I, I'm not sure, Hoppy. Just a feeling of foreboding and the unrest among the field hands, of course. They're causing you trouble? No. No, it's all very vague, I know, but they're restless, they're nervous. The activity of Haggard's responsible for it, I know. He's been conducting secret ceremonies and rituals down in the bayou. Just a minute. Uh, who's Hagger? Hagger? Hagger is a witch. A witch? Oh, that's silly. Is it? I wish I were sure. You see, Hagger's known to be a priestess of the oldest of black arts. Voodoo. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and the thrilling story, 
Bayou drums mean death. Hoppy and California have been invited to be the guests of Levasseur Plantation upriver. Things are not easy at the plantation. The activities of a strange old woman known as Haga, priestess of voodoo, are causing trouble. Now the carriage is drawing up at the big plantation house. Uh, Josh, put the carriage away. Well, gentlemen, here is Levasseur House. At your command and service. It's magnificent, ma'am. Blanche. <laughs> yes, I find it so. I spent a great deal of money putting it back into good shape. How come it's sitting up in stone piles like this? Well, the danger of floods always present in this country, California. And two, being raised helps keep snakes from entering the house. Uh, snakes? Uh, you got rattlers here? No, no rattlesnakes, California. But plenty of cottonmouth water moccasins. They're just as poisonous. Worse. They don't warn before they strike. Uh, that's true. Well, let's go into the library. Oh, here's my cousin, Philippe. We have guests. Oh, hello, Blanche. I was worried about you. Greetings, gentlemen. Welcome to Levasseur. Hop along, Cassidy, California Carlton, my cousin, Philippe Marquis de Levasseur. Happy to know you, sir. That goes for me, too. Uh, thank you. I hope you are planning an extended visit. Ah, uh, Blanche was very kind to invite us here, but I'm afraid we can't stay very long. I keep forgetting that Blanche is owner now of Levasseur Plantation. It is hard, you understand. Oh, now, Philippe, please don't talk like that. Perhaps our guests would like a glass of sherry before dinner. Nothing for me, Blanche. I would like to get cleaned up a bit, though. Oh, certainly. I'll have you shown to your rooms. But hurry back down, won't you? I want to show you the treasure of Levasseur House after dinner. Hey, now, Blanche, they're not interested in that. Not interested in a priceless gem with a bloody history nonsense, Philippe? Of course they are. As you wish, my dear. It's a gem, you say? <laughs> it's a gem, all right. A ruby. Hagar named it right. It's the death ruby. <laughs> Hoppy, for goodness sake, are you going to take all evening washing? Uh, uh, nope, it's all yours, California. Now, where'd you toss our war bags? I need a clean shirt, and so do you. But I just put this one on day four yesterday. It's uh, practically clean. California. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, all right, Hoppy. Uh, the war bags are over behind the bed. Uh-huh, thanks. Darn nonsense. Hmm. Wish I was back herding cattle. They don't care if you wear a clean shirt. Don't care if you even wear a shirt. In fact, don't care at all. Hmm. Cattle are sure nice. California, come here, quick. Uh, what is it? Uh, well, I'll be a three-horn maverick. Dolls, ain't they cute? Hardly cute, California. They're voodoo dolls. Voodoo dolls? Uh, what's them pins sticking in them? A sign of death. Yeah? Uh, <clears throat> when do we leave? Not for a while. And keep quiet about these dolls. I want to find out why we're being warned. <laughs> Uh, that was a meal like none I've ever eaten. Hmm. Sure wish the grub was like that back at the bar 20. <laughs> I'm so glad you liked it, California. Would you gentlemen care for your demitasse in the library? Well, that's kind of silly, ain't it? Of course not. We'll go in there to have our demitasse. You ain't got yours here with you? To state the obvious, no. Well, I'll be darned. California, a demitasse is a small cup of coffee. Uh, yeah? Uh, well, why in heck didn't he say so? Sure, sure, I'll go along with that. Uh, bring on the demitasse, you mister. Uh, you take my arm, California. What for? Are you tired? Take it. Uh, uh, yes, I'm. Ah, that's it. Oh, you're very strong, California. Yeah, I, I am. Oh, yeah. Well, here we are. Have seats, everyone. I'll bring the exhibit. Uh, Philippe, would you take down the picture? Well, uh, as you wish. This isn't really a safe, but it serves. A hidden panel under a picture. Yes, isn't it melodramatic? See, I pushed the panel aside. Here it is. The death ruby itself. Take a look. Wow, it's as big as a ripe buzzard egg. What a gruesome simile. That's a beautiful stone. So red. Almost like blood. Mm-hmm. Pigeon's blood is the term used to describe this type of ruby. It is very beautiful. Well, we may as well enjoy it now. I intend selling it soon. Hey, Blanche, what are you saying? He took it excited. I can use the money. And it is mine, remember? Uh, yes, yes, I know. But it is a Levasseur heirloom. 
It has remained in our family for three generations. I said I'm selling it, Philippe. That settles the matter. With enough mystery and curses around this place without keeping this jinx. Brought violent death to four men before our family bought it. And already two levasseurs have paid the penalty of possessing it. I don't intend to be the first. You mean you actually believe a curse follows the owner of this ruby? Well, I, I didn't until lately, but now I have the feeling that I'm in terrible danger. Well, nothing's going to hurt you while Hoppy and me's around. I know. You will be my protector, California. But I, I feel sure if I sell this ruby, that danger will leave. A man's coming out to buy it in a few days. This idea of your being in danger is silly. Your nerves are upset. The drums. Drums? What drums are those, Philippe? Voodoo drums. Off in the bayous. Hagger's doings. She's been encouraging a return to voodooism. Has all the field hands aroused. Some swear they've seen zombies and the like. They have been seen, Master. Uh, Hagger. Uh, 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 Hoppy, I uh, wish we'd our guns drawn. Guns would be useless, man of cattle. Bullets cannot harm me. Hagger, what are you doing in my house? I told you to stay away from here. I have come to warning, madam. Warning that death is to strike your house tonight. Death? Voodoo death. And tonight, Hagger knows. Hagger has spoken. <laughs> Hoppy, we gotta get out of here. This place is too spooky for me, and that witch, Hagger, I didn't like the way she kept staring at us. <laughs> California, there's no such thing as spooks. Besides, what could she have against us? Here's our room. Well, Hagger ain't quite all Hoppy. This Blanche, she's got some funny notions, keeps waiting on me, taking care of me like I was plumb helpless. Come on, hurry up and light that candle. This dark ain't cheerful. I can't find it. It was over here on the table. But, California, listen. What? What was that? Something's in this room with us. Easy. I got the candle. Here. There. California in front of you. Don't move. It's a snake. Who's moving? Careful. He's ready to strike. If I can just get him with this heavy picture like this. Oh, brother. You got him, Hoppy, you got him. He's killed. Where's my gun? I ain't going around naked no more, no, sir. That forty five's going to sleep with me. That may not be a bad idea, but our worst danger is not a snake. Well, it'll do for me. No, oh, that cotton mouth had help getting into our room. And I know that candle was moved. If we'd kept blundered around... Never we'd... mind. I can guess what would have happened. We'd have both been bit. Hoppy, let's get back to where snakes rattle. Why, California, you sound scared. I am. But it ain't only snakes and voodoo. That Blanche, she's getting some mighty strange ideas. Well, maybe we'll move into New Orleans tomorrow. At least we blocked Haggis' prophecy about death coming to this house tonight. Yeah, and that death is something I just love to block. Especially mine. <laughs> It'll ruin her stock when it gets around that she failed. Hoppy! And that came from downstairs. Come on, that was someone dying. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Bayou Drums Mean Death. Hoppy and California's arrival at Levasseur Plantation in the Louisiana bayous has set off a series of strange events. First, they find voodoo dolls marking them for death. Then, after Hagar, the voodoo priestess appears and warns of death, Hoppy and California narrowly avoid a poisonous snake in their room. A few seconds later, a scream rings out from downstairs. In the library, this way, California. Blanche, Philippe, who's that on the floor? Oh, Hoppy, it's Josh. He's dead. The man who drove us out from New Orleans, Hoppy. Yes. Yeah. What killed him? There's no mark on him. I'm afraid. Yes, yes it is, Philippe. You know it is. Uh, what's she saying? What is uh, it? It's, it's voodoo. Hagar warned us. We should have known it would come. But why Josh? Who'd want to kill Josh? Now, Blanche, try and control yourself. California, help Blanche to her room. Blanche, do you have any sedatives? Yes. Yes, I 
do with my room? Take one and try to rest. Come on, Blanche. Uh, take my arm. Thank you, Belfort. I'm afraid my cousin is becoming quite attached to uh, your man, Hoppy. He's not my man. He's my partner, Philippe. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess we'd better take Josh's body away. What are you looking at? Oh, nothing. Uh, where shall we take him? I guess the tack room will do. He has no kin. We can bury him tomorrow. Tomorrow? Aren't you going to get the sheriff? To investigate a voodoo death? No. In this country, when a man dies without a mark, after a voodoo warning, we bury him deep and forget him. That way we stay alive ourselves. <laughs> Philippe, stop that pacing. After last night, I'm nervous enough. Uh, very well, my dear. Oh, California, I'm so glad you're here. My nerves are just shattered. I'm, I'm frightened. No, Blanche. Oh, Blanche, I... stop it. Your constant babbling of fears makes us look ridiculous. Remember, the blood of the Bonapartes flows in your veins. Shut up, Blake. What do you mean? Oh, very well. But, my dear cousin, try and have some family pride. Must you spill over like a leaky dam in front of your guests? Philippe, that's enough. Now get out. I'm going. Remember, we have a burial to attend as soon as the men finish digging Josh's grave. What effect is the death of Josh going to have on the unrest among your field hands, Blanche? I don't know, Hoppy, but it won't be good. He's dying in our house. We'll be blamed. Blanche, uh, I think you should call this burial off today. What? It's a matter that needs an official investigation. Investigation? I didn't want to tell you before, but I think Josh was murdered. And not by voodoo. Are you sure? How do you know? I'm not sure. Come with me. I want to see his body. There's something peculiar about one of his fingers. Uh, Blanche! Blanche! He's gone! Well, well, who's gone? Josh! His body has disappeared. Well, that ends the problem of burial. I guess I may as well dismiss the hands. They came in for the funeral. California, you better go with him. It may stir them up if they uh, take Josh's disappearance wrong. Sure, Hoppy, and uh, I'm wearing my gun. And see that you don't use it. Oh, no, Hoppy, uh, yeah, yeah, all right, Hoppy. Justin Snake. Be careful, California. Blanche, do you have any heavy gloves? Gloves? Yes, I have some I use for gardening. And maybe a pair of pliers? Yes, I'll get them. What are you going to do? I have a hunch about how Josh was killed. I'll need a few minutes in your library where he died, alone. Uh, where's Hoppy? Well, he'll be back in just a moment. How did the hands take the news of Josh's body vanishing? Badly. Very badly. They turned so ugly. I was afraid California would have to use his gun after all. Not me. I sure wasn't going to fight all them people. You sure hire a mess of them. Must have been hundreds. Hundreds? Philippe, then they... Yes, Blanche. It was a gathering of all the workers' families in this section of the bayous. But it probably doesn't mean much. You know how they love to have an excuse to get together. No, not this time. This time it's not good. Philippe, do you realize what will happen if Hagger actually stirs them into violence? If they revolt, every plantation owner in the bayous will be massacred. Oh, it ain't that bad, Blaine. California, you don't know. They're simple people, but very superstitious. Under the stimulus of voodoo practices and Hagger's ranting, a revolt could be ghastly. They outnumber us 50 to 1, California. And that's the danger. But Blanche is letting her imagination run away with her. Oh. Blanche, I have bad news for you. What now? Your ruby. It's gone. Hoppy, do you have to go tonight? It's nearly dark. The sheriff has to be notified, Blanche. You can't ignore robbery and murder. Well, well can't California stay with me? Oh, no, no, no. I gotta go. I don't know, Hoppy. I gotta go. I, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you better go with me. We'll be back as soon as we can, Blanche. So long. It's awful dark, Hoppy. You think we'll hit the main road soon? Not long. Not wait. Pull up. Hey, hey, what's that light? Torch light across the bayou. Come on and be quiet. Drums. Hoppy, them's voodoo drums. It's some kind of ceremony. I can see Hagger. That ain't all. Look at all them men. Shh. Listen. It is time, my people. Listen to me. Listen to me. Hagger, your priest is 
the voodoo commandments. Arise, revolt. My people, here are the guns. Arm yourselves. This to prevent the plantation to kill. Kill! Kill! Great some guns. California, you'll have to get back into one of the Levasaurs. I'll try to break through for help. Papa, you can't. The bayous between here and New Orleans are full of haggis, man. I've got to try it. Hagar hasn't stopped this night. It'll be a bloody massacre. Go on, run for it. All right, Hoppy. But what do we do if you don't get help? What can you do? Make a fight of it. So long, partner. <laughs> Open up, it's me. Yes, California, come in. The hands are revolting. Oh. Peggy gave them guns. Hoppy went to get help if he can break through. Only he can't. We'll have to fight if he don't. You got any guns? Where's oh, Philippe? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Philippe is gone. When he heard the drums, he, he rode off after you. Oh, must have missed him while I was in that bayou. Oh, that dang digit. He'll get killed for sure. You saw Haggard giving men guns? Blanche, Hoppy and me were sitting right in the middle of a hull pastel of them. Oh, that was a very dangerous thing to do. You're so brave. Oh, it weren't nothing special. Oh, it was too. Look, you got any guns? You and me will have to fight in a minute. Oh, I'll never fight with you. Darn it, Blanche. You ain't paying no attention. Oh. Uh, show me them spare guns if there is any. Anything you say, California, covers me. I wish that moon had come up. You do? Sure, we could see to shoot a lot better. Oh, I was hoping you were getting romantic. Romantic? With Hoppy maybe dead and us about to fight a thousand men led by a crazy woman? <laughs> yes, I guess you're right. Here's the gun cabinet. Yeah, we're sure gonna need them, I'm afraid. There, you grab all the shells you can carry and bring them over to the window in front. Yes, California. Holy cow, they're nearly on us. And no help around. Hoppy must have been caught. Then we're... Oh, California, we can't stand them off by ourselves. Sure, I know that, but don't harp on it. Oh, I, I only wish there was more time. Oh. oh, here they come. There must be a million of them. We ain't got a prayer. California, I'll, I'll try to be of help. Yeah, I know you will, Blanche. Better get yourself another window. Yes. California, look. They put out their torches. Yeah, get ready. They're going to attack. Try to pick off that witch hag. California, look. I am, but I don't believe it. Must be the voodoo leader. A black rider with a head of flame. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Well, did you see that? That flaming headed spook talked him into going home. And, and look, that spook riders are coming. Why, he's taking off his head. It, it's Hoppy. Oh, let's go meet him. Doggone, I should have known. Oh. California, Blanche, it's me, Hoppy. Oh. Hoppy. Oh, is that really you? <laughs> Just call me Ra, the fire god. Well, with that coat over your head and that torch stuck up through the neck, you looked it. <laughs> well, it worked anyhow. I told them voodoo was bad medicine, that Haggah was an evil witch. But the sheriff will want her now, I imagine. The sheriff? Uh, what does he want her for? For murder. She had a fight with a man who started this whole business and stabbed him to death. I couldn't break through to New Orleans, so I kept tabs on Haggah. I saw her meet him. I'm sorry, Blanche. It was Philippe. Philippe? Oh, no, I don't believe it. Ah, but it's true. I found a poison needle he planted in the frame of the picture covering the panel where you kept the ruby. Josh was trying to steal the ruby. His murder was planned to be yours. But why? Hoppy, why? The ruby was a fake. Philippe had stolen the original to buy those guns for Haggard. When you planned to sell it, he was forced to try and get rid of you. First by murder, then by starting the revolt prematurely. He had a bad kink in his brain, Blanche. Wanted to play Napoleon and lead an army of rebellion. Haggah was only a blind. Then uh, all that uh, voodoo stuff, it uh, weren't uh, real at all? All a fake, California. Yes. I see. <laughs> but Haggah was still right. 
was a death ruby after all. Would you excuse her? Surely. Hey, uh, where's she going? Let her alone, California. It's been a shock to her. Shock? Mm, uh, that reminds me. I better get my horse and ramble while I can. What? Well, the danger's all over. You can stay now. The heck I can. I'm in worse in danger than ever. Worse danger than being murdered? You're dang tootin'. It's called uh, matrimony. <laughs> <laughs> Well, California seems to be fearful of nothing but matrimony at this point, even though he and Hoppy have just tangled with voodoo and found that bayou drums mean death. In their next thrilling adventure, Hoppy and California are mistaken for members of a bandit gang, and the mistake almost becomes a necktie party for them when Hoppy gets involved in the cleanup of Caribou Mesa. Up Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Bayou Drums Mean Death was written by Herb Purdom, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? Ah, uh, this is a story that goes to show you never can tell when a trick or two you've learned may come in handy and even save a few lives, including your own. Well, anyway, we call this cleanup of... Caribou Mesa. California and I were riding toward the frontier settlement of Joshua Flat up in the high range country when I noticed something up the trail away. Hey, California, look there. Up the crest of the ridge. Ah, uh, be there. Must be a dozen of them. They're riding this way as if the old Nick himself was chasing them. Let's pull off the trail and get out of sight behind those boulders. The way they're pounding that bunch of cayuses down the trail, they're certainly not going to stop and pass the time of day. Well, they won't be able to see us here. Say, that sure was a fast-riding bunch of hombres. Yeah. Now, where do you suppose they was going in such a rush, Hoppy? I don't know, California, and it's no worry of ours. So let's be on our way. We're only about a mile from Joshua Flat. Yeah. Ah. Uh, well, I'll be diggity, diggity turned. Look ahead, Hoppy. Here comes another bunch of them. Well. Now, this is getting interesting. We'll have to see what it's all about. Yeah, you want to pull behind them rocks again? No, we'll stay right here on the trail and find out what's going on. Hey, let's go! Come on, keep coming out. Don't take no chances. What are you men up to? Yeah. Save your breath, you shivers, pole catch. You'll need it. And get your hands up, both of you. Clear. Ah, uh, look, stranger, what are you making a mistake? Oh, we're making a mistake, are we? Well, let me tell you two sidewinders something. It's you who made the mistake, right. dumping out of that bunch of thieving bandits and trying to backtrack and maybe ambush you. <laughs> ambush you? Well, it's plain you don't know who we are. Yeah, we know who you are. 
to a Trigger Tompkins Stephen Rustler. That's right. Yeah, and that's all this year Bozzy needs to know to string up the both of you. All right, men. Get the ropes around there, Nick. All right, yeah, come on now, let it go. You've got a fight on your hands. You can't do this to me and hop along, Cassidy. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Cleanup of Caribou Mesa. Hoppy and California have run into a posse which has mistaken them for members of a gang the posse was pursuing. Hoppy and California have been seized, and the posse is ready to hang them. Hold it! Hold it, man! Just a second here, just a second. Stranger! I heard you call out a name there. Did you say Hopalong Cassidy? That's my name. This is my partner, California Carlson. Well, knock me down. Huh. We sure was making a mistake. Well, uh, we accept your apology. Now, you better get these men of yours to stand back, because I ain't entirely cooled off yet. All right, men, all right. Quiet, quiet. Well, uh... I hope there's no hard feelings, Cassidy. No, not at all. But I'm interested in knowing what's going on. Suppose you do some explaining. Uh, sure, Cassidy, sure. Uh, let's see we all uh, get down and have a powwow here. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm interested myself in hearing how come I nearly got my neck stretched. <clears throat> well, uh, Cassidy, first of all, I'm Glenn Goff. I'm the deputy sheriff over at Joshua Flat. These here men are all settlers hereabouts. And you were riding as a posse, chasing that bunch who passed us a while back. Yeah, there was uh, some of uh, Trigger Tompkins' gang. Who is this Trigger Tompkins? Oh, just a bad hombre. Moved up here with his gang about a month ago. Come from somewhere uh, south of here, we figure. Mm-hmm. Just what have they been up to, Goff? Shooting up the town, robbing anything that ain't guarded. Rustling horses and cattle all over the range. And that ain't all. Now, what kind of peace officers you got around here that let such things go on? Well, uh, you see, I'm, I'm the only deputy, and we're we're all peaceable folk hereabouts. Uh, besides, uh, Tompkins' gang is a shifty lot of varmints. All varmints I ever heard of is shifty. That ain't no reason not to stomp them out. How about that, Goff? What's been done about this? Well, uh, uh, here's how it is. You see, uh, uh, there's been no way of knowing just where and when Tompkins' gang ever was going to strike. That's so, Cassidy. Uh, they come storming down off the mesa like a bunch of Comanches, just when we least figure on them. Sure. If we guard the town, then they hit the rangers. And if we watch the range, they raid the town. What about this posse here? You must have been expecting them today. Well, I was coming to that, Casty. It wasn't that we was expecting a raid. We we got this bunch together on account of on account of what happened to Annie Culver. Annie Culver? What is all this? Old Bill Culver's daughter. The gang come on Annie riding alone the other day, and they they took her off to the place they got up on Caribou Mesa. Kidnapping, yeah. eh? That's mighty serious. Are they demanding a ransom? No, they ain't. And this shows you just how sharp that Trigger Tompkins is. He figures as long as he's got the gal up there, we don't dare make a move to get him. Yeah, if see? we let him get away with this, it's like giving him the settlement and everything in it. Yeah, you see how it is, Casty? Tompkins not only got the gal, he's got a lot of men up there on Caribou Mesa. Yeah, and they're a mean lot. And Trigger Tompkins himself is worse than all of them put together. But what can we do? Well, we got to go up there and wipe out the whole lot of them. No, not while they got Annie. No, so oh, we're not going to take any chance of Annie. All right, all right, uh, take it easy. You men, uh, who can tell me something about this place the gang has? Well, uh, young Bob Jeffrey here can tell you, Cassidy. Go ahead, Bob, tell him. Well, Mr. Cassidy, it's like this. Annie Culver's my girl. And when I heard they took her off, I... Well, I went up on the mesa to scout around and see if maybe I could save Annie. That took a lot of courage, Bob. Oh, shucks, Mr. Cassidy. Didn't do any good. They caught me right off. It was just by luck I managed to escape in the middle of the night and get back to town. Did you see much of the place, Bob, uh, what it was like? Well, I got a good look, all right. There's a main cabin where they got Annie and a separate bunkhouse just in the middle of the mesa. I see. How well protected is the place? Well, the mesa's pretty hard to get to, and they got guards all around the rim. They have, huh? 
Well, they're not taking any chances of being surprised by anyone approaching the place. Well, it's not only the guards. There's lots more men keeping herd on all the steers and horses they got up there. Hmm. So it's not only a question of getting up on the mesa without being spotted, but of getting past the men watching over all the cattle they've rustled. That's right. I tried to slip in through a narrow pass where there's only one guard, but you know, he caught me right off. But suppose you had got past him, Bob. Would you have made your way to the cabin where you say they're keeping Annie? Well, not a chance, Mr. Cassidy. Trigger's men are thicker than thorns on a cactus bush. You see, Cassidy? Maybe the only thing to do is to collect a real big posse right up there and shoot it out. I don't think so, Goff. Not as long as they got the girl. Her life would certainly be in danger. A mass attack won't work. Well, uh, maybe you've got a better idea, huh? I think I have. Tonight, California and I go up to Caribou Mesa alone. Well, what are you saying, Cassidy? Why, oh, man, that'd be suicide. No, it won't. Now, listen, Goff. Here's what we'll do. California and I'll slip in among the herd up there and stampede them. We'll ride in among the stampeding horses and cattle. Oh, I'm beginning to see what you mean. Tompkins' men will be plenty busy, and then you'll be able to get to the cabin where they're holding the Cole Miguel. That's it. Once we get back with her, your men can take over Caribou Mason while the gang is still scattered. Pick them off as they come back from rounding up the herd. Well, it might work. Yeah. Only, uh... uh... It's going to be mighty dangerous for you, Cassidy. Uh, I guess you don't know how long, Cassidy, mister. Adventures is bread. Excitement is butter. And danger, why, to him that's like strawberry jam to top it all. California, there's a small pass to the mesa where Bob said there was only one guard. Yeah, I only hope he don't start any fast shooting before we flush him out. Uh, once we get the cattle excited, he'll come out on the run. I'll go up the slope on foot. There's plenty of cover for me. Here, you leave my horse when you go in. I'll be ready for my signal. Count on me. When I hear the hoot owl cry you give, I'll be on my way through the pass. That's it. Well, I'm off. Hmm. I hope this concerned idea works. Hot. Shh. Old still yon recourse. That's it. Get up. I'm a rip snorting, fire eating terror. And I, uh, I, I stole me a horse that'll make all the boys jealous. <laughs> Yippee! Just wait till they see this horse I got. Who's that? And I, uh, uh, who's who? Me? Come on, you. Speak up. I got you covered. No, oh, how'd you like that? He don't recognize who I am. I'm the best little old horse wrestler Jackie Tompkins got. That's who. Uh, well, you sure took a load on uh, drinking whiskey, whoever you are. Well, come on along here so I can get a good look at you. Sure, sure, you you want to take a look at me. Well, go on and look. Say, I never saw you before. Oh! <laughs> Ah, nice performance, California. Uh, you sure slipped up behind him quiet, Hoppy. And the neat way you clipped him there, he'll be sleeping sound till sun up. Well, let's get up on the mesa. And remember, ride with your body flattened out low on your horse's back. I'll do it, Hoppy. But I just hope this here stampeding trick is going to work, or we'll be a couple of, uh, dead hombres. <laughs> Nothing will stop these critters now. Right. Let's bear off to the edge of the herd. The cabin should be over there. Hoppy. Hoppy, there's a light. Must be the cabin window. Yeah, that's it, all right. There's a corral. We can turn our horses in there with the others where they won't be noticed. Good idea. Then we'll know just where to find them if we need them in a hurry. Yeah. Here we are. All right. Turn them in. Right. Get in there. Get in. Now, let's see how the land lies. You see anyone? Nope. Everything looks clear between here and the cabin. All right. Let's get over to that window, keep in the shadows. I'll follow right behind you, Hoppy. Keep down now. I want to look in the window. Here's hoping they ain't been watching us out of that window all this time. Quiet now. The girl's in there. As far as I can see, there's only one man guarding her. What are we waiting for, then? Let's bust on in. All right. Get your gun out. I'm going to try the door. Maybe it's unlocked. Ready? I'm all set, Hoppy. 
Here goes. Get your hands up, you, and drop that rifle you're holding. Miss Culver, are you all right? No. No, go away. It's a trap. What? Hit Charlie. Get up, you two. We got you covered all around. Drop your guns. Well, it seems like we were expected. That's right, Cassidy. We've been expecting you. We knew all about that stampeding trick of yours. As you see, it didn't work. It sure stampeded off every critter you didn't have corral, though. Sure, that much of it worked because we didn't know just how you figured out getting past the guard. But my men will have every one of them back by sunup. Lots of things can happen between now and sunup. Yeah, lots of things can happen to you. And I've still got five hands besides myself to handle you two. You had things all figured out, didn't you? That's right. And the important thing is we've still got the girl. And now we've got Hop Along Cassidy himself and his partner. Tom can test spies in Joshua Flat, Mr. Cassidy. He's known all along you were going to try to come here. So that's it. A spy right in the posse. And this, I take it, is Trigger Tompkins. That's right. What are you staring at so hard, Cassidy? You, Tompkins. I'm getting that face of yours clear in my mind. I like to remember the bad hombres I intend to put out of circulation. Huh? Well, Cassidy, we'll see about that. Lucky, right, take him sir. out to the bunkhouse. Right. Tie him up and lock him up in the back room. Right. We'll see you two later and make sure you're out of circulation. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Cleanup of Caribou Mesa. Hoppy and California have stampeded Trigger Tompkins' herds on Caribou Mesa, and his gang of guards are scattered around up the animals. But in going into the cabin to rescue Annie Culver, Hoppy and California stepped into a trap. Now, disarmed and tied up, they are locked in the bunkhouse. I don't see how we're going to get out of this mess, Hoppy. They get us hog-tied, hand and foot. That's uh, a mess, all right. But it's not over yet, California. Not over? Tompkins and his gang already so far in bed with the law, they ain't going to worry none about a couple of more crimes, like murdering us. Yeah, I know. I've been thinking about how we're going to get out of here before Tompkins has a chance to get around to us. But we're tied up, Hoppy. The room's locked. And, uh, uh, and there's that guard just outside the door. What can we do? If we can trick the guard to come rushing in here, we'll make him untie us. Make him untie us? Oh, you ain't making sense, Hoppy. Uh, you, or are you? I think I am. Listen. Can you roll yourself over here to me? Come on, try it. Sure, sure, I'll try. That's it. Come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. A uh, little more. Uh, here I am. Ah, that's fine. Now listen. We took our guns, but they we still have our cartridge belts. So what good does that do? Uh? Never mind. Get some cartridges out of my belt. How? My hands are tied. I'll do it with your teeth. You got them in, haven't you? Yeah, I got... Oh, oh no, Hoppy. I Get as many as you can into your mouth. Now, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Anything you say, Hoppy. I... Work fast. One. Come on, come on. Two. Three. Three and four. Five. That's enough. That's good. Now, roll over to that iron stove in the corner and spit those cartridges into the fire and duck. Mm-hmm. When the bullets start exploding, that guard will come rushing into the room. From then on, leave it to me. Now, go on. That's it. Bullets in the fire, Hoppy. Good. Steady now. Hey, what's up? Not oh. It worked, Hoppy. Yeah, sit on him. That'll keep him from reaching for that shotgun he dropped when I tripped him. Yeah. All right, Hoppy. I'm sitting on him with my feet nice and convenient to bash his head in. Fine. Now he's going to untie me. Come on, you, and do it fast. Come on. That's it. There. Good. Here, California, I'll get you untied. All right. There. One more knot. That does it. Oh, man, alive. Oh, that sure feels better. Now, what are we going to do with this varmint here? Tie him up and put a gag in his mouth. Sure, I'll get him hogtied right quick. But, Hoppy, uh, you figure they hear them bullets going off uh, over in the cabin? No, the cabin's too far away. Oh, that's good. In that case, we won't be mixing up with Tompkins for a while. We're going to deal with Trigger Tompkins as soon as you get this guard tied up. But how are we going to handle Tompkins? He's got four men with him in that cabin, and we ain't got no guns. We got one. The guard shotgun here. Uh, but it's only got two shots. Two shots to take care of five hombres with a couple of six guns apiece. I don't expect to shoot this gun at all. But it's going to help me to, to get a brace of 45s and trigger Tompkins. Let's go. The way 
Why, you tie that guard up in there, he ain't gonna move, and he ain't gonna yell. That much at least I'm sure of. We don't have to worry about him. What we may get into with Tompkins and his men in the cabin is something else. Yeah, and I can't see I like the idea of, uh... Hey, 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 wait a minute, Hoppy. What is it, California? Well, well, here's a cook stove. And in the pan here is a nice, big, ready-cooked beef steak. Oh, he probably the guard cooked it for himself. Never mind it. Let's get going. Never mind it. A, a, a good, delicious beef steak. But we haven't got time. Come on. Uh, but, all, all right, all right. Uh, Hoppy, I'll just take it along with me. Uh, carrying a beef steak ain't going to slow me down much. Yet. All right. We better make a run for it. Keep close to those trees. Make for the end of the cabin there. Let's go. I'm with you. Hold it, California. Look. The shadow of the cabin there. This side of the door. Uh-oh. Oh, he looks mean. And big. <clears throat> what kind of dog is that? It's a mastiff. Let's ease toward him and see what he does. Easy now. Uh, he's mean, all right. And if he decides to let loose uh, uh, and make a real noise, everybody in the cabin will know we're out here. Shh. Not so loud. You're right about it. We can't afford to tangle with Tompkins and his men out here in the open. You think we can sneak back and get around to the cavern from the other side? Well, it's too late for that. The dog's just crouching there, waiting for us to make any move. <laughs> Looks like he's waiting to make a meal of us. That's it. A meal. Uh, what's so exciting about that? The beefsteak. Toss it to him. No, not all at once. A piece at a time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh. Well, uh, right, right here, here, here. Now, let's go in closer. Toss him some more. Oh, here it goes. That's ah, working, California. I'll walk up and give him a rest. Don't act nervous. Nervous? I ain't nervous. I, 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 I just hope when he eats this chunk of steak, he won't start in me. Oh, no. shh, shh. Nice dog. Nice dog. Hey, Hoppy, he's licking my hand. Fine. Now you've made yourself a friend. Let's hope he doesn't raise a ruckus before we get to the cabin. He's following right behind me, tame as a kitten. Well, we'll have to take a chance he stays that way. Come on. Hoppy, I still say five men with six shooters again. One man with a shotgun is too many. And there sure ain't no trick that'll get them all to come out like the guard did, especially not one at a time. I don't want them to come out, California. I want them all inside the cabin, all together in the room. Well, there's the winter, and it's lighted up. So somebody's inside. Shh. All right. Let me get up to the window and look in. Get ready to run if they spot me. Shh. It's a shut up, dog. Shut up. Go on and look, Hoppy. They're all in there with the girl. All of them are in one room. Wonderful. What's so wonderful? There's still five of them, ain't there? Never mind that. Let's move away a little. I want to explain something to you. Yeah, I'd sure like to know what you figure and do. Well, then listen. You see the cabin roof on this end where the chimney comes up? Yeah, sure, I see it. What of it? I want you to climb up there. On the roof? Sure. Uh, and what are you going to be doing while I'm up there? I'm going into the cabin. No, sir, you don't leave me out of this. Where you're going, that's where I'm going to. Let me finish. i got a plan that should work. If we can just time it right. Now, before I go in that door, you get up in that chimney. And once I'm inside, just get... <laughs> Seem to me like such a good idea holding a girl here no longer. Just means more trouble than ever. We ought to get rid of her. That's so. Well, if you had the brains of a gopher, you'd know she's our best insurance against trouble. No matter how big a posse they can round up, nobody's going to come up here looking for a fight as long as they know we're holding Annie Culver. That's how I figured, and that's how it works. Well, that, that hop along Cassidy fella come up here. Sure. Look what happened to him. Yeah, but maybe there'll be others. There'll always be others, Trigger Tompkins. I don't care what you do to me, because I know they'll finally get you. Oh, sure. Just let them try. That idea worries me about as much as Hopalong Cassidy does right now. Let's what? start worrying, Tompkins, because I got a load of buckshot aimed at your middle. Why, it's Cassidy. Yeah, Cassidy. got a shotgun, too. Don't anybody move and get your hands up. Now, uh, look here, Cassidy. <laughs> You're not scaring anybody. Not with two shots in that gun and five of us here. No. It means I'll get two of you, and the posse is closing in on this place right now. Oh, give me that. The posse is sitting in Joshua Flat waiting for you to get back there. 
Well, you're not going to get back. Think anything you want, Tompkins. But you'll get the first load of this buckshot, whatever else happens. That's so. <laughs> it's different now, isn't it, Cassidy? Now I've got the girl in front of me. You want to shoot now? All right, men, get him. Posse, posse! What out there, Kagan? Everybody hold it. I got you covered with two revolvers now. Hey, Drop your guns and stay shooters. right where you are. That's right. Now I got 12 shots instead of two. Miss Culver, come over here away from Tompkins. Mr. Cassidy, is the posse really here? <laughs> well, see for yourself. I believe the posse is coming in now. I see the trick work, Toppy. Oh, a trick? What? Another Those shot, shots. Tompkins. One that did work. Those shots that made you all rush to the windows were only cartridges California dropped down the chimney into your fire. Well, I'll be... Startled you, eh, Tompkins? Left you flat-footed just long enough for me to grab your gun. Nobody can beat Hoppy to the draw, even when he's drawn from somebody else's holsters. Well, <laughs> California, suppose you demonstrate some talents of your own now to these gentlemen. Show them how nice and tight you can tie their hands behind their backs. Sure, sure thing, Hoppy. After that, we'll put them on horses and ride them into Joshua Flat. And the posse can round up the rest of the gang. Well, uh, the posse don't need to hurry. Them critters we stampeded must have run halfway to Mexico. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Now down, boy, down, down. <laughs> uh, uh, down, down, boy, down. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Say, uh, Hoppy. Yeah? <laughs> I've just been thinking. Suppose when they tied us and locked us in that bunkhouse, they hadn't left our cartridge belts on us. Yeah, what about it? Suppose there wasn't no fire going for me to drop them bullets in it. <laughs> and suppose that beefsteak wasn't in the cook stove so we could feed it to the dog. <laughs> what could we have done to get out of that mess? <laughs> oh, California, there's an old Indian saying that covers that situation. Those, uh, Pacoito Watuna. Huh? Yeah. Uh, what does that mean in America? <laughs> It means don't worry about what might have happened. Be happy with what you've got. Huh? Where? <laughs> when Hoppy gets going with a few old Indian tricks, a kidnapped girl is rescued, a bandit gang is routed, and California winds up with a dog. After the cleanup of Caribou Mesa... Don't miss another thrilling experience with Hoppy in California when they meet up with six little men who were green. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Cleanup of Caribou Mesa was written by Paul Adams with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based on the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? 
Our story is called Six Little Men Who Were Green and began one afternoon in Utah. California and I had finished a business trip to San Francisco and were heading back to the Bar 20. We'd taken the train, but were nearing Desert City where we were to get off and make the rest of the journey on our horses. So far, the only other man in our coach had not spoken, though he took an interest in us from his seat across the aisle. Uh, Hoppy, uh, you think we get enough knickknacks to satisfy all the folks back home? <laughs> By the look to that seat full of packages, I'd say so. I wish I hadn't forgotten to get old lady Johnson's sachet stuff, but uh, <laughs> oh, heck. Who cares what she smells like? <laughs> Taking home some gifts, eh, strangers? Nice gesture. Yes, sir. Make them feel remembered. Uh, I'm uh, Jason Joe. Ah, glad to make your acquaintance. My name's Cassidy. This is my partner, California Carlson. Howdy, Mr. Jones. Yeah, where are you headed? I thought perhaps Wyoming. Might get me a shop there. Ah, that's good country. Cheyenne's growing fast. Uh-oh. We're getting some new passengers. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Look at them ride. They sure must want to get on this train mighty bad. Yeah, they're switching from their horses. Hey, what's the matter? Uh huh. Oh, uh, nothing. Uh, nothing at all. You know those men? Uh, well, no, not exactly. I. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, what? oh watch it, uh, uh. Jason, are you ill? Uh, no, no, sorry. I'll, I'll help you pick them up. Oh, no harm done, I reckon. There. That does it. Uh, excuse me again. I guess I'm a little nervous. Uh, perhaps some air. I'll, I'll try the platform. Hey. Jason. Well, well. Kansas, look who's on the train. Well, what do you know? How did you own Uh, hello, Springer. Uh, yeah. Kansas. Just goes to show that there's nothing certain but taxes and uh, death. Hey, Jason. <laughs> I bet you never expected this. But uh, let's go out on the platform and uh, have a smoke. No, I, I, I don't... Oh, uh... nonsense. Kansas, take him another arm. Let's go. No, uh... California, didn't it seem to you that those men were forcing Jason outside? Well, uh, yeah, now that you mention it, I... Oh, no, no, Hoppy. Uh, them hombres ain't gonna like us buttoning, in, and that lean slab of bacon with a soft voice is a killer, or I'm a ballet dancer. I know. Tied down guns, cutaway holsters... Kansas? I wonder if that could be Kansas overall. Oh, well, if it is, that's 14 more good reasons why we are to say right here in our hip pocket. Or a mighty good one for taking a look out there on the platform. Come on. Hoppy, darned if you can't smell trouble quicker than a mountain lion mama with a new litter. <laughs> uh, uh, shouldn't we uh, kind of knock first? The oh, whole stop growling. You know you wouldn't miss it. Oh, Jason ain't out here. So I see. Strangers, where's the little man, uh, Jason Jones? Uh, you a friend of his or just uh, scratching a bump of curiosity? For the moment, call it curiosity. Where is he? Well, he's not in the car ahead. What would you say, Kansas? What would I say? That's funny. I'd reckon he's just about being turned away from heaven now. Mary's likely going to a hotter climb. Uh, what Kansas here is trying to say is that poor Jason is dead. He's he what? That he fell off the platform. <laughs> uh, you might say that he was pushed off by six little green men. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Six Little Men Who Were Green. On the train from San Francisco, a little way from Desert City, Utah, Hoppy and California see a traveling companion named Jason Jones taken to the outer platform of their car by two strangers who had just boarded the train from fast horses. Investigating... Hoppy is told that Jason was pushed from the train by six little green men. Hoppy, these hombres are local. Green men. I have a hunch one or both of them are murderers as well. No, 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 no. Forget my remark about the green men. It was a simple accident. Jason stumbled back, fell, and, well, it was very sad. Yeah, sad enough, but hardly the end of it. Uh, Swing is my name. My friend is Kansas Sobro. So... Now I know there's going to be more to this. Yeah, see, my reputation is growing. Professional killers get well-known fast. I'll have to boost my anti-swinger. Though I'd still rather you'd give me another job. You know I hate killing. 
Plum ruins, Miss Lee. Maybe the state will cure you permanently after this. Hey, wait. What are you doing? I'm going to pull the emergency cord so Jason's body can be recovered. I'll pull it, Hoppy. Kansas, stop it. Yep. I reckon this gun here... About the same thing this gun says, Kansas. Drop it or the undertaker gets some more business. Great day in the morning. I didn't see you drawing. Well, surprise. Wait, wait. Now, now, why not leave us out of it? I'll make it up. Swinger, there's a fact you should know. You can't make restitution for murder. As sheriff of this county, I want you to understand that this matter will be investigated to the hilt. To the hilt, you understand? Sheriff Todd's no man to mince words when action is to be taken. But you got the darn killers are sitting right there. Please. I am the best judge of that. Mr. Swinger seems hardly the type to go around killing people. Why, he's a wealthy man. Yeah, that would make him innocent. Well, how about that Kansas overall? He sure ain't no parson. Oh, pish posh. Pish posh, I say. I can't suspicion him of murder just because he's been in a few gunfights. You fat-headed, windy old idiot. You wouldn't suspicion a thief if his hand was in your pocket. If I suspicion anyone of being a killer, it's you. What? what, what? Why, I order... A, Sheriff, a, a, I want a, you to know a, that it warms my heart to find that you're a man of intelligence and integrity and not one to be to be swayed by malicious gossip. <clears throat> anyway, anyway, thank you, Mr. Swinger, thank you. This cast this story about green men and our menacing of the deceased. Well, it's, it's obvious that he's making light of a serious matter. Oh, when I think of poor Jason's accent, I... Are we free now? Certainly, Mr. Swinger. Wait a minute, Sheriff. They go now, you'll never see them again. Tut, 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 Mr. Cassidy. You're throwing stones. Mr. Swinger is a reputable importer from San Francisco. So he says. I'm sure I can depend on his word to stay in town until my investigation is completed. My word is my bond, sir. You see, Mr. Cassidy? I see. But aren't you going to search their luggage? I still say they may have stolen something. Hardly necessary, I believe. Hardly necessary. Kindly allow me to conduct my own business. Oh, and uh, you two are also to remain in town. Well, we were on Until our... I say you're free to go. Good day, gentlemen. Sheriff. Sure. Huh. I've seen hound dogs with colic that'd make better lawmen than that talk. <laughs> Hoppy, we just can't let them two killers go scot-free. Uh, I know. If we can only prove they had a motive to kill Jason. Couldn't we kind of pick a little fight and uh, shoot him? <laughs> of course not. I wish we knew what Swinger meant by that crack about six little green men. Oh, Hoppy. I- I've seen white men, brown men, red men, and even a couple of yellow men. But uh, green men, yeah. uh, they come out of 40-rod bottles along with their pink elephants. Yeah, but Swinger was cold sober, and besides, I... Pardon. Cassidy? That's right, Mr... Quiet Sam Miller. What can I do for you? Swinger Rob Jason. What uh, business is it of yours, stranger? None. Did he? You looking for the green man? Maybe. You know? All. Everything. Too bad. <laughs> you uh, don't waste no words, uh, do you, mister? Foolish. Just what's your interest, Miller? Curious. Uh-huh. Well, then, uh, why say it was too bad we know the green man? Wait a minute. What's the idea well, there's a strange hombre. He's about as talkative as a tombstone. California, can't you make your comparisons a little more cheerful? I get a better idea. Let's forget the whole thing. That milk-faced chatterbox took all my curiosity away. <laughs> This Shasparelli sure flat. Ah, maybe it's those whiskers you strain it through. Well, oh. well, 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 good evening. I guess you were wrong about Mr. Swinger and Mr. Overhill. Uh, you mean they really didn't crawl out from under a rock? I mean they're still in town. Saw them right outside. Ah, uh, probably waiting for dark. I'll give you a hunch they eat breakfast a long way from here. That's a bad hunch, Mr. Cassidy. I reckon I better bore you before you have any more. Shut up, Kansas. Anytime you feel up to a gun, Hawk. You heard me, Kansas. Leave those guns alone. I heard you, but I take your pain out your lip, Swinger. This your deal's getting plum sour. We're back where we started at. Well, that's my problem, not yours. Sheriff, did you keep Jason's bags? Yes, in my office. But I haven't examined them yet. You haven't? No. Well, I, uh, 
I want to get Jason's address to send my condolences, you know. Why, that's very thoughtful of you. I'll check them now. No, 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 no. I mean, uh, well, the morning is time enough. Oh. Uh, good night. Good night, Mr. Swinger. My, my, such a fine man. Yeah. Come on, California. I have a feeling the green men are loose again. Well, let's find those bags quick. Green man's got to be in them. Look around you. If you hadn't taken that doll to be the green man, we could have nabbed the bags on the train. Well, how was I to know that Jason would be carrying a blasted doll? The same size and shape as the green man. And we didn't have time to unwrap the package. Mm -hmm. Hey, can't we strike a match? No, 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 no. We'll find them in the dark. Ah, here they are. Well, let's take them. Get on out of here, then. Ah, don't be a fool. Search them here. Take them, even that idiot of a sheriff will suspect us. Maybe he will anyway. What, what's it? What? How about some light? It's a mighty dangerous game to play, Cassidy. That's why California's covering you from behind. Tell me, Swinger, what are the green men? Well, they're, they're just jade figurines. I, uh, I want them for my art collection. The whole set of six, that is. Ha <laughs> ha, try again. Well, it's true. I have three of them. Jason had one. I wonder. Does a man named Miller have the other two? Miller? I, uh, I don't know anyone named Miller. Well, if he has, he'd be next on your list. Only. Look! I. The light! Ah, copy! I can't see! Uh, Hands just take a break! Copy! Hang on! I'm a coming up! Oh. There. How's your head now, old-timer? Uh, where is it? Uh, I still got it? <laughs> it's in the same place, but a little dented, I'm afraid. Sure, it's busted wide open. Uh, did they get away? They did. And that third party who shot out the lights got away with Jason's bags. I had my hands on him, but lost him in the dark. It was that little polecat Miller. What did he do? Bite your hand? No, it'll be all right. It's just a scratch. Uh-huh. Well, I reckon that one will get his comeuppance. <laughs> the way I see it, whoever's got that green man is due to get killed. Well, a swinger in Kansas know that. That's true enough. But let's hope they don't succeed. Why, well, I'd just as soon see them shoot each other. Uh, what you fucking around them packages for? Just checking a hunch. I know who has the green man. Yeah, what? Uh, well, who is the poor critter? Who has it? We do. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Six Little Men Who Were Green. After trapping the two men they know to be the killers of Jason Jones, Hoppy and California lose them when an unknown man interferes and steals Jason's bags, believed to contain the little green man, one of a set of six jade figurines, and the motive for Jason's murder. But later in their hotel room, Hoppy startles California with the news that they have Jason's little green man. Hoppy, you're kidding, I hope. Uh, here it is. Take a look. A jade figurine, like Swinger said. But what in blazes is the darn thing doing in our packages? Remember when Jason stumbled and fell among the packages just after he saw Swinger and Kansas board in the train? Uh, you think he put the green man in with our stuff then? And took the doll I'd bought for Jenkins' little girl. I guess Jason hoped to stall Swinger off with it and get his green man back from us later. Only he was killed, and now we have it. Yeah, but we'll turn it over to the sheriff as soon as he comes. He's out chasing Swinger in Kansas. Yeah, if he catches him, they'll probably talk him out of his gun. Uh, what makes this darn thing so valuable anyway? I don't know. Let's examine it closer. Oh, maybe that's the sheriff now. Yeah, he's come to tell us how nice he thinks Swinger is. Come in, sheriff. Oh, hello. Back. Fast. I practically never argue with a cocked gun. Wise. What's the big idea, Wendy? Green man. Give. For sure. Now, that's uh, an unfriendly attitude. I... Oh, oh. Why, you cold-blooded little... Oh! <clears throat> Stupid fools. 
Now I have three clean men. Soon I'll have six. Who's... You. No. Don't! No need to make fun of me, Harvey. Who's making fun of you? He hit me, too. I uh, hope uh, your head don't feel like mine if I could just get my hands on that coyote who... Oh, 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 oh don't do that. <laughs> Hoppy, I just did. Did what? Get my hands on him. Only now he's got holes. No, what are you talking about? Open your eyes. We got uh, company. A dead kind. What? Uh... Oh. What was the shooting about? Oh, oh my. Is he dead? Well, if he isn't, he's playing a mighty strange joke. Ah, the killer made away with the green man, I see. More of Swinger's work. He and that ace of spades, two-shot gunslinger of his. No wonder they just rode out of town so fast. My posse saddling now. You want to join it? Seems you're too no sane, Sheriff. Kish posh, I always suspected that pair. You kept it well hidden, but we'll join that posse of yours. Good, good. I'll have the doc come up and take care of the... Of him, I... Oh, I think I'll wait for you outside. Hurry. So, that's the story of the green men as far as I know, Sheriff. Jason had one, Swinger three, Miller two... Only now, Swinger has all six. They must be great works of art to be worth all he's done to get them. Not from the look of the one I saw. California, can't we go faster? Still too dark to follow the trail, Hoppy. The sun will be up soon. Could uh, Jade be that expensive? I doubt it. Hey, Hoppy, Sheriff, the turn here. Hey, pull up a minute. Pull up. Look, look at those scrapes there. They was riding hard and turned without slowing. Not hard to figure where they headed. Those two rocky canyons. Only which one? Uh, they're going to be hard to find. Even if we guess the right canyon, we'll lose the trail on the rocks. Oh, no, we won't. I know those canyons now. They're both dead end. They're trapped in one of those canyons, men. Anderson, come with us. We'll go left. Mark, take the others up and head up the right canyon. Oh, Mark, don't take any chances. Shoot to kill. California, keep an eye on those rocks on your side. I don't like the way they rise above us. Sure, who does? This is ambush country if I ever saw it. Ridiculous. Those two men are fleeing. They don't want battle. Kansas Overell is no tenderfoot, Sheriff. He's a gunfighter and a dangerous one. Don't underrate him. Oh, to that I say pish posh. Anyhow, there's the end of the canyon up ahead. Sure, we took the wrong one. Want a bet? Take cover into the rocks. Oh! Over there, Hoppy! They've quit firing. Uh, I guess they must be reloading. See, where's Henderson? Uh, he went down that first volley. California, wrap your band down around this leg, will you? Sure, sure. Uh, just a crease, Hoppy. Yeah. But you won't do no dancing for a spell. Well, you two are certainly taking all this strangely. Do you realize those men are trying to kill us? Not so tight, California. Uh, that's better. Uh, that'll stop the bleeding. Did anyhow. you hear me? We're in danger. After all, Cassidy, I'm sheriff. I'm going to make a deal with those men right this Open minute. Open that mouth of yours and I'll stuff it plumb full of knuckles, you mealy mouth windbag. California, let's try something while they're reloading. See that flat rock behind them? Well, sure, uh, Hoppy, uh, but why? Drop some slugs against it. I think we can smoke our friends out with ricochets. That's, that's right. Try silly stunts. Try silly stunts while they're getting ready to kill us. Don't shoot anymore. Hold it, California. Bring him up. Hold the that again. Toss your guns away and come out hands up and empty. Now they're coming out, Hoppy. Uh-huh. Let me your rifle, Sheriff. Mine's empty. Yeah. Thanks. Hmm. We better go to them, Hoppy. Looks like they shot up pretty bad. Uh, here's your rifle, Sheriff. Yeah. Take a look at Kansas, California. I'll check Swinger. Kansas? Uh, Kansas? Hoppy. He's cashed. Yeah. Swinger's only scratched. Painted, I guess. 
Come on, Swinger, wake up. Uh, doctor, get me a doctor. I'm dying. Uh, we'll get you a doctor as soon as you talk. Yes, yes. Tell us about the green men. What's their secret? The Miller stole them. A rich Texan who said the set would reveal his greatest wealth. Uh, when it was put together right, he was nutty on the subject. All right, go on. How did the set become split? Well, Jason helped Miller. Then stole four of the green men for himself, not knowing that they had to be used as a set. I stole three from Jason, but he, he got away with the other. What was the connection between the three of you? Well, Miller and I were partners, dealt in Jade. Jason did odd jobs for us. Until you all started stealing from each other. You killed Jason? No, no, it was Kansas. He hit him, pushed him off the train. Won't make no difference. You're the one who hired that gunslinger. I reckon he shot Miller, too, and where's them six little green hombres? Oh, he doesn't have the six yet, California. And they had nothing to do with Miller's death, except to run from it. Oh, sure, sure, Miller shot himself, I should... No, he was shot by an opportunist, a man who saw a chance to cut in on something big. The same man who shot the light out and stole Jason's bags from the sheriff's office. And this man is... Uh... The sheriff himself. Right, Sheriff? What? What's that? Oh, this, this is preposterous. Idiotic. Not so idiotic. Kansas tipped the deal in the saloon. You listened outside the door of your office and heard Swinger admit that the green men existed and were valuable. So you shot out the light and stole the bags. Pish posh. Prove it. I grabbed you in the dark, scratched my hand on something pinned to your shirt. How many men in Desert City wear badges? Why, you... Uh... All right. Uh, so I shot out a lamp. And shot Miller. Want proof of that? It's simple. No people. Well, what's that proof? Everything. Those shots must have been heard. Yet before any people could get to our room, you were there telling me Swinger and Kansas had ridden out of town. They couldn't have shot Miller. And you must have. You guessed entirely too well, Cassidy. <laughs> too bad. Everyone was killed in the battle. And I'll have all six of the green men. That wealth will be mine. Uh... I wouldn't try shooting that rifle. I'll only shoot three times. The first time at you. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Well, Hoppy, I found the green man just like you said. Three in Swinger's saddlebags, say three in Sheriff Todd's. Good. I've patched up Todd. Maybe next time he'll listen to me about not shooting. You mean you know that darn rifle was going to bust apart? <laughs> I was sure hoping so. When I borrowed it from him, I wedged a rock down into the barrel. Well, I'll be teetotally flubberty gibbeted. <laughs> next time, tell me, will you? I was sure we was done for. Ah, uh, Let's take a look at those green men. I want to see just what they have to say that's worth so much robbery and bloodshed. Jane, uh, if I see anything except these scratches in the bottoms, uh, say, uh, uh, maybe those square bottoms fit together like one of them puzzles. Let's try it, huh? Yeah. The lines are beginning to fit. Uh, is it a treasure map? No, it's just words. Kind of faint, but I can read them. One hundred. Oh. Thousand. Oh. Uh, Inside, turn head. Well, I'll be... Uh, it's uh, it's in the man, after all. I'll turn the head of this one and see. I see. There. It's holler. There's bills inside. Uh, pull them out, Holly. So this is what men died for. Huh? Uh, let me see. Uh, hmm, it's money, ain't it? Sure. Thousand dollar bills. And every one confederate. This whole thing was over a hundred pieces of worthless paper money. Well, leave it to Hoppy to find the solution to any mystery and figure out the secret of the six little men who were green. Don't miss the next thrilling episode of Hopalong Cassidy when Hoppy and California get tangled up with a junior bad man. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. 
Six Little Men Who Were Green was written by Herb Purdom with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? We call this the devil in El Diablo. It was early February when California and I threw our diamond hitches on two pack horses and started the long journey to the eastern slopes of towering Mount Diablo. We were headed for Sulphur Valley, and that's a third of the way to Diablo's top. There we were supposed to rendezvous with a party of army officers who had started from the other side and should have reached Diablo's summit and descended again by the time we got there. But they hadn't. When we reached our destination, we saw no one. Sulphur Valley was as desolate as ever and quite deserted. Whoa, there. Whoa, 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 whoa. boy. Well... Looks like nobody's here yet, Hoppy. Ah, uh, so I see. I wonder. Well, nothing to worry about, I guess. Likely the climb took longer than expected. Well, while we're waiting, let's set up camp and get a fire going. Sure, sure. Know any of these fellas we're supposed to meet? No, I never met them. Put that thing over there. All I know is they wanted some guide. General Harrison arranged it. Mm-hmm. General Harrison. <laughs> wonder if he's crazy, too. Crazy? What are you talking about? Well, look up there. Never thought anything of it till we got here, Hoppy. But just take a look. Hmm. That's a real mountain. <laughs> sure you is. Can't see the top of it for clouds. And look at all that ice and snow. Hmm. Yeah. Good thing we're dressed heavy like this. Climb up there? Huh? You'd have to be crazy. Oh well, they're mapping it. Sure, sure. That's just what we need. A map of all that snow up there. No, you got it all wrong, California. They're just mapping the valleys and passes. Climbing to the top was their own idea. They make it, they'll be the first. Uh, where do we go after they get here, Hoppy? Uh, off over there? Yeah, all through that hill country over there. They're mapping that, too. That's where they need us. Well, they're paying for it, but it seems to me that, uh, w uh, mm, uh, Hoppy, there's something been sticking in my crawl. Yeah, what's that? Didn't we used to hear about this here Mount Diablo quite a lot? Yeah. Seems to me we did. Just can't recollect in what connection. This is where the devil used to hang out. I, I should think so. Hoofs and a forked tail is just what's needed in this part of the country. Uh, but I wasn't joking. Uh, what I, I wasn't what... joking either. The devil was the name of an outlaw. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, by golly. Now I remember. Hmm. That was a couple of years ago, weren't it? Yeah, just about. Don't hear him no more. Uh, wonder what happened to him. Uh, no one seems to know. Maybe he's dead. Some people think he might have been killed by his own followers. Stole a lot of money at one time or another, you know. So most people think he slipped across the border and changed his name. Yeah, I see. He used to raid the mining towns over north. Yeah, yeah, I recollect that. Called him the devil because he'd a picture of the devil tattooed on him somewhere, didn't they? Yeah, I heard that, I think. Wonder why he wanted to hang out in the middle of this chunk of desolation. Oh, uh, this just suited his book, California. Whenever the law showed up, he just started climbing. No one ever seemed very anxious to follow. I can believe that, all right. I wouldn't neither. Wait a second, but, uh, California. Hold it. What is it? Uh, what's the matter? I saw something moving over there. Uh, m m moving? Uh, you sure it was moving? Yeah, I thought... Uh, then, uh, let us move. Uh, the other way. Uh, California, wait! 
One of the officers. It looks like he's in trouble. Come on. Hello there. What's happened here? Who? Uh, oh. Who are you? I'm Cassidy. This is California Carlson. But what happened... Cassidy, to... am I glad to see you. I'm Lieutenant Martin. And the others... The other others... Yes, what about them? Hey, they trapped, Cassidy. 10,000 feet up, the rock slide, just below the summit. You... You... Yes? You'll have to go after them, Cassidy. Have to go after them or... Or they'll die. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Devil and El Diablo. It is now nearly an hour since Lieutenant Martin arrived with the news that his companions had been trapped by a rock slide just below Diablo's icy summit. His descent has torn his clothing to shreds. He is frostbitten, scratched, and bruised. Hoppy and California have been working desperately to revive him. And now... Oh, oh. He's coming too, California. Mm. Martin, Lieutenant mm. Martin, can you hear me? How are you uh, feeling? Oh, rotten. But better than I expected to be. Cassidy, what's up? Sorry, Lieutenant, but I'll have to ask you some questions. Were any of your friends injured by the slide? I can't tell you for sure, Cassidy, but I don't think so. I think it came closer to getting me than it did them. I started down ahead of them to figure out the way to go. Lucky I did, though. If I hadn't, I'd have been trapped there with them. Slide wiped away part of the ledge they were on so they couldn't go either forward or back. How long do you think they can hold out? Oh, it's hard to say. Several days, I should think. The, the worst is the food and the cold. They were low on grub anyway, and up there, sleeping bags don't help much. Those winds cut right through. How long do you think it'd take us to reach them? Oh, three days. If we hurried, maybe we could make it in two. Then we'll make it in two. What kind of a climb will we have? Oh, pretty nasty. Plenty of ice and snow. Bad wind. Yeah. There's places where you'll have to go straight up, chipping out your handholds with a pick. Most of the time, you'll be working across the face of a pretty nasty drop. Maybe two, three thousand feet. Ah, uh, we'll make it. You draw some sort of a map. So we'll know how to find them. Oh, nothing doing. I'm going along. But you can't. Look at the condition you're in, man. You... Uh... Why, how much mountain climbing have you done, Cassidy? Well, not much. But that doesn't mean that... On we... this kind of a climb, it means plenty, Cassidy. Now, don't, don't fool yourself. And don't fool yourself about me. I'm tough. I'm not in near as bad shape as maybe I look. You give me one good night's sleep, and then I'll be as ready to go as anybody. You couldn't start before morning anyhow. You're a good man, Lieutenant. Well, I... I heard you're a good man. Uh, doggone if you ain't both good men. And Hoppy, you can depend on me, too. Uh, don't you fret about a thing while you're gone. I'll be guarding this camp like it was made out of solid gold. Then when you get back... You're uh, coming along. I said, uh, when you get back, I... I said you're coming along. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought you said. Well, it's been a good life, Hoppy. Why should I complain? Because it has to end so soon. <laughs> climbing now. Hoppy, Hoppy, I, I've changed my mind. Oh? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday when I thought about it, I was scared to die. Now, now I wish I had. California, don't stop there. Keep going. Oh, I can't. Uh, I'm stuck. You're not stuck. You're scared. You haven't much choice. Either you climb five feet or drop a thousand. <laughs> Close, Cassidy. We swing across this drop here, and then we work our way up a chute over there. After that, there's a ridge. And then... Cassidy, we made it. Here, give me your hand. I'll pull you up. Here. Uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, there. Where? Where are they? Well, they're right over there. They... They're gone. What? Uh, what did you say, Lieutenant? Where well, they... 
They're gone. They're right on that ledge over there. I marked it by the signs of the slide. Ah, uh-huh, there have been lots of slides up here, Martin. You're sure that's the right one? I don't think it is. Look how the face of that cliff has had a chance to weather. If it had been just a few days ago... Yeah, I... I'm not sure of anything anymore. Except that we'll likely have to go back to where we swung across the canyon. That must be where we got mixed up. Oh, right... Oh, What was that? The hubby. No, that way, look over there. Hey, it's them. It was right here I got turned around. Coming, Captain! I brought help! We're coming right over! All right, take it easy now. Get some of this chow into and you'll be feeling fit as a fiddle. You're Major Epperly, aren't you? That's right, Cassidy. And I want to tell you that your arrival seems to us like a miracle. Oh, uh, Cassidy, this is Captain Duncan. Hello, hello, Cassidy. Hard place for introductions, eh? But glad to meet you. Happier than I can really say. Well, how do you like our little habitation here, eh? How do you like it? Tarnation. I don't see how you kept uh, the wind from sweeping you off in here. (laughs) Well, there were times when we weren't quite sure how we did it ourselves. California. Where did Lieutenant Martin go? On around that abutment there, Hoppy. He said he wanted to follow this ledge clear to the end and see if there wasn't a better way of getting down than the way we came. Uh, That's a good idea. There's one more in your party, isn't there, Major? Uh, Lieutenant Waite. Martin said something. I've already seen him, Hoppy. He's frostbit a little, but otherwise he's all right. I fed him a little chow and put him to sleep back in the holler there. Ah, uh, that's fine. We won't start down before morning anyhow. Glad to see you had no real casualties, Major. Ah, uh, that'll make it a little easier going back. Hey, what was that? Sounded like someone calling you. Must have been Lieutenant Martin. He... Yeah, that's Martin, all right. Be right there, Martin. You will have to excuse me, Major. You too, Captain Duncan. Of course, of course. Come on, California. Likely he found the other way of getting down he was looking for. Hoppy, I got a better head for heights than I figured I had. This ain't bothering me at all no more. Ah, <laughs> good. Look down there. This is a 3,000-foot drop here if it's an inch. But, uh... Wait a second. Uh, what did you say, Martin? You wait right there. There's not enough room for you around here. I'll be with you in a second. He found something, all right. Yeah. Coming, Cassidy. Hey, I, uh, I think I found a way of getting down without swinging across. We... Martin, watch out. Oh, what the devil? No, grab something. Wait. But I can't. I can't. I'm slipping. Ah! Oh, golly, Harvey. Oh, golly. Give me your glasses. Here. Can you see him? Is he... Is he dead? I can see him all right. And he's dead. He'd have to be after a fall like that. You can see that from here. And I was just saying I wasn't scared of accidents no more. No need to be. Huh? That was no accident, California. Martin was murdered. All right, this is as far as we go today. We're camping here for the night. Hoppy, uh, Hoppy, uh, you ain't give me a chance to talk to you all day now. Yesterday you said Martin was murdered. Now, uh, what do you mean by that? Just what I said, California, that was murder. But he just slipped, didn't he? Uh, I seen that myself. He was coming around that corner of the ledge there. Then his ankle turned You and, should have uh, taken a better look at the ledge itself. Uh, uh, if you had, you would have seen the marks of a pick. Someone broke off part of the ledge and they picked between the time Martin rounded that corner and the time he came back. Well, what do you think? They're, well, they're... it might have been Major Epperly, Captain Duncan, or Lieutenant Waite. Uh-huh. Any one of the three would have had the opportunity. They certainly... hey, So that's why you asked me to keep still about what you said. Yeah. Maybe one of them will betray himself. They certainly have... Wait, wait, wait a second, Harvey. Here, trying to sneak up and listen to us, eh? Will you? I... California, who is it? Uh, it's Lieutenant Waite. He was laying here, pretending he was asleep. He... Wait a second. He is asleep, California. Let him down. Can't you see the man's exhausted? Uh Uh-uh. We're both wrong, Hoppy. What do you mean? He wasn't eavesdropping. Neither was he sleeping, Hoppy. Look here. He's got a knife in his heart. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, 
The Devil and El Diablo. Twenty-four hours ago, the party at the summit of icy, snow-clad Mount Diablo numbered six men. Hoppy in California and Major Epperly, Captain Duncan, and Lieutenants Waite and Martin. Now two are gone, and Hoppy confronts the survivors. Captain Duncan, Major Epperly, Lieutenant Waite I know was murdered. Lieutenant Martin I'm sure was murdered, even though I couldn't prove it. One of you two murdered them, maybe both of you. Which one of you did it, I don't know, but I do know this. From now on, I'm taking charge. And when we get back to civilization, I'm turning both of you over to the proper authorities. Look here, man, this is preposterous. Accuse me of murder and I'll make you pay for it. I assure you, I will, I assure you. You do that. You look like you've got something on your mind, Major. Better get it off before it poisons you. I'd like to know where we stand. Am I to assume that we're your prisoners? Something like that. That's as good a way of putting it as any, I guess. But I thought I was in charge here. I dislike mentioning rank, but... Mention it all you want. I'm not in the Army. Quite so. Then you have no authority. I have my authority here at my belt. Oh. California and I are the only ones who are armed. Either one of you want to question that authority? Well, as long as you put it that way, Cassidy, no. You're quite definitely in charge. But definitely. Preposterous. It's anarchy. It's preposterous. Then we're agreed. One thing more. Wade is dead, but he's our only proof that murder has been committed. So we're taking him with us. I gave California my rope. You got weight secured, California? All set, Hoppy. Good. He'll have to be lowered from this ledge to the one below us. Duncan, suppose you give California a hand. No. If you think you're making me your flunky, Better Cassidy... Better what asks, Captain. What? Oh. Well, yes, sir. If you say so, Major. I do. Yes. If you need another hand, California, let us know. Oh, we'll handle this all right, Hoppy. All right now, Captain. Easy does it. Lower away now. Watch out for that ridge there. Hey! California, what is it? Hoppy! The rope burst! My rope? Wait a second. Let me see that. Here. Here it is. It's cut. That's why the rope broke. It was cut half through. Who did this? You, Duncan? You, Epperly? If one of us had, you'd scarcely expect him to admit it, would you? No, maybe not. But you can't blame me for being interested either. This is my rope. If it hadn't broken with weight, it would have broken with me. If it broken with me, right now I'd be at the bottom of the canyon where weight is. Uncomfortable, eh? Mighty uncomfortable. Yes. But get this through your heads. Watch your steps. The next accident that happens won't happen to California or me. It'll happen to you. <laughs> Everybody finished breakfast? Then I have something to announce. Today you'll do no traveling. You three will stay right here and wait till I get back. Uh, where are you going, Hoppy? I'm going to backtrack a ways. I have a little investigation to make. Uh, couldn't that wait till we got to Sulphur Valley? Too much snow and cold up here to suit me, Hoppy. You make out, California. That bluff there gives you good protection from the wind. If I waited till we reached Sulphur Valley, my job would take longer than a day. You going back up to Abel? Yeah. Oh, hadn't I better go with you? You'll have to stay and keep your eye on our friends here. Oh. You heard that. While I'm gone, California's in charge. Do as he says. Don't try anything. If you do, you may regret it. When he has to, he can be pretty tough. Doggone right, I can. I, uh, say, uh, Hoppy, do I have to stay here alone with these two fellas? You can handle them, California. You'll have the only guns, you know. Something you wanted to say, Major? It's occurred to me why you might be going back, Cassidy. I'd like to say don't. You might learn too much. Could be dangerous. Thanks. Suggestion received and not acted upon. I'll have to be going now, California. Uh, Hoppy, uh, and when you get back, you'll know which one of these two is guilty? Yes, California. I think I will. Well, well, what do you want now? I wonder what's happened to your friend Cassidy. It's after dark. He's been gone all day. Doesn't it occur to you that he might have had an accident? Say, uh, you think he has? I think it's very probable. If uh, I were you, I'd... Uh, yeah, yeah, just one of your tricks again. Well, Hoppy's told me to stay here and watch you, and here's where I'm staying. 
If you know the hoppy like I do, you know he don't have no accidents. And that feller knows how to take care of himself. You just rest contented and quit trying to edge up on me. Oh, I'm contented enough. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, that's real pert. Huh? What? Uh, that uh, thing you're humming. <laughs> that's real pretty, you said. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Like to hear it, would you? Uh, sure, sure. <clears throat> sure thing. Uh, go ahead. Sure. Mm-hmm. Pretty? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty. He's asleep. I think he is. Wait a minute. Got him. Come here. Give me a hand. Right. Here. Here. What? what, what say? What? Hey, you fellas, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'd do what he tells you if I were you, my friend. Huh? Back. Get back, both of you. That's right. You right there, Captain. And you stay right there against that bluff, Major. They hurt you any, California? No, I ain't hurt any, Hoppy. But I sure feel bad about this. I guess I fell asleep. Anyhow, the Major there was a singer, and the first thing I know to... Yeah, the Major there is a pretty slick customer. I should have been back sooner, but I had things to do. Yeah, say, that reminds me, Hoppy. You find out what you wanted? You found out uh, who's behind all this? Yes, I did. Then tell me I've been aching to know which one was it. The major there or Captain Duncan? Neither one. Uh, what? Uh, uh, what? what uh, yeah, I thought you said... Uh, I said uh, that Waite and Martin were killed by neither Epperly or Duncan. I'll explain. They... You don't have to explain. You do know the truth, don't you, Cassidy? Yes, I do. All of it. That's too bad. Who for? For you. You in California. That means you'll have to die. That's so. But you're not armed. How would you set about killing us? But I am armed. Get your hands up. Reach both of you. California, where do you get that gun? Up here, I don't know. Hey, one of mine's missing. That must be one of mine. Yeah. Right. You got here in time to keep us from finishing him, Cassidy. But not in time to prevent me from taking one of his guns. Sorry you have to end this way, Cassidy. But as long as it's your life and not mine, I'm naturally not as sorry as I might have been. You're a fool, Major. No, that's wrong. You're not Major Epperly, are you? What is your real name? I don't think it matters, Cassidy. Major's good enough. I rather like the sound of it. What's your real name, Captain Duncan? That's something you'll never know, Cassidy. What did you mean about his being a fool? Just what I said. If he wanted to kill us, he should have waited until morning. No one can shoot accurately by firelight, and he knows it. Talk, Cassidy, and you know it. But before I kill you, suppose you tell me what you found back up there. What you knew I'd find. The bodies of the real Major Epperly and his party. I'm all mixed up, Hoppy. Who's these fellers, then? If I'm not mistaken, the devil and his followers. The devil? Oh, oh, I know that outlaw we was talking about. Right. I am right, huh, Major? Of course. What were you doing back here? Why did you kill Epperly and his men? Suppose you guess. I think I can. I have an idea that you had some of your loot hidden out on Diablo. You probably came back for it, ran into Epperly's party, and misunderstood what they were doing on Diablo. You probably thought they were after your loot. We did. We were sorry for it afterwards. But by then, the damage had been done. So you helped yourself to their uniforms and the slide trapped you. Right. But what put you on all this? You did. Under the circumstances, you were a little too military and not always correctly. That suggested the truth. When I backtracked and found where you'd met Epperly and his men, I knew I'd been right. And Slim and Phillips, you know why they died? They were the men calling themselves Waite and Martin? Yes. I'll make another guess. You started getting rid of your followers so that you could have the loot to yourself. <laughs> partly right and partly wrong, Cassidy. Yeah? I see there's some things you don't understand. Shoot them, confound it. Shoot them and get it over with. That Cassidy's too smart. The longer you wait, the better chance you're giving him. Just a moment, He's I... right. There has been too much talk. As long as you're alive, you're dangerous. So I'll... Now wait, you don't understand. If you fire that snow... California, down! Run, 
for it. You started that snow slide, and I told you not to play. <laughs> That snow buried him. Yeah, he's a dead man. He's buried under tons and tons of it. I tried to warn him, but he wouldn't listen. No, you don't, mister. Stop right What's there. What's the matter? Our friend who calls himself Captain Duncan thought this would be a good time to get away. Come here. That's right. Stop right there. Where do you think you were going? Well, the devil's dead. You saw him get buried under that snow, didn't you? It was him ordered all these killings. What do you want me for? You're sure the devil was responsible for all this? You're very sure? Of course. He gave the orders, didn't he? All the rest of us just did what he... Ha, ha, ha! I just wanted to hear you admit that you gave the orders. That's all. All right, California, tie him up. We're taking him in. Uh, him? Uh, he gave the orders? Of course. He's the fellow they call the devil. If there's any doubt about it, I think we'll find a tattoo on him to prove it. Well, I'll be doggone. So this is the devil. A hoppy, uh, hmm, wears his hoofs and fork and tail. <laughs> oh, he'll have them, California. About 15 minutes after they hang him. <laughs> That certainly was a surprise, and especially after we thought the devil had been killed. But they never fooled Hoppy for long. You can be sure of that. In their next adventure, Hoppy and California meet up with the lawyer of Laredo and become involved in a feud that is as exciting as it is dangerous. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Devil and El Diablo was written by Gibson Scott Fox, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? It's one that I feel mighty lucky I'm alive and able to tell. Because it's about a time California and I had our narrowest escape. We call it The Secret in the Hill. Early one morning, we were riding through the Chenango Pass country when we noticed a sign nailed to a fence post. I pulled off the trail to read it. I don't like this, California. Listen to what this says. $500 reward. Wanted, dead or alive, killer of Fred Benson, son of Wade Benson of Chenango Pass, by order, sheriff. If they get a reward up for him, he's probably run halfway to hallelujah by now. Maybe so but he might still be around playing possum. I don't know, Huffy. Seems only reasonable for a killer to vamoose if he got the chance. Uh, it depends on how and why the victim was killed. If we find the reason for Fred Benson's murder, we'll find his killer. We will? Sure. Mm, uh, you mean uh, you want us to find a reason we don't know why a murderer we don't know killed a man uh, we don't know? Uh, 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 no, no. That's just too many things we don't know, Huffy. <laughs> 
then we'd better start learning the answers right now. Come on. We're riding for Chenango Pass to catch a killer. Nobody answers, Hoppy. You figure this is the right place? Yeah. Wade Benson's name is on the gate. Knock again. Put up your hands, you two. I got you covered. What? Uh, there? Uh, look, Hoppy. He's covering us from the window with a rifle. And I'll just keep it pointing at you while you state your business here. I don't state anything with a rifle aimed at me, stranger. But if you're Wade Benson, we're here as friends. It ain't saying who you are. I'm Hopalong Cassidy. This is my partner, California Carlson. Hopalong Cassidy? I'll be a son of a gun. Just a second, I'll get the door open for you. Hmm. Mighty queer way for Benson to welcome callers with a rifle in his hands. With a murderer loose, he probably figures on playing safe. Well, come right in, gents. I, I apologize for that business at the window. I've been kind of leery of strangers lately. I understand, Benson. Uh, come on out, Ma. It's all right. Ma, meet Hoplon Cassidy and California Carlson. Why, howdy. Howdy, ma'am. You Won't do. you sit down? Thank you, ma'am. Well, you folks may be wondering why California and I are here. The reason is we saw the sign down the road about your son being killed. You think you can do something about catching the skunk that murdered Fred? I don't know yet. First, I'd like to find out why he was killed. Did your son have any enemies around here? Enemies? He didn't know anybody hereabouts. Why, he hardly even talked to anybody before he was shot. Well, here's the whole story, Mr. Cassidy. Ma and me come out here just a month ago. We had our savings, $10,000, and we got a chance to buy this gold mine. Fred was studying to be a mining engineer in a college back east, and we wanted to surprise him. So we bought the mine with our savings. A gold mine for $10,000? Didn't that seem pretty cheap? Well, maybe, but the record showed that $100,000 in gold been taken out of that mine in two years. We're no doubt about it. I see. So what happened after you bought the mine? Well, we tried to get a loan at the bank in Columbia City for cash to work the mine. They told us the mine was no good. All worked out. I've heard of that happening before. The gold vein peters out and there just ain't nothing left. Yeah, that's what they told me. I tried to find the slicker sold me the mine, but a fellow named Slim Daniels, but he'd skipped out. We wrote our boy Fred about it, and he'd come out just as soon as he could get here. Fred figured maybe there just might be a chance we could get a little more gold out in that mine. Maybe get our money's worth back. So the morning after he got here, he set out to look over the mine. That's the last time we saw him. Yeah. He was found late in the afternoon. Shot dead. Huh. It's sure hard to figure. Wait, uh, just what did Fred do during the day? Did he go right to the mine? No. First, Fred borrowed some tools from Rod Black's mine supply store over in town. Then went to the mine. Oh, around noontime, he sent a note for me to the store by an old prospector called Pat Mule Parker. Rod Black brung it to me later. Said the mine was no good. That's all we know. Fred sent a note? Exactly what did it say, Benson? Well, I still got it right here in my wallet. You read it yourself, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, let's see. It says there's no gold at all. It's a dead mine. Yes, that's pretty different about the mine being no good. Too bad you couldn't get something out of it for your 10000 Oh, Rod Black offered us $1,000. Says he can salvage the equipment. Ore buckets and rock-crushing machinery and such stuff. At least that's something. So that's the story. Fred examined the mine, sent this note, and was killed. Well, that's it, Mr. Cassidy. His murderer seems to got away. The low-down, sneaking snake. Even a snake leaves a trail, Benson. And I don't intend to let this one get away. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Secret in the Hill. Hoppy and California are looking into the killing of Fred Benson, who was found mysteriously shot after he had inspected a worthless gold mine his father had bought. Having heard the story of the murder from old Mr. and Mrs. Wade Benson, Hoppy and California have ridden to the place close by the mine where Fred's body was found. Notice something, California? 
All these boulders around here give plenty of cover for whoever ambushed Fred Benson. Anyone on this trail could be followed for miles without knowing it. Sure. Why, the killer could be hiding behind some boulder 20 feet from where we're standing right now, and uh, we'd never know it. Sure. <laughs> we- what in suffering blue blazes is there? Somebody laughing. The question is, where is it? <laughs> Skin me for a jackrabbit. Hey, uh, here he comes, Hoppy, from behind that big rock. Well, what were you up to hiding those rocks, stranger? <laughs> I wanted to show you how right she was about a body could hide out in these rocks. Me and Molly been following you for a mile. She heard every word you said, to. <laughs> Molly? Uh, who's that? Who's that, he wants to know. Come on out here, Molly, and say howdy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at there, Hoppy. Molly's a mule. Yeah, a pack mule. I guess you're pack mule Parker then, stranger. Yeah, that's me, pack mule Parker. And since you know who I am, I reckon you knows everything around here belongs to me and you're trespassing on my property. Your property? You mean you got title to all this land? Title? I don't take no stock in titles. I come out here 30 years ago when there weren't nothing but coyotes and jackrabbits living in these here hills. I had the first one here. So everything all around here is mine by natural rights. I see. And so you consider anyone who comes by a trespasser? Sure. Keeps me mighty busy protecting my property. Watching everyone that comes poking around. Listen, Parker, were you watching that mine over there two weeks ago when young Benson came here? Sure. Saw him get in, saw him come out. Fred Benson gave you a note to deliver, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I come down to warn him off the property, but he gave me two bits to take this note to Rod Black's store so as Rod could give it to his pa. He's a real nice boy, too. All smiling and happy about something. Anyhow, I just went along and delivered the note to Rod straight away. You say Fred Benson was smiling and happy? He sure was. I see. You know that Fred Benson was killed right here that same afternoon, don't you, Parker? Sure, I know that. Hey, hey, where are you going? Get away from Molly. I'm just admiring this rifle strapped on the mule, Parker. Pretty old, beautiful handmade gun. Oh, yeah. I brought it out from Kentucky with me. With that rifle, I can pick a flea off in a skunk's ear at a thousand yards. Did you ever maybe pick off a trespasser like Fred Benson and what you call your property? Oh, look at here, stranger. Whether I did or whether I didn't, ain't nothing that you got to talk about. Give me back my gun, mister. Sure, here you are. Oh, wait a minute. What's this you got carved on the gun stock? I, uh, that's my signature. Can't you see? Oh, yes, of course. Well, California, let's get on to Rod Black's store in Chenango Pass. I want to talk with him. So long, Parker. Uh, better be goodbye, because I don't want you trespassing on my property. If you got any notions to go poking around down that mine yonder, I'm warning you, you might never come out again. That's all I got to say. Come on, boys. <laughs> you know, Hoppy, I get two ideas about Pat Mule Parker. One, <laughs> he's plum loony, and two... He shot Fred Benson. California, there's no doubt that you're at least half right. Howdy. Which one of you men is Rod Black? That's me, stranger. You looking for something in the way of mining equipment? No, just now I'm looking for some information. You don't say. Information? About what? Fred Benson. Fred Benson, eh? Well, who are you to be asking about Fred Benson? I'm Hopalong Cassidy, and this is California Carlson, my partner. Well, Hopalong Cassidy. Uh, Well, now, about Fred Benson. The sheriff's laid up with a busted leg, and being a deputy, I'm handling this shooting case myself. Then I'd like to hear your ideas about the murder, Black. He ain't got no ideas. Everybody except Marad knows that only two people could have killed Benson. So? Well, Black, what about these two people who could have shot Benson? And Cassidy, it's this way. There's a loony old coot named a pack mule Parker. That... Yeah, we ran into him. He's got the mistaken idea that he owns practically all the mining country around here and has to protect it against trespassers. Is it your idea that Parker figured Fred Benson was trespassing on his property and shot him? Well, ain't no question Parker's loony, and of course he might have done it. All right, that's one suspect. What about the other? 
Well, now, I ain't sure of this neither, but uh, some folks think it could have been Slim Daniels. Slim Daniels? Uh, ain't that the feller uh, that sold that worked-out gold mine to old Benson and then skipped out? He didn't skip out. Folks seen him skulking around through the hills. Ain't no mistake in that pinto he rides. That's right, Cassidy. Some folks figure Fred Benson met up with Slim by accident. Fred demands the money back and goes for Daniels. Slim pulls his gun and shoots the boy. It's possible, of course. Yeah, but it's all guesswork. We need proof, some evidence. Well, how you figure you're going to get evidence, Mr. Cassidy? Fred was shot shortly after he'd been down looking into that mine. There must be a connection. I'm going down into the mine to find it. Well, Cassidy, we're willing to help you run down whoever done the killing. But you don't need our help poking into that hole. Anyhow, good luck to you. Come on, folks. Uh, Cassidy, I personally figure you'll be wasting time going into that mine. And besides, it's like to be kind of dangerous. Seems like the idea that mine's mighty dangerous is kind of popular. Old Parker hinted at it, too. That's right, Black. Why is it dangerous? And these hills is kind of a loose rock formation. And that mine Benson bought never had enough timber and put up inside. A tunnel ceiling could easy cave in. I still think we'll take the chance, Black. After all, Fred Benson came out of the mine all right. Sure, sure, Cassidy. It's your own neck you're risking. All right, then. We'd like to borrow a few things from your stock, Black. A couple of picks, some candles, and a few sticks of dynamite. Well, if you're looking for gold in that mine, even dynamite won't help you. Well, here's your stuff. Here's picks, candles, dynamite, some fuse, and caps. Well, will that do you? Yeah, that'll be fine. Well... I'll just take it into the back room. Put it all in a sack for you. Be right out. I ain't saying I like the idea of going down in that hole, Hoppy. Uh, what you figuring looking for down there? For whatever it was Fred Benson found that made him happy and smiling when he came out and met Pack Mule Parker. Hoppy, I flat refuse to go with you. What, California? What do you mean? I refuse to go unless first we stop at that hash house down the street and eat a two-pound beefsteak. I'm nigh starved. <laughs> all right, California. Judging from the looks of that broken-down hash house, a good steak will be as scarce as the gold in Benson's mine. Here you are, Cassidy. Fix candles, dynamite, and fuse. All in the sack. Uh, anything else I can do for you? Just wish us luck, Black. Well, you sure need luck going into that mine. Uh, forget the mine, Black. Uh, wish us luck with our beef steak. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Secret in the Hill. Up here, I feel like we've been walking through this tunnel for miles. Well, I think we're nearly at the end of the shaft. Watch it, California. Here's another sharp turn. Well, here we are. Kind of widens into a sort of room here. This is as far as the mine goes. Yeah, and I'm sure glad it don't go no further. Well, let's set our candles on this rock shelf. Now, give me one of those picks. I want to probe these walls a bit. Right. And I'll open the sack and I'll... Up. Up. Don't take another step forward. Move back slow. This way. What? Just in front of you, Hoppy. Rattlesnakes. Whew. That was close. Hey, there are dozens of them. And dozens. Look yonder, Hoppy. There's a whole swarming pile of them. Hundreds. Uh, sure enough. It's a den of rattlers. They often hole up in an underground place like this. Some of them are crawling toward the tunnel. Uh, we'd better get out of here, Hoppy. I ain't hankering to wade through rattlesnakes. All right, California. Let's move out along the wall here. You don't need to tell me twice. Uh... <laughs> oh, what the tunnel? Get out of the What? Oh. <laughs> Hoppy. The whole tunnel's caved in. Yeah. It's blocked solid. Watch the snake. Come over here. Hoppy, we're trapped down here. And we can't kill off all these rattlers. Look, they're swarming out of that cleft in the rock. Quick. Pick up some of these splintered timbers. Start a fire. That'll keep the snakes back. Yeah, give me the candle. I'll start some of these slivers. Now, some more of the bigger pieces. <coughs> there, that'll do it for now. <coughs> yeah, for now, but... What do we do next, Hoppy? Quiet. Listen. Uh, I don't hear nothing but them rattlers whirring. No, I hear something beyond that wall. It's water. 
The cave-in must have opened up a fissure. That's an underground stream. Oh, I ain't worrying about dying of thirst. Not with all them rattlers ready to get us as soon as the fire goes out. Look, notice there's not as much smoke in here as there should be. That means air's coming in. Where? Look there, the smoke is moving toward the wall where the water sound comes from. Yeah. If there's an underground stream, it means that there's some sort of tunnel. And the air movement means there's an opening. Hey, but Hoppy, are you gone loco? There ain't no door in that rock wall, no matter what's beyond. But we've got dynamite. We'll blast an opening. Sure, but... No, no, no. Hold on, Hoppy. The explosion in this small space, it'll kill us. Ah, but that big rock in the far corner will give us some protection. That's not the only risk. When we blast open the wall, if that underground stream is on a higher level than we are... The water will come pouring in here and drown us. Well, that'll be quicker and better than waiting for these rattlers to kill us. I'll get out the dynamite. Good. I'll scatter this fire to drive the snakes back from the wall. Then find a place to wedge in the dynamite. Hoppy, here's the dynamite. Four stakes. But... But no cap. We can't explode it without caps. No caps? No. Oh, that tunnel didn't cave in of itself. It was dynamited. Somebody removed the caps from the sack so that we couldn't blast our way out of here. But who could have took the caps? We hid the sack and we... We didn't actually see Rod put the caps in. We weren't watching the sack in the restaurant. When we first came to the mine, we left the sack outside for several minutes while we made sure the tunnel timbering was safe. Well, no matter who the dirty barment was who took him, he's finished us for good. Now we... We ain't got a chance, Hoppy. There's one chance, California, just one. Give me that dynamite. Huh? Yeah, yeah, here you are. But what good is it without caps? There. I got it wedged in the rock wall. It'll take all four sticks to do the trick, though. Yeah, but I still don't see, Hoppy. Uh, what you gonna do with that revolver cartridge? I'm taking out the lead ball. I'm gonna put the blank cartridge in the end of the stick of dynamite. That'll act as a detonator, just like a cap. That's how we'll explode the dynamite. But you'll have to have some way to explode the cartridge first. Correct. We'll get behind that rock in the corner. Then I'll try to hit the cartridge cap and the dynamite with a shot from my revolver. That'll explode it if I don't miss. If I do miss, my bullet will just break up the dynamite. It's one shot, one chance. One shot. There's hardly no light in here, Hoppy, and what little light there is is all kind of wavy and flickering, and it'll be an impossible shot, Hoppy. I know, California, but it's our one chance to escape. Otherwise, we'll stay trapped in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's rattlesnakes are drowning, or the explosion itself might kill us, uh, well, uh, what are we waiting for? Shoot, Hoppy. All right. Crouch down behind me. You ready? Here goes. Oh! Back to Hopalong Cassidy. Oh, God. I feel like I've been through a rock crusher after squeezing up through that crack the blast opened up, Hoppy. But just seeing this daylight is all that you're in need. Well, somebody didn't intend that we should ever see daylight again. Somebody took those caps. Somebody blasted that mine tunnel so that we'd be trapped in there for keeps. Yeah, and just let me get my hands on the low-down, sneaking, crawling, murdering son of a skunk, and I'll... I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> You'll do what? I, I'm gonna take this nice, big, jagged rock along with me as a souvenir and bounce it off on the varmint skull. <laughs> but we gotta find out who it is first. Say, hey, wait a minute. Let me see that piece of rock. Huh? Uh, this? Uh, why, sure. There you are. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Let's get to our horses. I got the answer to everything now. I reckon he's out in the back room. Black? Rod Black. Who is it? Come out here to the front of your store. What? 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 Cassie, of course, I, I didn't expect you back uh, so soon. The murderer didn't expect us to be back at all. Uh, what do you mean? Just this, Black. Fred Benson's killer saw to it that there was no dynamite caps in that sack when we got down into the mine. Then he blasted the tunnel trying to bury us alive. But uh, why should he want to kill you? Because the murderer figured we'd find out what Fred Benson found down in that mine. And what was that? It was what Fred Benson wrote in the note he sent you to give to his father. Why, uh, the note only said there wasn't no gold in the mine, uh, that it was... Well, the way he put it, a dead mine. No, Black. What Fred wrote was. 
There's no gold at all. It's a lead mine. Someone changed the L in lead to a D. That's the reason Fred was killed, so that only the murderer would know that the mine was full of lead ore worth a fortune. Then what you saw in this chunk of rock I picked up was lead? That's right, California. Our blast uncovered a big vein of lead. That's what Fred had discovered. That's why he was happy when Parker met him. And that's what he tried to tell his father in that note. Well, then that settles it. Pack Mule Parker, bring me the note. He must have changed the word lead to dead. He must have shot Fred Benson to protect the secret. And he easy could have swiped the caps out of the sack when you weren't looking. Why, sure. No, Black, it wasn't Parker. I examined that antique rifle of his. It won't shoot. The hammer's rusted tight. And what's more, Parker can't write. He's got what he calls his signature carved on the rifle stock. It's an X. A mark a man makes instead of a signature when he can't write. Well, now, that being so, it throws it right back to Slim Daniels, wouldn't you say? No, I wouldn't say. The idea of the fight between them won't stand up. Fred couldn't have recognized Daniels as the man who sold his father the mine because he'd never seen Daniels. Why, uh, you never... Uh... Now, who is the murderer? Why, I just can't guess. You, Black. You're the only one who had a chance to change the note. Me? Then you offered to buy out old Benson for $1,000. It wasn't for the mine machinery and equipment. Well, I just... It was because you knew the secret in the hill, that there was lead in the mine worth a fortune. So he's the killing boss. No, 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 hey, that's just a guess. You got no proof. You can't accuse a man without proof. You said that yourself, Cassidy. Black, I want to see you. That's old pack mule Parker. What do you want, Parker? We're busy. What do I want, he asks. I'll tell you what I want. Damages. Payment for damages from you, Rod Black. Get out of here, you crazy old fool. Get out, he says. I'll get out when you pay me an out of four. With my own eyes, I seen you dynamite that mine tunnel, blowing up my personal property. Hey, he's reaching for a gun. Stand back, all of you. You're not going to take me. I tell you, I'll shoot you all before you... Hey, he's out cold. What hit him? Just that chunk of rock from the mine I flung at him, Hoppy. <laughs> I said I was going to bounce it off in the skull of whomsoever was the murdering varmint. Good work, California. Now will you tie him up, all ready for delivery to the U.S. Marshal for arrest for murder. Hey, if Rod Black is going to be arrested, how'll I collect my damages? You'll collect all right, Parker. You were saying you saw Black Dynamite the mine was all we needed to prove his guilt. You'll get the $500 reward. Me? $500? Sure. Why, I'll be rich. Molly can have all the oats she can eat forever. <laughs> Wait till I tell Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the $500 will take care of Pack Mule Parker. The lead mine will take care of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Benson, and the law will take care of Rod Black. There's uh, just one more thing that ought to be took care of before we leave Chenango Pass, Hoppy. What's that, California? My appetite. Today we come so close to never eating again, I'm hungry all over. <laughs> California, you don't mean to say you want another two-pound beefsteak. Nope. And this time I'll take a four-pounder. <laughs> <laughs> California's appetite doesn't entirely run along the lines of adventure, does it? But when Hoppy and his sidekick go after snakes... Whether they be murderers or a mine filled with rattlers, you can be sure that a snake of any kind is no match for them. Our next adventure with Hoppy in California takes place in Abilene, where a beautiful redhead becomes the victim of a murder, and the guilty man might have got away with it if it hadn't been for the memory of Mace Malott. Don't miss it. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Secret in the Hill was written by Paul Adams with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.
with action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures. And the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. This one I call the memory of Mace Malott. It began with a red-headed singer at the Silver Dollar, biggest dance hall and gaming palace in Abilene. California and I had ridden into town looking for Johnny Kenyon, who used to ride for the Bar 20. We had no idea where he was staying, but one of his letters had said something about working at the Silver Dollar. So we stopped there and went inside. Man, oh man. Say, this place is big enough for a roundup. Yeah, and crowded enough to be a beef shoot. It's going to be worth it, though. Hey, take a look at that red-headed gal sitting up at the bar. Yeah. Prettier than a newborn calf under a harvest moon. And, uh, ooh, ooh, look at them spangles she's wearing. California. Uh, well, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, which way are you heading? I thought I'd ask one of the bartenders about Johnny. Well, uh, Hoppy, pick that bald-headed one, then. He's right for the gal. <laughs> uh, I'll bet she sings or something. I'll bet she sings real pretty. Come on, I'll... California, through here. Yeah, I'm right behind... Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'd be a lot easier, though, if a fella had a shoehorn. Well, gents, you made it. What do you have? I'll have a sarsaparilla and a little information. Well, we got both right here. Yep, we got both. What do you want to know? I'm looking for a man named Kenyon, Johnny Kenyon. Know where I can find him? Well, there's your sarsaparilla. Johnny Kenyon, huh? You're a stranger in these parts, ain't you, mister? That's right. Well, uh... Let me handle this, will you, Jack? Uh, oh, why, why, sure, Kelly, why, sure. Just what do you want with Johnny Kenyon, mister? I'm a friend of his, miss. An old friend. That's funny. He never told me about knowing anyone like you. Well, now, maybe that's because he was too busy telling you about yourself. With that red hair of yours... Never mind my red hair. You're a gunman, aren't you? A gunman? (laughs) I'm afraid you're way off the track, miss. You're carrying two guns. You're a stranger. And you come in here asking for Johnny Kenyon. Harvey, she's got a pistol. A derringer. I see it. Now, miss, why don't you take it easy? I'm not going to hurt Johnny Kenyon. I'm going to make sure you don't hurt him. You or anyone else. First, it's threats we get. Now it's a hired gunman. You sound pretty excited to me. If we could just sit down and... You're right. I am excited. Excited enough to kill anyone who'd hurt Johnny Kenyon. And I'm starting right now with you. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and the memory of Mace Malott. Hoppy and California have come to Abilene to look for an old friend, Johnny Kenyon. But in the Silver Dollar dance hall, Hoppy is taken for a hired gunman by a beautiful red-headed entertainer. A girl who thinks he means harm to Johnny Kenyon. She has pulled a gun, leveled it at Hoppy, and fired point blank. Hoppy, you hit! No, California, I'm all right. But there are some bottles back there that are never going to be quite the same. I got the gal's pistol. Give it back to her. Give it back to her? Are you crazy? She won't make any more trouble. She pulled the gun offline just before she fired. I watched her do it. Is that right, miss? I... <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, no, let her go. She must have had good reason for doing what she did. Seems to me Johnny Kenyon must be in some kind of trouble. Well, if he's mixed up with her, he's got trouble. Plenty of it. What's going on here, anyway? Oh, nothing much, Mace. A little shooting, but nothing heard outside of a few bottles. Were you in on a Cassidy? In a way, I was, but... Uh, wait a minute. How do you happen to know my name? I'm Mace Malak, town marshal. I never forget a face or a fact. I met you in Ponca City seven years ago. Party at Judge Carver's house. You had your arm in a sling from a rifle slug. Well, that is a memory. As I recall it, that was a big party. I'll even name the two waddies you came with. A couple of lads named Red Connors and Idaho Norton. You got me, a lot. Now, let's get back to what happened here. Carrie Deneen tried to plug you. Why? She thought I was a gunman out to get Johnny Kenyon. Wouldn't believe me when I told her I was a friend of his. 
Johnny Kenyon, huh? I had an idea he was working here. He was, but not anymore. Don't happen to know where he's staying, do you, Marshal? At the Longhorn Hotel. No use going there till sundown, though. Kenyon works in the stockyards till sundown. Then he stops for dinner at Maggie Fergal's place. Uh, want me to do anything about Carrie? No, she was hysterical. She fired the miss anyway. Why don't we just forget it? Glad you feel that way about it, Cassidy. You're all right. Tell me something, Malant. Why would anyone want to hurt Johnny Kenyon? There's one of the easiest going men you'll find anywhere. Carrie Deneen seems to like him. And that makes him a lot of ready-made enemies. Because a lot of men like Carrie Deneen. Jealousy. With some people, it's another word for kill. You sure this is the room? Well, the clerk downstairs said it was number 15. And that's what we got. Johnny Kenyon, you old outlaw, you. Didn't expect... Johnny, what's the matter? What happened to you? Hoppy. You, you better come in. You... Catch him, Hoppy. I've got him. Get the door open a little more. His face. Looks like somebody hit it with a poker. Seize him down on the bed. You better go out and get a doctor. No. Uh, don't get... Don't get anyone. Just take it easy, Johnny. You need a doctor. Uh, no. By the window. You see? Winter? What's she worrying about? It? Hoppy! Yeah, I see. The girl from the Silver Dollar. The redhead. She's dead, Hoppy. She's been stabbed. Hoppy, you... You've got to... Get me out of here. How did it happen, Johnny? I don't know. I, I walked into the room. Something hit me. That, that's all I know. Please, get me out of here. You can't run, Johnny. Run from this and you'll carry a label the rest of your life. Kill her. And every man will be against you because it was a woman. I didn't do it. Now, we'll tell them that. But you can't run. you got to stay and face it. California. The doctor? The doctor and the town marshal. And you might as well tell him to bring along the coroner. Right. I'm on the way, Hoppy. I'm... I'm glad you came, Hoppy. I, I'm awful glad you came. Did you know that girl was coming here tonight? Yeah. Carrie and I were in love. We were going to get married next week. She came here so we could plan the wedding. I was a little late getting back from Maggie Fergal's place. I, I shouldn't have been late. If I hadn't oh, been late... Oh, but they'd have found some other way of doing it. Stop beating yourself, Johnny. A lot of men were in love with her. But I was the lucky one. The lucky one. What are you doing, Hoppy? That's her purse. Spilled open when she fell. There's a handkerchief, a sachet, locket, four, eight, twelve, thirteen silver dollars. Yeah. She always carried thirteen dollars. Thought it was good luck. Well, it wasn't good luck tonight. Well, we'll turn this over to the law. Not the sachet, Hoppy. I... I'd like to have the sachet. The fragrance of it. It'll always seem like her. Put it in your pocket for me. Nobody has to know. Well, I don't... Please, Hoppy. It may be all I'll... I'll ever have to remember, but... If I ever get out of this... You'll get out of it, Johnny, if you're innocent. You believe I'm innocent, don't you? Yes, I do. Because I know you. There'll be people in this town who won't believe it. And for a while, that's going to make things pretty tough. <laughs> Here's the marshal, Hoppy. Couldn't find the doctor, no, but we left word for him. Uh, doesn't look as though a doctor's going to do this girl much good. Kenyon needs him. California tell you about this, Malat? Yes, he told me. I'm glad you didn't run, Kenyon. How did it happen? I'll tell you the same thing I told Hoppy. I walked into this room and someone hit me. That's all I know. Why was the girl here? We were going to be married. Next week. She came here so we could talk things over. Sure you didn't have a fight? No. We never fought about anything. We were in love with one another. Okay, kid. I'm just asking what other people are going to ask. Know anybody who'd want to kill her? No. Why would anybody want to do that? Pretty as a picture. Why would anybody want to do that? Well, 
I'm going to have to take you in, kid. Johnny, you worked at the Silver Dollar, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I worked there. Who runs the place? A fellow by the name of Blue Telford. Why? Oh, just a thought. Okay. But don't let your thoughts make you careless. Not when it comes to Blue Telford. He's a winning man on the draw. And that goes for the game of poker or when he's using a gun. I'm Chelford. Bartender says you've been wanting to see me. Yeah, I'm Hopalong Cassidy. This is my partner, California Carlson. Uh, what's your trouble? I'm a friend of Johnny Kenyon. I thought if I could talk to you about Carrie Deneen... Look, friend, I'm not talking about Carrie Deneen to anyone. This could be important. It might save Johnny Kenyon's life. Well, I'll just be frank with you. I don't care a nickel about saving Johnny Kenyon's life. Uh, I can see we're just wasting each other's time. Not at all. You hadn't come looking for me, I'd have sent for you. That's interesting. Why? Well, I've been kind of anxious to give you a little advice. I think you ought to get out of town. I've only been here a few hours. Haven't had a chance to do much looking around. Well, it's a dusty, dirty town, friend. You wouldn't see much if you did look around. It'll be much healthier for you if you leave. Just the same, Telford, I think I'll stay. Well, that's your choice. But if you're still in Abilene by tomorrow night, you could end up staying a long time. A long, long time. All right, Telford. Now that we understand each other... Help! Everybody down the street! Mr. Telford, you can get them out! Out where? You try to empty this place, Meek, and you better have good reason for it. I have good reason, Mr. Telford. It's a fire for jail with a young fellow in there burning to death. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Memory of Mace Millot. In Abilene, a fire is destroying the city jail. Inside the building, a trapped, helpless prisoner is Johnny Kenyon, Hoppy's friend and old Bar 20 pal. Outside, a big crowd mills about, horrified by the spectacle of a man being burned to death before their eyes. Everybody line up. Let's get those buckets going. A lot. How about Kenyon? We've done everything we can. Door jam shut and now it's too hot to get close. We can't let him stay in there and die. Here, let me have that bucket of water. Give me three or four lariats and riders. I'll have to have three or four riders. What you gonna do, Hoppy? Get these ropes wet. I'll move in and time the bars, then we'll pull that wall out. You're crazy, you'll die as well as Kenyon. I'm gonna try to save him anyway. Here are the ropes, boys. I'll keep the open end. How you gonna work it, Cassidy? When I give the word, pull. Here I go. Watch the horses! Hang on those ropes and he'll never make it. He'll never make it anyway. That building's going to cave in any second. Poppy! He's still on his feet. I can see him. He ain't going to make it. That building's going down. He'll make it. Come on, Hoppy. Hold it. We can't hear him. Let it go. There he goes. I heard him. Oh, wait. Give him a chance to get clear. He's clear now. Pull away. How is he, Malat? Doc says he's going to be all right. He was smart enough to lie flat on the floor, and that saved his life. How do you think that jail caught fire? I don't think. I know. Somebody set it off. That fire should prove Kenyon's innocence. Somebody tried to kill him. I won't argue that with you, but... You in here, Malat? Come in, Judge. Judge, this is Hopalong Cassidy. Hello. Oh, I've heard of you, Cassidy. What? There's people saying that you're going to take Kenyon out of Abilene because uh, you're worried about his health. He's my prisoner, and it's my duty to protect his welfare. I'm taking him over to Claiborne tomorrow. Not until after the inquest, you won't. Well, that's up to you, Pete, since you're both coroner and judge. Then he stays in town and we decide how that girl met her death. And if anybody's real worried about Kenyon's health, they better go out and find him a good lawyer. Because he's going to need it. Out, 
pretty late, aren't you, California? Well, with that fire and all, it was a big night. Uh, might be bigger ones in the next day or so, though. Why do you say that? There's a lot of talk going around. Uh, talk against Blue Telford. Uh, there's them as thinks he'd a hand in the killing of that gal. There's talk about forming vigilantes and running Telford out of town. Uh, with the gang Telford has behind him, that would be quite a job. I heard something else this evening, too. Ran into that little clerk who works at the Longhorn Hotel. Yeah? He's been drinking quite a bit. Uh, had a lot in his mind. Told me some of it. About Johnny Kenyon? Yeah. This little feller's name's Meek. Judd Meek. And he says he knows about somebody who went up to Johnny's room just afore Carrie Deneen was killed. Yeah? Meek says the party didn't know he saw him because he was in a closet stacking blankets at the time. He saw him come out, too, maybe ten minutes later. That was just before we got there. Then we've got it. (laughs) This should clear Johnny Kenyon. Maybe, if Meek could name this party. Uh, But I couldn't get no more out of him. He's scared, yes, sir. Uh, It's on his conscience, but he's scared clear through to the marrow. Where did you talk to him? Over at the Golden Nugget Saloon. He might still be there. Let's go. This place ain't quite as fancy as the Silver Dollar. No music or nothing. Can you spot your man? Yeah, he's all alone at the table. Come on. I'm uh, back again, Meek. I thought I'd like to buy you a little drink. Yeah, Oh, it's you, huh? uh, Yeah, this is my pal, Hoppy. Uh, hello, Hoppy. Hi. Listen, fellas, I can't stay. I got to go home. I got a wife and kid, and we're leaving town tomorrow, so I got to go home. Uh, but you got a lot in your mind, Meek. We kind of thought you might like to talk about it. Not and... so loud. Uh, a lot of my mind? What do you know about what I got on my mind? Well, you know who killed Carrie Deneen. You know who was up to Johnny Kenyon's room just before she got night. Hey, wait a minute. What are you trying to do? Get me in trouble? Who was it you saw go up there, Meek? Hey, go away. I'm going home. I got a wife. And a what, kid. what are you going to do, Meek? Keep it in your conscience? You helped me save Johnny Kenyon's life tonight. I saw you working down there at the fire. What are you going to do now? Let him hang anyway? When you know he's innocent. When you know who really committed that murder. I'm going home. We're leaving. You've got in the to tell us, Meek. It'll be on your conscience if you don't. You've got to tell us. Uh, yeah, I guess I do have to tell you, but. I... I have to do it in my own way. You don't need to no, wait. No, 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 wait. I'll, I'll tell you about it. I'm scared. I've got a wife and kid. i got to think about them, so I'll tell about it in my own way. All right, Meek. What is your own way? And tomorrow morning, we're pulling out of Abilene, me and the family. There's an old trail shack out west of town, maybe ten miles. Yeah. If you want to meet me there tomorrow, I'll tell you everything I saw, and then I won't care. And I figure we can get away, and it'll be off my mind. I can't make it in the morning, Meek. They're holding the inquest then. But all right, I'll, I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you until sundown. Let's have order here. This is an inquest, not a carnival. All right, now. Now we'll get back to the business at hand. I have here a list of effects belonging to the deceased. Do we have the items here, Marshal? No, Your Honor. Everything except the money was burned up when the jail caught fire. I wrote the list from memory. Well, we certainly won't question your memory. It seems you had a handkerchief, a locket, and a... Now, any more disturbance like this, I'm going to clear the room. What's going on here, anyway? What's this all about? If you really want to know, Pete, I'll be glad to tell you. You sit down, Maggie Virgo. You're out of order. That's where you're wrong, Judge. Everything about me is working just fine. <laughs> and since when have vigilantes been out of order? Vigilantes? What do you mean? We're formed and ready to act, that's what I mean. We want you and the marshal to act with us. But if you ain't willing, we're going to act anyway. And just what you expect to do that can't be done in court under due process of the law. This happens to be a court, don't it? Well, don't see Blue Telford in here anywhere. Well, as far as we know, Blue Telford has nothing to do with this case. Pete, as far as we all know, he's got everything to do with it. With everything else that's rotten in this town. Thank you for it all. You're a woman. You shouldn't have any interest in killing. I don't, so long as your fool men can find it to one another. But when you start killing women, that's when I get plumb interested. We want Telford at this hearing, Judge. 
Yeah. If he don't feel that he wants to come, we feel we ought to go over to the Silver Dollar and get him. Your Honor, may I say something? Why not, Mr. Gessner? Everybody else has. Maggie, if you're all willing to wait until this evening sometime, I think I'm going to be able to tell you who killed Carrie Deneen and provide proof. Well, now that sounds all right. But how do we know you ain't just talking? I have information that I can't give out to everybody, but I'm willing to tell you all about it. I'll tell you up here in front of the judge and the marshal, and then you can decide for yourself. Sounds fair enough. Well, come up here to the bench then, Maggie. All right. If this is going to be a private conversation, everybody else back. Now make way for Maggie first. Don't worry about me. I'll make my own way. Maggie, you certainly give me a lot of trouble here today. I ought to cite you for contempt. You do, Judge, and you'll never eat another piece of my pie as long as you live. <laughs> All right, now, what's this information? That little clerk at the hotel he saw a person go up to Johnny Kenyon's room just before the killing. He saw the person leave right after it. He wouldn't tell me who it was. He was afraid. But he's leaving Abilene, and he's going to tell me the name of that person this afternoon when I meet him at the trail shack out west of town. All right, Maggie. Does that satisfy you? Yeah, I'm satisfied. It's okay, everybody. We'll wait and act later. And now, now, if you don't mind, we'll continue this hearing. If I remember correctly, I was reading Marshal Malotte's list of the dead girl's effects. Handkerchief, locket, silk sachet, and 13 silver dollars. Well, it appears that the handkerchief, the locket, and the sachet were destroyed in the jail fire. But, hey, hey, hold on there, Cassidy. Where do you think you are going? Sorry, Your Honor, but I have to leave. I just found out that I put Judd Meek and his family in danger of their lives. Well, Jesse, only a few more hours now, and we can be on our way. Then we won't have nothing to worry about. And then we're heading out to California. What do you say to that, Jesse? Jesse, I'm talking to you. You always were a talker, weren't you, Meek? Meek, my lot. Yeah. Talk so much you don't even think to look if anybody's listening. If you'd have been looking now for an instant, you'd have seen that your wife and kid are walking out by the corral. Uh, my wife and kids? Didn't expect to see me, did you? No, Waiting no. For I... somebody else, weren't you? Hop along, Cassidy. <laughs> you were going to tell them all about seeing me at the hotel last night. Shotgun. You got a shotgun. I'll bet you told your wife all about it, too, didn't you, Meek? My wife? No, no, no. You couldn't do anything to her, my lot. I'm afraid I'll have to, Meek. With you the talker that you are, I'd be taking too big a chance letting her stay alive. No, no. Should have kept your mouth shut, me. You can't kill us, you... Shut up. Hop along, Cassidy. Thank heaven. I said shut up. One wrong word and... You don't see my nag out back. Maybe we'll have a surprise party for Mr. Cassidy. Meek, you in there, Meek? Answer. Tell him you're here. Uh, I'm here, Mr. Cassidy. And I'm here too, Cassidy. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. You ain't gonna be using this hand for a couple of days, Hoppy. Lucky you only caught the edge of that scattergun blast, or you wouldn't have no arm. Uh, you ought have waited for me to get here anyway. Might have been too late, California. Uh, it would have been too late. My lot was going to kill my wife as well as me. Maybe my kid. Yeah, I can believe that. After all, he killed Carrie Deneen just because he was jealous of her. How's the shoulder, my lot? I'll be all right. If I had half your luck, I'd own the state of Texas. Ah, uh, you made your own luck, my lot. All the way. Another 15 minutes. That was all I needed. You're wrong. I knew you were the killer without me telling me. Sure, you're a big man. You know everything. And just how did you know? You told me. You and that report you wrote of what Carrie Deneen had in her purse. You wrote that list from memory, didn't you, Malat? You'd have been better off if you hadn't. Listen, I've got the best memory in the Southwest. Why would I have been better off? Because what you wrote showed you'd been in the room before I got there. And that would have proved you guilty. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the silk sachet you had on the list. She had a sachet. I know she did. But you couldn't have known it, not unless you were there earlier than I was, because I picked up that sachet before you and California came in. I picked it up and kept it, without saying a word to anybody. Now, let's get back to town. I'm anxious to tell Johnny Kenyon he's a free man. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a funny thing, but justice always seems to triumph over crime, even when the only clue, as Hoppy found in this story, was merely a bag of powdered scent and a memory that was a trifle too keen. In our next adventure, Hoppy and California come face to face with death, but this time not at the point of a gun. It's a tale of greed and mystery, and the fall guy takes the form of a spider woman. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Memory of Mace Millock was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? We call this one the Killers of Lion Canyon. California and I were riding into Skeleton Mountains. That's a range not far west of the Bar 20 where an old pal of mine had taken up homestead a few years back. He had written to me what good grass there was, and I thought we might use some of it for Bar 20 range. We were just getting up to where the pine trees grow. The horses had their heads down as they worked their way up a steep canyon trail. Hoppy, this here mountain air sure makes a man hungry, <laughs> don't it? <laughs> back there on the prairie, we cook more than you could eat. Yeah, yeah, I know, but uh, there's something about this here altitude. <laughs> Oh, gone. Hoppy, I thought you had friends around here. That ain't no friendly greeting. No, it isn't. Wait a minute. Look, there's someone coming. I don't know this man, California. Get ready. Guns right here in my hand. Howdy, friends. Howdy. Hey, put away your guns. I I apologize for the shooting. <laughs> my mistake, friends. I I thought you was a mountain lion. Do we look like mountain lions, mister? <laughs> no, not at close range. I, uh, I saw something move, and this is Lion Canyon, and it's full of hungry critters. Sure, and that makes her mean, like me. I'm hungry, too, and uh, when Never somebody... mind, California. Uh, I, uh, I guess you must be strangers in here. I'm Lou Rucker. If there's anything I can do, just name it. Cassidy's my name, and this is California Carlson. It, uh, it wouldn't be hop along, Cassidy, would it? It would. Well, I'm sure proud to meet you men. Now, if I can help you in any way, you just go right ahead and ask. That's kind of you, Rucker. I'm looking for an old friend of mine, Ray Wilson, a homesteader. He took up some land at a place called Paradise Flats. Ray uh, Wilson? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Wilson was moving out. Moving out? That doesn't sound like Ray. Would anything be running him out, Rucker? Well, when a man can't make a living, he moves, don't he, Cassidy? I, I tell you, you ride up to the Paradise Flats store and ask about him. How do we get to the Paradise store? Follow this trail a short piece till it forks. Hey, turn right. The left fork won't take you nowhere. I see. Turn right, not left. Yeah, that's it. The left fork continues on up in Lion Canyon. Them varmints will jump a man any time. They're that bad, are they? Well, thank you, Rucker. I hope we'll see you again. Come on, California. 
Poppy, that Rucker feller seems real friendly. Yeah, too friendly. Uh, what you mean? I think he took a shot at us for one thing. And I don't remember Ray Wilson as a man who would move away from a good piece of grassland. Ah, uh, Hoppy, you're just looking for trouble. I'm not looking for it, but I'm beginning to smell it. Well, here's the forks. We turn left. Uh, uh, hey, 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 hold on, hold Rucker said turn right. That's why we're going left. Rucker was too anxious. There must be something in this Lion Canyon, something Rucker doesn't want us to see. California, look. There's a horse running up the trail. A no rider on him. Let's go. That broomtail sure is running, Hoppy. We ain't never going to catch up with him. I know, but we can trail it and find out about the owner. Must be headed toward a ranch somewhere. Say, what you seeing, Hoppy? There's something else ahead. Can't make it out just yet. Looks like a man. Eh, you ain't wrong either. There, that is a man, all right. Laying there aside the creek. Yeah, and he's laying face down. Hold up a minute. Go down and have a look. Now then, here. Turn him over. Gee, Hoshaphat. Look at that face. Clawed by a mountain lion, sure enough. And that isn't all of it. This is Ray Wilson. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Killers of Lion Canyon. Riding to see Ray Wilson, Hoppy and California are fired upon by Lou Rucker, who claims he was shooting at a mountain lion. Not trusting Rucker, Hoppy ignores his warning to stay out of Lion Canyon. There, they come upon a riderless horse, and soon afterwards, an unconscious man. Ray Wilson. Uh, that's lucky we got here as soon as we did. He isn't dead. It ain't the lion's fault. It done its best. Maybe Wilson was climbing this here cliff where the water comes over. He might have fell off and the lion jumped him. That uh, could have knocked him out. If it was a lion. I'm not so sure. Anyway, this bandana stops the blood. Now help me get him up on my horse. Steady him now. Let me swing up first. Uh, all right. We'll get him here in front of me in the saddle. There we are. Good thing he ain't triplets the size of him. I, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold still, you old lop ear. You, you... I think we can track that riderless horse. We'll get somewhere. Maybe to Paradise Flats. Yeah, and maybe we'll get someplace where we don't want to be. But let's go. <laughs> Well, there's the Paradise Flats General Store. But that horse, that isn't the riderless one. Sure ain't. That's uh, Palomino. Yeah, it is. The same kind Rucker was riding. What you figure that means, Hoppy? Trouble. Say, uh, look over there, across from the store. Looks like an old mine tunnel with the entrance boarded up. Yeah, but there are a lot of old mines in these mountains. Now he's over toward the store, California. We'll get Wilson inside. I wonder what they got in this store in the way of thirst-quenching, stomach-filling vittles. Huh? Cassidy, I thought I told you to... What's that you got there in your saddle? Oh, just like you said, Rucker. Mountain lines is bad in that canyon. This feller get jumped. Rucker, we need a doctor. A doctor? Why, why, sure, Cassidy. I'm lucky there's a doctor right inside. He, he owns the store. Now, uh, just to ease this man out of your saddle, I'll carry him in. All uh, right. There, I got him. Lay him there on the counter, Rucker. Uh, uh, too bad about this. It's your friend Ray Wilson, ain't it? I think you know that. Well, you can leave him with me, Cassidy. I'll take care of him. I thought you said there was a doctor here. What? Uh, yeah, I, I guess maybe well, I did. Well, you better produce that doctor now. Oh, oh, sure. Uh, Brody. Dr. Brody. Uh, uh, Dr. Brody, uh, uh, here's a patient for you. A patient for me? Uh, that's right, doctor. I uh, got clawed by a mountain lion. Uh, this is Hopalong Cassidy and California Carlson. They found him. How come they did? What were they doing up Lion Canyon? How come they was let to go up Lion Canyon anyway? Uh, they took a wrong turn. I, I told them how to turn to get to the store here. And why didn't they? Well, either they didn't remember my directions or they didn't want to remember. Dr. Brody, let's take care of this man. We stopped the blood, but something struck him on the head. Uh, I see. A, a cranial contusion. Concussion, no doubt. Best thing is to get him to my back room. I uh, 
Operating room. Rucker, you carry him. I'll do the carrying. Well, no need of that, Cassidy. He's in good hands now. Uh, you just leave him with us. Rucker, when this man comes to, I want to hear what he has to say. Maybe you understand why. Is that accusing me of something, Cassidy? I don't accuse until I have all the facts, Rucker. But I might do some accusing when Ray Wilson gives me the facts. Hoppy, uh, there's a wagon outside. Uh, there's a woman and a boy in it. Rucker, take the patient into the back room before Mrs. No, Wilson... Rucker, keep your hands off. Oh, Mr. Rucker. Mr. Rucker, have you seen Ray? Yeah. Dad's horse came home without him. And... <gasps> Dad. Ray. Dad. Oh, Ray. Ray isn't dead, ma'am. Now, please don't worry. Uh, Hoppy, uh, you want me to try Hoppy? and... Hoppy? Uh... Why, you're Hopalong Cassidy. And you're California. Ray was always talking about you two. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. This is our boy, Jimmy. How are you, son? Mrs. Wilson, Dr. Brody says he can help Ray. What do you think? Dr. Brody? Since when was he a doctor? That's just what I thought. Brody, I didn't think you were even a horse doctor. Mrs. Wilson, how far is it to your place? Only a mile, just over and down the first ridge. Well, I hate to move, Ray, but we must. California, you ease Ray up and get him out to the wagon. Cassidy, I'm warning you. Don't you move that man. Save your breath, Rucker. Go ahead, California. Mrs. Wilson, you and Jimmy, too. I'll be out in a minute. Hoppy, I hate to leave you with these rattlesnakes, but uh, you're the boss. Uh, help me hoist Ray onto my shoulder. Huh? Uh, all right. I'm holding the door for you, California. Yeah. Rucker, you letting them get away with this? Unless you've got any better ideas, Brody, shut up. Rucker, that's very good advice. And I got some for you, too, Cassidy. Get out of this country. You and that partner of yours. Not till after we've heard Ray Wilson talk. If it's trouble you're looking for, Rucker, let's have it now. Yeah. You're plenty fast on the draw, Cassidy. But that ain't my way. No. You have what you call mountain lions do your fighting. Well, Rucker, tell your lions they can find me at Ray Wilson's place any time tonight. All right, Mrs. Wilson. You've done what you can for Ray. He'll come out of it soon. He's comfortable on this couch, Miss. Just leave him a while. Oh, Hoppy, I'm so grateful to you in California. Now, please sit down. Any place. Oh, I, I didn't notice it's getting dark. I, I'd better light this table lamp. There. That's better. Jimmy, stay near your father and call me if he stirs any. Uh, ain't it funny how a table always makes me think of eating? Oh, why, you poor man. You must be starved. I'll go and fix something. Well, any old thing will do, Mrs. Wilson. Just uh, some uh, meat and potatoes and uh, coffee and a little cream. and uh, Maybe a piece of pie if you got it. <laughs> Are you sure that's all, California? Well, I could use some beans and a little hot gravy. And, <laughs> and maybe a small plate of hot biscuits are dripping with the butter and honey. And Hold on, maybe, hold uh, on. I think Mrs. Wilson has the idea. Oh, dear. Well, I'll have to see what's in the kitchen. California is always empty, Mrs. Wilson. But first, I want to know a few things. Why were you and Ray leaving Paradise Flats? Well, everyone has left. We're just small homesteaders with only a few cows. But our herds have simply vanished, two or three at a time. Did the mountain lions get them? Well, that's what we had to believe. But the strange thing is, we never found any carcasses. Mrs. Wilson, why did Ray want to leave? Oh, Ray didn't want to leave at all. Paradise Flats has such fine grass. It's a big mountain meadow. Has uh, anyone else wanted it? For instance, uh, Rucker or Brody? Well, they have said Paradise Flats should be one big ranch instead of being filled with homesteaders, but mm -hmm. they always acted friendly enough. So you can't say what happened to your cattle? No, I can't. We had only a herd of ten cows left. Last week, they vanished all at once. And still no sign of where they went? No. Except last night, Ray told me he'd found something. Something he wanted to go out and take a look at before we pulled out today. I don't know where it was. Mom! Mom! Dad's talking! What did he say, son? I couldn't tell. Maybe he'll talk to you, Mrs. Wilson. Ray. What is it, Ray? Tell me. Don't. Don't whip, Jimmy. He found... He found the... Uh... Jimmy, what in the world is your father saying? Why should you be whipped? I... Uh... I guess maybe because I, I rode in the Lion Canyon yesterday. You've been warned about that. Yes, sir, but, but I just had to see it just once before we left. And what was it you found, son? A, a sort of a hole, a big one, up behind some willows. 
I was looking in. Then a lion screamed at me. I sure got out of there fast. Huffy, that makes sense. Lions, just like Rucker said. It begins to make something else, too. Son, could that be an old mine you found? Sort of, yes. I told Dad about it, and I think that's where he went today. Hoppy, uh, what you figure that makes? A shortcut, maybe, through the ridge. There's an old mine entrance up near the store, remember? And today, Rucker beat us over there from Lion Canyon. You're dead right, Hoppy. He sure did. If Ray could just tell us a little more. He hasn't even whispered. A doctor could bring him out of it, Mrs. Wilson. How far is it to a doctor? Twenty miles around the mountain by the road. But, Mom, it's only five straight across. I could ride it. Dad's horse is still saddled out there in the shed. Mrs. Wilson, it's our best chance. The boy can do it. Go ahead, son. On my way, sir. You got a fine boy there, Mrs. Wilson. No need to worry about him. Uh, Speaking about worrying, Hoppy, my stomach's sure getting worried that maybe I ain't got the brains enough to feed it. (laughs) All right, California, if Mrs. Wilson wants to start supper. Oh, yes, I'd better see what there is. Most of our stores are packed, but there must be something left. Oh, there sure better be, because I'm getting mighty old fired wheat from... Uh... <gasps> Jimmy! Grab your gun, California, out in front. Over there, near our horses, come on. There he is, Hoppy, off to the left. I'll get him. Hold it, California, that's the boy. Head toward him. Hoppy, Hoppy! Right here, easy now. What happened, son? I was walking in the shed in the dark, and someone was here at your horses. He, he saw me and then fired two shots. Didn't hit me. Then he ran off. Could you tell who it was? In the gun flash, it, it looked like Mr. Brody from the Paradise Store. Hoppy, look. The house went dark. Come on. Let me in. Mrs. Let Wilson. Me in. Oh, they're after Ray. They shut me on, locked the door. Let's break it down. Come on, California. Both of together now. Keep your gun ready. Oh. He's gone. Ray's gone. They've kidnapped him. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Killers of Lion Canyon. While Hoppy and California are trying to understand what had knocked their friend, Ray Wilson, unconscious, sudden gunshots draw them outside the ranch house. A moment later, they hear Mrs. Wilson scream. Running back into the house, they find that Ray Wilson has been kidnapped. It was all so fast, I just don't know what happened. I see how it was, Mrs. Wilson. One man drew us out with a shot near our horses. Someone else sneaked in here through the back door and took Ray. Yes, Ray tried to sit up when you went out. He seemed almost well. I think he was trying to talk. Those two didn't dare let him talk. They had to get him away so he couldn't tell us what he knows. I heard their horses, Hoppy. I can tell which way they went, even in the dark. They're taking the Ridge Trail over to the Paradise Store. Good work, son. Have you got your dad's horse ready? Yes, sir. Can you lead us to that hole you found on the side of Lion Canyon? I sure can. We can go right up to it. It's it's around a sort of a rocky cliff. Uh, Hoppy, what in tarnation's the good of that? I'm staking everything. It's a shortcut through the ridge. We might even get to the Paradise Store before they do. Well, dog go. Now, Mrs. Wilson, don't worry. Come on, California. Jimmy, let's go. <laughs> What's the use of having horses if all we do is walk? And up a stream, too. Keep on coming, California. You have one thing to be thankful for. There's a full moon tonight so we can see our way. Jimmy, how much farther? These here are the willows. The opening is just on through. There it is. See? This stream comes right out of a big hole in the mountain. Yeah, it does. Hold on a minute. Hoppy, that rock cliff we just come around is where we found Ray Wilson this afternoon. That's right. And this is an old mine entrance, high enough to lead our horses in. You got your gun ready? Why, you figure we might meet with that uh, there mountain lion? If we do, it'll have only two legs. You follow me. Jimmy, drop in behind. Come on. Plumb black in here, ain't it? Mm, cold. Oh, cold as ice. Yeah, I can feel it. Jimmy, you all right? Sure, Hoppy. I never did like being under no mountain. Like being buried in a grave. Keep up close to me, California. We're getting along fine. There, oh! Doggone it. Hoppy, hoppy, hoppy. Wait, wait. I dropped my gun. All right. See if you can find it. Mm. Can you find it? No, no. The god darn thing, but here's something. Feels like a piece of ice. I'd better strike a match. 
Jumping catfish. It is ice. Yeah. And look, here's a door with bars across it. Off at one side. Oh, it's a room. The walls are coated with ice. Hoppy, have you seen what I'm seeing in there? Oh, oh, and the match went out. Here, I'll get it. See that? Yeah, that's butchered beef hung up on racks. Well, I heard hell of ice in mountain caves, but this is the first time I ever actually seen it. Let me see, too. Come ahead, son. Say, I'll bet this is what Dad found. Well, if he didn't, he came pretty close. Uh, there goes the match again. I'll light another, Hoppy. I'll... We don't need it. This explains enough. The cows were brought here by walking into that stream we followed. That's why they never left any tracks. Then they were butchered. You think it was Rucker and Brody that did it, Hoppy? Well, that's my guess. Jimmy, how did Brody have supplies hauled to his store? In a big covered wagon. Sure. Then the beef was taken out the front entrance of the mine, the covered wagon hauled it off to be sold. That's the way the homesteaders have been robbed. That still don't get us out of here. The front entrance can't be far. I figure the ridge over us is high and narrow. This tunnel won't be long. You got your gun, California? Yep, yep, I picked her up. All right, come on. Go slow now. I see something ahead. Yeah, getting kind of light ahead up there, ain't it? The mine entrance is open. There's a little moonlight. That entrance was closed today. Maybe someone heard us. Better stop. California, you come ahead with me. Jimmy, you stay here with the horses. Yes, sir. You think you can manage all three horses by yourself? I'll do my best, sir. Good boy. All right, California. Let's go. <laughs> so good. No one in the mine and no one here in front of the store. I don't see how you know where you are. Turn near as dark in here as it was in the mine. Yeah. Follow me along beside the building. Remember, Brody had a back room. Look, California. There's a light coming through a crack. Go up easy now. Looks like the light's coming from around a door. Here it is. I'll take a peek inside. See anything, Hobby? Ray Wilson's in there. He's sitting up on a box. Brody's with him. I wonder, wonder where Rucker is. He's right behind you. Drop those what? guns quick. What is? Now back to Hop Along, Cassidy. I thought you were smart, Cassidy, but you're as dumb as your partner. <laughs> Falling for my trick. Yeah, but I didn't see you. If it wasn't so darn dark, I'd have... Never mind, uh, California. All right, Brody. Open the door. I'm bringing him in. Uh, smooth work, Rucker. Sure. I tailed him from the mine entrance and right up here to the door. Now go ahead, you two. And forget about your guns. I've got them. Hoppy. California. Ray, how are you? Now, oh, ain't it nice for old friends to meet again? Too bad you won't be seeing each other very long. We'll be dead? Well, now, huh? that's smart of you, California. The first smart thing I've heard you say. Well, if I could just get my paws on you... Rucker, I'd... you've done a lot of killing for a piece of grassland, haven't you? I see your game. Drive out the homesteaders, then you take over Paradise Flats. Well, that's real interesting, Cassidy. Got anything else you know? Yeah, I know a mountain lion didn't do the killing. You jump a man and knock him out. Then you cut him so there's plenty of blood. You make sure the lions will get him then. Right again, Cassidy. But that won't happen to you. Rucker, what do you aim to do with this bunch? Brody, I'll tell you. Cassidy and his pal and Wilson are going to be found dead in the morning. Killed each other in a gunfight. We, uh, we won't know why they shot each other. It ain't none of our business anyways. It won't work, Rucker. Tell me one reason why not. Well, because, uh, because... Well, Rucker, it seems to me you ought to know the reason yourself. <laughs> Keep talking, Cassidy. I like to hear you make a fool of yourself. <laughs> yeah, and this is the guy we thought was so smart. Well, Cassidy, did you figure out yet why it won't work? It won't work because you've still got the rest of our bunch to deal with. <laughs> That's good. The rest of your bunch. Cassidy, nobody comes into this country without my knowing it. And I know you two came in alone. Hey, did I hear something? Ah, Brody, there ain't nothing to hear. Well, listen. Where? 
Wait, sounds like a whole gang. Open the door, Rucker. See who they are. I can't make them out. But whoever they are, here's a lead greeting for them. Tell them on your trick. Tell them on your trick. Hey, I've got the gun. I've got him. Coffee. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, California. I've got this coyote pinned down. This here Brody feels more like a skunk. Ray, are you strong enough to get that gun over there? I sure am, Hoppy. Seeing that fight just about cured me. <laughs> That's fine. We got our hands full, so you cover them. I've got them, Hoppy. I just wish they'd make a move so I'd have an excuse to plug them. Why, you... California, take that rope and tie them up. Right, Hoppy. And now for a talk with the rest of our band. All right, Jimmy, come on in. Jimmy? A kid? Gee whiz. What a mess. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Hello, Hoppy. Hello, Jimmy. Now, what have you got to say for yourself? Nothing, sir, I guess. I'm sorry I didn't keep the horses down in the mine like I promised, but but I just couldn't stay away. <laughs> I knew you couldn't, son. I know boys, and I knew you couldn't keep away for long. To tell you the truth, Jimmy, I was counting on your help. Gee. Dad, Mom's outside. Here, Jimmy? Yes, she drove over in the wagon. Said she couldn't stay away. Here she is now. Oh, Ray. Oh, oh that's Ray. all right. I'm all right, Nellie. I guess we're all all right, except those two there on the floor. Brody and Rucker, a couple of mountain lions who are going to have a nice long rest in the zoo. Hoppy, I guess there's nothing I can say, but thanks. Oh, forget it, Ray. Just tell the homesteaders they can come back to Paradise Flats. They won't be bothered anymore. Hoppy, I don't know how we can ever repay you in California. Oh, shucks, ma'am. Uh, pain me's plum easy. I never asked for more than a good meal in my stomach. <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> when a couple of land-grabbing cutthroats try attempted murder and blame it onto lions to cover up their crime... They'd better make certain first that Hoppy and California are nowhere in the vicinity. In our next adventure, Hoppy and California come into town to buy flour and bacon for the Bar 20 Ranch and find the townspeople in an uproar. The bank has gone broke, and the men responsible turn out to be the wastrels of what is. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Killers of Lion Canyon was written by Mike Jackson, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. This one we call the Wastrels of Juarez. It began one day when California and I rode into town from the Bar 20... We'd come in because of a shortage of flour and bacon at the ranch. But when we saw the crowd in front of the bank, grim-faced, milling around like steers in a draw, we forgot all about food for the moment. Something going on here, Hoppy. Something kind of peculiar. Yeah, there's Jed Kramer. Maybe he knows what this is all about. Ho, boy. Ho. What you got here, Jed? 
trouble? Yeah, that's exactly what we've got. And you've got it, too. If your money's in this bank, it's gone broke. I think we better get down, California. You're not serious about the bank, are you, Jed? Sure I'm serious. The place is closed up, ain't it? But it's Saturday afternoon. The bank has a right to be closed. Who started this rumor, anyway? I don't know, but if it's such a rumor, why don't John Newcomb show himself and deny it? Hey, just a minute, just a minute, man. John hasn't been feeling well lately. You all know that. You should know something else, too. This bank has never let you down in 25 years, and neither has John Newcomb. Why don't you forget this nonsense? You've all got things to do. Why don't you go do them? You still feel worried next week? Come in and talk to John about it. Uh, how do we know that's such a good idea? If this bank is gone bust... Oh, but it hasn't gone bust. Uh, you know me. You know I wouldn't give you a false argument. I'm sure the bank won't go bust. Uh, uh, okay, Hoppy. We'll forget it for now. But I hope you're right about it. Come on, everybody. Let's go on and get about our business. Come on, let's get Boy, for a second or so, I thought there was going to be trouble. I thought maybe... Hey, California. Psst, over here, Hoppy. This side of the bank. What are you doing over here? Why all the secrecy? It's a Mr. Newcomb. He wants to talk to you. I want to talk to you, and I want to thank you, Hoppy. You've given us a chance to breathe freely for the moment. Come in, will you? How did a rumor like this ever get started, John? Something that could cause a lot of trouble. Yes, but I'm afraid we're going to have to face that fact. What do you mean? Hoppy, much as I hate to admit it, we're unable to meet our obligations. To put it bluntly, the bank is broke. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Wastrels of Juarez. Arriving in town from the Bar 20, Hoppy and California find an angry crowd milling before the locked doors of the bank. Rumor has it that the bank has failed, but Hoppy, challenging the rumor, learns from John Newcomb, the bank's president, that it's true. The bank is totally without funds. But, John, that means practically everyone in town is ruined. Yes, I know. There'll be foreclosures all over the area. People trying to raise cash by turning against their neighbors. I've seen it happen before. But why, John? It can't be that No, you... Hoppy. It's something I had no control over. Our cashier absconded with more than $50,000. Practically our total assets. Lewis Kane? You're not being serious, John. Lewis Kane and a new teller we had, Ned Clayton. I don't think you've met him. When did you find out? They left this morning. I'm told they took the stage to Rock City and then headed southwest on horseback. Southwest? Well, that'll take them to El Paso, maybe across the border. Yes, and you know what that means. There isn't a law enforcement officer anywhere who could do anything about it. Someone has to do something about it. There are kids in this town who will go without food if we... Well, John, I'm going after them. I've been hoping you'd say that, Hoppy. You better keep it a thin hope, Mr. Newcomb. If them fellas get across the border, then there ain't much anyone can do about it. Uh, this teller of yours, John, what does he look like? Big man, blonde. I wish we had a photograph, but we don't. Well, we know what Lewis Kane looks like anyway. We'll move out right now. You'll tell him at the bar 20, won't you? I'll tell them. And uh, Hoppy. Yes, John? Tuesday is a holiday. Legitimately, I can keep the bank closed over Monday as well. And then there's some money of my own I can transfer into bank funds for the rest of the week. But after that, if you're not back... I understand, John. We have to be back with that money by a week from this Monday. <laughs> This, uh, El Paso, huh? It's a mighty big town. Too darn big for all the walking I've been doing. No luck, California? No luck at all. Nobody seems to know nothing about Kane or that Clayton fellow. I'm beginning to think they never come here. I've drawn nothing but blanks myself. Mr. Newcomb said that Clayton fellow was a blonde. Uh, maybe we ought to just start looking for yellow-haired six-footers. Well, there's one sitting over there. Somehow he doesn't have the look of a bank teller. Not the way he's wearing that six-gun. Uh, Hoppy, you're being flagged. The bartender. He's a-waving at you. The bartender? Good. I was talking to him a little while ago about Kane. Maybe he remembers something he forgot to tell me. Let's hear what he has to say. No something, Hoppy? Uh, we're being given the eye by that blonde fellow with the gun. That's a hopeful sign. Maybe we'll scare up something yet. 
I'd like another sarsaparilla, bartender. Sarsaparilla coming up. How about your friend? Oh, uh, I'll take some of that cactus chloroform. Uh, uh, my partner says he thought he saw you motion to me. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I got to thinking about them fellas you're looking for, and my memory got to speeding up a little. There's another gold piece. Maybe that'll speed it up even more. Well, uh, there was a couple of fellas in here who might be your men yesterday. Yeah? I, uh, <clears throat> I couldn't say if one of them was a blonde, though. They both kept their hats on. Uh, the older one kept squirming around on his feet like he'd been doing a lot of riding he wasn't used to. Oh. Neither of them said much, but they asked me if I knew a good place to stay in Juarez. Across the border. Oh, uh, I've been afraid of that. Did you tell them about a place in Juarez? Well, I told them about the Guadalajara. Guadalajara, huh? Yeah, yeah. Juarez is the toughest town in North America, and uh, Guadalajara's the toughest place in Juarez. Ah, so I've heard. But upstairs they got rooms, and they're pretty clean, and I might say... You might say what, Joey? Oh, it's you, Harlick. Yeah, what were you going to say, Joey? Uh, no, 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 nothing much, Harlick, honest. I... Always talking, ain't you, Joey? Uh, yeah, but... But I, I never mean no harm, Halleck. I, uh, hey, excuse me. Got a customer down here. I. What's your handle, mister? Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. Yeah, I've heard of you. My name is Halleck. Yeah, I've heard of you, too, from the Grass County Range War. You and your partner were looking me over a minute ago. Why? Color of your hair caused that. Blondes are kind of rare down in this country. Yeah. Joey. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you want, Halleck? Come back here. I, I, I got to clean the dust off these bottles, Harlick. I... Better come back, Joey. Harlick, you always get me wrong. I I didn't mean nothing. I was just talking. Give me that and... bottle. The bottle? But, but, but this ain't your brand of stuff, I Harlick. said give me the bottle. Well, all, all right, here. Uh, bend your head this way a little. Harlick, no, no, not with that bottle. It could kill me. I said bend over. Better put the bottle down, Harlick. I'll show you where I'm going to put the bottle. I'm going to put Harlick, it right no! I'm sorry, Harlick, and I couldn't just stand here and watch you hit him. Fast man with a gun, ain't you? Real fast man. Shooting a bottle out of a man's hand. Not much to that. No, of course not. And I said I was sorry. I'm pretty fast with a gun myself. I've heard you are. Well, you might keep it in mind, especially if you decide to go to Juarez. Because I'll be in Juarez, Cassidy, waiting for you. The toughest place in the toughest town in North America. Well, it looks like it and sounds like it. Well, what are we going to do now that we're uh, here? Circulate around, will you? See what you can pick up in the way of information. Right, Hoppy, but uh, I'd like to say something first. If you sit down at any of these tables, make sure you pick yourself a chair with its back to a wall. <laughs> Welcome to Juarez, Cassidy. Hello, Harlock. Looking for a game? Not exactly. Well, we're playing a little draw. Nobody's getting real hurt. Sit down. Ah, uh, watch. Watch. <laughs> no cards and you drink sarsaparilla. Makes a man wonder why you'd ever come to a place like the Guadalajara. Maybe I enjoy the sweet, fresh air that swirls around here. Well, <laughs> every man of his own taste. Fella next to you is Jim Boyne, an hombre with no visible means of support. If you look good, you'll see he's a blonde like me. I've already noticed that. The lad shuffling is Clyde Marple, medicine salesman down seeing the sights. Hmm. The way his luck's been running, he'd probably like to deal him off the bottom. But he ain't that good with the cards. <laughs> you can see he's a blonde like me, too. Gents, meet hop along, Cassidy. Hiya, Cassidy. Nice to know you, gentlemen. Harlick, uh, your disposition seems to have improved since we met in El Paso. I can't help wondering why. Well, maybe it's because I found out why you're so interested in hombres with blonde hair. What's all this talk about blondes? Well, take a look around, Marple. See any other light-haired men in this place? We're all there is. I know. I, I look real careful. 
Why would you be so interested in looking? I was looking because I knew Cassidy was looking. He wants to find a fair-haired hombre real bad. Why? Why don't you ask him, Marple? Maybe he'll tell us. Why do you concern yourself in this, Harlock? Maybe I'm the fair-haired hombre you're looking for. Yeah, maybe you are, but... Uh, uh, Hoppy, uh, can you break away uh, for... Uh... Sure, if you gentlemen will excuse me. Oh, sure, sure we will, Cassidy. But uh, come back, won't you? We'd like to see you again. Find out something, California? I think I found out about Kane. He's here, in one of the rooms upstairs. The one at the street end of the hall, on the left. He could be there right now. Good, let's go and see. You better wait out here and keep me covered, just in case. All right, come in. I'll be right here, Hoppy. Well, looks as though you're all ready for trouble, Kane. I heard you were in town looking for his Cassidy. No, don't come any closer, or I'll pull this trigger. You don't need that gun, Kane. Not with me. You're not going to take me back, Cassidy. I've got a man who'll stop you from doing that. Clayton? No, not Clayton. This man's going to see me safely through to Mexico City. Then it's Europe and a life of ease. Sure you don't mean a life of being scared and sorry and repentant? Does Clayton know about your new partner? Well, what difference does that make? You're not very sure of yourself, are you, Kane? Uh, You're not sure of Clayton. Maybe Clayton and your new partner are working together. Against you. Uh, you're, you're just talking. Ah, uh, you hope I'm just talking. Why don't you give this up, Kane? The folks back home don't know what you've done. Not yet. I'll give you my word that they won't know. You'll turn back that money. Mm, well... The bank needs that money. The whole town needs it. You'll go back with me voluntarily. I wouldn't be surprised but what you could have your job back again. My, my job? Well, you, you honestly think that? Wasn't such a bad job, was it, Kane? No. It was a good job. A respectable job. And if I hadn't been such a fool, I... Everyone makes a mistake once in a while. They don't always matter if you correct them right away. You... You really think it would be all right if I went back? We can saddle up in a few minutes. We can go right now. Well, I'll... I'll have to get the money. Clayton and I... We hit it. I... I'm glad you came, Cassidy. Come, we'll go and get the money, and then we... Cain! That shot! Uh, where... He got Cain, huh? Is he dead, Hoppy? Hardly knew what hit him. And there, the money, did he tell you where it is? No, and the only person who knows is that teller, Clayton. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Wastrels of Juarez. Hoppy has crossed the border into Juarez, searching for $50,000 embezzled from the bank in his hometown. He has only a short time in which to find the money and return it. If he fails, the bank will be forced to close its doors for good, bringing ruin to most of the town's population. Only two men had knowledge of where the money is hidden, and now, one of these men is dead. Whee! I'm glad that's done. Hot work. Burying a man in this country. Yeah, but I think Lewis Kane would thank us for it if he could. A man running away with money at his age. Plum foolish, if you ask me. I don't think Kane would have taken the money if it hadn't been for Clayton. Yeah, that bank teller... We talk about him, we don't even know what he looks like. Except that he's blonde. So is Harlick blonde, and that Marple fella, and the one called Boyne. Well, one of them has to be Clayton, and we've got to find out which one before it's too late. And the best place to do that is back at the Guadalajara. And something tells me it's going to lead to trouble. <laughs> Five minutes, she said. 
You've been in that office a half hour. A little business deal I had to make. Business? In a place like this? What kind of... Hey, hey, your guns, where are they? That was the business. We came away from home a little suddenly without too much cash. So you put up your irons for a loan? Hoppy, in war is, that's like signing up for suicide. Uh, here, you better wear mine. No, I'll be all right. I uh, hope you're right. But there's that fellow Harlot to worry about, and... Uh, uh-uh, here he comes now. So you got him, didn't you, Cassidy? Caught up with him and you plugged him. If you're talking about Kane Harlick, I had nothing to do with his death. I'm talking about Kane, and I think you had everything to do with his death. You were looking for him, weren't you? That doesn't mean I killed him. It does to me, Cassidy. You wanted that money Kane had with him, and I'm saying you got it. How did you know about the money? Everybody in Juarez knows about it, and I'm still saying you got it. You're working yourself into a rage, Harlick. Why? For two reasons, Cassidy. Because you killed Kane and because I don't like him. He's going to throw down on you, Hoppy, and you without your guns. Better let me take him on, huh? Oh, just I'll... sit tight. All right, Cassidy. I'm waiting for you to make a play. Now, hold it, hold it, Harlock. A Hoppy ain't wearing guns and... Uh... Oh, he ain't. Well, now that's just too... Hoppy, you did that with my gun, right? You drew it from my holster. You'd have killed me, wouldn't you, Harlock? You were going to draw him when you knew I wasn't wearing guns. No. Better leave yours on the floor. I'll give it back to you later when I think you've cooled down. All right, Cassidy. But this makes it twice you've balked me. The odds are all against you doing it the third time. He's a bad one, Hoppy. The kind that'll dry gulch if he gets the chance. And he knows about the money. Huh. I'll bet his name ain't Harlick at all. I'll bet he's Clayton, the uh, bank teller. He could be. Or he could be the man who was going to help Kane get into Mexico City. I don't know. And I can't afford to make a mistake. We just have to wait. And we have to watch all three of the blondes until the one who's Clayton gives himself away. Suppose they all decide to leave town before we find out anything? Or suppose they all go uh, separate? Uh, let's not think about that. Let's just think about you getting back into a card game with them. That's when they'll talk. That's when the right one might make the wrong move. <laughs> Cards, cards. That's all I've ever done since I come down here. It makes me feel like a wastrel. Right now, it seems to be paying off for you. You got most of the money on the table. You and this California, huh, yeah. Marie? And it's the truth. Now, this is going to be my last day in Juarez. This evening, I'm crossing the border into El Paso. Well, maybe I'll go along with you. I'm getting kind of tired of this place. Boyne said he's leaving, too. Uh, let me have three cards, Marple. And let's not mix them up too much. Three cards. How about you, California? Uh, I I'm standing pat, just like my neighbor. Uh, if you're born in California, stand pat, which means they could have a lot of stuff, or they could be bluffing. A lot of people try bluffing around here. But you never bluff. Is that it, Harlick? That's right, Cassidy. I never bluff. All right, California, what are you going to say? Well, uh, I'll, uh, I'll bet ten. Let's see now. California bets ten, Boyne stays with it, which means they ain't bluffing. Well, I think I'll stick around too. I'll raise it five. Ah, it's your turn, Marple. What are you going to say about all this? Well, I don't have much left. Win or lose, this is going to be my last hand, but I'd like to see what all you fellows are crowing about. So I'll call you. Okay, let's see. California's got a full house, ladies high. Boyne has a full house, too, but not that rich. Huh? Well, that leaves it up to you, Marple. Well, it's like this. My tens might not be as glamorous as your queen's California, but I've got four of them. Huh? I'll say that's good enough to take everything on the table. Well, well. First decent hand I've had all evening. Come to daddy. That'll set you up for a few more rounds, Marple. No, not me. I've been needing a stake like this to pay my bills and get out of this town. I've got to get back to selling medicine. And I'm going tonight while it's cool. Not a bad pot, Marple. How much you got there? Well, let's see. It's 10, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 90. And five. Ninety-five round, shining silver dollars. <laughs> you did all right. So, that's all for the game, huh? Well, let's push over to the bar for drinks. You heard that, Hoppy? 
They're all leaving Juarez. Yeah, I heard it. And one of them's got that money. We can be sure of that. But which one? If they scattered it, we ain't got a chance in the world of finding it. We still got a chance. A good chance. Because this card game just showed which one of them is Clayton, the bank teller. <laughs> It's almost two in the morning. I've been trailing a man. Without your guns? Oh, you should have waited for me. I bought them back with my winnings. Here they are. Good. Maybe I'd better strap them on right now. I might be needing them. Who you been uh, trailing? You'll see for yourself in a minute. But we'll have to be quiet about it. Come on. Now what? Stand clear of the door. I'm going to crash it. Uh, all right, but... Uh... It's locked. You ain't going to be able to get in. I'll get in. Watch out. Don't try anything, Marpo. Maybe I should say Clayton. Hoppy, the money. It's on the table. Bank wrapping still around it. You'll never get away with this, Cassidy. I've got Hollick in it with me now, and Hollick has his men here. You'll never get out of town with this money. Maybe not, Clayton. But we're going to make a try for it. Scoop up the money, California. Get into that bag he has Why, there. Why, you... Hey, what's going on up there? Hollick, it's Cassidy. He's taking the money. Come on, California. Let's get moving. <laughs> Marple. I'd never forget it was him. Wish there wasn't so much moonlight. The money safe? Practically back in the bank. Whoa, boy, uh, hold it. Hoppy. What's the uh, matter? Bunch of men up ahead. Harlick and his gang. Can we go south? No, they'd get us for sure that way. We'll have to run their gauntlet. Maybe we can get by before they saddle up. Right with me, Hoppy. Let's go. Yippee! Get her going! Hey, 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 hey. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Hoppy, I can't believe it. I can't believe you're back. Look at that clock. It's 20 minutes past opening time. I was just about ready to go outside and tell everybody the Cattleman's Bank had gone broke. Uh, I guess I'm a little late, John. I'm sorry. Late? What are you, the greatest sight these eyes of mine have ever seen? <laughs> Here, John, you better get this in the safe. Thanks. It's all there but $300. I guess Clayton used that up gambling. Too bad. And then there's another $5 you'll have to send to the Guadalajara Bar in Juarez for a door lock I had to shatter with a bullet. I'll be very happy to, Cassidy. <laughs> oh, Henson, open up the doors. And you can tell everybody that this bank is doing business as usual. Hoppy, you've saved the future of this town. Come into my office. You're going to have to tell me all about it. Yeah, but first she's got to tell me something, Mr. Newcomb. Something he's been holding out on me all the way back here. I don't see why I need to tell you anything, California. You were there with me the whole time. Now, Hoppy, enough's enough. Uh, if you don't tell me how you knew that Marple fellow was really Clayton, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, well, I'll start drinking sarsaparilla. <laughs> you were there at that card game. You saw everything that went on just as well as I did. Hoppy, what Well, I'm... all right. Guess I'll have to tell you. It was those coins, all the silver dollars that Marple raked in with that big party one. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember the silver dollars. Uh, there was 95 of them. I, I even watched Marple stack them. But, uh, All what a... right, there it was. There what was? Marple was no professional gambler, remember? He claimed to be a medicine salesman. But he stacked those coins quick and true without even taking time to count them. He was able to do that because he was used to stacking coins, as a bank teller has to be. Well, well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, maybe I ought to start drinking sarsaparilla. Maybe that's the stuff that makes you so gold darn smart. <laughs> 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 Well, Hoppy and California bring an end to the wastrels of Juarez, and all because of Hoppy's alert observation and some silver dollars. On their next venture, they go on one of the toughest and roughest drives of their career. It's called Gambler's Luck. Try to be with us. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Wastrels of Juarez was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. 
All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? Well, it's one I call Danger Wears Two Faces. It began when a friend of mine in South Texas asked me to help him get back a herd of rustled cattle. California and I took the trail ourselves, following the herd as it headed for the Mexican border through the Big Bend country, a land of border outlaws. And trailing a herd of stolen beef there was as healthy as playing patty cake with an unhappy mountain lion. We finally lost the trail in a rocky section, but pushed on in hopes of picking it up again. Uh, Hoppy, uh, do we keep going? Sure, why not? What'll we do if we find them? Take the herd back and turn the rustlers over to the law, of course. Oh, it was silly of me to ask. I, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that. I, <laughs> I, well, great cross-eyed copperheads. Look. What? Oh, a man lying on the road. I know this country would bring us trouble. Well, uh, time to go home. Oh, stop grumbling. Come on. That man may not be dead. Yeah, and his killers may be watching, too. Well, let's see. Take a look at him, California. I'll cover you. Sure, sure. Don't see no wound. Maybe it's sunstroke. I'll see if his heart's, uh... Hoppy, he's alive. <laughs> Certainly I'm alive. <sighs> My name's Jasper. Oh, maybe I can sell you some tinware. My name is Cassidy, and we don't need any tinware. I'm California Carlson. Howdy, howdy. Uh, like a new coffee pot, a frying pan, perhaps? No, 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 no. We're traveling light. Uh, chasing rustlers. Chasing? Ooh. Uh, uh, take your orders for coffins? I know an undertaker. California was only fooling you, Jasper. We're just riders. Oh, well, if you're after Russell stock, you want either Duke Spengler or Little Jack Pargo. They, they run the two big gangs of Big Ben. Either way, I'd take the loss and go home if I was you. Hmm. Down here, danger wears two faces, huh? Who do you work for? Me? When I'm a tinware salesman. My mule's over there. We... Lift them hands, all of you. Hoppy, will you look? It's a grizzly wearing pants. And holding a gun. Do as he says. I ain't about to argue with him, gun or no gun. It's Lacey, Duke Spangler's pet killer. You hombres got the wrong road. What makes you think so? This gun in my hand, for one thing. Good reason? Sure, that's a swell reason. If it ain't enough, I'll tell you. This is the Duke's road. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Now, who are you two? What's your business? Why? Well, it's like this. If I don't have no objections to your business, I may let you turn around and leave peaceably. And if you do have? <laughs> then I'll kill you both where you stand. Well, uh, in that case, uh, he's Smith and I'm Jones, and we're just a couple of wandering riders, uh, ain't we, Hoppy? Yeah. Let's go back, Cal. Uh... I mean, Smith. No, wait, wait, Lacey, don't let them fool you. Huh? They're lawmen chasing rustlers. Kill them! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Danger Wears Two Faces.
Trailing a herd of Russell cattle, Hoppy and California entered the outlaw-infested Big Bend country of West Texas. When a gunfighter named Lacey holds them up and demands to know their business, Hoppy and California pretend to be wandering riders, only to have Jasper, a tinware salesman, betray them to the threatening killer. They told me so, Lacey. The names are really Cassidy and Carlton. You dirty big mouth. Shut up. It should be worth 50 bucks, Lacey. Now, you you tell Duke to pay me 50, won't you? You see, I'm a good friend of his. Jasper, you make me sick. You'd sell Duke down the river just as quick as you did these two hombres. Did Duke give you orders to shoot anybody trailing the herd? Shoot you. (laughs) I'm going to give you a hand in finding it. Duke Spengler's turned honest. And he wants Big Ben cleaned up with killers like Little Jack Fargo and his gang. So Spengler is honest now. Yeah. He's even got him a ranch. Little Jack Fargo's men are the ones who hustle that herd you're after. Come on with me. I'll prove it to you. Well, there's the Rio Grande. There's the tracks of your herd. I reckon it's sold in Mexico by now, but... Uh-uh. Company's coming. Who are those men? <laughs> Little Jack Pargo and his straw bosses. If you can't pray, hang on to your gun butts. Hoppy, uh, look at the leader. He's no bigger than a minute. Macy, you're out of your territory. And who are you two? Strangers. Oh, the clever type. Maybe I ought to make you bleed a little. You're too proud, Fargo. Those men of yours won't keep me from getting you if you reach for that gun. What? You're bracing me? Me, little Jack Fargo? Call it that. I don't like being threatened. I don't like braggarts, especially little ones. There's an advantage in being little, mister. Yeah, I know. You can hide under smaller rocks. You make a smaller target. Up here, look out! Oh, my arm! Hold it, all of you. Draw and Fargo gets it dead center. You... You heard him, man. Where's the herd you shoved across the river, Fargo? Sold. And what's it to you? The money, then. Where is it? Throw down your saddlebag. No! You really want to make that choice? It... No, no, wait. All right. You win for now. You are the men. Toss your guns down easy. <laughs> You pay for this, stranger. If it takes every man I've got, I'll see that you never leave Texas alive. I'll tell Duke you're here, Cassidy. You wait. Uh, Hoppy, why ain't we running now we get the money? Well, if we run, Pargo's men will catch us sooner or later. Huh? Then uh, what are we going to do? Lacey said Duke Spengler was trying to go on us. That he wanted Big Ben cleaned up. Well, if he'll help, maybe we can rid Texas a little Jack Pargo for good. Well, well, well. I'm Duke Spengler. Lacey tells me you outdrew, outshot, outtalked, and outbluffed little Jack Pargo and his toughest men. Why didn't you wait for your posse? Sorry, no posse. They're just the two of us. Just. Just the two of you? Yeah. I was hoping you'd lend a hand in fighting, Pargo. <laughs> oh, my. This is priceless. You see, I was hoping your posse would do the same thing. This is quite a pickle you've gotten me into. Quite. You're supposedly as big as Pargo. Why do you need a posse? Ah, but I'm only supposedly as big. You see, my friends, when I turned honest, I dismissed most of my old fighters. As a rancher, I have no need of thieves and gun hawks. But you do need to be rid of little Jack Pargo. If you're honest, uh, that is. Ah, uh, 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 nasty, nasty tone. Please don't use it. I can assure you I'm only a cattle raiser. Though at the moment, I wish I did have a few of my old comrades. After seeing Lacey, Pargo will think I'm backing you. Then you'll have to... Shh, 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 shh. I must think it over. Join me at tea and I'll give you my decision. <laughs> Tea. Hoffy, I I can't balance this little cup. (laughs) You'd better. The Duke may get mad. And don't let his manner fool you. 
Those white hands of his can handle a gun as well as a teacup. You know, that helps me a lot. <laughs> Drop my good cup and they bury you tomorrow, old fellow. Uh, crumpet? Scone? Oh, uh, 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 maybe one of them little cakes, I'll... Crumpet? Uh, no, this cake will do fine. Uh, thanks. Decided what to do, Spangler? Well, as I see it, the situation is essentially simple. Big Ben has only one bandit gang to get rid of now. Sooner or later, the law will do it. Uh, did you notice my men riding in? Yeah, about 20 or so. All cowboys, not gunslingers, and busy with roundup and calf branding. Hardly equal to Pargo's bunch, you know. Then how is it Pargo doesn't steal from you? Uh, Pargo still thinks I am a bandit chief. He believes my ranch is only a cover and that I have the army I used to have. My past reputation stands me in good stead now. But not us, I think. Oh, uh, sad but true. Now then, you will take the gold you stole from Pargo and be off the ranch by dark. I'm throwing you to the wolves. Another crumpet? Still, Dern, I'll be saddled in just a minute. Well, not leaving with the gold, I hope. Uh, uh, oh, uh, well, well, say, 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 uh, go someplace besides this barn, will you? Don't let my looks bother you. All I want is the gold. Hoppy wouldn't like that. Where is he? Tell me or I'll blast you. Well, well, well uh, he was over at the bunkhouse, but now he's right behind you. Uh, what? Yes. You're bluffing. No, he isn't. Drop your gun before I shoot some of the meanness out of you, big fella. No. You wouldn't dare shoot me here. Do good. Uh, that ain't nice. You want another? Stop that. Oh, come on, mister. Fall. Well, getting tired? Whee! What a thick head. I'll bet your fist is busted, but huh, he'll sleep a while. Yeah. Uh, let's get her going. Put your hands up, both of you. That's oh, the... Who? Uh, Say, weren't you with Pargo this morning? Forget the question. Just drop your guns and pack those saddlebags out to my horse. Walk with him, Whiskers. You taking us to Pargo? No. He wants you out of the country. Fast. You know, if I yell, Duke's men would get you. Mm-hmm, and if I start playing corpse, I'm going to have company. Ah, uh, it was just a thought. Keep it that way. Now, there's my horse. Put the bags on him. Yeah. Uh, uh, there. All right. Now, stand back. And play it careful. It wasn't your gold, anyway. Adios. I was getting a hunch it wasn't. Oh, uh, what's that? Uh, you mean that... Uh... Hey, hey, hey. Who was that rider? What tricks are you two pulling? Jasper, you sure get around for a tinware salesman. If I were you, I'd stay out of my sight before I remember the way you betrayed us this morning. You understand? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I, I was just asking you. No offense. I, I, I'm sorry about this morning. <laughs> Excuse me. Hoppy, let's hightail it. We will. Right back to the river. Right back to the... Oh, no. That's Pargo's territory. We got some investigating to do. We'll take a detour and come up along the riverbank, but slow. I want to check for tracks. Come on. Hoppy, we've checked five miles of riverbank. Ain't that enough? Almost. Even in this moonlight, we wouldn't have missed the tracks of a big herd of cattle. Well, those tracks we saw this morning are the only ones around. It was our herd. Ain't no question about that. Maybe. There's one thing that's bothering me. I... What? What's that? Where? Moonlight on rifle barrels. It's an ambush. Ride for the river. <laughs> My horse is hurt. Uh, you go on. Too late. If Pargo's men were surrounded... Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Danger Wears Two Faces. After discovering that the rustled herd he was trailing had been sold in Mexico, Hoppy took the gold payment from little Jack Pargo, who admitted selling the herd. But later, 
one of Pargo's men stole the gold back. Then, as Hoppy and California investigate further, they are captured by Pargo's men in an ambush. Now, in a shack in Pargo's camp. <laughs> you didn't get very far, did you, Cassidy? And that's because I was too smart. I sneaked close enough to hear them say where they were going, Pargo. <laughs> I, I got them for you. You'll be paid for it, sneak. Now, beat it. Well, they, they, they ought to be worth a hundred dollars. You, you know, you, you wanted them very bad. I never wanted anything so bad in my life. But get out of here, Jasper. You even smell like a traitor. Oh, sure, little Jack. Sure, I'm going. I, I just wanted you to know how good a friend I am. You know, I, 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 I can help you a lot. Hmm. That unwashed louse. Now, for you two, you're going to hate me worse than death. Poppy, does she mean that... Yeah, you? I broke his pride. Only a big man can take that. Why, you... No. No, not yet. First, where's my gold? No, act stupid. I suppose you don't know California, that... don't say any more. That gold is our insurance. Hey, oh! Take your own advice. Whiskers, where's the gold? Gold? Uh, what gold? So, all right, I'll give you some time to think. But one way or the other, you'll tell me. Hoppy, how soon do you think he'll be back? Soon enough. I hope the man who took the gold from us comes first, though. Huh? I think he and Lacey were both acting on their own. Well, if Pargo finds out that one of his men took the gold, he'll sure kill him. Well, that's why the thief will have to help us escape. Keep us from talking to Pargo. Oh, speaking of the boogeyman... Quiet. Uh, I've come to help you escape. So we guessed. We can start on these ropes. My name is Brandon. You know why I had to take that money? You tell us. Well... That was the payoff for several herds, all of which Pago lumped together and ran across the Rio Grande. I thought those herds all came from my territory, but, well, I may be wrong. Your territory? Say, what are you, a range detective? Mm, it's a pretty good guess. Yeah, I'm with the Cattlemen's Association, working out of San Antonio. Pago's hit the ranchers around there pretty hard. I guess he can sell as many cattle as he can steal. Sure. Ten dollars a head across the Rio Grande. No questions asked. Now, if you're square and... Part of that money belongs to you. You can claim it from our office. There. Yeah, now you're both free. Thanks. Come on, Hoppy. Let's get out of here. Why? 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 Just stay alive. That's why. <laughs> I hate to run from crooks. Let's take Pargo and his men. Why, you're insane. Beat it while you have a chance. Oh, give up, Brandon. When Hoppy gets like this, he's a worry to his friends and a delight to undertake. How many men does Pargo have here in camp with him? Fourteen. His lieutenants are the toughest outlaws in Texas. Well, they think you're one of them. You get them to come in here one at a time? Well, yes, I, I guess so. But, man, even if we can take them all, we'll never get out of Big Ben with them. Why, Pargo's men Who are... Who wants to get out of Big Ben? Look, get us rope, lots of it, and a couple of guns, or clubs will do. A pair of coffins would be more in order. Yeah, all right. As soon as we get the ropes cut into short length, we'll be ready. You wait until we've taken Pargo. He's coming back any time now. Once we have him, you can tell the others that he wants them here. Check. It ought to be a breeze. <laughs> yeah, a breeze. Now listen, this is what we'll do. Brandon, you call the men in here one by one. California, as they walk in the door... Uh, you know, this is getting monotonous. I'm glad there's only one more. My arm's tired. <clears throat> Go on, get him tied up. Sure, sure. By now, I'm a darned expert. <laughs> well, I got the last one outside. He was suspicious, so I poleaxed him a little. Oh, well, I got to hand it to you. It worked. Yeah, so far. Only now what? We can't stay here long. And if we ride towards town, some of Pago's other men will spot us sure. You can get to town all right alone. California and I'll take the prisoners over to Duke Spangler's ranch. We can make it that far, and Pargo's men won't dare search there. Well, if Spengler finds you, he'll massacre the lot. You're a loco. Wait. <laughs> Hang on to your hat, detective. I got an idea. Why don't we make it a clean sweep with both Pargo and Spengler? Oh, no. Can you round up some honest men in town for a posse? I can get you 50. 
all deathly afraid of Pargo and Spengler. Bring them to Spengler's place as quick as you can. Maybe when they see Spengler, Pargo, and their henchmen tied and helpless, they'll... They'll drop dead. Or they'll find courage enough to wipe out lawlessness and Big Ben. Without their leaders, these outlaws will be easy to lick. True, but you'll need an army to take Duke Spengler. But I have one. I got 15 prisoners. They'll be my army. Crazy, loco, just plain nuts. Poppy, these prisoners ain't gonna be no help. They'd better be, or none of us will see morning. You're crazy if you think I'll help. If you help, Fargo, you get a fair trial. Don't, and Duke Spengler will catch us all. What'll your chances be with him? Hmm? Oh, but you, you wouldn't do that. Why, he'd kill me in cold blood. I was sure I could count on your cooperation. Pull up. There's a light in the ranch house, Hoppy. Duke's still up. It's the bunkhouse we have to take first. Now, listen close, Pargo. You're in on this. The prisoners stay tied, but I'll pack them down one at a time and lay them in a circle around the ranch house. What about them empty rifles you loaded in that extra horse? I'll put one of them in each prisoner's arm. In the dark, Duke's men won't know they're tied up. The moonlight will shine off the gun barrels. Pargo's untied and goes with us. With an empty rifle, I'll bet. Just more bluff. Only when we take the bunkhouse. When we hit the ranch house, Pargo will carry loaded guns with us behind him. We may need him to fight as well as bluff. That's great. You know, Hoppy, there's times when I wish I'd taken up hog raising like my pappy wanted me to. <laughs> well, taking the bunkhouse was easy enough. Sure, them uh, eight men were sleeping, but uh, where's the rest? Well, six or eight of them should be night riding or at line camps. The rest will be in that ranch house with Duke and Lacey. So now we try our bluff out on all of them. Yeah, we got Pargo's men all moved to circle the ranch house. Pargo, here's your gun. Hold them down at your side until we crash in the front door. I'll cover you till then. Try to lift the guns and... I get the picture. Let's get on with it. Hoppy, we can see from here. Through that window. Duke and Lacey, four men with them. Uh-huh. You take that side window, California. You'll take the front door. And good luck. Sure. Good luck to you. You will need it. Just what if this stupid bluff don't work? Then we're in for one whale of a fight, Pargo. Quiet and try the door. It's unlocked. Shall we go in? Let's. You drink up, Jim. Toast to being honest. Raise him, Duke! Don't move! I'll drill the man who wiggles your finger. Guns in the middle of the floor, all of you. Here, what is all this? Don't be stubborn, Duke. My men have your house surrounded. Toss the guns down and don't forget the one in your vest pocket. My, my, my. This is a predicament. And there's a wrong note somewhere. Ah, yes. This can't be your play, Pargo. You'd have blasted us from the windows and talked later. Take a look out the windows if you don't believe us. Oh, I don't, my friend. I don't. All right, then. You throw those guns down or do you die because Duke is playing tough? No, you fools. Wait. Don't. Yeah. Well, I see I must pay for my past sins after all. And your present ones, Duke. Lacey, your guns. I'll stick by Duke. Seems we have no choice, Lacey. That's the way it looks, Duke. Duke, they're trying to bluff you. Those men outside are... Gotcha, you little weasel. Watch it, Hoppy. You're mine, Cargo. Back to the back, Cargo. Make them pay. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Well, we've rounded up all the prisoners, Cassidy. What a scrap that must have been. Duke, Pargo, Jasper, and Lacey are done for. Huh, that Lacey. It took two gun loads to make him cash. Ah, they'd have stretched rope anyhow. Duke was still a rustler. Oh, but that couldn't be. Only Pargo's been crossing the Rio. Duke had a better scheme than selling Russell cattle in Mexico for $10 a head. The way I figured, he organized this ranch so he could hold the herds, change the brands, and then later send them to Abilene or Dodge. 
Mercer. He'd get three times that price in Abilene. And he could play it honest. Duke knew sooner or later the law would wipe out the bandits of Big Ben. Hoppy, you think our herds in Duke's ranch there, now? Yeah, he tried to steer us on Pargo a little too forcefully. Besides, his cowboys were all carrying straight rods of iron when they came in. Running irons. That was a giveaway. They were changing brands. Well, uh, sure. No honest rancher would use running irons. They're too slow. They always have irons with their brand fixed on the end. Instead of drawing the brand, all the cowboy has to do is stamp it on the hide of the cow. That's right. Well, this should end Big Ben's outlaws. <laughs> I'll say. Now, you inspired the honest folks here. By tomorrow, there'll be a hundred men combing the brakes for crooks. Ah, uh, that sounds like action. Maybe California and I could help... What's that? Uh, Where? Hoppy, doggone it. If you get me into one more fight, I'm, I'm going to call off our partnership and do something peaceful. I'll, uh, I'll take up uh, hog raising. <laughs> uh, you know, like my pappy wanted me to. Peaceful? Yeah. I'll bet you couldn't take it. Go on, call a hog. Sure, sure. Heep, piggy, <laughs> Good gravy, you're right. Lead me to that fighting, Hoppy. I sure can't stand to hear myself do that again. <laughs> well, Hoppy and California really had a scrap on their hands that time. And so ends Danger Wears Two Faces. In their next adventure... Hoppy easily proves that crooks are fools, and it's a story you won't want to miss. It's called California or Bust. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Danger Wears Two Faces was written by Herb Purdom, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? We call this one Bullfight. It began when California and I stopped off at Dade Larkin's Box L on our way back to the Bar 20 after a visit over New Mexico way. We'd known Dade a long time, and as it was getting on towards sundown and grub time, we decided to stop off at his place for the night. We stopped all right, but all through supper that evening, Dade never stopped talking about the great things he was doing to upgrade his beef stock. Yes, sir, Hoppy. You come back through here again five years from now, and you won't hardly recognize my brand. Uh, California, pass me that there sorghum, will you? Pass me something, pass me something. You fellas getting awful polite over here, or you just get short arms. <laughs> a man who can't do his own reaching ain't hardly deserving of <laughs> You've got a point there, California. But you fellas wouldn't be trying to make me forget what I was talking about, would you? Oh, not at all, Dad. Don't you even think it. <laughs> okay, I won't. Which is a mighty handy thing, because I ain't told you yet about that purebred white-faced bull I got in today. Oh, here he goes again, Hoppy. You've uh, bought a purebred, you say? Yes, sir, I have. Come today. Paid over $1,000 for him. Yes, sir, and that ain't all. I've got two more. Got them in a couple of weeks ago. They've already been turned loose out in the range. Caught you plenty, didn't they? 
You ain't just talking, Hoppy. The three of them together cost me between three and four thousand. Hmm. Hoppy, them bulls just gotta help me upgrade this here herd of mine. If they don't, well, I'm telling you, I ain't just throwed. I'm also hog-tied. <laughs> well, I hope they do, Dade. But I'm not quite sure I like this. Hmm? Why not? Well, in the first place, the, this is still all open range. Well, what if it is? Well, come on, speak up, Hoppy. I thought I'd been telling you good news, but from that look you got in your face, it, it might have been nothing but bad. But what is it, Hoppy? Come on, come on, out with it. Dade, I hate to say this, but I'm not sure you haven't been telling me bad news. Hmm? You see, purebreds on free range like this sometimes cause trouble. They don't... Hey, what's that? Oh, God. Well, that sounded like it was over at the corral. Come on, let's see what that is. Uh, might have been a wolf trying to get at the calves. Somebody might have took some shots at it. Oh, ain't been a wolf seen around here for the past two years. Besides, ain't none of my men on the place tonight. Look over there. Looks like something's down. Where about? In that round pen. Hey, that's where I put my hip. Come on. That's your new purebred, all right. Looks like he's dead. Yeah, he's dead, all right. Cost me over a thousand dollars, and somebody shot him. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Bullfight. Seated at supper with Dade Larkin at Dade's Box L, Hoppy and California were roused by the sound of shots. Following after Dade and hastening outside, they discovered that someone had wantonly shot down and killed Dade's expensive, purebred Hereford bull. It took Dade a moment to realize the blow that had been struck at him. But now he suddenly turns upon Hoppy in a towering rage. Hoppy, you knew something about this. You tell me what it was. Who did this? You tell me what you know about it. Dade, take it easy. Let go. Uh, uh, now, don't go trying to push Hoppy around, Dade, or maybe you'll find yourself pushing up daisies. Oh, uh, sorry, Hoppy. I'm sorry. I guess I got so all fired and mad I forgot myself. That's uh, all right. Forget about it. I don't blame you. Ah, uh, but from the way you talked inside, for a second there, I felt suspicious. You started to say something about these purebreds of mine maybe starting trouble. Now, you must have meant something by that, Hoppy. What was it? Well, nothing you shouldn't have realized for yourself, Dade. This is still free range. You're living in a country where cows have to rustle for a living. Longhorns can do that. Lots of people feel that purebreds won't stand up under the conditions that cows have to face out here. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I've heard them arguing. I always said that was a lot of foo for all. But maybe some of your neighbors don't agree with you. And don't forget that when you turn those bulls out on open range... You'll be upgrading your neighbor's beef as well as your own. You mean to say one of them might have done this? Could be, Dade. Let's face it. Happened other places, hasn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, I wouldn't none of my neighbors do a low-down stunt like this, Hoppy. I've known most of them near half a lifetime. I... Hey, wait a second. Hoppy, you told me something without me realizing it. Tim Riley. What's that? Who's here, Tim Riley? The only new neighbor I got. He's horned into my range over south of here. Come here about six months ago. I'm just about as popular with the others around here as a hydrophobic skunk. Oh, well, there's nothing unusual about that, Dade. When a new man moves on to range that's already been claimed, he's never very popular. Oh, uh, but Riley's a skunk by nature. If one of my neighbors done this, then he's the one. You'll need some proof. Got all the proof I need. My bull's dead, ain't he? Yeah, but that isn't proof. You it's certainly... proof enough for me, Hoppy. Come on, let's turn in. I want to get a good night's sleep. Because when morning comes, I'm riding over to Riley's and presenting my bill. It's morning, and we're on our way again. Sanctified polecats. Won't I be glad to see the old bar 20 the day we ride in there? I'm just oh, gonna... Oh, Copper, oh. Uh, 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 whoa there, whoa. Uh, say, uh, what's the matter with you, Hoppy? Uh, what are we stopping for? I've just changed my mind, California. Huh? Changed it? Changed it uh, about what? About heading right back for the bar 20. I've been thinking things over. 
Thinking about the way Dade looked when he started for Riley's this morning. You know, there's going to be trouble about that killing of the bull. I don't think we should leave until it's cleared up. If there's going to be trouble, that's just the best reason in the world why we ought to leave. Come on, let's turn back. Uh, where are we going now? Back to Dade's place? No, to Riley's. Come on, let's go. Doggone it. Get up, boy. <laughs> No, Riley. I ain't staying out till I'm invited in. I'm here to collect for that bull you shot last night. And by thunder, I either collect or take it out of your hide. That's what you think. I don't know anything about the killing of that bull of yours. All I know is, whoever did it had the right idea. Why, you... Uh, hey, take that little sneaking killer. Here's more for you. What? You big lummox. Uh, I'll kill you. I'll, I'll kill you. Cut this up. All right, Dade, up with you. Get off it. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, I tell you. Get up and quit acting like a two-year-old. Are you all right, Riley? Yeah, I'm all right. But if you'd been a couple of seconds later, that friend of yours wouldn't have been. Uh, Dade, I thought you had better sense. And I thought you'd headed back for the bar 20 where you belong. What are you doing back here? Stopping you from making a fool of yourself. Now, you two are going to shake hands. Huh? Me? With him? Hey, what are you talking about? You shake hands or I'll take you on. Oh. Well, I guess I did make a mighty fool out of myself, Hoppy. But shaking hands... You'll but... do it and like it. And so will you, Riley. Uh, this is the way range wars start. But this is one war that's never going to get started. Well, I, I didn't want to fight. Good. Shake hands on it, then. Well, Riley, I'm hot-headed. Maybe I did kind of jump to conclusions without near enough proof. If I did, well, I'm sorry and I'd like to apologize. Yeah, thanks. That's mighty, mighty big of you, Larkin. I, I... Oh, hey. oh. Who, who, who's this coming? Well, that's Bart, one of my men. Hey, Bart. What? What is it? Boss, his blaze is to pay. What is it? What's happened? Them other two purebred bulls of yours, boss, I rode out to where they was grazing at this morning, only they ain't. Ain't grazing, I mean. Hmm? They're dead. They're both of them dead. What? Dead? How did they die? Somebody shot them. Who did it? You got any idea, Bart? Who did it? I got a darn good idea who done it, boss. It was Riley here. Huh? When I rode up to him, one of his men was just riding away. <laughs> After that, the fur started to fly. I just got Dade and Riley quieted down. When Bart rode in with the news about the other two bulls, I thought they'd jump at each other's throats. Well, what stopped them? This colt. He used his fist and Dade, Sheriff, and showed Riley he wouldn't mind using the gun on him. <laughs> it was real gratifying to see the way that soothed him. Yeah, I'll bet. But uh, what did you two fellas come to see me for? Want me to find out who really killed them bulls? Uh, if you can, Sheriff, that'll be fine. We were wondering if you knew anybody besides Riley who'd like to make trouble for Dade. Mm, no, can't think of anybody, Hobby. Dade and Riley, they've been real mad at each other ever since Riley come here. Yeah. You see, Riley moved on to the range that Dade always figured was his. Yeah, I know that. And I don't blame Dade for getting mad. It's cost him plenty, without counting them bulls either. Hey, hey, Hoppy. What is it? Here comes Bart again. The way that fella travels, he ought to sprout wings. Horses don't seem fast enough. Hmm. He's coming in. Hey, Sheriff. Cassidy. What is it now, Bart? Cassidy, this time I got real news for you. I know who killed them bulls. It was... Why, what the... Uh, uh, Bart. Hey, Bart. He's got a knife in him. Somebody broke that window to throw a knife. California, get outside. See if you can find him. I'll do that, Hoppy. Hoppy. Bart, how is he? Do you think he'll be able to talk? Just a second, Sheriff. That's what I'm trying to find out. No, he won't talk. He's dead. <laughs>
Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Bullfight. <laughs> Hoppy in California had called upon the sheriff to learn who Dade Larkin's enemies might be. They were presently interrupted by one of Dade's hands, a man known as Bart. And almost immediately afterwards, by Bart's murder. Now we see Hoppy and the sheriff just after Hoppy has pronounced Bart dead. Bart knew something all right, Sheriff. And the man who killed him is the man we're after. Well, we'd be after him in any case now, Hoppy. Maybe we'd better go outside and give California a hand. If the killer's anywhere around, we... No need to go out. Here they come. Yeah, they're... Yeah, who's that he's holding on to? Well, I'll be switched. It's Tim Riley. Yeah, someone's given California a hand. You know him, Sheriff? Well, yeah, yeah, that's High Phillips. He's another rancher here in the valley. Owns a flat iron just north of Dade's place. Oh. Hi there. Hello, Phillips. I see you in California got him. Yeah, here's the man you want, all right. Yeah, I caught him just as he was hitting the saddle, aiming to leave town. Pretty upset about it, too. Reckon he figures if he's decent enough to go around killing fellers, the law ought to be decent enough to let him alone. Sheriff, sure. Th- this is a lot of nonsense. I-, I never killed anybody. If you don't believe me, take a look at my gun. You can tell it ain't been fired. Bart wasn't killed with a gun, Riley. He was killed with a knife. Oh. I, I didn't know that. Well, I, I never carry a knife. You can ask anybody. Nobody's ever seen me carry a knife. What were you doing here? You must have headed for town almost as soon as we did. I, I came in for supplies. Feller's got a right to buy supplies, hasn't he? Sure, and you can prove that. Sure, I can. Go ask him over at the store. You didn't actually see Riley throw the knife, did you, Phillips? I didn't see anybody do anything. I only came into this because I saw your friend here grab Riley. And it looked as if he needed help. I see. But if you want my opinion, Riley did it. If he doesn't usually carry a knife, all the more reason he should use one this time. He's no good, Cassidy. The sooner he's run out of here, the better for all of us. I've heard he isn't exactly popular. What do you think, Sheriff? Well, I I think I better hold him. I don't see how you can. Why not? No evidence. Just his being in town doesn't prove anything. You didn't see anyone else around when you went outside, did you, California? No, no. If I had, I'd have rounded him up, too. That's just what I thought. If I were you, Sheriff, I'd let Riley go. Well, if you say so, Hoppy. I do. I think it's best. Okay, Riley. Go on, get out of here. But we'll be watching you, and don't you forget that. Yeah, I ain't likely to. Maybe I'll see you fellas another time. Hey, wait a minute, Riley. Wait a minute. Yeah, Phillips? Sheriff, who the blazes is running your office anyway? You or Cassidy? Well, Hoppy's got a name for knowing how to handle this kind of thing. Hogwash. Riley, you listen to me. Yeah? I don't care what Cassidy or the sheriff says. You get out of this valley, you hear me? Get out or you'll be run out. Yeah? (laughs) Suppose you come and chase me out. Maybe I'll do that. Sheriff, this is a disgrace, not locking that fella up. And as for you, Cassidy, I don't care what you say. We're not letting Riley stay in this valley one day longer than we gotta. You hear me? He's getting out. Uh Uh-huh. But that's your business. I've got business of my own to attend to. Yeah, what's that, Hoppy? I'm gonna look up Dade. Maybe he knows the same thing Bart did. Come on, California. Let's go. I didn't know Bart had found out anything. The fact of the matter is, uh, I didn't know he'd gone into town. Till you just now told me, I didn't even know he'd been killed. And I tell you, it's a doggone shame, Hoppy. Bart was a good man. A good man. He'd worked for me for a long time. Tell you, I'm going to see the fellow that done it strung up if it cost me my ranch. Your friends seem to feel the same way. Especially High Phillips. He mostly seems to think uh, Riley done it. Well, I don't know. Now, I tell you, I don't know. Killing bulls is one thing, but killing men's another. I don't know if I'd size Riley up to be a man killer or not. Uh, how about that knife you mentioned, Hoppy? You say it didn't have any identification on it? 
I didn't say. I didn't even mention a knife. You didn't what? Wait a second. Look there. What? Oh, it's High Phillips. And looks like he's got a just about every ranch in the valley with him. Maybe he meant what he said back there at the sheriff's office. Well. Hi there. What's up? We've come to see if you don't want to join us, Dave. Oh, I won't. Oh, 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 oh. We're going to pay Riley a little call. We got an idea you might like to come along. What kind of a call is this, Phillips? A business call. We call it that because we mean business. Either Riley leaves the valley willing or he leaves on a rail. We're giving him that choice. Oh, look here now. Huh? I don't think we can allow you to do I this, I thought Phillip. you might we... say that, Cassidy. All right, Jake, let him have it. Uh, Hoppy, watch out. One of them sneak behind yeah. you. Oh. oh, why, you skunks. You've knocked Hoppy out. Don't huh? move, mister. I'll... We got you covered. Well, what about it, Dade? You coming with us or not? I'm not. And if I ever get my hands on the... Well, what you just done... You here. won't, I'm afraid. Tie the three of them up, Ben, and we'll get going. Oh, mm. oh hey, look here, Dade. He's a coming, too. Yeah. Hoppy, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What about Phillips, the rest of them? Where did they go? They went on to Riley's, Hoppy. They tied us up first, but we got loose. All we've been waiting for is uh, you to come, too. All right. And come on. Uh, Let's sure get after him. You're all right, Hoppy? Oh, I'm all right. We got to get the Rileys. Riley's out of ammunition. Come on, we'll rush him. This way, follow me. You fellas, get back. First one in this door gets his hand busted open. Break that door down. Come on, men, get at it. What you think you'll do? Hey, who's, who's that? Get back. Get your hands up. Come on, Dade. You too, California. Keep these fellas covered. You bet, Hoppy. We'll do that. Now, listen, you fellas. Listen to me. I know the name of the killer. Riley is innocent. You hear me? Riley is innocent. But if Riley ain't behind all this, who is? He's one of your neighbors. One who's been here for years. He's the man who planned all this. The man who wanted Riley driven out of the valley so he could grab his range. Oh. He's... California is running for it. Throw a loop on him. I'll do that, little thing. Hey, up, up. Come back here. Come back, you Phillips. Up. Oh, oh, man. This is what's dragging the loco steer. I, I didn't do it. I didn't kill anyone. You can't blame this on me. Then why'd you run for it? I, I thought you were going to frame me. The way you said it, it sounded like that to me. But I didn't kill anybody. I tell you, I didn't well, kill anybody. Well, likely story. Yeah, but he's Probably right. He's that. telling the truth, California. Uh, 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 what's that you said, Hoppy? Phillips didn't kill anyone. The killer is still right here. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Hey, what's that you said, Hoppy? You said the killer's right here, but he ain't really Riley or Phillips? That's right, Dade. Neither one of them. Well, then who is? I'll describe him to you, Dade. Maybe you'll recognize him. Yeah? He's the rancher who pretended to know so little about the cattle business that he didn't even know that the introduction of purebreds on open range might cause trouble. But they, they... He's the man who pretended to know nothing about Bart's death, and yet knew 
He'd been knifed before I even told him he hadn't been shot. Listen, Hoppy, if you're trying to say... That... He's the man who had most to gain by seeing Riley run out of the valley. It was his range Riley had moved in on. You hold up a second, Hoppy. You're making that fellow sound like me. Am I, Dade? That's good. You're just the man I mean. I suppose I killed my own bulls. Bulls have cost me over $3,000. You can bet you did. It was worth it, too. Losing this range must have cost you twenty or 30000 You had one of your men do it, of course. And somehow Bart found out about it. So when he tried to tell us... You, you... dirty pull look out, look out! Look out! He's got you covered with a shotgun! No, don't pull those triggers, Dade. And don't try to fight this thing. You've been as good as strung up ever since you made that slip about the knife. I'm going to take that shotgun away from you, Dade. No. Stay where you are. You come one step closer and I'll shoot. I'm coming, Dade. I'm going to take it, Dade. All right, Blast, just take it. <laughs> Why? I shot right at you. Why don't you fall? I kind of thought you'd try this, Dade. There's been no shot in those shells since we left your ranch. Take him away, boys. I used to figure Dade was my friend. But when a friend becomes a proven killer, friendship ends. You know, Hoppy, I got to hand it to you. It sure takes a lot of courage to do that. What do you mean, courage to do what? To turn again a friend like that and practically hand him over to the hangman. Well, it wasn't an easy thing to do. Friendship is a nice thing to lean on, though. Especially when you've known someone a long time. Friendship is like a refuge you can turn to when you're tired or worried. Yeah, yeah, that's right. My friendship with Dade was like that. Oh, he talked a lot. But I enjoyed his company as well as anyone I ever knew. It was a shock to find out he'd turned selfish and, and bad. Yeah, I guess it hurt all right. Uh, uh, Hoppy, uh, I, I've been thinking uh -huh. that... Uh, so have I. I, I know, but uh, what I was going to say was, I've been thinking about a friend of mine who I'd like to visit a lot. When you're tired or worried? No, when I'm hungry. Ho, 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 you and your appetite. <laughs> and so Dade Larkin becomes just another loser in the fight against justice, and Hoppy heads back for a rest on the Bar 20. But he'll be riding out into another danger-filled adventure next time we meet when he and California go hunting for the gal who makes the best beef stew west of Topeka. They find her all right, along with the other women of Windy Ridge. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Bullfight was written by Gibson Scott Fox, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. 
for this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. The Women of Windy Ridge, we call this one, and it happened in western Oklahoma in the narrow stretch that lies between Texas and Kansas. We had no real business being there at all since we were on our way to a Kansas roundup. But California had remembered that Liz McCoy lived in a place called Windy Ridge. Liz McCoy, who can make the best beef stew west of Topeka. So in Windy Ridge, we went looking for Liz and her beef stew. But what we found there had nothing to do with food. Before we rode into the little town... Look here, you. I'm getting sick and tired of this, Wade. They tell me you haven't done a thing yet. Why don't you let us alone, Steve? You may be mayor of this town, but I'm sheriff of the county. But you've had three hours on this job, and you've done nothing. What's the matter? She's a woman, Steve. It ain't the same with women. It is when they're killers. I want her taken, Wade. I want her taken now. Now, listen, Steve. Liz has dynamite in that house, and she's promised to use it if we rush her. What are you doing? Letting her buffalo you? All right, Steve. Hang around a minute. You'll see how it is. Liz, can you hear me? I'll hear you all right, and I'm sick of hearing you. I'm giving you one last warning, Liz. And I'm giving you one last warning, Wade. I'm giving you ten seconds to get back across that street. You and the rest of your posse. If you don't, I'll blow you sky high. This is the last warning, Wade. Next poke that rattles that door gets it. Well, come on. We'd better get back across the street like she says. Listen, Wade. Shut up, Steve. That woman isn't fooling. Here, let's get in this doorway. It's getting dark. Maybe after a while she'll fall asleep. Not Liz McCoy. She never sleeps. And just the same, we'll wait. She might even decide to give up. Hey, look, Wade. A couple of waddies stopping in front of Liz's place. I better warn them. Yeah, wait. Yeah, let's see what Liz does about it. They're a stranger, so it won't matter. Steve, you've gone crazy. Wait. You let one yap out of you, and I'll wrap this gun around your head. You've gone crazy. You've let this reform fight go to your brain. Hey, look, they're knocking on her door. I'm going to stop You're them. going to do nothing. That woman's a murderess. And this is going to deliver her into our hands. Not if it means getting them fellers killed. Hey, get back from that door. Get back before you get... Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Women of Windy Ridge. With California seeking out Liz McCoy, who makes the best beef stew west of Topeka, Hoppy has come to the town of Windy Ridge, Oklahoma. But here, as they're standing knocking at Liz McCoy's door, a warning shout comes from across the street, and a charge of dynamite explodes almost in their faces. Hoppy, <coughs> gone. You, you all right, Hoppy? <coughs> yeah, I'm all right. But I wouldn't have been if somebody hadn't yelled. Who did that? I did. Here, we'd better all get back out of the way. No telling what that woman will do next. Hey, look, Wade. That explosion tangled up the whole front of her house. Maybe it got Liz, too. And maybe it didn't. We won't take any more chances. What's this all about? Who are you fellas? Well, my name's Wade. I'm sheriff here. That explosion, what? Liz McCoy did that. She's holed up in there. And we aim to get her out. Now, wait a minute. Why is she holed up? Yeah, and why do you fellas aim to get her out? Liz McCoy happens to be a friend of ours. And she also happens to be in trouble. The marshal of this place was stabbed to death this afternoon, and it seems that Liz McCoy did it. Liz McCoy? Sheriff, you, you, oh, you just ain't making sense. Liz McCoy wouldn't kill nobody. I've known her for years, and she just ain't that kind. Well, people change. Anyway, the marshal's body is lying inside her house, and she won't give herself up. What happens if she gives herself up? She'll get a trial. A fair trial? Sure, it'll be a fair trial. Well, what kind of people do you think we are? I don't know. But if you're sure she'll have a fair trial, I'm willing to try going in for a talk with her. Uh, hold on now. She's liable to blast your head off if you get anywhere near. Maybe. But I'll take that chance. And I'm taking it with you, Hoppy. Oh, all right. You want to take the chance? Hey, you might try going in from the side, from the top of that porch next door. We'll try and keep her attention out here. Sounds like a good idea. Come on, California. Oh, 
dark in here. Wish there was a moon or something. I can't see a thing. I can see all right. If you don't climb back out that window, I'm going to blow your head off. Don't shoot, Liz. It's California. Uh, California cars. And hop along, Cassidy, Liz. We just want to help you. Why, you two ornery pool cats, what are you doing here? Liz, you're in trouble. We want to help you. Hoppy, nobody can help me. What happened? You didn't kill the marshal, did you? Oh, I never killed nobody in my life, but that ain't going to help me now. Well, if you didn't kill him, Liz, give yourself up. Stand trial. What, and be hanged for something I didn't do, not me? Oh, Liz, they don't hang women out here. That's where you're wrong, California. I've seen a woman hanged. Marjorie Benjamin over to Pascal's Gulch. The way things are in this town, I don't have a chance. Besides, I ain't going to let her mock me, sit there while I'm on trial, a-grinning at me. Who are you talking about, Liz? Why, I'm talking about that Dolly Chester, her and her fancy feathers. If it wasn't for Dolly Chester, I wouldn't be in this trouble. Liz, give yourself up and stand trial. No, not me, Hoppy. I'd rather shoot it out here in my own place and die with my self-respect. What is it that's wrong, Liz? What's the cause of all this? Why, they've gone crazy, that's what's wrong. Crazy with reform. And that woman's the cause of it. Now get on out of here, you two, before them others try sneaking in here while I'm talking. And you could tell that sheriff that I've got two shotguns waiting for them as I don't get with the dynamite. Well, what'd she say? You didn't think she'd get a fair trial. What's behind all this, Sheriff? What was the cause of the marshal being killed? Well, there's a reform movement on in this town, and there's already three men dead because of it. Liz McCoy got into trouble because she wouldn't close her gambling place. Gambling place? You mean Liz had been running one? That's right. And when Trainer ordered her to close it, she told him to go soak his head. Who's Dolly Chester? Liz said something about Dolly Chester being the cause of all the trouble. I guess you could say she is. It's Dolly Chester that's leading the reform movement. And I can't stand here talking. I've got to do something about getting Liz McCoy out of that house. Wait a second, Sheriff. Why don't you hold off a while? I've been thinking that if this Dolly Chester guaranteed Liz a fair trial, Liz might give herself up. Yeah? And who's going to get Dolly Chester to do that? <laughs> not me. Or not any other man in this town. I'll talk to her. You mean you'll try? Ain't a man in the world ever got anywhere talking to feathers. And the same will go for you. Yeah? Where can I find her? Well, that won't give you no trouble. The biggest and best-looking house in town. And she's the prettiest woman in these parts. And if you think you can handle her, you're plum loco. Wait a moment, friend. I'll walk with you. I heard what you said to the sheriff back there about talking Liz McCoy into giving herself up. It made me wonder. What about? Why you should want to meddle in things that don't concern you. Liz McCoy is a friend of mine. And you think you'll help her by giving her that kind of advice? How would you help her? I'm working on that. I'm doing my best to get her out of town. That would make her seem guilty. Should also help her to live longer. You must be unaware of the bitterness there is in this town, friend. The reform movement they have going has incited a lot of people to hysteria. The kind of hysteria that breeds lynch mobs. You speak as a man of education, but I don't know you. I'm Fergal, a gambler. I run a place called the Blue Emerald. I see. Well, I appreciate your advice, but I think you're wrong. I've never known anyone to help himself by going on the run. If Liz McCoy stays in Windy Ridge, she may pay with her life. I know that, and Liz knows it. Liz and I are in the same business, and I always take care of my kind. Suppose this Dolly Chester is willing to guarantee Liz McCoy a fair trial. Dolly Chester will guarantee nothing to anyone, and your interference will only confuse things. It'd take gunplay for you to get Liz from under the nose of that sheriff. He's tough and determined, and he has determined men with him. Well, you're a man of your own opinions, friend. So I must warn you to stay out of it. And if I don't? 
You may not see the end of this street. Then I guess I'd better go on my way alone. Yes, perhaps you had. Good night, friend. Hey, you there. Sorry, I'm not stopping. You better stop. Why? Aren't you good on moving targets? Stay out of this, whoever you are. I'm telling you to stop. Better change your business, stranger. You're in a deadly trade. And this is one job I'm going to finish. Markram. Where is he, Markram? I'm here, Fergo. You'd better come and get your gunman. I have business of my own with Dolly Chester. You wanted to see me? Yes, I did. Do you always stare like that? So that's why they call you Feathers. Who calls me that? Oh, several people. Maybe the whole town. Plumes. And never have I seen them so delightfully displayed. (laughs) And what else did they tell you? They told me there wasn't a man in the world who could handle you. And I suppose you came here because of that? To satisfy yourself as to whether they're right or wrong? I came here because a friend of mine is in trouble. Who are you? The name is Cassidy, but my friends call me Hoppy. You're a stranger here. Yes, I sort of get around. But I want to talk about Liz McCoy. I'm going to ask you to help her. Help her? How? By assuring her that she'll have a fair trial if she gives herself up. And why should I do that? You're a woman. Yes, I am. Probably more woman than you've ever seen in your life for all of your getting around. Hmm. And that's just the reason I won't help Liz McCoy. Because the man she killed today was the man I was going to marry. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Women of Windy Ridge. Hoppy has been given a couple of hours in which to save the life of Liz McCoy, an old friend of California's. Liz, barricaded in her home, swears she's innocent of the killing of Brent Trainer and won't give herself up unless she is guaranteed a fair trial by Dolly Chester, leader of the town's reform movement against gaming halls. Hoppy has just made the request to Dolly Chester, and the lady has just flatly refused him. You know what it'll mean, don't you? You are saying no. I suppose it could mean anything. It means that Liz McCoy will blow herself up when the sheriff and his men move in, and maybe she'll blow up one or two of the others with her. I don't see how that concerns me. You know, the more I talk to you, the more I feel that nothing concerns you except those fancy feathers you're wearing. Now you're being impudent. And I suppose that is being disloyal. I suppose nobody even dares to be impudent to the queen of Windy Ridge. Miss Chester, what you need is a good spanking. Oh? And do you think you're man enough to give it to me? Yes, I think I am. I guess you might be at that. I guess you might. Uh, Hoppy, go back to your Liz McCoy. Tell her I guarantee that she'll get a fair trial. Well, Cassidy, I'm sure relieved. And I'm much obliged to you. I've got that deputy of mine ready to take Liz McCoy over to Reddington. Be safer for her there. Safer for all of us. Sheriff, how would Fergal figure in this? I don't know. Blue Emerald's just outside the town limits. It's the only gambling place around that the mayor can't close up. Has Fergal always been friendly with Liz McCoy? (laughs) Liz has always hated his insides. And she's never been backward about telling him. What about this reform movement? What do you think of it? Cassidy, this is a raw country. And its people have to blow off steam somehow. Yeah. Bottle them up and you breed trouble. Yeah, you're right there, Sheriff. Steve Graham was a good mayor until he started off on this campaign... Now he's full of fever, and so are the rest of the folks. And the worst part of it is going to come when those trail herds from Texas start moving through here next week. 
With this no gambling, no drinking fever, the folks are just waiting for him. You're going to see a bloody time, Cassidy. A bloody time. Was the gambling harmful? Oh, not that I ever noticed. Marshall always kept everything under control. Who's that? Well, I couldn't tell for sure under that lantern out there. But I think it's my partner and the mayor. Mayor? It can't be. So we dive one... Hey! I thought you and my deputy were taking Liz McCoy over to Reddington. Uh, not me, Wade. There was bail put up. And Judge Lawson said she could go free until the trial. Bail? Of all the... Who put it up? Fergal. He said she was his kind and he was going to help her. And Liz wants to see you, Hoppy, right away. Over to her house. She said to come even if it was late. Bail, that rips everything. Come on, Pete. We'd better start swearing in more deputies. We're going to need them. And Cassidy... If you and your pal are willing, I'll start with you two. That explosion sure tangled this place up. Seems kind of silly to be knocking on this door. Hold it a second. Why? Didn't you hear that? What? I thought I heard voices. Somebody sort of gasped or choked. And the light just went out. Come on, let's get through these right timbers. Oh, yeah. Might have been easier if we'd have gone around the back way. Ain't no back way. House sets into the side of the hill. Hoppy, there's something wrong here. Wish there was more light. Yeah. Well, at least we're through that stuff. Yeah. This ought to be the front room. I... What? Dog, on it. Uh, What's the matter? Went flat in my fool face. Be quiet a second. Liz? Liz, are you here? Like being in a grave. Like, uh... Oh, what? what's the matter now? Uh, push my face into cobwebs or something. Hoppy, ain't you got a match? This is getting on my nerves. I'm way ahead of you. There's a lamp we can light if I can get to it. Uh-oh. Gotta light another match. Hey, what was that? Could be more of those boards just falling. And it could be somebody making them fall. There. Now we got the lamp. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Let's see if Liz is in this other room. Yeah. Well, 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 I'll be all darned. Sitting in a chair fast asleep. I'm afraid it's going to be a long sleep, California. Take another look. There's a knife buried in her chest. <laughs> Suicide, I tell you. That woman knew she'd be convicted of the marshal's murder, and she killed herself. I don't agree with you, Mr. Mayor. Liz McCoy wasn't the type of woman to kill herself, whatever kind of problem she might have had. Ah, oh, that's ridiculous. Anyone can kill themselves, for any reason. Sure. And I'm sure that's what our coroner's jury will say about it. And with this over and done with, we'll finish the business of cleaning up this town. I'd say you've already finished it, and maybe the town as well. Well... What do you mean by that? Steve, I think Mr. Cassidy's right. I think it's time to let up on our crusade. You've been getting too upset over it, Steve. Well, why, you I... closed up all the gambling places why... in town. Don't you think that's enough? With four people dead, I think it's more than enough. Mr. Cassidy. Yes, Miss Chester. Could I talk to you? Mind if I make it a little later? Right now, I'm heading for the county recorder's office. <laughs> Look, do you have to go through every paper in the place? Can't that clerk help you? Shh, quiet. Huh? Clark's an old man and he doesn't see very well. I'm just about through anyway. Right, Hoppy. But I sure don't get it. You will, California, because I think I've come up with the exact reason for all this trouble they've been having in Windy Ridge. Hello, Cassidy. Don't tell me you're one of the few people around here who can read. Hello, Fergal. Yes, I can read. It's a habit I picked up when I was quite young. Thinking of buying some property in the neighborhood? Not for a few years yet. I still like to get around and see things. I imagine you see a lot of things, Cassidy. Too many, perhaps. I notice you're wearing a gun, Fergal. You didn't have it on yesterday. No, I only strap it on when I feel there's the possibility of personal unpleasantness. I see. Of course, I could take it off again. If you were willing to leave town, you might think about that, my friend. Yeah. 
There goes bad medicine, Hoppy. A chunk of ice. And probably chain lightning with a gun. He wears it as though he's used to it. But we can't worry about that. Not now, anyway. So you came back, Hoppy. Didn't you think I would? I hoped you would. Because I... I can't seem to get you out of my mind. Well, that could be a compliment. It's meant to be. And coming from a woman as beautiful as you are? Well, I'm impressed. Do you like my house, Hoppy? I guess it's about the fanciest home I've ever been in. Especially for a town like this. I chose this town deliberately, Hoppy. I picked it out and came to it when it was just beginning. I decided to make it my town because I wanted to grow with it. Mm -hmm. And it is growing. We're the county seat now. Soon there'll be a railroad coming here. It's going to be a big town. And I'm going to be the most important woman in it. But a woman doesn't like to go her way alone. Oh, Hoppy, stop twirling your hat. Just look at me. How about Trainer, the marshal? Oh, that was never a particularly flaming affair. At least uh, not on your part. That's right. From what I hear, he had it pretty bad for you, though. Perhaps that's why I said I'd marry him. I really only wanted to be kind. But with you, Hoppy... Trainer had it so bad for you that he didn't quite know what to do when he found out you were crooked. When he found out I was... What on earth are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that you own a half interest in Fergal's gambling hall. I'm talking about how you engineered this so-called reform movement so all the town competition would be wiped out. With Fergal's place the only one left because it's beyond the city limits. Wherever did you get such a fantastic idea? From a very factual source, the county recorder's office. You didn't have much time to lose, did you? Most people out here can't read. The recorder's an old man almost blind. You weren't very likely to be caught. But I guess the marshal caught on, didn't he? But he loved you. So he made the mistake of telling you he knew, and you killed him. Liz McCoy killed him. He died in her home. Liz McCoy would have used a gun. She was that kind. The knife was your touch, Dolly. And you did the same thing to Liz to make it look like a guilty suicide. Hoppy, in a few years it won't matter. But right now, the town wouldn't like it if it knew about this. No. It'd be a shame to have me get in trouble for it, don't you think, Hoppy? Sort of a waste. Well, you're a very beautiful woman. And you have a lot on me. Mm -hmm. Enough to keep me entirely in your control. Entirely. Mm -hmm. How about it, Hoppy? I'll think about it, Dolly. But in the meantime, I'm going to walk you over to the sheriff's office and turn you in for murder. You fool. You insolent fool. Fargo! I'm here, Dolly. Don't move, Cassidy. Just keep those hands in that hat away from those holsters. Not giving me much of a break, are you, Fergo? <laughs> I never give anybody a break, Cassidy. It's the way I do business. If this were stud poker, you'd be high man. But high card showing isn't always the best, is it? It is this time, Cassidy. Because you don't even get a chance to draw. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Take it easy, Hoppy. This leg's going to lay you up for a while. How about Dolly Chester? We got her, Cassidy. And you know something? She's already squawking about getting a fair trial. <laughs> <laughs> but how'd you happen to down Fergal when he had the drop on you? Uh, I figured ahead of time that I'd be in the middle, so I had a danger inside my hat. But it almost wasn't big enough. Well, you did a great job, Cassidy. The town already has its sense back. And I'm not going to have to worry about them Texas trail riders. But uh, how did you know, Hoppy? How did you figure it was Dolly Chester? Did you ever know Liz McCoy to keep a dirty house, California? Shucks, no. She was about the cleanest party alive. Right. So when you were crawling around on her floor last night, I didn't see how you could be pushing your face into cobwebs, like you said. But I did figure it could be feathers with Miss Chester wearing them as she sneaked by us in the dark. She was feathers? Yeah. Well, I'll be gall darn. Yes, sir. I'll be golden. (laughs) 
And that brings to a close the story of The Women of Windy Ridge. In Hoppy's next story, there is plenty of adventure and excitement, and it carries the unusual title, Right Rope, Wrong Neck. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Women of Windy Ridge was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? This one we call Stampede at Samples Crossing. It started during a cattle drive with the Bar 20 pushing 2,000 head north for railroad shipment. We've been on the trail 15 days and have just reached Semple's Crossing, where you always hold up overnight before fording the river. At the same time, another herd pulled in from the west, a herd much bigger than ours. We had both arrived at practically the same time, which meant trouble. And that night in the Silver Spur Saloon, trouble started. Here we go, Hoppy. Here comes Reb Moran. Breathing fire out of both ears. Yeah, sure enough. Hi, Reb. Here you're the new trail boss for the Lazy J. That's right, Cassidy. I'm the new trail boss. And I figure you and me ought to settle this thing about crossing the ford tomorrow. You mean about who goes first? <laughs> no question about that, is there? Bar 20 arrived first. Yeah, not so as anybody would notice it. I had a man waiting there an hour before your beef pulled in. A man doesn't count, Reb. It's who gets cattle there first. Not the way I figure it, Cassidy. And you and I don't figure it alike. I never expected we would. But I expect to put Lazy J beef into that river first thing tomorrow morning. You've had a few drinks too many, Reb. Sleep them off and we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll talk about it right now. I'll tell you what I'll do, Cassidy. I'll fight you for it. <laughs> the best man gets to take his herd across first. But we fight with our hands, not with our irons. Look, Moran, tomorrow's going to be a big day for both of us. Why don't you head for your blanket roll and turn in? Oh, what's the matter, Cassidy? You scared? I always heard you was a fancy man with your fists. But with me, you got to prove it. Sorry, Moran, but I'm not going to take you on for a stupid reason like this. But you got to take me on, Cassidy. <laughs> you can't help yourself. No? And why not? You left just a couple of riders with your herd, didn't you? That's right. Well, I had some of my boys rope and hog tie them. You what? Yeah, and my boys are caring for that bar 20 beef right now. And if they hear three quick shots from out of this place, they know just what to do. Just what would they do, Reb? Stampede that herd of yours? Yeah. So it's up to you, Cassidy. Hmm. Either you fight me to see who crosses the river first, or you get them bar 20 steers scattered clear from here to the Continental Divide. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Stampede at Semple's Crossing. With the Bar 20 trail herd reaching an important river crossing almost at the same time as another herd, trouble has developed. 
Rep Moran, hard-drinking trail boss of the Lazy J, has just challenged Hoppy to a fist fight to decide which outfit will ford the stream first. Hoppy is trying to avoid the fight, but Moran has set things up so that Hoppy must fight or have his herd stampeded all over the countryside. Ah, this is kid stuff, Reb. You've just been promoted and it's gone to your head. You figure I've got a little reputation and you'd like to get fat off of it by knocking me around. Just kid stuff, Reb. Yeah, come on, Cassidy. Do you fight it or them steers of yours start running? All right. That's the way you have to play. But it's got to be just between you and me. <laughs> What's the matter, Cassidy? Your rider's all yellow, too. Who are you? I'm Gillis, Reb's foreman. And I'm willing to stack the Lazy J against your outfit all the way. I'm sure you would, considering you outnumber us at least two to one. I'll say this again, Reb. The fight has to be just between you and me, or I'm not taking off these guns. I don't figure your guns are so tough either, Cassidy. That'll make something out of it, Reb. With his guns if he wants to. Now, now, hold it, hold it. Let's just keep it a fist fight. All right, Cassidy, it's just between me and you. So take off your guns. And whoever wins has the undisputed right to take his herd across the river first. That's also agreed, Reb? That's the whole idea, Cassidy. All right, I'll take off the gun. Hello, eh? Wouldn't want to make any bets on this, would you, Cassidy? No bets, Reb. You're forcing the fight on me, and that's enough. Anybody else want to bet? Put your money where your mouth is, Moran. I got 50 bucks to back Hoppy. I got $50 to bet on Hopalong Cassidy, too. I'll cover that. That's right, boys. Get your bets down. (laughs) It's going to be a big evening for the Lazy J. All right, come on, Cassidy. Get your hands up. Crowd them, Reb. Get them fast. Just what I aim to do. Try this one, Cassidy. Ought to be just your sight. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Ah. Not bad, Reb, but a little high. I felt it, though. And you're gonna feel this one. Oh! I felt that one, too, Reb. Right up to my wrist. Care to get up? And we can both try again. I'm getting up. And you're going down. It'll always be the same, Moran, even if you used an axe. Uh, hey, uh, can you hear me, Moran? Oh, gone. He's, he's colder than a panhandle winter. Uh, give me a hand, California. We'll get him up. All right. I don't need any help. I'll be all right. Uh, I guess this settles things, doesn't it, Reb? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it settles things. Your outfit crosses the river first. Now I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Nobody would ever know you'd been in a scuffle, Hoppy. You don't show a mark. <laughs> it's a, a great fight, Mr. Cassidy. Won me fifty dollars. Uh, my name is Clark, Mr. Cassidy. Tippy Clark. Uh, and I sure am proud to know you. Wait a minute. If this is the first you've known me, how did you happen to bet on me? Because he's a white-livered stable tramp, and we ought to hang him upside down the doorway. Now, wait a minute, Farrell. I, I didn't do anything to you. You better get this, and I'm going to... Oh, no, 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 no. Don't follow him, Farrell. Let him alone. You don't think you're going to walk out of here top dog, do you, Cassidy? Nobody ever beats the Lazy J for keeps. And there's 12 of us here to prove it. 12 of them. Five of us from the bar 20. (laughs) That calls for more than the rabbits, fool. Move in, boys. We're going to clean out this place. Hold it, you man. Hold it. Hold it, I said. This is a 45 I'm holding, and I'm pretty good with it. And the man alongside me is a lot better with his. Maybe all you gents don't know him. His name is Silent Jim Reed, and he happens to be marshal of this town. And I happen to be his deputy. You ought to know better than to make trouble, Pharaoh. You used to live here. I figure this to be our own fight, Gleason. That's all right, so long as it's just a couple of you. But when it comes to wrecking buildings with one of your range brawls, well, that's where we take over. We're taking you in, Pharaoh. Oh, you are? Yeah, you and this Cassidy. And maybe we'll have peace in town tonight. That's all right with me, deputy. Head for the door, Vero. My outfit ain't gonna take this, Gleason. Your outfit will take it and like it. I won't like it. I'm not gonna have this town turned upside down just because you fellas lost a fight and a few bets. That's what you think. Push that door open, Cassidy. After you, Marshal. All right. Now you, Vero. And don't try... <laughs> They come from across the street. Poppy, you hit. I got a slug through the arm. Outside of that, I'm all right. 
the town marshal wasn't so lucky. Looks as though he's dying. Got it out yet, Doc? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's out. You sure can take it, Cassidy. 38 slug could be mighty painful. I'm much obliged to you, Doctor. Will it be all right if I get on off this bar now? Oh, you better lie still a few more minutes, Cassidy. You're going to be a lot weaker than you think. Oh? Oh, yes, Tippy. What is it? Uh, the Marshal's Silent Jim. He, he, he's still lying out there. Yeah, and well, he's dead, Tippy. Lying out there isn't going to hurt him now. He didn't die right away, though. No, it took him about 20 minutes. Oh, sure, a tough way to go. If a man can't die in bed, it, it seems like somebody ought to get his boots off for him. Why didn't somebody get the Marshal's boots off? Why don't you go get them off, Tippy? Stuff the toes good and they just about be your size. But did you see anyone fire those shots as you stepped outside, Cassidy? Sorry, Gleason. It was pretty dark out there. Yeah, but don't take a mind reader to figure who was on the other end of that gun. What are you thinking, Gleason? Well, Cassidy, you whip that fire-eating trail boss of the Lazy J here tonight, Reb Moran. Moran was out of this place when the shooting happened. So that's who you think it was? Yep. I figured he couldn't take the whipping and stood out there waiting for you to show. Probably so riled up that he just... Let fire at everybody who stepped through the doorway. All right, Gleason, but what are you going to do about it? Well, Doc, I guess we'll have to try to bring Moran in. That might be quite a job. With Silent Jim gone, things around Semple's Crossing are liable to get pretty rough. Nothing like sleeping in a hotel for a good night's rest. <laughs> uh, how's the arm feel this morning, Hoppy? Uh, it's kind of stiff. I guess I'll be able to get around all right. We going to swim them steers across that stream this morning or this afternoon? Burn. I'll get it. Oh, it's you, Doc. Uh, come on in. Yeah, thought I'd better stop by and have another look at that arm of yours, Cassidy. Doesn't feel too bad, Doc. Yeah, just the same. I better dress it for you. I need to take them cattle of yours away from here. Oh, maybe not for several days. I've been thinking about Reb Moran. He's a fire eater, and he likes nothing better than a brawl. I find it hard to believe he'd bushwhack anybody from a dark doorway. Oh? After what happened last night, I'd sort of feel responsible if he had to hang for a killing he didn't do. Yeah, well, it'd be a lot better for that arm if you could rest a few days. Mind if I throw up this window shade and need more light to dress that wall? Go ahead. Huh, look at that sun beating down out there. And it's six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, is that what time it is? I wouldn't know. Hunt with another shooting and a knifing and breaking the news of Silent Jim Reed's death to his widow. I've been up all night. Never can tell, can you, Doc? Yeah. There probably wasn't a bad man in this territory who couldn't beat Silent Jim in a fair fight. And then Silent Jim has to get it by accident. Yeah. I'm afraid that when Silent Jim was killed, there went the law and order in this town. Ben Gleason been a good deputy, but he's not the one for handling the trouble we get here. Oh, that hurt, Cassidy? Ah, a little, but don't worry about it. Sure is going to be a hot day. You can see the heat coming up from the ground right now. Uh, uh, there's a couple of little kids playing out in the street already, too. Uh, Doc, uh, how about Reb Moran? Uh, anybody know where he is? No sign of him in town. Gleason rounded up Posse, went out to find him and bring him in. That might be a rough job against all those lazy J riders. Yeah, that's what I told Gleason. So he rounded up his Posse without too much fuss and got out of here in the dark, just after three o'clock. He didn't lose much time. Uh, figured most of the lazy J hands might still be hanging around the saloon. I hope it works out that way. I feel I've had enough bloodshed around here for one twenty-four hours. Hey, now, how does that feel, Cassidy? Ah, uh, feels fine, Doc. It's nice and snug. Hey, what's that noise? Sounds like an earthquake. Uh, wait a second, I'll, I'll get this window up. It's coming from the river crossing. Hoppy, it's them steers of ours stampeding. And they're coming this way right through town with them little kids in the street. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Stampede at Semple's Crossing.
trouble has broken out at Semple's Crossing. Hoppy has won the fight forced upon him by Reb Moran, trail boss of the Lazy J, to determine who should ford the river first. But as an aftermath, silent Jim Reed, marshal of Semple's Crossing, is killed by gunfire. With suspicion and tension riding the area, someone has stampeded the Bar 20 steers right into the main street of town. Them kids, Hoppy. They're too scared to get out of the way. You grab one, I'll take the other. Come on. I'm all right. But you, you, you fell down. Yeah, this arm went back on me when I was lifting a youngster. We got out of the way, both of us. Ooh, what a scramble that was. And them steers of ours, Hoppy, scattered all over the countryside. Take us a week to round them up. Ah, uh, never mind. Those two kids are all right anyway. Uh, but what about the herd? We ain't gonna take it lying down, are we? Not if we can find out who did it. That lazy J outfit did it. Ah, uh, maybe. But that's something for us to find out for sure. Sounds like you're in a hurry, Gleason. Who's that? Oh, it's you, Cassidy. Yeah, couldn't sleep, so I'm out here trying to catch a little breeze. <clears throat> How's the arm? Uh, it doesn't like what happened. Keeps letting me know it. A lot of pain, the wound like that. Just brought Reb Moran in, me and the posse. Yeah, where'd you find him? Oh, we looked all day for him, and then found him on our way back to town, still sleeping off his drunk under a spring wagon. Hmm. No trouble taking him. Didn't act like he knew what it was all about. Do you think he's guilty, Gleason? Oh, who knows? I'm never sure when a man's guilty. Not unless I see him do something. Of course, a lot of other people around here think he's guilty, though. Want to give him a quick trial, a quick sentence. Yeah, where are all your boys, Cassidy? Out rounding up cattle. We had a stampede here today. Yeah, I heard. You think Moran might have caused that, too? Oh, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know anything about all this. But we came on to something funny out there today. Yeah, what was that? A couple of steers wearing new Red Hot brands. Yeah? Mm-hmm. A real new brand for these parts. A Lazy Bee. Lazy Bee? Hey, you could dress up a Lazy J to look like that without any trouble at all. That's right. That's the way I figured. Without any trouble at all. Uh, you feel like talking to Reb Moran, Cassidy? I wouldn't mind. Come on, then. I got him where he's got more time for talk than anything else. Got hop along, Casty here, Moran. Says he'd like to talk to you. He thinks I try to gun him down. We've got nothing to talk about. I'm not passing judgment on you, Reb. I'd never gun a man down that way if I was drunk or sober. You whipped me fair and square, and that was enough for me. How about stampeding my cattle, Reb? What? Don't know nothing about that either. You said you're going to. Said I was going to if, if you wouldn't fight. Anyway, a man says lots of things when he's lickered up. Don't mean he's going to do them. Well, lots of folks around here think it's a gun down silent Jim Reed, Rip. They think you tried for Cassidy and got the marshal instead. Not me. I might have had a few drinks. I'd never pull anything like that. Folks are going to put you on trial for it just the same. Well, how can they prove it? Somebody'd have to see me do a thing like that to prove it. Well, you better pray that nobody says they did see you. Because if somebody does that, you're gonna hang. Hang? That's right. Me? Yep. Come on, Cassidy. Time we got out of here. No, wait, wait a minute, Cassidy. Wait a minute. You, you ain't gonna let him do that to me, are you? You know me from way back in Laredo. You know I wouldn't dry gulch anybody. You know that, don't you, Cassidy? Yeah, Reb, I guess I do know it. And if I can, I'll help you. Cassidy, if I was you, I'd uh, forget what you said about trying to help Moran. Why? There's some folks in this town that wouldn't like it. They're mighty tough folks. 
people that could cause you all kinds of trouble. Gleason, I think you're being honest about this trouble. I think you're being honest because you told me that stuff about the brands. But when it comes to Reb Moran, I'm not taking your advice. See you later. Mr. Cassidy. Who is it? It's me, Tippy Clark. What do you want, Tippy? I think there's going to be more trouble in this town, Mr. Cassidy. I, I get around and I hear things, and I think there's going to be more trouble. Maybe with men lying in the street and dying with their boots on. I've seen a lot of it here, and I always get to thinking it could be me. Well, you don't have to look at him, Tippy. Well, I guess I can't help looking, I, and I guess I can't. What's the matter, Tippy? I thought I saw something in the shadow there. Something. Mr. Cassidy! <laughs> That's better. Uh, how's your head feel? No, oh, I don't know. Pick it up and hand it to me, will you? Oh, no kidding, no. Uh, how do you feel? Oh, I'm all right, California. Where did you come from? I uh, got here just after them fellas jumped you. They bemoosed when I started a shooting at them. Where's Tippy? I don't know. If he was with you, he ain't around now. Uh, now, listen. Uh, before we do any more gabbing, we better get you over to the doc's place. That gash under your eye needs some help. Come on, I'll help you. Mm -hmm. Cassidy, what are you doing here? Oh, it's you, Gleason. I came over to have my face patched up. Yeah? Well, looks like you'll have to wait your turn. Tippy Clark's in there. Tippy? Doc says he's dying of a slug through the chest. Sent for me to take a statement from him. Come on in. You two can be witnesses. Yeah. Tippy. Come in, Mr. Cassidy. Better stay by the door, Cassidy. He needs air. Carol Gillis. How do you fit in this picture? I'm the one who carried Tippy over here. That's how I fit in. Hold him up a little higher, Pharaoh. He'll <coughs> cough his life out before he can say two words. Gleason, you better get your statement in a hurry. This man is dying. All right, Doc. What do you want to say, Tippy? I, uh, I want to say I know who killed Silent Jim Reed and shot Mr. Cassidy last night. I, uh, I saw what happened when I went outside. I, it, it was... Reb Moran, he was standing in the doorway across the street. Lift me up a little higher, Pharaoh. One of my spurs is caught in the couch. That all you got to say, Tippy? That, that's all, Mr. Gleason. I guess that settles our case, then. I'll get the judge to bring Moran to trial in the morning. Before you go, Gleason, I'd like to ask a question. What? I'd like to know how you'd go about rustling an entire herd of 5,000 cattle. How I... What are you talking about, Cassidy? I've decided that the surest way of doing it would be to wait until it was being moved to market, far away from its home ranch. Then it wouldn't be too hard if the trail boss was moved out of the way. And if the foreman and maybe half the men were in cahoots. Wait a minute, Cassidy. Now you're talking about me. That's right, Pharaoh. But I'm not talking about you alone. Am I, Dr. Bradhurst? What do you mean, Cassidy? I mean you're the brains behind all this. And that's why you wanted silent Jim Reed out of the way. Because you knew he might be too smart for what you were trying to do. So you killed silent Jim and tied it to Reb Moran. Oh, Hoppy, and that's why they stampeded our beef. To keep you out of the picture, huh? You sure you ain't making a big mistake, Cassidy? Doc Bradhurst? Doc Bradhurst and his Lazy Bee brand. His new and very personal brand. But Cassidy, 5,000 hits. Oh, they might not have taken all of them. They'd have left maybe five or six hundred. Blamed the big loss on trouble here and on the trail. It was quite a plan, Doctor. But you're not going to be able to make it stick. You can't prove any of this, Cassidy. I can prove you said Tippy Clark was dying when he wasn't. And if we can find that branding iron of yours, maybe by searching this Shut house... Up, Cassidy! One more word and this 45 puts your light out. You too, Gleason. I'll make a move. Afraid you made a mistake with that move, Pharaoh. Now, Tippy's going to be able to talk. Aren't you, Tippy? Yes. They wanted to be sure Reb Moran would be convicted. Shut up, you! Don't mind him, Tippy. He has to keep the gun on us. So they made me say I saw Reb Moran kill Simon Jim. Pharaoh kept holding a knife against my back all the time. If I'd have said a wrong word, I, I was going to get it. Looks as though you're going to have to use that gun on him, Pharaoh. Yeah, 
And I'm going to start in with this squawking little polecat. <laughs> Back to Hopalong Cassidy. This town. If it ain't dust, it's gun smoke. You all right, California? You Gleason? No, well, we're all right, but Pharaoh's down, and the doc's gonna handle will never be the same. I'll never know how you beat Pharaoh's bullets, Cassidy, and I'll never know how you drew that fast. Banged up the way you are. I guess I got tired of being banged up. These two are all yours now, Gleason. And I'll let them change places with Reb Moran. But uh, first, I'd like to know how you figured out this play the Doc was making. I'd like to know that myself, Hoppy. How are we so sure the Doc was lying about Tippy? Well, according to the doctor, Tippy was supposed to be making a deathbed statement. But the minute I saw Tippy on that couch, I knew he couldn't be dying. No? Well, why not? Tippy was conscious and able to speak. And Tippy was wearing his boots. That was why I knew the Doc was lying. If Tippy had known he was going to die, he certainly would have asked one of us to take his boots off. Because Tippy has more fear of dying with his boots on than any man I ever met. I'll be a low coat sidewinder. This is one story we can all get a boot out of. California. I mean it. Uh, the Doc and Farrow figured to make quite a killing. But they come to find out that the boot was on the other foot. And the boot hurt, didn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> The old adage that he died with his boots on surely tripped up the guilty ones in this Hoppy adventure. There's one thing certain when you follow the adventures of Hoppy and his pal California. Plenty of action and excitement every time. So don't miss Hopalong Cassidy's next action-packed story. Hoppy and California mix it up plenty, and that's a promise. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Sam Peter Semple's Crossing was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what's your story for today? We call this one Cowtown Troubleshooter. But the day California and I rode in the Mesa Junction, we weren't thinking about trouble. We'd had a long three days in the saddle, and all we were interested in was a chance to wash the trail dust off and get into some fresh clothes. I tell you, Hoppy, it just don't seem possible a town could have grown so much in the years since we was here last. Ah, it beats anything I ever saw, California. I guess it just proves what a railroad line will do for a town. Yeah, uh, why, I bet you there's twice as many stores and offices along Main Street here as there was a year ago. Sure. Uh, and looky, the hotel's been painted. Outside looks good. <laughs> yeah, so I see. 
But I'm just hoping they got a room with a couple of good beds on the inside. Yeah, yeah. You know, every time I leave the Bar 20 bunkhouse, I wish there was some way to pack my own mattress along. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Bar 20, uh, you reckon we'll find out if Buck can get a good enough price for his stock to make it worthwhile driving it this far? Uh, maybe. With two companies here in the cattle buying business and with the railroad connections they got now, Mesa Junction seems like the place to drive them. Well, it shouldn't take long to find out, I guess. Yeah. Uh, First, we'll tie up and see about that room. Uh, suits me. Hmm. Uh, oh, wonder what's going on in front of the saloon down the street there. Ah, uh, hard to tell. Probably just an argument of some kind. Come on. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Sure feels good to stretch your legs again, don't you? Sure does. Well, howdy, Catch. Just get in town. That's right. You got a room for us? Sure thing, cowboy. Got a nice room at the back where it's good and quiet. Let's see now, um, number 12, it is. Ah, it'll be fine. You can sign for both if you want to. All right. There you are. Uh-huh. Cassidy and Carlson from the Bar 20 Ranch. I'm Cassidy. Hoppy, most folks call me, and this is California Carlson. Can you see that our horses are taken care of? Sure can. Well, here's your key. Room 12, straight down the hall there. Rose! Fine. Rose! Rose! Any idea where the sheriff is? Why, no. What's the matter? There's trouble brewing out in front of the saloon. Pete Foley's trying to pick a fight with Wayne Carter. Oh, Pete's always trying to do that. I know it, but this time Foley means business. He's liable to kill that Carter fella. Oh. That was a shot. Come on, let's see what's going on out there. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Cowtown Troubleshooters. Hoppy in California had just entered the Mesa Junction Hotel and registered for a room when a man came rushing in saying that someone named Pete Foley was about to kill Wayne Carter. As the man spoke, a shot was heard, and Hoppy and the others raced to the saloon to find out what happened. Can't see much for the people gathered round. Now, let's shove through here. Come on, one side here. That... Get out of the way and let us pass, Pete Foley. Wayne's done nothing to you. Shut up, you. Might have known Carter to hide behind your petticoats. I got a good mind. You to... can't scare us, even if you do have a gun and Wayne doesn't. Let us go, Foley. I don't want any trouble with you. <laughs> Listen to the dude. Should let you have it between the eyes instead of just shooting your hat off. I'm surprised you didn't, you snaking coyote. Why, you... I don't need no gun to take care of you. Wayne, be careful. See how you like this. Hey, that Carter fella knows how to use his fists. Yeah, he's doing all right. Hit him, Wayne. Hit him. Well, I'll be... Uh, Carter knocked him flat. Hoppy, look. Now settle this my own way, Carter. Hold it, fella. I wouldn't draw that gun if I were you. Huh? You mind your business, cowboy. I'm making this my business. Now get up and hit the road. You can't tell me what... Move! Well, all right. I'll go for now. But don't think this is the end of things, Carter. Oh, Wayne, are you all right? Sure. I'm all right, Judy. Come on. But aren't you going to thank the gentleman here? Foley might have shot you if he hadn't stepped in. Uh, thanks, cowboy. No thanks necessary. I'd just like to see a man get a fair deal. That's something Pete Foley doesn't believe in, Mr... Uh, Cassidy. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cassidy. We both appreciate your help. Uh, come along, Judy. Your father's waiting for us at his office. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Cassidy. Goodbye. Hmm. For a man who's almost been shot, Carter don't seem very grateful, does he? Uh, maybe he doesn't realize how close he came. If I were Carter, I'd steer clear of Foley from now on, or else start packing a six-gun. <laughs> Carter pack a six-gun? Oh... He's not the type for gunplay, I'm afraid. Well, I better get back to the hotel before somebody walks off with it. <laughs> That's a good idea. We'll go, too. <laughs> hey, that did my heart good, seeing that Pete Foley put in his place there, Hoppy. <laughs> I'm afraid it's like Pete told Carter. This won't be the end of it. What seems to be their trouble? Fighting over the girl? Oh, no, no. Judy Barton's going to marry Carter. No, the trouble's all because of business. Uh, business? Yeah, you see, a few months ago, Judy's dad and Carter come here from the east, started up a cattle company. Now they're threatening to get too big to suit Jess Granger and his company. Ah, two cattle companies having a feud, huh? Yeah, that's it. Granger was here first. Had things pretty much his own way until Barton and Carter come along. 
Well, naturally, Jess doesn't like the competition. Can't blame him for that, I guess. Well, no. Except when he hires a gunman like Pete Fuller to try to scare the competition off. I'm afraid the trouble's going to wind up in the shooting feud before long. Well, can't the sheriff keep him under control? It doesn't seem like he can. He's out of town half the time, anyway. I see. Well, here we are. After you, gents. Well, I didn't realize it was getting so late. Oh, that clock's about 20 minutes fast. It's only about 2.30. What difference does it make, Hoppy? We ain't going to try and do any business today, are we? Sure we are. You seem to forget what Buck told us about getting back to the bar 20 as soon as we could. Hey, let's see. Uh, I gave you the key, didn't I? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. We'll see you later. Ranger Cattle Company. Guess the place on down the street is Barton and Carter outfit, Hoppy, huh? Which one we're going to do first? I uh, might as well stop here at Granger's. We'll find out what kind of a price he'll offer us and then check with Barton and Carter. I wonder if that uh, holy feller is going to be inside. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Told you that's not the way to handle a fellow like Carter. Shut up, Granger. Look. Uh, well, well, uh, come in, gentlemen. I hope we're not interrupting anything too important. Are you Jess Granger? That's right. This is the guy I was telling you about, boy. Oh, I see. Cassidy's my name, and this and is... And maybe I ought to take care of this hombre right now. That'll do, Foley. You can leave now. Whoa, but you... I said that'll do. I'll talk to you later. All right. Now, now, gents, what can I do for you? We're from the bar 20, Granger. We're going to have about 400 head of cattle ready for market next month. The boss sent us to Mesa Junction to find out what kind of a price we can get. Best I can do, Cassidy. I think you'll agree that's a fair price. Well, it doesn't sound too bad. You want to just sign this agreement, the whole thing will be arranged. I'm afraid we can't sign anything until we've checked in with the other cattle company, Granger. Well, now, there's no need going to see that two-bit outfit. They can't better that price. Just the same, we'll have to see what they offer. <laughs> All right. The chances are I'll take them over before you drive the cattle in anyway. Supposing they don't agree to be too cold. Oh, they'll come around. I've made them a fair offer. And if old man Barton wasn't such a stupid fool, he'd see it's smarter to sell to me than be ruined eventually anyway. Well, I'm not much of a businessman, but it looks to me like this town is big enough for two cattle companies. It won't be big enough for several years yet, Cassidy. And since I was here first, Barton and Carter had better sell out to me, or else. Ah, well, that's all between you and them, Granger. I'll let you know what we decide to do after we talk to them. Sir, Judy told me when she and Wayne got back to the office what had happened, Cassidy. And I want to add my thanks to theirs. That's all right, Mr. Barton. If I were Carter here, I think I'd start carrying some protection. No. I refuse to carry a gun and ask for more trouble than we already have. I agree with Wayne. It would only make matters worse, Mr. Cassidy. You see, Cassidy, where we come from, people don't often settle their differences with bullets. As far as I'm concerned, I'd be all for getting out of this part of the country before someone's killed. Now, now, let's don't have any more talk like that, Wayne. It's all right, Dad. Wayne's upset over what happened. And Pete Foley gave him a terrible kick in the leg, which doesn't make him feel any better. As a matter of fact, I think I'll go home and rest, Fred. I don't feel my best. Sure, you go along. Oh, uh, I'll look in on things tonight for you, too. Better stay off that leg for a day or so. All right. Nice to see you again, Cassidy. Carlson? Yeah, yeah. So long. Take it easy, Carter. I'll see you tomorrow, Judy. All right, Wayne. Now, gentlemen, shall we talk business? That suits us fine. Excuse me, Mr. Cassidy. Dad, I'd better run along myself. I promised you some fried chicken for supper, remember? <laughs> How could I forget? Uh, I wonder if Cassidy and Carlson here wouldn't like some good food for a change. Why not ask them? How about it, men? We could go into things more thoroughly after supper. Why don't you join us? Well, that's mighty nice of you. Yeah, 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 sure is. And uh, we'd be proud to accept, wouldn't we, Hoppy? <laughs> All right, then. We'll be there. Good. I hope you won't be disappointed. We'll be along in an hour or so, Judy. Judy's as good a cook as her mother was, and that's going some. Yeah, we'd best move away so she can clear the table now, though. 
Hey, you fellas go on. I'll give Judy a hand. Oh, huh? thank you, California. Oh, I didn't realize it was so late. Seems to be dark outside already. Days are getting shorter and shorter. I guess before we settle down, I'd better go check on the things at the stockyard, Hoppy. Don't you have a night watchman down there? Oh, yes, but we like to make sure he's on the job and everything's all right. Ordinarily, Wayne looks in on them about this time of night, but I told him I'd do it tonight. Well, maybe a little fresh air do California and me some good. Mind if we tag along? I was just going to suggest it. We can talk some more on the way. Good. Sounds like you get a lot of cattle in these pens. Only about 250 head right now, California. Thank you, Mr. Barton. Yes, it's all right, Jack. I thought I recognized your voice. Just checking up, Jack. Everything all right? Quiet as anything. Good. We'll just walk on down through the yard. Okay, Mr. Barton. Watch out for the mud down by the watering trough. We will. The lantern gives us enough light to see where we're going. How often do you ship out of here, Barton? Twice a week now. Train due in tomorrow to load these. Twice a week? Say, you're getting good railroad service. Mesa Junction's growing by leaps and bounds. Someday we'll be as big as Santa Fe or Tucson if it keeps up. I hope you're right. It'd be a great thing for the ranchers in this part of the... Ow! Barton! Hoppy! He's been shot. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Cowtown Troubleshooters. Hoppy and California were in Mesa Junction to check on the possibilities of driving the Bar 20 cattle to that town for sale to one of the two cattle buying companies. They discovered a feud between the two companies existed, and that night, while with Fred Barton at the Barton Carter stockyard, someone hiding in the dark near one of the cattle pens fired a shot which hit the older partner. Here's a couch in the back office. We can put him on that. Sure. I'm afraid this hit pretty bad. What happened to the other fellow that was He went after the coyote that shot your boss here. Here we are now. Easy, easy. There. Uh, he's plumb unconscious. Where can we find a doctor? Doc Miller lives about a half mile or so from here. I'll saddle up and get him. How is he, California? He's in bad shape, I'm afraid. Hey, did you see any signs of the fellow that shot him? No, whoever did it got away before I could get close. I'm going after Doc Miller. Keep an eye on things till I get back, will you, you please? You better get word to Barton's daughter and his partner after you send the doctor over. Yeah, I'll tell him to come right over. <laughs> I wonder how he's making out by now, Hoppy. I don't know. That wound was mighty close to the heart. Yeah. Where is he? In the other office? Yeah. Oh, this is awful, Cassidy. Does Judy know what's happened? She's in there with her dad and the doctor now. How, how is Fred? We don't know yet. You better sit down. Maybe a long wait. I was afraid something like this would happen. Granger will stop at nothing even if he has to hire someone to kill. I thought uh, Pete Foley was after you and said to Barton. He probably mistook Barton for me. Ordinarily, I'm the one that checks on things here in the evening. Fred just took my place tonight. That's right, isn't it? Someone hiding and waiting to take a shot at you couldn't tell the difference in the dim light of a lantern. No, and if Fred dies, even though we know who's responsible, how can we prove it? That may be tough to do. Let's get down by that pen where your partner is shot and see if we can find anything interesting. All right, but I doubt if we'll find anything that'll help. Never can tell. Might be worth a try, huh, Hoppy? That's right. There's always a chance. Come on. Hold the lantern over here a little closer, California. Sure. You think the shot came from about here? Uh, it looked that way to me. I saw the muzzle flash, and as near as I could tell, the gunman must have been standing by the corner of that pen there, or the water trough. Well, that sounds logical. It'd be a good hiding place, all right. Look here. Wait a minute. In the mud here. By golly, a good, clear footprint. Let me see. California, there's a shovel by the feed trough over there. Get it, will you? Uh, sure, sure. Here, uh, you take the lantern. What are you going to do, Hoppy? Take out this slab of mud and save the footprint. The ground's mostly clay, and we can bake it and have a good mold. Of course. And then find the boots that fit the mold. Here's the shovel, Hoppy. Wait, listen. What's the matter, Carter? I heard a noise over by that other pen. Someone's been watching us. Huh? Uh, what kind of a noise? It sounded like a board cracking. Whoever it was must have climbed over the fence and disappeared. No use going after him. I tried that without any luck after Barton was shot. Let's get out of here. Standing by this lantern makes us perfect targets. All right. As soon as I get this footprint, we'll go back to the office.
The doctor's still working on him, but he thinks there's a chance he'll live. There, there, my dear, of course he'll live. Oh, Wayne, how could anyone be so low as to shoot Dad? Please, Judy, don't think about it. Oh, you were right. We should have sold the company to Granger and gone back to the east. Excuse me, Miss Judy. Don't judge the West by one town or the people by one or two men. I'm sorry, Hoppy. I, I didn't mean it that way, but... Uh, we understand, ma'am, but we're going to do everything we can to see that whoever shot your dad is rounded up. I appreciate your help, but what can you do? We've got a footprint that we're sure was left with the man who shot him. We'll turn it over to the sheriff and then try to find the boots that fit it. Hey, I uh, wonder if the sheriff's got back to town by now. I doubt it. He spends more time out at Johnson's ranch than in his office. Well, we're trying to locate him. In the meantime, we'll keep the footprint. It's our only clue. Sheriff, as far as it goes. Yeah, you sure missed a lot of excitement. Mm, yeah, I guess it did. I'm sorry you fellas had so much trouble finding me tonight, too, but there was a fracas over at the saloon. So we heard. Now, that footprint you got, uh, what'd you do with oh, it? Oh, it's in our room at the hotel. When we didn't find you here in the office, uh, when we first came by, we figured we'd better take care of it ourselves. Good. <laughs> Well, gents, I reckon I'd better go out to the Barton Carter place and see how Fred Barton's making out. You say his partner and his daughter are there with him? That's right, Sheriff. The doctor was still working on him when we left. Well, if he regains consciousness, I ought to be on hand to ask him some questions. I'm afraid it may be quite a while before he can do much talking, Sheriff. There may be. But I'll go on out and look around anyway. You fellas might as well go on back and get some sleep. I'll send for you if I want you. <laughs> That old bed's gonna feel mighty good to me, Hoppy. Uh, this has turned into a pretty long day. <laughs> I could use a little shut-eye myself, but I wish we could figure... Wait a minute. What's the matter, Hoppy? Look, that light. Coming out the door to our room. Hey, did we go off and leave the lamp burn? No. Looks like we got company. A footprint. Somebody must have been trying to find out where we hid it. Yeah, God, I must have been right. There was somebody watching while we was getting it. What are we going to do? Get on the other side of the doorway. The light just went off. Whoever's in there is coming out. Stand where you are. Huh? Don't reach for that. Well, if it ain't Pete Foley. I ain't done nothing. Let me go. Yeah, uh, Hoppy. He's got a footprint. Yeah, that's right. And I aim to keep it. No, I can't look out. Look, so you Foley. Grab it. I got it, Hoppy. <clears throat> All right, Foley, on your feet. He almost stomped in the footprint. Come on, inside here. I'll light the lamp here, huh? Listen, if you let me go. Hold it, Foley, you're not going anywhere. There. Well, so you're the varmint that tried to kill Fred Barton, huh? Oh, I never shot Barton, I swear. You seem mighty interested in getting that footprint. Well, I had to. I, I was ordered to get it. Ordered to get it? Who ordered you to do it? Granger, my boss. Granger? Uh, do you believe him, Hoppy? I don't know yet. We better turn him over to the sheriff. That's just what we're going to do. Uh oh, uh, I forgot. The sheriff's out at the Barton Carter cattle yard. That's where we're taking Foley, and on the way, we'll stop and get Jess Granger, too. <laughs> I'll see here, Sheriff. You've no right to hold me here. I've done nothing. Simmer down, Granger. According to Pete here, you sent him a note ordering him to get that footprint. That's a lie. It ain't either a lie. Your name was signed to it, Granger. Where's the note now? Uh, I, I burned it. That was part of the instructions on it. Hmm. How'd this note reach you, Foley? I was home asleep. I woke up when I heard somebody pound on the door. When I got up and went to see who it was, all I found was a note slipped under the door. He's lying, trying to throw the blame on me. He can't prove a word of what he Both says. Both of you have made trouble for Barton and Carter, so it could have been either one of you, I reckon. If you ask me, they're both equally guilty, Sheriff. I wasn't asking you, Carter. We'll get to the right man, don't you worry. Uh, Foley, 
And this note you keep talking about, what kind of paper was it written on? Uh, just ordinary tablet paper, like you see everywhere. Did you recognize the handwriting? Well, I ain't seen much of Granger's writing, but near as I could tell, it looked like his. But he signed his name. I tell you, he's lying. I didn't send him any such note. You know, Sheriff, there's a chance Granger and Foley might both be telling the truth. Huh? Suppose neither one of them shot Barton. And whoever did it was trying to lay the blame on him. But, Hoppy, who else would want to murder Dad? Or me. Remember, whoever fired that shot thought they were shooting at me. I wonder. By the way, were you here all the time after California and I left to find the sheriff? Why, yes. Except for a half hour or so. Wayne went home to get some coffee. Why, Hoppy? I noticed he changed his boots. Were the other ones uncomfortable, Carter? Why... Hoppy, are you trying to say you think Wayne had something to do with this? That's ridiculous. I'm just trying to think of all the angles, Miss Judy. If your dad were out of the way and you married Carter, he'd wind up in control of the whole company. Then he could sell out and go back east. See here, Cassidy, this has gone about far enough. I'm afraid you're getting in pretty deep here, Cassidy. What have you got to go on? Just a shot in the dark, Sheriff. But if Carter went home for coffee, he could have left a note at Foley's house. And the reason I think he might have done just that is because something's missing from the top of his desk. What? What's missing? An ordinary tablet. It was there when we left, and now it's gone. That's a lie. California, take a look through those desk drawers. Sure, Hoppy. You've no right to snoop around my desk. Well, here's your tablet. That don't prove anything, Cassidy. Not yet it doesn't. But the habit most businessmen have of writing something and then tearing the sheet loose from the tablet might prove plenty. Give me that pencil, too, California. Yeah, yeah, here you are. What are you going to do? By laying the pencil down so the lid is flat against the tablet and then shading it back and forth, we'll see what happens. Hmm. <laughs> Look, whatever was written on the sheet before this one is showing up. Wayne, it says... I know what it says. Get your hands up, all of you. Wayne! He's got a gun! Drop it, Carter! Hop him! Oh! Back to Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah, that was a mighty fast draw, Cassidy. Sure was. Shot the gun clean out of Carter's hand. <laughs> you know, I I feel sorry for Judy, though. She's pretty stunned by the whole thing. Yeah, uh, but it's lucky she found out what kind of a fella Carter was before she married him. Yeah. I, I thought you men would like to know. Dad is conscious now. I think he's going to be all right. Oh, that's good news, Miss Judy. Hoppy... I want to, I want to thank you for what you've done. Judy, you don't owe us any thanks at all. It's hard to believe Wayne would do what he did. I... And now, Miss Judy, you've got to start right now, forgetting all about him. Uh, you're going to be busy running things here until your dad's up and around again. You know that. I know, and I'm frightened at the thought. Uh, Miss Judy, you won't have anything to worry about from my company. In fact, if your dad's agreeable... We might be able to work out a fair plan for consolidation. Oh, that would be wonderful, Mr. Granger. Well, consolidated or not, you can be sure one good customer, Miss Judy. You mean the Bar 20? Right. And you'd better get things organized, because we'll be back next month with 400 head of the best beef cattle in the West. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's no bull. California. <laughs> <laughs> When Hoppy plays detective, he finds the guilty man and saves the town from having a deadly feud after he and California act as Cowtown Troubleshooters. Another thrilling adventure is in store for you next time with Hoppy and California and a surprise for all. Be sure to listen. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr., Cowtown Troubleshooters was written by Robert T. Smith with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based on the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.
The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrilled his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Mystery at the Diamond Z. The afternoon sun glares down savagely on the short, dusty main street of Guild's Pass. The low, rambling business buildings with their wide porches afford the only bit of shade for the weary citizens. Tying off their horses in front of the Black Ace Saloon and Cafe are two dusty riders. Tired and hungry, Hopalong Cassidy and his pal California Carlton decide to eat before going on. Well, Hoppy, if we get some grub quick, we can make the bar 20 by nightfall. Nothing to keep us from doing just that, California. I see through that dirty ski rail, and it ain't going to work. That ranch right really belongs to me. Not if I pay you the 4,000 mortgage by tomorrow. Why, you thieving Jasper. Little you... John here will be the new owner. Maybe he'll sell it to you for 20,000. Little John ain't buying it. It's a frame to get 4,000 for me and to give him the mortgage. You're intimating that I'm a crook, Deuce? Intimating? I, I was saying it. You look like trouble, Humpy. I may drive a hard bargain, but I ain't a crook, and someday you'll eat them words, Deuce Davis. Yeah, I guess that's all we got to say. Your money will be here tomorrow. Anything else you've got to say, Deuce, you can say to Brill. Why, that little fella ain't half his eyes. Why, you double-crossing coyote, yo! <laughs> That big lummox, why I... I That'll be enough, mister. Huh? I think you heard me. Beating a fellow half your size. Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, stranger. I, I don't know who you are or where you come from, but uh, if you're from around here, you know better than to talk up to Deuce Davis. Why, you... Uh, oh, watch out, Hoppy! Uh, 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 there. How does it feel to be the one who's looking up from the floor, Deuce? Huh? <laughs> I still don't know your name, stranger. Uh, but I'll be dealing the next time. And you ain't going to like the hand you're getting, either. But I'll call you just the same. Now get going. Uh-huh. But uh, this ain't helping you none, Brill. I'm still claiming that ranch. Yeah, mister, give me your hand. Get up on your feet. I'm afraid I got you in a peck of trouble, mister. I'm Mr. Little John, and I'm much obliged to you. Oh, shucks. He ain't happy if he ain't in the middle of some kind of goings on. My name is Brill, and I, I own the Diamond Z three miles out of town. You said something about a mortgage. Yeah, I owe him 4000 and I have until tomorrow. So I'm a selling for 10000 a day and getting out. Uh, getting out? Yep. I've been shot at and run down with horses, and I had my beeves stolen. You got any idea who's doing it? Well, uh, yes, but I ain't got no proof. Uh, sounds like they're short trying to get you out. I ain't even got a horse to ride home. He was shot out back from under me and out past that fringe of greasewood less than an hour ago. Your horse shot? Why, the low down. You're right, Brill. You're playing with a stacked deck. Sure sounds bad. I wouldn't taken $10,000 for that Palmino. The sheriff know about it? Yep, but uh, I guess his hands is tied, too. Mm-hmm. Well, sir, our hands aren't. Hop up back of me on top of her. What are you going to do, Hoppy? I don't know, but I'm mighty anxious to meet the man who shot his horse down in cold blood. And I figure the best place to meet him is at Brill's Ranch.
Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, Mystery at the Diamond V. Hop Along in California were about to enter a cafe in Gill's Pass when they saw Deuce Davis beat Mr. Brill's friend, Little John. Hoppy stopped the unequal battle with a few well-directed blows, and when Brill told Hoppy that someone had shot his horse, Hoppy got blazing mad and offered to help him find the man. But word has arrived ahead of Hoppy at the Diamond Z bunkhouse. Come on, Hal. Get up off in that bunk. Your sleeping days is over on this here Diamond Z spread. Now, wait a minute, Buck. You're not the foreman here. I ain't gonna be nothing around the Diamond Z. I'm packing my saddlebags and riding before Burl gets back here. You talk like a loose-headed Ranahan. Here? Anyone around the bunkhouse? No, you so. Why are you so quiet about it? Well, I just rode in from the Black East Saloon. I saw Deuce Davis get a beating. Huh. I sure wish I could have seen it. Yeah? Well, you ain't gonna like what else I heard. Eh? What's that? Little John is buying the Diamond Z Ranch today. This ranch. Today? Well, uh, what are we gonna do with the hundred and head back in the draw? Looks like we gotta get him back with the herd. But I branded them already with the extra box. Why, you fool! I figured we was playing the string too long. Well, it's a noose for us if we're caught. Eh, Doc, I, I don't aim to get caught. Uh, they can only hang a man once. Huh? You mean, uh, uh, Brill? Brill, little John, anybody. We can handle this our own way, and nobody will be wise. Except for one thing, the stranger. Stranger? What stranger? The fellow who whipped Deuce, rode out with Brill. Well, if there's no other way out... We lay him alongside the Brill. Well, you're doing it alone, Hal. I'd have no such dealings with this stranger. I seen him in action. You ever seen him before? No. Somebody said that his name was uh, Cassidy. Cassidy? How long, Cassidy? Well, why, you slow-witted hootar. Why didn't you say so? I did. Well, get that bedroll packed. Throw some grub in that saddlebag. We're riding. And riding now. Well... What are you gaping at? It's too late, Hal. Too late? Yeah. There's a riding up to the ranch house right now. Well, here we are, Mr. Cassidy. I I just hope I ain't keeping you from getting back to your ranch. Ah, don't worry about us, Mr. Brill. Yeah. Well, we can tie off under this pepper tree until you get rested, and then we can head the horses down. Let's uh, let's go in the back way. Doing a little building? Yep, I'm doing it myself. Every board is solid oak. Yes, sir. I always had an office in Denver, so I was a building one here until uh, well, until there ain't no use anymore. Oh, now maybe things will work out. Right? Hey, oh, get out, California. Stop. Go away. Get down there, Pip. Get down, Pip. Oh, you like to scare me, Pip. Darn good thing he's tied up. Well, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you about Tip. He's half coyote and half sheep dog, and I keep him tied under the window. He's wild enough to run off the first chance he gets. Mighty good protection, I'd say. Yeah, somehow I feel safe when I know he's watching. A fellow would think twice before he tangled with that dog. Him straining on that rope. Yeah, now that's enough, Tip. Tip, that's enough. He knows your friends now. Come on in, men. I'll, I'll show you how I finished off the inside of the new wing. Well, see, that's right good. Looks like them pictures in the magazines. Yep, I sanded every one of them boards myself. Ain't a blemish on them. Took me two months or more. Yeah, smooth as glass. Yes, but I guess there ain't no need of doing any more on it. Little John can finish it. Uh, I do want to say something I shouldn't, Mr. Brill, but me and Hoppy ain't had no vittles since noon. Oh, of course. How stupid of me. Here, come along. I'm so upset. I just don't know what I'm doing. As he will have to walk around the new wing, I, I ain't cut a door through to the house yet. Uh, looks like that buyer of yours isn't wasting any time getting the deal over. Yep, you're sure right, Hoppy. He's a riding in. Why, so he is. I didn't see him at first in this twilight. My eyes ain't as good as they was. 
Yep, it's little John, all right. Well, you go ahead with your business, Mr. Prill. California and I will just take a look around. Might bump into your two men somewhere. They're probably in the bunkhouse now. Maybe they can give us some help in one way or another. Darn funny how them fellas cleared out of the bunkhouse so soon. I know I see one of them looking out the door. Remember Bill said part of his herd was missing? Yep, sure did. Well, they either drove them out past the bunkhouse or there's another way off the spread out back. And if there ain't any way out the back? Then what these fellows have to say might turn out to be kind of interesting. Just wait, Harvey. Look, that pasture out the end of the draw. Yeah. You're right, California. And up against sheer rock. I think I'm right. Then you think them two fellers? Uh, I, I say, you figure them two Jaspers is a... You ain't listening. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, California. Oh, Topper. What are you looking at? Smoke on these stones. Yeah, I'm right. Been a fire here. What's wrong with that? Nothing, unless that fire was used to heat up branding iron. You think someone changed the brand on Braille's herd? Wouldn't surprise me a bit. Look around for fresh dirt. Fresh dirt? You, you mean like something was buried? Exactly. Don't tell nothing. It tells us that no outsider would come back here and take the risk of branding cattle with a noose staring him in the face. Then it's them two fellers. Wait, look. Yeah? That little mound of fresh shale there. A fresh mound of shale? Yeah, right by your feet. Yep, yeah, you're right, Hoppy. <laughs> and I'll dig around a little. <laughs> yeah, I got an idea what you'll find, too. Hey, I, I, I feel something. Now, wait, now. I, I'll get hold of it. There. Well, look you what it is. A branding iron. And it's not a diamond Z, either. It looks like we found what you expected to, Hoppy. Now, you see, you was worrying about a problem. Of course, young Yes, California, that's half our problem. Half? That's right. Now, let's get back to the ranch house and see if the other half works out as easy. Seems darn funny to me that this Brill fellow didn't see that far and figure out what was going on. I don't think Brill knows too much about ranching. Remember, he said he had an office in Denver? Seems more like a city man. And it was easy for them two crooks to steal right out from under his nose. Yeah, they know when little John buys the place, it'll be different. That's why they were hightailing it out of here. Why, them dirty sidewinders. I don't think we'd better tell about the branding iron until we see what move they make. Hey, looks like Brill's got some more company. And he's wearing a star. The sheriff. Well, let's go on in. Well, Mr. Cassidy, we was worried about you two. Sheriff and me was just going to start hunting for you. You didn't think we were lost? Well, anything's liable to happen, doggone it. There's trouble brewing like a thunder shower. Trouble? Yeah. On my way out here to notarize the papers for Brill... I caught sight of Deuce Davis up ahead of me, but lost him about a mile from here. Deuce Davis? Yeah. Anytime he's out of his diggings, he's tending to something mighty important. Well, he ain't likely to fool around here with the law being around. Hey, that bacon smells mighty good. Hoppy, you struck a soft spot in my heart when you said bacon. I'm so hungry I well, could just sit down, men. Little John will join us in a minute. I'm cooking my last meal on the Diamond Z. Hey. Sure it smells mighty good. Yeah, just sit anywhere, man. There's plenty of it. Uh, it's kind of stuffy in here. I guess I'd better open the window a bit. Uh, uh, pass them spuds, Sheriff. I'm so hungry. I... Get down. Get down. Somebody shoot. Looks like the trouble started, man. Someone's trying to kill somebody off. Nobody in here is hit. I hope little John is lucky. Come on, let's go. Before we continue, here is a word from your announcer.
now back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, Mystery at the Diamond Z. When Hoppy in California saved a Mr. Little John from a beating at the hands of Deuce Davis, they were asked by Mr. Brill to come to his Diamond Z ranch to help him keep down trouble until he sold his spread to Mr. Little John. Little John arrived and was going over the papers in the den out back. The sheriff, Hoppy, California, and Brill were sitting down to a meal of ham and eggs when a shot rang out. Sure, it's going to get out here in the back, boys. Watch out for that dog, Sheriff. Dog? I don't see no dog. Well, jumping jelly beans. The dog's gone, Hoppy. What's in here? That's a new addition. You better see if Little John's all right. You see anything, Hoppy? Yeah. Light a match, somebody. Yeah, I got one right here. I'll light the candle. It's Little John. Yep. He's hit, Sheriff. Some dirty coyote shot him. Well, Brill, looks like Deuce had a hunch. Hunch? He swore I'd not sell to Little John. Well, then it makes it easy. Deuce wasn't riding this way for no good. He seen you on the trail, Sheriff, and hid till you went by. And sneaked up here, shot through that window, and stopped the sale. Little John had $10,000 with him, Sheriff. He did? Hmm. Must still have it, Don. Now, look. Well, here's his wallet. Yeah. It's empty. And they took a fast chance coming after they shot him and took the money. I don't think so, Sheriff. I don't see how there'd be time, Sheriff. Well... You got a better idea? I think I have, Sheriff. I don't think Little John was shot through that window. That's right. Somebody come in, and when Little John turned around, they shot him, grabbed the money, But and... how on earth would they get by Kip, the dog? Yeah, that's right. Uh, unless whoever it was knew the dog. Your two men knew the dog, Brill. Well, yes, uh, they weren't too friendly, but the Kip wouldn't bite him. Well, I'll have Little John tuck into the dock, and then I'm bringing in Deuce Davis. Well, I don't think Davis had the nerve for this, Sheriff. Well, you keep your thinking yourself, Bill. I'm the law, and I ain't been wrong yet. Uh, Sheriff, after you get Deuce Davis, you might ride out here. Uh, there's a few other things you ought to know. Right now, let it go. One thing at a time and do it right is my creed. That's what makes me the people's choice for five straight elections. I know, but there's a matter of a branding iron and a reason for killing Thought maybe you'd like to talk to him first. Well, you're a good cowpoke, Cassidy. Mighty good shot and a darn good friend. But you don't know the first thing about law work. But thank you anyhow. Why, you darned old busy <laughs> rooster. <laughs> you Never would... mind, California. Oh, the sheriff's right. Maybe we'd better stop bothering him. Come on. What's wrong, Hoppy? What are you looking at? What a shame. The bullet tore a brill fine sanded oak wall. Just a minute, Cassidy. Yeah? Could be the killer's still riding around here, waiting to make a break. Let's fan out and find him. The sheriff's right. Come on. Well, no luck so far, Cassidy. You still think the killer'd be around? I'm making sure of it. If he is, it should be easy on a moonlight night like this. Bobby, listen, a horse. I see him. Heading for that trail. Come on, boys. Let's ride. There he is. They're looking in on him. Better be sure he doesn't get any more of us. I'll make sure of that. Hold up now. We'll shoot. Hold up now. We're a shoot. I guess he doesn't care, Sheriff. I warned him. Can't let him get away. Start blasting, boy. He's falling. He's hit. I warned him. Maybe he's not hit. It might be a fake. Careful now, men. Well, boys, that's the end of Deuce Davis. I'd have rather seen him on the end of a rope. Well, Deuce has killed at least five men. All to self-defense. Looks like he met up with justice. He had plenty of warning, Sheriff. Why do you keep riding? Well, sometimes a man gets bigger than the law. When they do, well, they make mistakes. He figured he could hide out till the coast was clear, then make a ride for it. Hmm. Guess there ain't no more to be done, boys. I wonder. Huh? Oh, nothing, Sheriff. Yes, California and I'd better get back to the ranch house. I'll join you, Mr. Cassidy. Soon as I give the sheriff a hand. Yeah, 
Well, maybe we can finish them bacon and eggs. Well, Hoppy, we can start back for the bar 20 in the morning. I hope so. Hmm? You don't think Davis killed little John? I'm going to have proof, California. I hope we're not too late. Come on, Popper. Well, where to, Hoppy? We may find what I want in the bunkhouse. Come on. <laughs> Hoppy, you said we was going to the bunkhouse. In a minute, California. I'm interested in this window where little John was killed. You know, Hoppy, I keep thinking about the dog being gone. I know. Somebody turned him loose. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Look, California. Oh, oh, what is it? See how our boots leave prints in this dew? They sure do. And those boot steps to the window. E- e- yep, you're right. The killer went up to the window, shot little John. And took time to run around, go in, steal his money, and leave before we got there. Uh, well, uh, I don't see how one man could have done it. But maybe two men could have done the killing. The two hard hands. We'll soon know. Those fellows have to come back for their kits and duds. And when they do, we'll be waiting for them. <laughs> I'm getting mighty tired of crouching behind this bunk. I am too, California. But we gotta outweigh these two crooks. Shh, the door. Both of them, Hoppy. Grab them bedrolls, Hal. I'll bring the grub. Yeah, we've got to be miles from here by sunup. You got everything? Everything? <laughs> you bet I got everything. But you're not taking it with you. Huh? I'll get him, Hal. Huh? him, I quit, don't. I give up. Uh, we ain't done nothing. I'll take those guns. Trying to add killing to your rustling, eh? Why, you sidewinder? Killing? Why, we ain't trying to kill nobody. Uh, we just want to get out of here. Where's the dog? Dog? You mean Tip? Yep, Tip. We, we don't know. He was tied up when we left for town. You been in town? Sure was, buying supplies. Then we heard about the killing. Where'd you get the money for supplies? Why, uh, we saved it. Well, we're telling the truth. Well, uh, boys, the sheriff will be mighty interested in keeping you company for a while. Just leave your stuff. You won't be needing it. Uh, they ain't putting a noose around my neck. Shut up. I ain't hanging for nobody else. I told you to shut up. Yeah, and any talking you got to do, the sheriff will want to hear. Come on, boys. Let's go. You're helping out this way, Hoppy. With them two fellas locked up, we can mark it off the books. Yeah. You uh, don't sound too happy about it. Sure he is. Well, we can light out for home now. Uh, Sheriff, there's something mighty funny about this whole deal. Oh, now, don't get to confusing things. I'm not, but where's the dog? Probably run away. I wonder. Hmm? You, you think Deuce killed the dog, too? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And by the way, Sheriff... Did you see the bullet that killed little John? Of course I did. Doctor dug it up, showed it to me. Good. That means I'm uh, right in my reasoning. Reasoning? Now, look here, Cassidy. Sheriff, yeah, I'm a funny fellow, maybe. But when a man does a killing, he should pay for it. You're plumb right, and he did. And you wouldn't want to make a mistake? Why, doggone it, you've been chewing on local weed. Nope. But I'm going out to the Diamond Z and find that dog. Well, if you're that set, I'll, I'll go along with you. Maybe a good idea, Sheriff. Might save you an extra trip. Well, there's the dog, Hoppy. Uh-huh. Rope ran through the crotch of that shrub and jerked him back. Didn't go more than 200 yards. Plum broke his neck. Well, let's get back to the house, Sheriff. What are you doing, Hoppy? Cutting off a knot on this rope. Well, of all the darn fool things, you must be loco, Cassidy. You, me, Brill, and California was sitting right in the house when the killer shot. So it had to be Deuce or one of them cowhands, hell or buck. One of them's dead and the other's in jail. Maybe you're right, Sheriff, but I've got it figured different. <laughs>
Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Well, Brill, you almost got away with it. What are you talking about, Cassidy? You killed little John and tried to use me as an alibi. Use you? Why, you're loco, Cassidy. You get out of here. Now, hold up on that stuff, Brill. You killed little John for the $10,000 and to save your ranch. What are you talking about? You were sitting right here with me when we heard the shot. We heard the shot, but not the one that did the killing. Now, look, Cassidy, if you know something... I do. We heard one shot. Yep, that's right. And we took that bullet out of little John. Then where did the other bullet come from that we found on the wall? That makes two bullets, but we only heard one shot. Now, wait, Hoppy. Then who fired the shot we heard? The dog. I won't listen to any more stuff like this. You had the dog's rope under the window, and when you raised the window, the dog ran, pulling the rope and a string. But the shot! The string was tied to the trigger. When the dog jerked the string, the gun fired, but the dog kept going. Here's a piece of the string on the end of this rope. Yeah, well, then where's the gun? I don't know, Brill, but we found your boot prints where you'd uh, gone later and got it. Why, you already got the killer, Deuce Davis. Huh? Yeah, yeah, what about him? He came to do the killing, but found he was too late and tried to get away. So Brill got the ranch, the 10,000. That's right, and a perfect alibi. Don't go for that six-gun, Brill. You blasted cowpoke. I don't feel sorry for you, Brill. I feel sorry for the dog that trusted you, dead at the end of a rope. Well, Brill ain't much better off. You planned this and planned it well. But an extra bullet and a little piece of rope ruined your plan. <laughs> Along in California are saying goodbye for now, but they'll return with more action packed adventures of the early West, the kind of stories that you're thrilled to in the theaters and on television when you see Hop Along Cassidy. It's no wonder folks call this smiling cowboy an American institution. He's just got a little bit of everything we like about this country of ours. So we'll be seeing you next time this fabulous Hop Along rides out from the bar 20. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Mystery at the Diamond Sea was written by Howard Floyd. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mosley. Tune in to nostalgia. Tune in to now. Golden Radio Hour.